evening, everybody. My name is Cameron, and happy Thankmas, everybody! You may not have noticed, but there is a snow globe behind me. I drew it. It says Thankmas. It also says 2022. But what does that mean, though? What is a Thankmas? Well, if you want to look at it from a literary perspective, I would think that Thankmas is a portmanteau, or pamantois, it's spelled a certain way, of Thanksgiving and Thankmas, or thankfulness and Christmas. I just, I messed it up. Thanksgiving and Christmas. Thank Miss Thanksgiving, thank you, thank you. Anyways, so thank miss is something that, if I'm correct in saying, I'm looking to my off-screen camera folks, that Jacksepticeye hosts every single year so far to raise money for a variety of different charitable organizations. This year, we happen to be supporting the World Central Kitchen, which is an organization that helps provide hot meals for families that are experiencing various different types of crises in the world, whether that be a humanitarian crisis, a natural disaster, some other types of disasters, I'm sure there are more. What they do is they kind of get note of the event happening and be like, all right, let's get the burners going, let's get the food going, and let's figure out how to logistically figure out how we can get all of this food to the people out there experiencing the bad stuff and whatnot. Give, kind of to give you a whole idea of what the night is supposed to entail, you may see, if you have eyes, a countdown timer in the top, this is the right hand side two corner of the screen. That is a countdown timer that is counting down for 24 hours. I think I started a little bit late, but we'll wind up going over, much to my own dismay. My caffeine levels are running rather low, um, but that will change throughout the night. And we're gonna be going for 24 hours until until 24 hours are over, really. The goal is to be able to raise $500 worth of monies for the World Central Kitchen by that 24 hour mark. So far, we have had a couple donations from a couple of key individuals. Key because they've donated so far and there's only three of them. So far, we've had donations from Yoda Girl 14369 for a whopping $200, which is making my job a lot easier over here. We've also had a couple donations from the Meeps123 for a total of $40. And we also had a recent donation from Lenny, thank you Lenny, for $20. I I have balloons that you can't see in front of the bar right now. What we'll be doing is we'll kind of make a balloon with the amount on them. There's a balloon popping up. Just kidding. Here's another balloon. It's orange. There's more balloons. That's the big one. That's the big green one. There it goes. There's the balloon. In any case, that's kind of how it's going to be going. First, what we're going to do is we're going to start off here behind the bar as we normally do on Wednesday nights, but it is a Friday. And we're going to mix a couple of cocktails here. We've got a big old batched cocktail uh, from which, uh, from Philadelphia over here. We've got a little bit of a history lesson and technique lesson on the Manhattan, as well as a bunch of other holiday-themed drinks until we get to the latter portion of the evening where we're going to jump into some GameCube games with my buddy Lycos Lore, a.k.a. Glenn, who was the one who was throwing the balloons around there. No, I wasn't. We're going to be playing all night. Uh, and then we're going to wake up in the morning. We're gonna have a bit of a mukbang we're gonna gather in my kitchen which is below my feet the camera actually goes downstairs and then we're gonna come back upstairs for like a few hours tomorrow and we're gonna play a bunch of board games and stuff with we've got dalukari and final rhapsody who should be probably be uh, popping into the door at any time here looking for parking currently looking for parking. I've seen a couple of chats here so far from Domstar saying that they liked the video in the beginning, but the background is too light. Don't worry, we're live now. It got a lot brighter. The crises are real. Do subs go into this? So yes, to answer your question, I don't feel comfortable hosting a charity stream and accepting cash on behalf of like when we are clearly trying to raise money for stuff. So the plan is at the 24 hour mark, we're gonna make our way back to the bar over here and we're gonna tally up everything that we've had so far. So excellently pointed out Domstar that we've had one sub so far it gets a little confusing because prime subs are like a very variable price and they don't necessarily mean the same amount of money every single time um but if somebody can throw out a reasonable number for a sub i think like two to three dollars or something then that's just how it'll be and we'll do a transfer at the end so i'll be the one who takes all that sub stuff and bit stuff and throws it to the charity uh, at the very very end when we tally everything up at the end i need a place for subs sub snowflakes subs not doms is it ironic that Dom's the one who dropped the sub? <laughs> one. That's a tally. That's a nice sub. <laughs> nice sub there, bro. Yo, Mega CS says, hello, Cameron with an X. I have no idea who you are, <laughs> but I love you. Thank you for popping on. And hello, right on back to you. Oh, goodness, what have I covered so far? Have I gotten my pre-stream jigglies out yet? Yeah, I'm not so nice. sure. I have a comment. The X is definitely not silent. You know it. Cam Roxon. What do you want, Lycos Lore? Shut up. Uh, honestly, I, th I think it would have been better is if you didn't have the snowflakes on the side, so that way, like, every time you got oh, a sub, you every single add time. a snowflake. Well, how about every every time we get a sub, we add a special snowflake? Dom, you are a special snowflake. <laughs> yeah, Dom, you're welcome. Here's a blue one. Unless you choose a different color, in which case, I'll just draw over it in any case. 
Oh my god, have I talked enough? I covered the schedule so far, I color covered the cause, and I don't have any alcohol in me yet, so I think that means it's probably time to get started. So subscriptions are five bucks a thing, so I mean, I'd say about five buck donations. Five dollars it is then, I like that. Subs times thin dollaras. No cholera's. In any case, I'm gonna take a big old long sip of water. <laughs> That's so <laughs> awkward. Everybody's laughing in the background. They think it's funny. In any case, we're finally gonna get things started over here. Like I mentioned, so the things we're gonna be whoa, the thing that we're gonna do first is we're gonna start off with cocktails and stuff. The first thing that we're gonna do is a big old batch cocktail that was shared to be by my buddy Eric, aka the purple intet. The purple intet. He brought over this book called Punch. Though uh, it was written by David Wondrich, who is also the uh, author of a book called Imbibe, one of the very pro prolific cocktail writers out there. I've never read the book. This is actually the first time it's even been in this apartment or around a five feet fit radius around. Actually, that's not true. I've stood by the bookshelf that it sat on for a while. In any case, without further ado, I'm going to bring on my pal Eric over here, Purple Intet, who knows a lot about cocktails and has been doing it for longer than I have. Hey, everybody. This Woo! <laughs> Woo! Let's get a round of applause! <laughs> <laughs> Cameron, when the next was filmed in front of a live studio apartment, not a studio apartment, a live apartment audience. Cameron, the next, get off the stage. No, you get off the stage. <laughs> okay. Dom Star is clapping out there. Let me clap for him. Eric, I think the first thing that we're going to start with is a Philadelphia Fish House Punch. Do you have any sort of history on that? Yeah, so Philadelphia Fish House Punch, we obviously are in Philadelphia currently. That's uh, true, with, that's true. With our live stream, and there's a lot of history. Pennsylvania, behind. specifically. Yes, yes. <laughs> Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So back in the days of the revolution, uh, there were a lot of fishing clubs uh, within the United States. Uh, although it wasn't the United States at that point, uh, it was still the colonies. And these fishing clubs were basically these groups of rich mm -hmm. individuals. Do you need to put a sub up quickly? I do, I do. We had a gift sub. Dom just gifted a sub to Mega CS. Boom. Welcome, party goer. <laughs> So there might be frequent interruptions, so I apologize for that ahead of time. So there were a lot of rich individuals back in the colonies that loved to fish, and these were sort of social clubs that would form uh, in all the major cities. So they had them in Boston, Philadelphia, like here, mm -hmm. New York. Um, these were uh, men similar to like Sam Adams, Thomas Jefferson, George Washington. They were all part of these fishing clubs. I'm really glad to hear that Sam Adams was an actual person and not just like a beer company out you know, there. It, somebody just decided to pick a random name for. I almost am certain he was real. So <laughs> <laughs> he, may, he may have been a beer. At the very least, it could just be like there's one of those like long drawn out stories that like a beer company or liquor company will be like, yeah, like, you know, Captain Morgan was a real dude. And everyone's like, sure he was. Yeah. I have no reason to doubt that. So um, also around this time, uh, communal drinking mm -hmm. was a very very popular thing um it was not as much of these like single cocktails that you would make uh for each individual person mm -hmm. what you do is you'd make a giant batched cocktail and back in those days it was punch mm -hmm. um and so there's tons punch of tons. Like a big thing <clears throat> yeah punch was huge back then um a couple of the main reasons one punch was so high in acidity that it would kill any bacteria that oh, was okay. in the punch bowl so well, I know uh, this recipe calls for a lot of lemon or lime juice and stuff. Very, very citric acidy right. juices out there. Um, these punches actually, most of the punch recipes that were used uh, a ton in the colonies were actually developed in the West Indies mm -hmm. uh, and those areas because there was tons and tons of citrus down in those areas. Mm -hmm. um, and they needed something uh, to help stop their water supply and their alcohol supply from going bad. Even though alcohol itself doesn't go bad. Yeah, but the water would very quickly the, go bad, the water, especially in the humidity. Yeah, the water sure. could and the other stuff that they mix it with could go bad very quickly. Yeah. So, Anyways, uh, these large communal drinks, punches, were made, mm -hmm. uh, and every single one of these fishing clubs that we talked about yeah. had their own special recipe. Would you consider, if you had to liken like a particular, like each of these groups individually, would you liken the punches that they had to like, what's that, like a frat jungle juice like that? It's, they're a lot more uh, refined a lot than more that. Refined. I see, I see. <laughs> they're not as harsh. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of these punches are based off of oleosaccharum. Oh yeah, is, yeah. Uh, and you, you may have talked about that on the stream at some point. I haven't actually talked too much about oleosaccharum. Just for those of the uh, oleosaccharum virgins out there, with those who don't know, oleosaccharum is a, a, a liquid that you can create by basically taking citrus peels and covering them in sugar. The sugar will rip the oils and everything else out of those peels and it will become a liquid. Which yeah. actually, it's very interesting. I've kept oleosaccharum for way too long before and when that stuff goes bad, it goes really, really bad. Yeah. And it smells really weird. Yeah, it's, it's horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've made it before at home and left. I've never, I don't think there. I've ever made a good cocktail with oleosaccharum because I think the last time I made it was like, ugh, like months ago. And yeah. I just, 
Falling so, short. so we're not going to use oleo saccharum in this recipe today mm. because it takes a really long time to make. It does, but that it is multiple the, hours. That is the most traditional way is to make that sort of citrus sugar mm -hmm. uh, liquid. Out of curiosity, does the punch book have like kind of these techniques for like oleo saccharum and whatnot? They do, yeah. And cool. This, this cool, recipe cool. in particular that we're we're going to be making the recipe straight out of this book, mm. um, but it it uh, there's a lot of recipes in this book punch mm -hmm. um, by David Wondrich that have awesome. this uh, oleo saccharum method. So anyways, to finish sort of the history lesson, yeah. uh, Philadelphia Fish House Punch was in particular super famous because a lot of the founding fathers uh, were a part of the uh, Philadelphia makes sense. So the, the Schuylkill Fishing Club is where mm -hmm. it came from officially. I like to imagine that all the founding fathers like gathered around the table. They had like their penning quills and whatnot, their like blanched wig caps and whatnot. But they also had like a big old punch bowl in the center. Yeah. <laughs> and these punch bowls, uh, we're, we're going to be using the punch bowls that we picked up for the event today. But We did. We the, did. <clears throat> the punch. You go ahead. Tiny punch bowls. Yeah, they're, they're, not, they're, they're, not big, they're not big, big punch bowls. They're not bowl. as big as I have to cut down ones. the recipe, but like a half. Paul Tracy in here saying, interesting guy here. The founding fathers are the goats. There were many goats, and apparently those goats were drunk on punch. It's true. Um, the last comment I was going to make about punch bowls, a lot of times the punch bowls they used to use back in the day were massive and extremely expensive. They Seriously. Were, they were made of pure crystal. All the glasses that they would use mm -hmm. were also crystal. I legitimately tried um, to find like a big enough punch bowl made of crystal, but like even like the ones that were of size for the recipe that I could find on Amazon were like $70, $80 a piece. And I already spent so much on liquor and whatnot. Yeah, and, and these so. are these are things that they would take, they would like be heirlooms in families. Like these, oh, really? these giant punch bowls. They're like insanely expensive. Nowadays- Swarovski punch bowl. Every, no, no, no kidding. Like you, they would have oh, stuff like that. Wow. Um, and it, it was insane. Mm -hmm. the uh the ornamentation that they would put on like the cups and the actual bowl um Man. i've seen i've seen pictures of ones that are metal as well that mm -hmm. have insane like uh metal sculpting or whatever you call it around like in, in wow like the like the um i feel like i've seen crystal stuff with like embedded metal into it i have no idea how that yeah. process works but it sounds so must be cool. we are we are not going to be using nearly that nice of a punch bowl for this no. recipe today but no, most certainly uh, not. it's a it's a fascinating history if anybody on the stream is interested in learning more about the, the kind of the history of this drink in particular or the history of cocktails mm -hmm. david wondrich's books are amazing and we're not being sponsored i promise no uh, there is absolutely no sponsorship if, here. nobody's giving david, us money if david wondrich is walking watching we're definitely open but uh, <laughs> but, david? uh yeah wherever you are but um david wondrich is one of the best individuals uh that has written about the history of cocktails. So mm -hmm. his, his first book, uh, it's called Imbibe, mm -hmm. talks about the development of cocktails all the way from like the very beginning, like the first cocktail. Like the first cocktail. cocktail, the cocktail. Yeah, and then all the way through like how like Manhattans were created, how mm -hmm. martinis were made, um, all these different drinks, all through, like the old fashioned, yeah. and, and sort of the, the development of those cocktails over it's, the years. It's so interesting to think that like cocktails themselves has have like this evolution that is la like it's just been continuing to go on through all of these years. Like the other day, I was trying to make the all in cocktail, which was 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 supposedly something that was developed off of an old pal cocktail, which was something itself that was kind of based off of a Negroni, which itself was based off of Americano, which itself is based, you know, yeah. just keeps on going and going and, and going. They, and they all fascinate build on each other. And you know, now we're oh, in yeah. the age, we're in the age of like you know insane scientific instruments to make oh my cocktails gosh. and crazy Rotary evaporators yeah, roto -vaps. And <laughs> dist like home distillers and stuff my so gosh. it's a it's a really fascinating topic um mm. the, his second book punch which is the one we're gonna make this out today focuses specifically on like, the history of how punches came to be what they are and nice. um, you know you don't see a lot of punches nowadays honestly it's not yeah, a super yeah. common thing um too you, many juices out there of the jungle yeah you will you will see like individually made cocktails mm -hmm. for punches like in philadelphia you go to a lot of bars they'll be they will have philadelphia fish house punch i'm no kidding at, at really bars. Yeah. i haven't been to enough bars um, then apparently yeah it's the it's usually the kind of swankier places do it oh, um, okay. but, but they only do it as a single cocktail they don't do it as a a full batch cocktail. I imagine like so. I feel like definitely post COVID, nobody's got these big old punch bowls out there thinking there's something the other, like, um, spike it or anything. The other quick, it. the other quick story I'll tell before we start making this. Um, before that, yes. just real quick, I have a couple of comments here yes. from there. There was some Dom Star up in Wisconsin wonders from his Wisconsin blood if they would be able to handle against the against them. Part of me wonders if my Wisconsin blood would be able to handle my alcohol against them, the founding fathers in this case. Pete Tracy is also talking about checking Discord. I will. Let's get a David in chat. Yeah, let's do it. Let's find it. Just David. catching up. If there's a David out there, raise your hand. I can't see it. Oh, is that a donation? It is a donation. Hello, donation that just came in. My page is reloading. Excuse me. No donations. That's a lie. Marilyn says, hi, it's Sarah's mom. Always loved your energy and giant heart. World Central Kitchen is an awesome cause. Good luck and have fun. Marilyn, I can't see the rest of the name, but thank you so much, Marilyn. I, cause my, I think my computer resolution is being weird. Oh, wait, can we see it on the... Wait, I can see it on the stream itself. What is it saying? What is it saying? 
Ah, I can't see it. In any case, it was $50. That was a $50 donation. My goodness. Well, I blow up this balloon. Let's yes. continue. Shall we uh, continue? One other quick comment uh, for your Wisconsin viewer. Uh, brandy Old Fashions are fantastic. I'm from the Chicago area originally, and uh, that is a wonderful drink that is definitely uh, from Wisconsin. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy those there. But uh, the one other story I was going to tell about Fish House Punch, uh, I made this for New Year's uh, for myself, my fiance, and a few of our friends a couple nice. years ago. And you were looking at the recipe amount. Uh, oh my like, god, when, yeah. When we were going wow. over the recipe. It is, it is a large amount of alcohol, and I didn't realize that when I started making I it. I just got a text from your fiance as soon as you said fiance. Uh oh, that's really, that's really funny. Hey yo. <laughs> but um, I, uh, so I went to go make this cocktail, and it was a large, large amount of alcohol. Bro. And uh, we ended up making it for four people. And mm -hmm. that initial recipe that I showed you, it's like, like it's like gallons. it's like thirty. I think it's like twenty five cups worth of liquor. There. Well, not worth of liquor, worth of like volume of the punch. Liquor. And and this is a powerful drink. It's not like I don't know what the alcohol content is, but it's it's powerful. Oh yeah. Uh, and we made it for four people, and that was probably the most hungover I've ever been. The next. Day. Oh my god, I can only that. imagine that. I had a, I had a stock pot that was probably about this tall <laughs> that was full to the brim. It was at least like two gallons worth of punch. For four of us. Yeah, and for at least for, in our case powerful. here, like I don't have bowls big enough, and they're certainly not engraved with metal or crystal or anything like that. So what I had to do is I I, I got to cut the recipe down in half. Excuse me, just for a moment here. I'm trying to make sure that I get the full name that was put there, so I can put it up on the board. It's so weird looking at myself. Knight. Knight was the last name there. Marilyn Knight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you're tripping on things, don't worry, it's not your fault at all. <laughs> it's totally like, y'all can't see the kind of shit that's back here, but there's yoga blocks and Kool-Aid jammers and a pine an entire pineapple back here. And can um, I have Kool-Aid? You, would you like Kool-Aid? Yeah! You can have Kool-Aid. <laughs> Dom stars in Texas now, but also lived in Chicago once. So you live near Westchester, if you know where that is. Oh, uh, I know where Westchester? Yeah, I know where that is. All right. I think it's cocktail time. Sure. Let's do it. Is it cocktail time? Well, I gotta get a, I gotta we get gotta a, get a juice box first. I gotta get a juice box. Anybody else want a juice box from <laughs> down here? Uh, I'll take one. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! It's a full pouch. Of, well, because like I, I have another cocktail that I wanted to make. It was supposed to be Hanukkah themed, and I don't have all the ingredients for it. So I tried to see if I can do a mocktail. Oh, here you go. Do it nicely to you. Okay, I'm gonna switch it over my other screen over here, and I have a recipe that I've. I've dinned down by a half for Philadelphia Fish House Punch. We're gonna need some bowls. I think I have some bowls over on the table. Bowls. I think total, bowls. we can make a quarter of the recipe in each of them. And essentially the idea is we're gonna put it all, I think you just mix it, you just put it all yeah, in the thing, Yeah, right? you, you just mix it all together. Awesome, awesome. We can, uh, we can each make a quarter. That'll be really cute. I like that idea, it it's very, very yeah. nice. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Two Step says, Merry Chrysler, everybody. I don't drive cars. The only, the only car we had was rammed into and now, now I don't drive anymore, at least for the interim. All right, so the first thing it looks like that we need, so I, oh, there was a passage in the book. Do we want to read the passage oh, in the yes, book? Oh, yes, I almost forgot I think it'd be a good idea. <clears throat> so, I think I have most of it here, but I don't know if it typed it out wrong. I used AI to get the, the so words in there. So this is a reading from the Book of Punch. I'm reading from the Book of Punch, <laughs> David Wondrich. So, in the name uh, of the cocktail and the other two. So a reminder that his other book is called Imbibe, which he, uh, he, re he references in this commentary. Um, so having written about this, the most enduringly famous of American punches in both Esquire drinks and imbibe, I wasn't planning to do so in this book. But writing a book about punch without including Fish House Punch just didn't seem right. As I was pondering that, a reader of imbibe fortuitously sent me a newspaper article she had come across with the oldest recipe for this foundational American drink yet discovered. It dates to 1795, so this is old. Way back then, yeah, founding father's time. Real old. If we are to believe the Philadelphia Telegraph, which found it sandwiched between the leaves of a history of what is now America's oldest club in the library of a noted local bibliophile. Hey guys. Hi, everybody. Hey guys. Hello. Our <laughs> other participants have arrived. <laughs> Continuing uh, on with the scripture. It, it agrees in every major detail anyway, with the one Jerry Thomas printed from Charles Godfrey Leland, a Philadelphia lawyer who was a member or citizen of the state of Schuylkill the Philadelphia Fishing Club responsible for unleashing it upon the world. So again, that was from the Schuylkill Fishing Club in downtown Philadelphia, right along the Schuylkill River, which kind of cuts Philadelphia straight down the middle. Anybody out there, if you can spell Schuylkill without looking it up, I will, I'll eat a lemon. I'll probably eat a lemon anyway. Like, I'll do it, I swear. It's very hard to spell. It's it's true. Like, you can give it your best shot. Like, even, I you even if I was cheating, I probably couldn't spell it. I, I'm just, I, like, I, know that there's, I know that there's a Y in there somewhere, and I just can't remember where. So this was this was found between the pages of a 
local librarian's uh, like no like notebook from that day. Back that's in that like day, that's so. like the coolest thing too. Like it, yeah. I find that like it's so interesting to consider like what kind of mark that just certain pieces of like literature and whatnot like leave on society. And it's interesting to think that this small little piece of like newspaper that was kind of wedged between like the folds of I guess somebody's library book just happened to be like the thing that the founding fathers like drank and you in you know and whatnot. The whole part of history. I'm not a big history talker, but like that is astounding to me. One of the other interesting parts of this book is he gives the recipe like verbatim how it was on like that the old like source that he found oh it. man so, that's so, cool so it might back back in the day they used to use really weird measurements mm -hmm. for, for cocktails so like they wouldn't necessarily say ounces or pints or, or anything or pints. like that yeah you know they'd say like a half like half cup but it's like how, how what is a half cup that i think when i first then? looked into the recipe the, the, when you gave me pictures of the book i was like i don't know what these i don't know what these conversions are when yeah I think about it. so so the interesting thing is he gives the verbatim version but then mm -hmm. in the notes he's like this is actually how much you should use yeah in yeah. like current measurement terms today so mm -hmm. he he kind of takes those old recipes he tested them a ton in his own house oh yeah and he basically is like okay what does this mean because it's, it's impossible to figure out these old recipes like oh my gosh some yeah. of them let me say no, nobody random. alive like i was like there to be able to tell us nowadays like how it actually was right exactly and I guess the records are just not good enough to be able to like keep it all up at that point. Yeah, I'd, so we do it the best we can. I can find it later. There's there's a million examples in here of oh, yeah. like just ridiculous uh, measurements of stuff like yeah. like dram like they, they use oh drams the drams and, and stuff yeah uh, like their pint was like an allspice dram but yeah, it's a measurement instead. The, the pint that they used was a different pint than oh, really? that we use nowadays because oh. it, it was like a different measurement that they. Were I hope I didn't to. do my I hope I didn't do my measuring incorrectly. No, no, no. This <laughs> this one was fine. This is yeah, the actual yeah, this, this is the actual pint thing. Anyways, yeah, so this this is a really, really great book. I know I've been talking about it a lot, but like I love it's Dave totally Blanc worth it. Stuff. Yeah. It's a it's a really, really great resource, especially if you're a cocktail nerd. Oh yeah. Like, like I am. I, I love reading about this stuff. Yeah, and I think I've heard of David Wondrich a lot in like in sort of like my travels and stuff like that, if you can even call it that. Like I think like Greg from How to Drink talks about David Wondrich a lot. Yeah. And like, that's a great, so that's a great that's a great YouTube channel. Oh, absolutely. I love I love Greg. Did you he's, did he's you great. catch his most recent video? I didn't see the most recent one. He did a bunch of go he did a bunch of like Dragon Ball cocktails and stuff. And I had stopped watching him for a while because he's the kind of guy who puts up a lot of hot takes and stuff. And sometimes I was like, you know, I need to cool off from Greg from How to Drink. But he, he also, came back up and I was just like, all right, all right, takes, we're back at it The again. takes also get hotter the more he drinks. Oh my so. gosh, it's incredible. <laughs> yeah, this guy actually kind of gets like drunk on his show and stuff. And you can kind of see like how many episodes he's kind of been in for the day already. And apparently if you sub to him on Patreon or something, I think you get all the outtakes and whatnot. I have yet to do so. I don't think I'm ready for old, like full frontal Greg. My, my favorite episode of that show was when he did the blind vodka taste. Did you Ooh, see, did I did. You see that yeah, one? I did see that it's, one. It's a bit of an older one. I think yeah, it came yeah. out during the pandemic. Um, yeah, and I want to say like it's it's really it's almost impossible to tell the difference. Well, so interestingly, he was Some able to, he was able to tell the really shitty ones mm -hmm. apart, mm -hmm. like the ones that were he like you know just almost threw up like when he drank them. Oh yeah, so bad. yeah. But it was interesting that like some of the very high end ones compared to like Tito's, mm -hmm. which we all know Tito's is a great it's vodka very good for vodka. mixing, very, just very because good. It, like one it's made in America, which is great. But Heck yeah. Um, two, it, and they have dogs. They're, yes, they, they support the dogs, dogs, which is great. But it's actually a very very good uh, vodka. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that. But my, my father's favorite vodka is Tito's. Yeah, it's like, great. It's, it's and it's no substitute. And it's, a, and it's affordable too, which is it's awesome. True, yeah. It's so not it was, that bad. It was I interesting. Think I got some Tito's down here. Yeah. It's it was it was interesting his comparison like blind mm -hmm. to like the really high end like uh like high end Belvedere and like Grey Goose is Grey still Goose kind of expensive. Stuff. Yeah. There was like some some fancy uh like small brand bottles that were like hundreds of dollars that he had yeah well. i don't think i remember it in as much detail but i remember somebody saying that supposedly like i think costco brand kirkland like Kirk, vodka is Kirk, made in the kirkland. same distilleries as like gray goose so supposedly they're like yeah basically the same vodka but you know they're cheap in comparison yeah so anyways fascinating stuff all right indeed let's get to our punch let's do some punch guys <laughs> okay so i think i think i'm not sure what the best way of or i guess i should just follow the instructions you know so it says to begin our punch recipe you have to begin by dissolving sugar a pound should do unless you like your punch very sweet in the lemon or lime juice so i think we need lemon and or lime juice you know now that i think about it i went to the store and i bought a shit ton of lemons and a shit ton of limes and i wonder if we can do both ones with lemons and ones with and limes it. and compare it oh man I think that'd, be a good idea. that'd be fantastic i like that that's idea. a great idea all right so i got i got some citrus squeezes here if you're so inclined i have a cutting board as well we're gonna go for we're gonna, we're gonna cut some citrus up okay cut a lot of citrus Ooh. By the way, if anybody uh, following the stream while we're making this has any cocktail questions in particular, feel free to ask us because we are 
always game to mm -hmm. uh, answer questions you guys have about cocktails. Even if I don't know anything, anything at all, we've got Google to help us out. And honestly, like I know there's cocktail enthusiasts out there as well who know a lot more than the both of us combined, probably even multi multiplicatively. The good so thing, you've got though, some tips. The good thing though is we sound like we know what we're talking about. It's all about confidence. So, yeah. That's what it's all about. You wouldn't have if I was not telling the truth, no one would have believed me. Right. So. Right. <laughs> okay. So I think I have a. How do we want to do this? I know limes give a little bit, about maybe an ounce or so of juice, and I think the lemon's a little bit more. I think maybe if we do a certain number of citrus things, then perhaps we'll go from there. What do you think? I have, it says here, the recipe calls for a cup of lemon or a lime juice. Or I guess I also have a measuring cup. Let's just use a measuring cup. Use a measuring cup. We can, Funny boy. What we can do is just, we do it in the bowl. Do it in the bowl, mm -hmm. and then you can just, one of us can pour it into this. Oh, back into there. Yeah, just to make sure you got a cup worth. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, because that way we're not we'll, like vying for space yeah, and stuff. Yeah, because I think we'll get close. Absolutely. I will take the lemons. All right, lemons it is for Eric over here, and I will take the limes. Yeah, I have bag? a big old bag of citrus over there. It's in a wonderful little like beach bag. And I think, actually, Glenn, could you help us? Out. Yeah, I can do that. I'm gonna hand us lemons and stuff, or actually we can bring it right over here. Oh, got my big old my big old bag of citrus. There are oranges in here. We've got limes in here. Eric's gonna take some lemons to start off with. I'm gonna you grab got, a few limes. I'm just gonna take them all out. Do you got a spare lime in there? Got a spare lime? Take this. He's gonna go do some tequila shots on the side. <laughs> what are you doing, man? Salting the rim and salting <laughs> my mouth. I should have wanted to now. All right. So did you, that recipe that you have on there, did you um, adjust that for the amount we were going to make? Yeah, so I cut it pretty much about in half. I am under the impression, according to an Amazon description, that these bowls here are 64 ounces a piece. So that should be about a quarter of the recipe. And I'm just hoping, I'm just hoping that like, I can believe them. Cause like, if this was, this was kind of like from that kind of shadier part of Amazon where like, there wasn't too many reviews. Like all of the reviews that were there were kind of non Dark, dark, and dark Amazon. It's just kind of like, like, I don't know. Like, do I really believe that this user's honest opinion was great works I mean, like it's a punch bowl like how does it not not work i'm gonna try extremely hard not to get lemon juice on your microphone here you know what we'll try the best that we can honestly so this microphone over here is i think the first microphone that i got i specifically upgraded to the one that's over on my desk over there so if this guy's gotta go tonight then that's just how it's gotta be by the way i also have a bucket over there that we're going to use for kind of the discard our citrus peels and stuff like that I don't have a, a very reliable way to... Let's Actually, put it... You want to put it next to the here? Yeah, put it back me here. Thank you, Lycos. There we go. Boop. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. This is a lot of citrus. Oh my god, it's so much. Because And keep in mind, we are doing what half of the recipe calls for. It's true. There's think, supposed to be so much. I, I bought enough, I guess, for the entire recipe. So here we are. <laughs> if we need it, we'll make it. But <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah, I think. Here winds up getting us to the night. If if you if you ever want to make this recipe at home, uh, I think this would probably comfortably serve like 15 people. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. At, well, well y'all can do the math of 25 cups. And there's about, I think, two, oh my God, I think two pints worth of liquor, I think, in there. Yeah. I think it might, might be even more. I could just be misquoting the, uh, misquoting the ratio well, there. That's also why I was saying it's, this is a pretty powerful drink. Oh my gosh, um, yeah. It's, it's not like, oh, this is some nice Hawaiian punch with a little bit of vodka in it. No, hmm, it's, no, it's vodka with a little bit of Hawaiian punch in it. Yeah, that's actually a better <laughs> way to look at it. <laughs> and it's interesting too, when you, when you were talking about how like the various different, like the, um, the kind of way that they describe the recipes in there is kind of different because of the times or otherwise. I remember when I was looking through like what ingredients that I needed to buy, it wasn't super duper specific about what particular brands you needed to buy because I'm sure the branding is different now than it was back in the 1700s. But like, for example, one of the ingredients is the best peach brandy. And I was like, well, Eric, like, what do, you, what do you mean the best peach brandy? Like, what do you think I should go for this? And apparently, like, when you made it, it was just kind of like with whatever cheap stuff that you can get, and it's still like a great recipe. Yep, it just gave me a wicked hangover. Oh my god! So I think I think the better the alcohol you get, the least bad the hangover is going to be. I wonder if there I wonder if there's like studies behind that. I'd be like, quality alcohol produces a more favorable hangover than alcohol that is otherwise from the from the alleyways. My, my tubs of the city. My fiance absolutely loved this cocktail. And then after we made it for that New Year's that I told you about, oh, yeah? uh, she will not drink it anymore. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> I've been traumatized from how good this was. And so good and how bad that is. How good the drink was and how bad the hangover yeah. was. <laughs> well, I'm going to do a little deposit. Yeah, let me do a little Ooh. measure here and see how I'm doing. Where did the measuring yes. cup go? I got a measuring cup right over here. Let's see, how, let's see how I'm doing. I'm not, I know I'm not even close yet. I just want to see where I'm at. Yeah, absolutely. That's about, no, that's actually not too I bad. Definitely, we're, I definitely doing one, we're doing one cup. We are doing, let me make sure I check that. It is one cup each of the, the lime or, yeah, lime or 
So oh. one cup into each of our bowls. Right? Yes, okay. exactly, okay. exactly. Cool. I need to, I have to, I need to like keep my, oh, keep my little thing here. <laughs> Y'all making popcorn down there? They are. Ooh. Also, I had a, I popcorn. I had a horrible. Oh my goodness, I forgot that I had channel point redemptions are. Work that body, says MK Bryce. Do some hand flicks. I'm cutting limes over here, dude. You're trying to make me hurt people here. We don't want him to hurt himself. I don't want to hurt myself. I'm gonna do it anyway. Do some hand flicks. I'll, I'll do them between my lime squeezes. So here's some, I think hand flicks. How do I do hand flicks? Hand flicks. This is me <laughs> flicking my hands. I'll do a couple of these like, these limes. So acidic. They make my hands feel wow. That's the lime. Yeah. If you're Quality so inclined lines. to do some exercises too, Eric, like by all means, yeah. We, we're both dating PT students, so. That, that is true. That's very, very true. <laughs> You gotta risk your life for the channel points, dude. If I have to swing, here's the statement I was gonna make. If I have to swing around knives while um, playing around with citric acid heavy citrus, then that's just how it has to be. Uh, that's what I would have said. Um, but instead I'm gonna say, mm. ooh, I need more citrus. I gotta go down for more, some more lime. In case we're moving a little slow over here, it's because we have absolutely no space to work with. That's like, it's, it's my fault, but it's also like the fault of my wallet because I'm not paying I'm not paying more than 2k a month for an apartment in Philadelphia. No thanks. I don't want it. We don't need the space. We don't need that. We don't need the space that much. We're doing. We're doing well. <laughs> I'll get a studio instead. <laughs> All right, that is exactly a cup. Like Ooh, that. perfect, perfect, perfect. It's legitimately kind of smelled like a movie theater in this apartment. Uh -huh. It's kind of awesome. <laughs> yeah, lemon juice and. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> it's, the, it's the tears. I think when I'm smelling it, the tears. All right, I gotta. Do you have like a, a slotted spoon or something back here? I can get these. Uh... A what spoon? Like I got some bar spoons. Or a bar spoon. Yeah. Just to get the Absolutely. seeds out of here. That's, that's a big one. Seeds. Watch yourself. That's got spokes on the end of it. <laughs> it's, like, it's like supposed to be like a trident. I picked it up at like a... Dude, you get you can, you can stab olives so well with that. Oh my god, yeah. No, it works so well. And you know, I've never had olives in a bowl this big before. But you know what? Uh, now that we have it... We're not putting olives in here. No olives. No olives. No. That would... I promise. Actually, I don't even have any olives. I think the Good. worst thing I have is the cocktail onions. That would that would compromise the punch I'm Oh my god. <laughs> is this a hint of brine I taste in my punch? Uh, why, yes, George. Yes, it is. It's terrible. <laughs> I forgot. I gotta do some more hand flicks. I'm gonna, I'm gonna right, squeeze the rest of these a, limes and do some more hand flicks. Take a, take a measure here and see how you're doing. I like you're getting, that idea. you need a little. I actually, am a little just, close. Ooh. Yeah, you gotta. Ooh, I mean, there we go. There we go. That's how much you need. So, Ooh. I tend, I tend to do things rather blindly and without realizing how far I'm at. So let's, let's do this. We're, 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 we're being a little sciencey today. Sciencey. I am. You're almost there. About two thirds. Yeah, you need about four or five more probably. Got a couple more limes. Excellent. Got a lot of oranges. Oh yeah. I grabbed, I don't know why I grabbed oranges. I don't think any of any of the cocktail recipes tonight call for oranges, only orange peels. And those are the separate oranges that I have on the counter over there. Yeah, the peels we'll use for the Manhattan's layer. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Very nice. good garnish. Oh, hand flicks. How are those limes, how are those limes tasting? I have a vault. You have a vault? I'm sorry, please explain like this. Um, you wanna pop up here and share with the rest of the crowd? Sure. So, um... Hey everybody, it's famous YouTuber, streamer, Lycos Lur, aka Glenn. What's up, dude? Eat your limes. You could have also walked in front of the bar, too. Well, well, <laughs> so whatever you want to do. Little further. Come on, closer. 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 I wanted to be kind and courteous, so. Oh boy. Oh, I totally got the guys don't know. First off, hi, I'm Lycos like Lur. Hey guys, Lycos like Lur here, and welcome to I'm Raiding Cameron's Bar because I'm being an asshole today. Pandering. What are you doing calling yourself out here? Anyhow. So, uh, normal thing I do is, I'm an absolute heretic, I see a lemon and I eat the thing whole, like Ryan and all, like kind of as you see here. It's great, it's delicious. I, I wouldn't think get either of you can do this. I can do I'm not, I'm not interested. Let's see how much, do how many donations we get. I'll put a lime in so, my mouth. I eat the whole thing whole and then take like 20 minutes so to bite it off. So normally I could only do that with lemons. But Hi Cameron. Hi mom. Now I can do this with limes. Yeah. What else is she They're all good, man. Mm. Hi, Cameron. Oh, I read that one already. Hello again, Mom. <laughs> I forgot you were there. Dad's here, too. Hi, Dad! <laughs> AKA Father. My family tunes into these things, too. You see, that's the thing about the holiday season. Everybody family can come together, together for, a, for a common goal. The common goal being to help me get through. Are you doing your food. hand flex? I, who, also, I'm getting out of here. Uh, I'm uh, like, it's, it's a little tight, a little tight yeah, back here. Yeah, it's a little tight there. <laughs> Cameron, I like watching you squeeze juice out of limes. Dude, why you gotta be so exclusive? Eric's doing his damnedest over here with the lemons. But I was doing lemons though, not limes. Specif <laughs> specifically true. limes he likes. Brandon is here as well. My God, the whole family is there. I love you all. I love you all so much. But you know what? I, I would close. love you more if you donate to the cause. I'm kidding. 
<laughs> that, is, that is not, that would not make me love you anymore. Well, actually, well, I guess it would make it me wouldn't love you more. It wouldn't make you love her any but less. But, like, if, I love, if I'm already at 100% and I love you more, we're still at 100%, so the difference is negligible. But it's not how math works. What is the concept of infinity anyways? We need a couple more. Okay. Let me do, we're let me do a there. quick measure. We're getting there. We're going to have to show a shot of this uh, trash bin at the end here. Oh, my gosh. How, how many pure citrus, 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 citrus we have. <laughs> trash bin happening. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're we're actually, we're pretty much good. good. Yeah. We got our arm. All right. Mega CS also likes watching Eric squeeze juice out of the lemon. You spelled his name wrong, you <laughs> dummy. You it's forgot a, the K. It's with a K. It's with a K, you silly. It's one of my pet peeves when people spell my name with a C. Because then they, you know what they try to do to fix it? Oh, yeah? They put a little line next to the C. <laughs> it's to try just to make like, it look like this is not. This is not right here. It's so half assed. <laughs> okay. So I think what we'll do is um, I don't think we need to squeeze any more lime for this stuff. So no, I, I think, think we're good. For the sake of saving space, we're going to take the squeezers and put them into the bucket as well. I think we have a lot of helpers here, so I don't have to feel like I have to like keep track of everything. Hey, Plenty Boy, could you could you be a deer Boy, and do a, little bit of, do a little bit of clean? I appreciate you greatly. So he was you, also like, very citrusy. Actually these, come here, come here. <laughs> come here, you Star Wars, you Santa Claus hat tall boy. Hey, man, you give me a <laughs> Today, Glenn is my bitch. And Eric's as well. And mine. At least for the purposes of this. Okay. Uh, do you actually want these washed? I, if you can give a little clean off, I think it'll be perfect. And like, <laughs> dispose of the citrus somehow. They're quite sticky. Very sticky. Dude, I'm gonna eat the citrus. Fuck. You don't need some. <laughs> how, how are your fans feeling right now? Do you think we want to like, kind of make them less sticky? Or you want to just yeah, go with it? Let's just keep going. Let's go with it. We, All got, right. we got sugar to deal with here now. All right, so the next thing that we need. So after you hmm. add in the lemon and lime juice and oleo sacrament's also not a bad idea here. Use the peel of 12 lemons in, in use the peel of 12 lemons. Oh, we need to add peel. Peel of lemons. Yes. Interesting. Oh my God. I'm glad that I grabbed more lemons. I only have one peeler. So apple. first off, so I'm gonna we're gonna reference the notes in the recipe because I don't think you have the notes in here. Oh, did I? Oh, oh you do. I no, think you, I do. You do. You do. do. No, no. There we go. There we go. Oh, I was reading no. the original one. Yeah. Right? So no, go back up. Okay. Okay. So everything on the right there is basically what we have to do. Yes. Because that's perfect. that's David that's David Wondrich's uh, direction. The directions. You on the right side here? Yep. Okay. Perfect. So, so yeah, we apparently got so, the peel. So, of so yes. So we're gonna dissolve the sugar next. Okay. Before perfect. we do the peel. Before we do the peels. Yep. Oh. Oh, begin by dissolving the sugar into the thing. All right, perfect. Because so, we need, yeah, because it, it'll get all gunked up on the peel if we don't do that. That's a fair point. Okay, so we're gonna need about a pound of <laughs> best loaf sugar each. We probably, we probably the should. Yeah, sugar. a pound of sugar. To so it's a pound of sugar total. Okay. Oh no, for, four e for pounds. each one, I think, right? Yeah. So, but, so that, that was the, total, so, so forgot he, said, he says in the recipe though, one pound should do. Oh, unless because you so, like your. Because remember, oh, this okay. is one, this is one of those examples of where loaf mm. sugar back in the day was, was like very, very like was low, weak. It was weak sugar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're gonna use one pound total, which means we need a half cup, a half pound each. Okie dokie. So That's half right. a pound of sugar. Or, so we're, we're cutting the whole recipe in half though, right? Yes, whole recipe okay, in so, half, and we're so, splitting it in two. So, so we need a quarter, quarter pound each. Quarter pound each of that. Okay, cool. I have math. a little measuring, I have a measuring thing quick in maths. there that we can use. I think. That, was, that was some quick maths on stream right there, you That's saw good it. good stuff. Usually I fall very short of that. I don't have my calculator up here. So we got a little scale oh, here okay. that should work pretty well. I also have an actual body weight scale down there, but I think that's a little this much. Be, this would be okay. Indeed. And then Perfect. Where's your sugar? So sugar in this bag here, it's fresh. Okay. It hasn't been opened yet. It's pure cane sugar. It's not, it is the best loaf sugar that I could find. And it's a pretty I'm, damn good I'm one. I actually would love this stuff. Oh my God, he'd be like, this is so good. It's so much better than I realized I didn't put a special snowflake up there for that so gift. So put... Oh, I forgot to mention, Dom went to bed. Good night, Dom. We'll see you in the morning. I forgot to acknowledge that comment. Do I apologize. We have a plate or something. We can get access to something Dude, very or large. Or how about a paper plate or something? New container, how about? Yeah, no, that's fine too. Okay. Just something dry. About, something dry. Okay. dry. Do you think that this cactus container, which does not contain Let's the see. Let's see. Put it on there and tear that out. All right. We'll see how close we get to a quarter pound. Let's also move this to... to uh, I think we... Or maybe if I turn it off and on again. It's on ounces right now. Yeah. I don't think it does pounds, unfortunately. <laughs> there might be different units in there. CT. Grams. Gs. GNs. Ounces. Well, here, we can do quick some quick math. So there's... Alexa, yeah. how many ounces are in a pound? It should be 12 ounces. Or 16 ounces. 16 ounces. 16! So four ounces of sugar four each. Four ounces of sugar each. Perfect. Which actually is not that much. 
So here we go. Oh my goodness, Purple Intent just dropped a follow? How is this even possible? I thought Purple Intent was right here. I think Grace must be using my account. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> Thank you, Purple. To the anonymous body out there that is Purple. Thank you kindly. So I also realize all that's behind here's me. Here's your okay. chalice of four ounces of sugar. In the cactus container it shall be. Would you like it in your punch? Or shall be yeah, I give it to you. All right, it goes into the lime punch container. All right, and then we'll the we're gonna one. do another four. Here we go. All right, so after this, go ahead and stir that. And get, it, get that all nice and... Uh, I'm gonna grab me. Situated there. And grab me a stirring spoon. Luckily, I don't have to worry about like scratching crystal or metal or anything. It's a piece of plastic. If it gets scratched, whatever. We're probably, we're probably it. throwing it out after the stream. It's probably so. <laughs> it's just gonna get all grody and dirty, and I don't think I got space in my dishwasher for that. We're incorporating our lime into the sugar, or the other way around. Bar spoon, you blazer. Bar spoon? Oh! Funny boy, what happened to the other bar? Ooh, there we go. Look at that. Squeaky clean. I only have two bar spoons. I, I cannot find first. the other ones. Purple and Ted over here just creeping, creeping in two locations at once. That's I'm, wild. I'm on, I'm on, on camera and in the uh, metaverse. That's downright, downright magical. This dude's got one hand behind, just typing on his memoir. One hand stirring up his cocktail. Taking a sweet old time to like get it all incorporated in there. Yeah, as long as it's close, that's yeah. the important thing. That looks good to me. I imagine there'll be more liquid in there too. Now it does mention in the recipe if you want to at this point you can use an oleo saccharum instead uh, of the mixture that we're doing. So yeah. that's that's mm -hmm. kind of the, the difference between the two. Oh, I see. Because otherwise, so essentially with the oleo saccharum, you're kind of taking the sugar and ripping it from the the peels yeah. of the lime. Where in this case, we're taking lime juice and just kind of incorporating. Well, no. It so you're, you're taking the sugar and using it to take the oils out. Yeah. Of the lime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the limes because it's basically doing an organic extraction. Osmosis. Well, it's not quite osmosis. Oh, it's not. It's, okay. Yeah, it's it's different more, process. Yeah, it's more of like an organic extraction, pulling the oils out of the um the peel. Well, because I guess the because the sugar in this case is dry in comparison to the oils. The oil wants to like surround things that can absorb it. Yeah, so and the, the, the molecular case. structure of the two are different. Like water, like osmo Ooh. osmosis happens via water. Oh, the, really? The, oh, because like the, it's the individual compounds in the, the water that wind up like yeah, kind the, of seeping into each other. The oils in the uh, lemon are in the lemon peel are fat mm. technically like they're they're oh you're right they're, they're totally are they're lipid yeah so that's why like when you soak um lemon peels in vodka mm -hmm. um for a long time <laughs> you get limoncello that's how you, that's how you make meat limoncello oh. or at least that's the first part of it then you have to have sugar see. and stuff but yeah it, there's also it, a little it, vanilla it, there too or am i thinking of something else no oh no vanilla and limoncello yeah, yeah no no vanilla. it's just mm. it's just sugar it's, cool. it's just sugar water and then the extracted mm. uh i guess they distill lemon. it a bit no, it's not no, no, still at all. Just like really, really high percentage alcohol, yeah, and you just you usually start with. like grain alcohol, like uh, Ever Everclear or something like that. I got a bit of Everclear behind this bar. Um, and make some uh, limoncello someday. It's very flammable too. <laughs> oh yes, it is. Oh, I know that for a fact. Extremely flammable. All right. Okay, cool. So we so, need lemon peels, I believe, too, right? Yeah. So we probably should have peeled those other lemons that we juiced already, but that's okay. Well, we have a lot of extra. We lemons. got more citrus around here. Where the citrus bag go? Citrus, citrus bag. bag. Citrus bag is boy. Thank you. Thank you. So it says 12 lemons. I wonder if I have 12 lemons left in here. I have so many oranges. Let's see. I'm going to start pulling out lemon. Do you think he requires the entire lemon to be peeled? No. Okay. Maybe just as many as we got. I'm going to see how many lemons I got in here. I got three so far. I got four so far. I got five so far. Oh, there's a sixth one in here. That's definitely not a yellow lime. It's actually just a lemon. Okay, okay. Oh, there's another one in there somewhere. Oh, there's eight. All right. One more. And that'll, uh, be, that'll be enough. Two more. You it's, think we need more than C7? So, so remind me again, the, that amount was... The amount is for... It's for... Half the recipe? Half the recipe. Okay, yeah. so... So we need... If it's supposed to be 12, six, six, about three each. So let's just do three each. That's fine. That sounds like great. Yeah, that's perfect. I only have one peeler, unfortunately. Uh, so we're going to have to share that. Okay. Alrighty then. Actually, actually, actually... Downstairs! Hey, downstairs? Yeah. Is there a, can y'all get a peeler for me? I think there's one down there. Yeah. Thank you, crew. I believe there is another one, and it's not it's not like this one, which is like the kind of like side peeling thing. It's like the ones where you like you go like this instead. How much more how much more do we have of the recipe? Uh, we have to add all the alcohol still. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that feels like it's the easy part. <laughs> There's no alcohol in here yet. So I'm just going to completely peel this lemon. I'm very bad at the peelage, but I'm going to try my best. All right, so we got my fancy one and we got the other one. Ooh, give Eric the fancy one. 
Okay, he deserves it. Zoodler. He's the guest star. Thank you. I'm here all the time. This looks dangerous. It is dangerous. Oh my god, is that the fucking zoodler? Yeah, that's the zoodler. Oh my god, it's the zoodler. So one side does like zoodle, and the other side just does peeling, so. Okay. It's incredible. We picked up this particular apparatus at the Philadelphia Flower Show one year, and it, they like were kind of the salesman type where they're just like, oh man, it does everything. It zoodles your potatoes. It zoodles your zucchinis. You can even zoodle a, a potato, which I already mentioned. It can also zoodle watermelons, uh, as I tested one time. And I was like, oh my god. I did. I zoodled the watermelon, and it totally worked. It's gonna like zoodle my finger. It can here. zoodle everything. Seriously, it's very dangerous. Watch out. And so, apparently on the back of the box it says like, you can like call in for like like your lifetime warranty which i tried to do however the company is defunct it does not exist anymore like so i think they were probably just like working off of this huge like warehouse supply of these apparatuses and just keep going back to the convention or uh, the festival every single year trying to get rid of them all because the i can company see, I can see that anymore. oh yeah one uh wh it's one, useful, one quick uh point we can talk about while we are zesting these lemons absolutely there's two parts to a piece of uh citrus zest Oh, oh the, the, I guess the outer layer yep. and the pith in the center, yep. right? So there's the, there's the outer layer and then the pith. So the pith, if you guys can see on screen here, the kind of wider it's parts. a very white Yeah. Uh, if we If we want to zoom in at all, like I can totally do that. I need my... Yeah, yeah. give that a shot if you can. Where did I put my remote? Oh no, where's my remote? My dad. Where'd it go? Where's my remote at? Hmm. So while we're, while we're just looking for that, they're in, my remote in, a, oh my God. In, a, in a citrus. Oh, it's field. right up in there. There we go. Where is it? Okay. Here it is. There we go. Let's get a view of this. So if you if you wanna if you do the T, yeah. you can zoom in and then out. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's see here. T T T. Ooh. T. Oh, here we go. Get a nice zoom in on this lemon over Ooh. here. Okay. So I peeled this lemon. Is that as far as it goes, probably? Oh, it keeps on going. Oh, it keeps on going. You just gotta. It's um. It's infrared, so you gotta point it at the camera. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're taking a look at this lemon here. So on the Inside of the lemon, you have your your nice yellow outside. That's where all the really uh, tasty lemon oils reside inside the lemon. Mm. Inside of the lemon, before you get to the actual fruit, there's this white layer. This is called the pith. Um, piths are generally very bitter. There's a lot of bitter flavors in there. Oh yes. Um, and it's not as big of a deal uh, when you're using it in a fresh application, mm -hmm. um, but it's a, it is a really big deal when you're cooking with. Uh, citrus. That makes sense because it makes it kind of unpleasant, like right. really, really bitter. Yeah. So if you're adding, it, or if you're grating it really fine, that's the other. Mm, that's so a fair if, point. So if, yeah. you, so if you use a microplane to grate zest, um, it can get super duper duper bitter uh, mm. when you if you include the pith. So whenever you're peeling this stuff, do your best to get as little of this white portion as possible. Um, because that's going to add the bitter flavors to your drinks, and uh, it's not going to be as delicious. Yeah. Um. So that's your that's your lemon lesson for the day <laughs> i kind of I, i'm still working on my shaving technique here i'm just really happy that i haven't nicked my finger yet tell me when to stop here let's good? see right uh, a little bit more let's do a little bit more that i think is good okay that looks good to me gorgeous Perfect. all right so we're going to continue to peel you've got better lines. eyesight than i do from here so <laughs> dude my so eyesight is so it. bad anyways oh um, my gosh that's why i'm wearing these coke bottle glasses purple says this is better than the food network i know eric i know i know <laughs> i'm sure that is my lovely fiance grace <laughs> yes 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 all right cool i got all my lemon peels in there I, I if i had to grade my own work i would say it's a salad to sound like i think b minus there i definitely got some pith in there but that's just that's just how it's got to be i'm almost done i got one more to go perfect perfect i will so take while... these other lemons and they're still good so yeah we'll I'll use them in the bag. we'll use them why don't you go ahead and read the next direction? All right, let's go back to the next one. We've got... We're still doing quick maths here. because we're, <laughs> we're adjusting on the fly. In and by the... Uh, duh, whoa, David Wonder, it's filled a fair amount of incrementing the loss of various old-time ingredients and coming up with clutches to work around their absence. Since then, we have been graced with such revenants as Batavia Iraq, Hollins, Old Tom Gin, Real Absinthe, Creme de Violet, and one or two others that he is forgetting. So he'll not despair about the loss of peach brandy and eau de vie of peaches distilled on the crushed pits and then left alone to slumber in oaken barrels for many years. Okay, this is going all into the, uh, the different mixture and stuff. Yeah. Last well, commercial to scale that we sang. da 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 Pitches. The last commercial of the show I know made it. Oh, so this is all about the peach brandy. You can't place the name to check the name of the bottle of Jack Daniels. They stopped making it in the 1940s. So who knows? There might be a bottle of it floating around somewhere. Good luck. You can keep the. All right. As for Cludges, three ounces of bonded Applejack. 0.99 ounces good. Ounce good. Oh, is good, I suppose. Imported peach liqueur. So I think the rest of it is. I think I it's just, we put in the I alcohol think, first and yeah, then the water? Yeah, I think it's just our mixture on the side now. All right, the, perfect. And then the, we also need to the, add the water. Do you think the, uh, the water lasts or. 
Uh, we, I guess I, liquor first, and then the, the the density of the liquor will kind of. I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters. We're just going to kind of mix everything, anyway, so. anyways. We probably should have added the water earlier, but whatever. It's working. Indeed, indeed. Okay, cool. So I guess. And again, the amounts you have on here is for half a recipe. This is for a half a recipe. So, so we're so dividing this, in, this half, in half. Then okay. it will be each for Great. each of the Okay. I have a a pitcher full of water. It's right next to Glenn's face over there, and that should be a total of ten cups of water. So if we split that in half, it's very very full. Please be careful. If we split that in half, right down the middle. Right then we'll be good. Yeah. If you want, you can use the uh, measuring cup here to. Indeed. Oh yes, here you go. Just to eyeball it. Absolutely, absolutely. We have the measuring cup. We will utilize the measuring cup. All right. And while we're talking about that, we'll also take these. We'll take these peelers off. I think we're yes. good. We're good on the peels. We don't need the sharpness here. Indeed, anymore. indeed. Cool. Thank, Thank you for helping with the cleanup. I don't think we need our measure. We'll put that back over there. We can. Thank you, thank you. Anywhere's good. And um, this cactus container served us well. And so Cam, do you have any do you have, in uh, interesting? Do you got a paper towels over there? Um, we got a little bit. I think they should be right behind oh, okay. the thing. Probably need more a little bit. Do you have any What's interesting it? commentary on the ingredient water? The ingredient water. So it's interesting. <laughs> when I think of this, the only thing that comes to mind is we're trying to do something about like I guess kind of making it a little more palatable. I would think it could also possibly be an excuse to try to like liven up the bowl, make it full with more stuff. Plus. I gotta think too, like, there's a certain amount of alcohol that you kind of want in a particular cup of your, your drinking. Otherwise, like, you know, you could fill up a whole, I imagine if you were to fill, take one of these bowls here and fill a whole chalice up with it, I would consider maybe that should be equivalent to like a drink or two. But if you didn't have the water in there and you still fill it up to the same volume, it's just, it's all booze and it's a lot of booze. Yeah. So I imagine this is kind of a way to kind of conserve the ingredients and stuff. Cause I suppose well, liquor was harder to get back then. Well, and all, all the other ingredients we're adding are like rum mm. and brandy mm. and cognac, which are Street all spirits. very, very, like two of those are distilled wines mm -hmm. and another is just a straight spirit so yeah if there was no water in this the alcohol content would be like pushing past 50 something percent oh my god i didn't strong. even consider that yeah, yeah. the mathematics so, behind it so so this dilutes it to an extent i think if i if i remember from calculating this previously i think this gets close to the uh, uh it's a little higher than like a strong wine Ooh, is, really? Is the alcohol content of this nice so i think stronger wines are usually on like the 20 like a 20 percent range yeah yeah I could I could do the math, but I don't want to. So. <laughs> no, I feel that. <laughs> got two cups so far. I'm gonna get two more cups, just about. And then and then the if I one more, and then you can just yeah. pour the I'm, whole rest of the pitcher in there. I'm glad we uh, split this in two because it Indeed. would not have fit into one of these. We were, we were talking about that before the stream. Oh my god, <laughs> if we yeah. could fit this. I, I literally one. figured out the the, um, the the remnants of stuff basically like 20 minutes before stream started because I was just like, we're doing punch first. I need the punch bowls. Those ain't big enough. <laughs> So I, I panicked for a moment, but we got it. Okay, so Step let's move here. on to the The liquor, the booze. mixture. So the other part of this is what, there's a piece of the recipe called the mixture. And the mixture is one part, or two parts Jamaican rum, to one part cognac brandy, to one part best peach brandy. Which I think the peach brandy, as we kind of kind of glossed over a little bit in there, was this like eau de vie distilled from like peach pits and stuff, which I definitely was not able to gain access to. But I do have peach brandy equivalent down here. I think it's just peach flavored brandy is what I got. Oh yeah. But um, I got me some cognac. Corvossier. Corvossier. I got the peach brandy down here too. Uh, not the in the back. There you are. Gotta reach down here. Everything's very tightly packed. This one is Paul Mason peach. I couldn't find anything else. And then we also need the Jamaican rum. I thought, I, I literally tried to find like the most accessible Jamaican rum and I could only find Myers. And that was the only thing that was apparently Jamaican in all of Fine Wine. Myers will work. As long as you use like a, this is a dark rum, right? Yes. Yeah, so as long as you're using a dark rum, that's the important part here. Um, even like, honestly, a Sailor Jerry's will oh, work in this probably. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Myers rum is perfect. Oh yeah, um, Myers rum is great. The, you just don't want to use like Bacardi in it, like a like, yeah, like a like, Bacardi white or yeah, anything. white because it just it doesn't lend the same type of flavor to. Well, the, also the that is not traditional. So oh, well, there we go, there we and go. I'm, I'm very big on tradition with these. Yeah, yeah. Because I think you want to try to stick to it as close as possible. Oh, uh, you put water plus matcha powder, make it hot. Okay. Yeah, that's how you do it. Matcha tea. It's true. Matcha tea. All right, let's pull up the amounts again here. Indeed, indeed. Uh, real quick though, I yes. see Disney Queen was here with a comment saying cocktails every week on Wednesdays. Who told you that? That's that's true. Cosmo says the stream is lemons, and Megacy says I thought this was an alcohol-free channel. No. In incorrect on several accounts. Incorrect. <laughs> we have so we have so a while half we're... a cup. 
So what I'd recommend we do here, just so we understand how these flavors are being developed, but we can add them let's one taste, by one. Yeah, let's taste each of these Ooh, individually. I or like that idea. Talk about the notes that we're I getting. I like that. Actually, I don't want to oxidize things. Let me go grab some Snickers. I got some Snickers down oh, here. Oh man! Oh, for this for this very high this end, very high end. <laughs> Paul Mason, Paul Mason peach branding. Oh my goodness! This yeah. is uh this this is like a bo this bottle is like what ten bucks? Oh my god, it's cheap. I think it was only yeah. like twelve. Yeah, twelve dollars. So <laughs> it's like I said, this will probably make you a little hungover. There's a big sift snifter. Thank you, sir. There you go. I got. What you want to start with the, the rum? And we shall. All I right. personally, I've had some Byers rum before. I like it. It's very, like, other people have called it molasses -y. And it wasn't until Woo! very recently that I actually put molasses in my mouth and tried it. And I would agree that it's very molasses -y. So I don't know how else to describe it aside from it's a very, very dark kind of sugar. It's almost smoky, but it's not quite smoky yet. Yeah. So, uh, interesting note on Jamaican rum. There's a couple of different types of Jamaican rum that you can use for these punch recipes. Mm -hmm. One of them is just like what you have here, like this just very traditional Jamaican rum. There's another type of Jamaican rum that's really hard to find, mm. uh, but is actually getting more and more popular with smaller distillers. Really? Um, and it's called Batavia Arak, which they oh they did mention that yeah yeah. So Batavia Arak is made uh, with a different sugarcane process. Okay. Um, and it's, it's the same sugarcane itself, but the process itself is different, so I yeah. guess it lends a different flavor. Yep. And uh, it was traditionally used in the West Indies, which is the Caribbean, right? Like back in the the days of like the pirates and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very yeah, very 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 traditional rum for that period of time. Mm -hmm. It was not made, so it was made a lot back in like the, the 16 and 1700s. Sure, yeah. Um, and then it was not made for like a couple hundred years. Damn. And just in the last like maybe 20 or 30 years. I'm gonna write down Batavia Rack so yeah. I remember this particular um, thing. There's been a lot more um, micro distillers that have started making it recently, and I'm blanking on the names of them at the moment. Uh, if anybody in chat knows uh, the names of any Batavia Rack makers, uh, let us know in chat. But. Dude, it's amazing that like the in the world that we live in now, like these little micro distillers come up and they can do pretty much whatever they want to. Which is which is awesome, and it brings a lot of like this historical stuff like back into the forefront, and people are just like, "Wow, where has this been all these years?" Mega CS is out here saying, "Oh, if you're an alcohol person, name every single alcohol: Batavia Rack and all the other ones." Got peach, you. Peach brandy. Peach brandy. We got some cognac. Cognac. Co cognac. Tito's. T Tito's. <laughs> yeah. Tito's and water. It's true. It's true. <laughs> oh, just classic, classic cocktail. Um, so this this uh, this rum is actually very interesting. It's not super um like fiery in your face which no is like no it's, it's kind of light actually yeah i found that there, there's a lot of liquor there's a lot of liquor out there that just kind of like hits you not in the face naturally kind of hits me like in the back of the throat with what i've got going on but this yeah. one is like, very very sweet i feel like it, it exists in the front of my mouth more so than the back yeah i mean it's you can tell it's not like the super high-endest of, mm. of yeah, rums nah. but it also is like it's not as bad as like bacardi white oh my gosh straight, yeah. like straight up bacardi white i feel like it's just like there's there's a sweetness there that is reminiscent of other like clear rums and stuff like it doesn't really have much else going on there it's just kind of like i guess like no. white sugar as what? opposed to let's say like a demerara or white bacardi is it's for mixed drinks where you don't want to taste it it's like basically i it's don't true. feel like using vodka so it's like it just has rum. more character than the yeah. vodka so you're like i can just put the rum in there i guess but honestly i don't really i can't really tell the difference i know Ooh, anna for some reason is very she claims to be able to pick out rum in pretty much any drink that she has and by far even if i use a bacardi white she can be like is that rum in there? Anna, and I'm like, Anna, yeah, super. It is. Anna's a super taster, though. She is. She is. She and with food too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she... <laughs> That's because she doesn't use enough salt and things. It's not wearing down our taste buds and stuff. Okay. So let's try the cognac next. Oh, absolutely. Cam, would you like to tell our audience what cognac is? So cognac itself is brandy, but it's like a very, very special brandy. I don't remember if it's like it's if it's regulated by certain laws and whatnot. If there are laws out there, which I'm sure there are, I'm not familiar with them off the top of my head. But you can think of like cognac. You can think about like That's good. various types of champagnes out there, which are like sparkling dry wines and stuff. If it's not from champagne a, or abiding by the laws governing champagne, just like with bourbon too, it's not considered bourbon or champagne. Cognac Cognac also has particular laws as well, determining, kind of telling you, like, if you're gonna call it cognac, it's gotta be something else. And if I have to, now that I'm thinking about it, as I ramble on for a bit, I think it has to be from Cognac France? Uh, or am I wrong I, about that? I couldn't, I couldn't tell you that. I'm okay, not sure. Okay. I just, I know that. Or maybe all, there's a Cognac Island or all something. All cognacs like are brandies, but not all brandies are cognacs. So there you go. So. Yeah, yeah. And it's a distilled wine, basically. So you, you take a wine that's already been... Well, because it comes from the fruits and stuff. And exactly. I guess if you make yeah. any sort of alcohol from fruit, you're gonna wind up getting a, what you would consider a wine. Yeah, and then this and if you distill it enough, you can make like brandies. And stuff. Yep. 
but you distill it to a point where you still have a lot of the flavor compounds in it. So you're oh, not yeah. distilling it so much that now you just have moonshine, basically. Yeah. Right. I remember when I bought this the other day, I compared it to the E&J brandy, which I have, to try to see, like, can I pick that's, out that's brandy cheap, that's compared to the cognac? <laughs> and there was something about it. It's just more... It's more rounded out. There's something more there and just like, I can distinguish brandy from let's say, you know, like rum or whatever, or like tequila yeah. naturally. But like, there is something very slight different, at least for my palate, between the cognac and the brandy itself. But they're both very, very good. Now the peach is gonna be the best one out of this, th out of these three. And that's actually the primary flavor of Philadelphia Fish House Punch, the, the peach brandy. Mm. Now this is I wonder a much... how the peach and the lime, uh, the peach and the citrus is going to go. Yeah, it's actually it'll, it's going to work really well because the peach generally is a little bit sweeter, and we're putting a lot of sugar into this. Like, mm. how much sugar? We oh my added god, to this yeah. already. There was, now, something, was like a pound of sugar. Something yes? fascinating I'm noticing with our bowls mm -hmm. is your lemon peels have uh, sunk to the bottom of the bowl, but mine are floating on the top. Oh, I wonder what I wonder, that's all about. I wonder if Maybe that's a density pith, of pith the thing. No, I Maybe. well actually. Yeah, maybe I just did a really bad job peeling them. Maybe, but, maybe, uh, maybe. I was, I was thinking it might be like the density of the mm. uh, citrus or something. That would, yeah. be, that would be fascinating. I want to stop for just a moment. As I noticed, I probably missed the notification for it, but a while ago, we got a $50 donation from, it says, the Cal. So I'm guessing it's the Cal House. I'm pretty sure that's my parents out there. And just like I said before, if you donate, I love you more. So instead of me loving you 100%, I now love you 100%. Thank you so much for your donation. It goes to the people who need it more than I do. Also, I apologize for that very loud burp I just made on stream. <laughs> We're drinking alcohol here. Yeah. It's gotta be. It's gotta be for you. That's straight, straight Corvassier. So. Oh my gosh! Yeah, <laughs> it's it's All good. Right, now you should try this peach, peach brandy. It's really good. Oh, I got it! I got it! I got it! So peach brandy is super super sweet. This was a very oh, big thing uh, back in the colonial days. Uh, mm -hmm. They used to make peach brandy all the time. Now, this was a this was a Paul Mason peach. It's a delectable fusion of smooth tasting Paul Mason brandy and the flavor of fresh juicy peaches. Yeah, is it oh. sweet or is it just sweet? I don't know. I haven't tried it yet. I actually haven't cracked this one open. You can you can taste it if you want. You can also smell it too. Come on, come on, stream and taste it. Come on down, stream town. Hi. The Cal House. It is alcoholic, so you might not like the alcoholic aspect of it, but it's definitely sweet. There's a lot of alcohol. Here comes the balloon. Oh. Hey, she didn't say immediately oh. this is terrible. There it goes. I heard. I, I saw. <laughs> that's true. That's, that's true. Yes, yeah, brandy. That's that's probably brandy. Probably the best brandy I've had. Ooh, coming up behind. Look at that. Coming that's in hot. Saying a lot. <laughs> not like brandy. Um. This is great. Anna's discovering more about herself beyond that she needs to add salt to food. One more, one more American history comment we're gonna here, make. Here we go. So, here we go. Peach brandy, one of the two biggest uh, alcohols back in that day. They used to make it all the time. Really? That, that's why it's, really? it's in this recipe. That makes sense. The other. Uh, do you know what the other most popular alcohol at the time of the revolution? Is it was? also like an ODV, or is it no. like something more? Okay. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna play this game as like hot and cold. I'm gonna guess a type of whiskey. Uh, it's in the whiskey family. It's in the whiskey family. Is it's not? Is it considered like a bourbon from today's standards? No. No. Okay. Whiskey family. It, it doesn't have. A, it doesn't. Whiskey use in corn. terms of. It doesn't use corn. Okay. Is it rye whiskey? No. Okay. So is it a particular it's, different it's, type it's of not, green? It's not. It's not whiskey. It tastes like whiskey. whiskey, but it's not whiskey. Oh, so does it have to do with maybe the barrel that they soak it in, mm -hmm. or no? Okay. Tastes like whiskey. Perhaps something it, it's rum. Made, it's assembly? made. It's made from a fruit. It's made from a fruit. Okay. Mm. What's a what's something a whiskey? -y. What's a famous fruit that has been. That was planted. Oh my god, apples. Apples? Apples. 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 Is right. it Applejack? It's Applejack. It's Applejack. Yeah. It's gotta be the Applejack. So, ap Actually, so no apple kidding. Jack. I have a little bit of the Laird's Applejack down here. Oh, that's so great. Because, like, that's like yeah. that's like the one to use. And I like I've gotten to the point in my collection where like there's only a oh, little yeah. bit left this of it. Great. So I'm this like, I don't stuff. wanna use it because it's so, it's so good. So Applejack, if you guys ever want to make this recipe uh at home, you can actually substitute Ooh. one of the brandies. Uh not probably not the peach brandy, but you could uh probably the cognac, su right? substitute the cognac for Applejack. And so Applejack is made from apples, and the reason it's called Applejack is because they used to make this in the winter, actually. So mm. they, would, they would get the fall apple harvest, all the extra apples that they would have, they would put into a barrel and put it down into the ground to get frozen. Oh, there we go, there we go. And that process is called jacking the apples. No kidding, With the, and that's, that freezing is a part of it. Yeah. Nice. And that's 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 how the, the sweetness of Applejack uh, gets created wow. and fermented over time. I didn't know about that, that's um, so cool. So it was very, very popular back in the day because there's a shit ton of apples in the United States. Right? Oh my God, yeah, there's so, so many. <laughs> Johnny Appleseed. Um, if you are looking for Applejack, Laird's is basically the only company that makes it. Like They're, the Applejack. Yeah. They have their base Applejack, which is what this bottle is. There's um, another one too. So it's, it's more aged, right? The other one, is, it's a bottled in bond. Um, Actually, can so, you remind me what that means? Yeah. Because so, we have some Rittenhouse rye here that's a bottled in bond yeah, we'll, specifically. And we'll, we'll, talk about, we'll talk about that during the Manhattan segment. Maybe it'll but, become drunk history by that point. But, uh, but bond, bonded, anything bonded mm -hmm. means that it comes from a single barrel. 
So, um, uh, okay. So say okay. you're ma- let, let's take a whiskey. Usually, if you're buying a commercial whiskey, it comes from a massive vat of whiskey mm-hmm. and what they'll do is they, they still put it in barrels to age it yeah. but they may pull from different barrels to mix so it's an even distribution of that flavor makes across sense. the board so um, the bottle and bond if i'm guessing correctly you can have like a distinct difference between each individual bottle which i think it's labeled on the bottle like the- theoretically you could in, like in real in, mm-hmm. in reality no practically um, probably the bigger case. difference is in order for it to be bottled and bond uh one of the requirements from the government's perspective is that it must be a higher proof Oh, um, okay. So nice, I think, nice. I think most whiskeys normally mm-hmm. are like 80 proof. Okay. Um, if I would, remember correctly. Would like a bottle and bond be like the equivalent yeah. of, let's say, like a, like a Navy strength rum? Yes. But like for so the whiskey family? So it's 100 proof. There we go. Yep. Okay. So Sweet. that is exactly what it is. So the Rittenhouse Rye that we use later, it's Rittenhouse Bond. <laughs> I think it's really funny because I think I when I got the Rittenhouse Rye, I was just like, I've never had a bottle and bond before. So I kind of put it in the glass. I was trying to conserve my ice. So I did not put any ice in it. There was absolutely no dilution in it. And I realized like I got really, really warm really, really quickly. And I think I was doing some like thumbnail work then i was just like man this job is going so easy now <laughs> now yeah. you're telling me it's like it's got more alcohol it's like it's no wonder so because of that so that makes your cocktails a little bit more alcoholic which is actually a good thing mm-hmm. because uh you, you still want the flavor to come through more absolutely um, yeah and uh it tastes a little bit more appley mm-hmm. so this one's really good too i use this one all the time in my own bar <sighs> the right the right i haven't jack. touched it in so long yeah, because again stuff. like i have i'm the kind of person where <clears> when we get to the bottom of the bottom I'm just like no i don't want to use all of it because then that means i have to go to the store and spend that, more money buy more but that, it's so worth it that bottle also is not that expensive Expensive. No, it really um, isn't. I think it was like 20, 20 bucks. I think. Yeah. yeah. And there's, there's some. Uh, my favorite cocktail with Applejack is a Jack Rose, Ooh. Um, which is a fantastic cocktail. It's so good. It's grenadine, especially mm-hmm. with the grenadine from scratch. So it's it's grenadine, yeah, Applejack, and lemon juice. Does the grenadine uh, with from scratch use like an orange blossom in there to kind of round yeah, out the flavor? Yeah. It's or- nice. orange blossom and then uh, the pom- and, and pomegranate juice. Yeah. 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 Got is, pom- pom- I think mine uses pomegranate juice, pomegranate molasses. There's orange blossom water in there and sugar. Yes, it was pretty good. We got another comment here. Oh, with purple, the, your other oh. half, Grace, was asking, <laughs> when does this turn into drunk history? And we got a, there's so four, many liquors back here to taste. Four, let's four, see what winds up happening. Well, let's continue. Grace wants Absolutely. us to, to get this punched on so we can start drinking. Where's the, uh, where's the, where's the cork for this right, guy? Right here. Oh, there so, we go. Anyways, Perfect. the peach brandy, very sweet, this, uh, this very side. peachy. Oh. Like that tastes oh like gosh, teaching, yeah. ta- uh, like drinking straight peach this, juice. This is Good straight stuff. up like, I, I would even consider this to be it, like a liqueur. It might not be specifically a liqueur. I don't know exactly how much sugar is in it, but it is super duper sweet. Like that's the first yeah, thing. It's very good. It's very, very good. Yeah. It is 54 proof, so 27 percent alcohol. That's like yeah, a not bad. that's like a port wine strength, mm-hmm. which, is, which is pretty good. <laughs> a port, that's a whole nother. Oh stream. my gosh, that's a whole nother stream. I oh my port. gosh, ports and so I I think what I remember is going up to New York one time to go to like a big wine distributor and like I had just taken like the Drexel wine course then and I was like oh my god like I gotta I want to know all about the wines like I want the one port wine but it's not quite a sherry and it's not gonna port. And it was like. Sir, do, would you like a Madeira? I was like, I want a Madeira. I want yes. one of those. That is such a wild. That is such a wild taste. Yeah, I I love port, but it's so great. We'll get to but that. We shall continue. Point. All right, yeah. So let's start mixing this. Absolutely. So, so we've got quarter cup each mm-hmm. of the Jamaican rum. Quarter cup of the Jamaican rum. Yep. So and then we'll do bring forth cup. the measuring cup. The measuring cup. And I'll Here pour we go. that in for you. Absolutely. Perfect. A quarter cup of that. Cork this guy off for the meantime. Awesome. 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 Okay, there you go. Nice, we got. So pour that one in there. There we go. Then Some for yourself, sir. Uh, don't mind if I do. Oh, that's no problem. <laughs> I, heard the, I heard the bottle itself make like a thunk <laughs> sound. <laughs> a beautiful sound. All right, so quarter cup of that. And Absolutely. then we have an eighth of a cup of the cognac and the brandy. Which I guess, do we have eighth of a cup on here? I think we'll probably have to eyeball that, I guess. Unless there's a conversion that we're not aware of. Actually, well, let's see. It says four ounce. Four ounces for about half a cup. If we yeah, need a quarter of a quarter sure of a cup, we, sure we can do. Right it looks like it's about an ounce. Because it's half pint, so there's two cups. Two cups and a pint, I think. No, four, four cups and a pint. All right. Okay, I think. It, it Ask Alexa. Two. Alexa, how many cups are in a pint? You were. Alexa. <laughs> Alexa, come on. Well, how many how many cups are in a pint? Oh my god. How do you not know? How do you not know? Dude, Alexa actually, (laughs) Alexa's freaking wild. For some reason, like when I tell Alexa to, actually, I'm not gonna say that. When I tell the machine to turn off all the lights, it's like, which light would you like me to turn off? I'm just like, what what I say? How many 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 cups cups and a pint? pint. Two? Two or four, who wins? Cups and a pint, two. Two, two, cups two. Of two US cups. Okay. Dalukare just donated five dollars to the World Central Kitchen. That's showing up in Twitch, not otherwise, because Twitch decided to be special. Thank you, Dalukare, who's hanging downstairs. Hey, Shorty. 
Hey, not so shorty, you're taller than I am. That's a pretty cool. That's a nice green one. It's like your favorite color. Yeah, uh, you, like, you like that? Here's, here's where we here's where we have messed up, Cameron. <gasps> no, we messed up. So we haven't messed up. We okay. just we just need to put more alcohol in. Oh. <laughs> so it, okay, it where's the conversion three at? Three pints of the mixture given, and this is the mixture. So it's three times this. Oh, okay. So okay, so okay. We're gonna do some quick math here. So it's three times that. So that'd be three halves of a pint of Jamaican rum divided by two is three. Three halves divided by two is three fourths of a pint. This math is getting crazy. Yeah, it's getting difficult. Oh my gosh, I forgot about that. I was like, yes. why don't you put it separately? Of course, because there had to be math involved. So three. You've pints. got two men drinking up here. You think we could do math? <laughs> my goodness. I, I actually, I remember when I was making this for the first time, the math was complicated. Okay, okay so there's. Three. I have it over here as well. So it says. So just multiply it by three. Three cups. And that's how much. Given below. So. Okay, so cup and have... a half. So it. Okay, okay. So it's a cup and a half. Okay, so, so should we go back to the first one then? Yeah, let's go back okay. to the, the rum to make sure we do this correctly. We're gonna put this. So there, there we go. Here, I tell you what, we're gonna take the measurement you have and just do it three times. There we go. <laughs> and we and it was it. a half a cup already. It was a quarter cup. It was a quarter so cup. So, so I'm gonna, quarters of a cup. I'm gonna give you a half a cup here. Perfect. 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 All right. We and you know, do the same for yourself. So Cameron and, and I are both engineers. Yeah, we are. So you think if it's not perfectly engineers. obvious by how good at math that we are. <laughs> We're doing this math quick, man. It's super but quick. You're starting it faster than the machine can. But you're also realizing very quickly how much alcohol is going to go into this. Oh my gosh, yeah. Luckily, there's a whole 24 hours to drink all this, and I'm more like, of the people in this house right now, I'm the only That's one, uh, aside from you, I'm Inventory. the only one that drinks the alcohol on the regular, and most people do not imbibe, which is totally fine, but that just means there's more for the rest of us. Now, hold on. I see da I see Pepper Dalukara over there also enjoys as well. And when we create this libation, I want to make sure that she at least gets one of the first glasses. Yes. Which will be easy because okay because next not that many people. for the corvassier so, so we have, we're doing an eighth of a cup three so three eighths eighth. three eighths of a cup it's gonna be three eighths of a so cup. so we're gonna do an eighth of a cup three times drop my strainer down here I tell you what we're gonna do a quarter a quarter cup a quarter cup and then an eighth and then an eighth I think how many ounces is that I think it looked it looked like it'd be eighth, an eighth of a cup eighth of a cup to ounces Glenny boy. Come on, Glenn. <laughs> you gotta work to earn your pay works. here. Okay, she's fine. Okay. Okay. And then another eighth for you. Excellent. You're about halfway. There you go. There we go. And then. Cognac. Eighth of a cup in ounces, you said? Eighth of a cup in ounces. I think it's a single ounce. It is 6.4 US fluid ounces. 6.4 ounces. Oh man, I was totally off with that. You were very off. I was so off. Wow. All you right. You said you're an engineer. And I math. said, well, let's see. Hold on. Hold on. I deal with calculations, not estimations here. You know, although engineering is not an exact science. You know, who's no, who's counting? He also is sober at work usually. Oh so. my god, that's <laughs> true. Very sober. I hope. I hope. <laughs> For the most part, I mean, sometimes I work from home and. All right. No. Then what was the amount on the last one? It's going to be the same exact amount, so same? it's going to be yeah. an eighth of a cup. All right. So we're going to give you a quarter and an eighth. Perfect. 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 It's a lot of alcohol. And sure. keep in mind, folks, this is. Half of the recipe that we're making. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. We're splitting it in two. Usually there would be so of what we have here, we have two punch bowls. You would double that. You'd have four punch bowls, at least for our punch bowls. Was this for Oh I'm sorry, uh, in the yeah, yeah, in the yours. This is the other yeah. quarter um eighth of cup. Eighth of a cup. And then perfect, perfect. quarter. And an eighth. Perfect. And we got another cup. And I think I think that's the last of it. I think that's the last of the alcohol. <laughs> that's what we did. I we think did that's it. it. All right, so now we're going to do... Philadelphia Fish House Punch. That's Philadelphia Fish House Punch, folks. I don't think that there are any more additional instructions that we need. No, that's Give it. that a nice little stir. Let's go for it. Yeah, go for it. Do the others. Yeah, that's yours. Oh, yeah? I'm oh, you're mine. handing me. I see you're <laughs> handing it to me. I'm handing it to you. There we go. Make sure the sugar's all dissolved. That's the important thing. Yeah, make sure a little... scrape the bottom up a little bit. Yeah, I got, I got a little bit in there still. Yeah, it's a little, a little particulate in there. I see that. Oh my gosh, I'm trying to I'm trying to utilize my lessons from stirring technique here, but it doesn't apply very well in a punch bowl. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to. On the right side, I don't have to like worry about like the spoon kind of like hanging. Oh, I guess it kind of. Oh. All right. So let me make sure I got that sugar up. Yep, that's pretty. That's pretty good. I'm I got it all up there. Ooh, okay, so there's two ways to ice this. So uh, traditionally, what you do is you'd make a really big ice mm. mold. Like you do, you can do it in a bowl. Mm. Like just fill a bowl up. Yeah. And then put it in the middle for a round. We're not going to do that here because we don't have enough space. That's fair. Uh, and we yeah. didn't make the ice in advance. But you can just serve this over ice in a glass. As well. Nice. I so think that's, that's probably we'll the best way to do so it. I think that's I think, what we'll do. So you know, now that I think about it, I think I gotta have a ladle downstairs somewhere. Anna. Downstairs! What? Ladle? Oil? 
Ladle. Ladle. Not yeah, oil. ladle, not, not oil. oil. No, no. Ladle. Oil would be terrible. Oil would be a very bad case in here. So, to, to recap what we did. Absolutely. Give us the nice Cliff's Notes version of what we did for Philadelphia Fish House Brunch over the course of this hour or so. Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson. T. Um, Jefferson. Ameri himself. America. Oh, wait, <laughs> American Frog. Schuylkill. I, I the want ladle. the ladle, but I also want you, but I don't want you to be the apparatus that I serve my drink from. Look at that. Beautiful. Wild. Ooh, um, nice color there. Yeah, so it's, like I said, this T. is... T. Jefferson. Yeah, so Thomas Jefferson, 17, America, 1795. 95, that was uh, it. The Schuylkill Fishing Club, That's Philadelphia Fish House Punch, a lot of alcohol. That's basically the summary. A lot of people <laughs> getting really, really drunk and making big, big changes for All a country. All right, so let's get business. some glasses of ice and taste this. Absolutely. So I think I've got ice in the top section of the freezer there. I'm going to grab ourselves some glasses. And I'm going to quickly make what sure... Do you need this thing back here, Cam? What's up? Do we need this back? That is a sacrificial yoga block that I use for close-ups and stuff. So oh, if we okay. want to get a nice close-up thing, I think we're pretty good here. We got a lot of liquid yeah, here. We're doing good. Yeah. So I got these glasses right, here. Nice matching. Um, I think. What do you think? A big one? Small ones? Or just small, small ones? Fine. Small yeah. ones? Just a couple of them. Perfect. 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 You can also have the Disney ones. Indeed. Do you want those? The Disney ones? No, I don't want to use the Disney ones yet. Those are a last resort always. I don't want to stick Mickey Mouse's pants in my drink if I don't have to. <laughs> Some people do, but I don't want to, because they're tiny ice cubes. There you go. There's your ice cubes. Trying to get my page over here to load. My surface here is very, very slow. Otherwise, I'll be able to catch up on it. Right. So let's, oh, great. let's get a little bit of this here. So I'm going to give you a couple of cubes Excellent. here. Thank you so much. And what we're going to do is... In the meantime, I think I'm going to take... Um, can I get a cleaning crew help? What? I don't usually ask for this, but I have I have this glass here. I have our snifter. We can get a quick paint on that. Queen. Thank you. And I have a big snifter here as well, just to clear up the space in the bar. Just, gotcha. to, just, just a wee bit. Thank you, dearest. Claps for Anna. Claps for Anna. Claps and chat for Anna. We also have these bar spoons here, but um, that's I think that's okay. okay. They're a little more versatile. So what we're going to do, let's taste yours first. Absolutely. So we're going to go in. This is the lime This version. is the lime. So we now, have lime on the left-hand side and lemon on the right-hand side pretty, from your perspective. I'm pretty confident that they're going to taste very similar. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, so I feel like lime juice is more distinct than the lemon juice. I feel like, well, actually, I guess we'll see. I guess we'll kind of yeah. see. Because I wonder how much of the flavor component comes from the liquors that are in there so otherwise. This is exactly the correct color. Hi, Annie. Before. I see you out there. <laughs> We're going to zoom in real quick here. Just so I can Absolutely. Let's get a nice, let's get a nice zoom. So, I can hold my drink this time because I'm not doing yeah, it one hand. I'm going to hold it kind of by the black here. There we go. So can, Let's see. Can we like... So that's that's the color you want to be looking for. Yes. It's it sh it's not... It's a little hard with the lights in here. It looks a little bit more red than it should be. Well, what do you, what do you oh, think? Oh, that's if perfect. We, that's you perfect think we right can, there. If, do you think lowering down the lights would be easier? No, that's perfect. Okay, no, because we can do this. I can see on the I can see on the, on the screen there. Perfect. That's like the perfect Take color. Take a closer look at that so, cocktail. That's be beautiful color. Like really beautiful color. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I was imagining it mostly because of the color of the book, which is a, a much more like red color. I was like, oh, it's going to be red. I was like, no, this is this is this is exactly correct. This is perfect, one one perfect, of the other perfect. cool things of this punch is it's very alcoholic, so you can bottle it and save it. That's true, and um, I, I don't totally plan on doing it for this punch because there is there's some yeah, this is, and this this punch yeah. actually gets better with age. So no kidding, um, I drank I, I drank some of this about a year after I made it, and it was delicious. It aged a bit. So cheers, my friend. Cheers to the Philadelphia Fish House Punch. Mm. Oh, that's so good. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that good? Oh, that's a nice little like it's giving me like like tiki drink vibes, but it's so smooth to drink. Mm. I think I don't think I've ever had a rum based drink that had like that much dilution in it because of the water and stuff. And yeah. instead of it being like really, really in your face, it's just so it's so pleasant. It's a very, very pleasant drink to have. Anybody else down there like some Philadelphia Fish House Punch? It's finished. I see Delucari on the couch over there. I'll grab her a glass. It's really, really good. Lime. What's that? Lime. You want the lime one? Yeah. We got that for you. Is there any more ice out? Uh, yeah. Put some ice on there. It'll be great. Pinky up for those following along at home. If you made your own Philadelphia Fish House Punch, feel free to share your ingredients in the comments down below. I like that below. glass. It's cool. There are no comments. Yeah. Well, one sip of this thing will probably kill me. No. <laughs> At all. It's really, it's very good. A very, very tasty one. Let's see. Glenn, like us lore over here, is not big into the alcohol. However, I can absolutely give you a small uh, thing of it if you'd like to try it. Of course. Absolutely. I'm Glenn is a very adventurous type. This is for Dalukare. Unless you'd like to give it a sip, if Pepper is okay with that. Yeah. Okie dokie. Well, let me get you another glass. I have so many different glasses. Like, don't feel like you have to share glasses with people. Like, it's not necessary. Actually, I'm going to take out this tiny little cordial glass for Glenn. Oh. He gets a little pinky one. Wait, I'm going to try it. 
I'll take a glass. You got it, Purple, aka Grace or Eric. Who knows, really? And let's try some as well. Here's a tiny little glass for Glenn. Here you go, pal. Take a sip and then Anna, like, would you like some? Would you like lime Anna, or lemon? I'm the rest of mine because I'm probably just going to take a sip and I'll be then. I need my tiny glass. Oh, Anna's, Anna's going beneath the bar to go get her particular glasses. I want this one. Would you like lime oh, or lemon? No. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You like it? No, it smells no, no. bad. Glenn, I want your, I want your tasting Glenn, notes. I want, your taste Hang on. I want to know what your tasting notes are. Wait, Come on, call it in here. Yeah, I'm coming. Everyone around. We're, we're drinking the drinks. We get on camera. I, I am not a drinker. Yeah, Glenn is. Glenn likens the taste of alcohol itself to ink. <laughs> your face. Huh. It's so pleasant. Isn't that good? It's such a pleasant cocktail. Yeah. That's. It is so it's like, smooth. It's like if you soaked like lemon and lime and ink. It's and, I, I'm I'm getting like, like you know it does kind of have like a like a lemon washed towel vibe. I want to yours. It. Oh. Would you like some of mine? Here, go for it. I gotta try the lemon. They're exactly well. the same, it. except for the peel. I, I like, like the lime a little bit. That's good. Oh, there you go. I think they taste the same. I just tried oh, the I'm lemon. Okay, I'm actually gonna I'm be like halfway down. I'm gonna be honest with you, dude. I finished my first already. Oh, excellent, yeah. excellent. Yeah. No, you ain't gonna drive tonight. I'm in on this one, actually. That's not that bad. It smells yeah. worse than it. No, that's good. Yeah. Though. That's so good. That is that is a common f piece of feedback I get. That yeah. it, and I think mm -hmm. Grace, so, Grace, so, Grace would agree in I'm chat. So, I'm so used to making my way through so many different cocktails that I wind up when I'm Ooh. slowing myself down. Yo, Annie Toya up here donating $25 to the World Central Kitchen through our Twitch chat over here. There are no alerts associated with that. It does not show up in our Tiltify banner in here, but it is nonetheless extremely appreciated. Annie, wherever you are, however you are, greatly appreciated today. Mm. <laughs> this was an alcoholic That's balloon. Really <laughs> How dare you! No. You're shouted as alert enough. I love that. Yeah, for anybody who hasn't been catching on so far, hey, we've probably got a lot of people here. I can't really tell exactly how many people because I don't look at that sort of stuff because it stresses me out. But we are potentially, obviously, potentially not obviously, raising money for charity over here. We are we are participating in an event called Thankmas 2022, a portmanteau of Thanksgiving and Christmas or something. Um, but so we're raising, we're trying to raise at least. $500 for the world central kitchen who provides hot meals for Populations experiencing various different types of crises whether they be humanitarian or otherwise like natural disasters and whatnot And we're streaming for that amount of time uh, to get $500 honestly y'all are making this pretty easy on us uh, But luckily if we have if we want to make more money for charity, we'll do it. We'll do it. Oh, sure. oh not in the punch, bro. Uh, not in the punch, dude. Sorry, I tried to, I tried to like the volleyball pump. <laughs> oh, fun. little Abe is here too. Oh, thank y'all. Well, because I know, I know the two of you are together. I'm gonna put both y'all up there. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna go, Annie, Annie, Annie Toya, and I'll put in parentheses little Abe because I know you both are out there. There we go. There we go. <laughs> So Cam, what are your uh, what are your thoughts? All right, I got I got to finish off this lime one. It's it's oh my god, it's so it's so so good. Are the two punches actually different? I'm sorry. We, so one has we made one with lime yep. peel and one with lemon peel because the recipe said you can use either. I think they mm -hmm. taste the same. Or the juice, personally. the juice. Oh, and the juice, yeah. Mm -hmm, indeed. Oh, I guess you have lemon peel in the other. It's one. true. Yeah, I it's, think they both kind of have the lemon peel in there. They taste the same to me, honestly. <laughs> A little Abe just squealed with joy. I wish I could have heard that. I want a recording of that. I've been trying to change up my alerts and whatnot, so maybe I'll just get like a squeal for followers and stuff. <laughs> like, in full seriousness, this is not bad, and that's kind of surprising. To that's me great. Because I do not Ooh. like alcohol at all. And like, well, so like one of the reasons why I started like doing mixology in general is because like I mentioned I have a lot of people in my life are not that into alcohol And I wanted to figure out if there was a way for these guys to be able to enjoy the alcohol the way that I do But in their own way and Glenn is one of those people So my comments on this is I do see a little bit of a difference I would say and maybe I, I don't know if it's specifically because there's lemon juice in one and lime juice in the other But I'm getting a lot more of the rum vibes in the lemon hmm. uh, the lemon based one Interesting. than the lime one and I wonder I wonder what's going on there I think this one. I may have overreported. I'm getting a little bit more, getting a little bit more of like the brandy, the cognac there. Hmm. There's like the peach, the peach can, flavor that, and the yeah. citrus. I think is something that I, I, I don't think I've had together very often. So I'm finding it pretty hard to distinguish. Let's say peach lime. It's versus an peach it's, lemon. It's an interesting flavor though. Right? It's a very nice yeah. flavor. Yeah, yeah. And I think the you definitely get the peach is like the main flavor coming through in that. Oh yeah, for um, sure. I'm back for doubles. Would you like another one? Would back you like a lime? Would you like a lime? Would you like a lemon? Uh, is there lime peels in there? Uh, no lime peels. It was all using lemon peels and stuff. I'll try the lemon. You try the lemon? All right, I'll take a glass for you. Do you need any more ice in there? How's your, how are you doing? Good, I think. Excellent, excellent. 
I am so happy that for the first time making a huge, ooh, there's a lemon peel in there, a huge like batch cocktail recipe on stream that we actually get to share it with people, which is the whole like, the whole point of being able to do this thank miss thing was not only to raise money, but to really encourage the camaraderie and stuff. Like Cam doesn't get drunk by himself. It was great. I can't be the only one <laughs> yeah. drinking up here every single week or so. So there was a, we put a lot of alcohol in these two things though. So like be, it's true. be it's aware true. that this is a powerful drink. So. The whole the whole point like yeah, it's, it's a very Wait, oh, this, it's super this goes down like like lemonade. Super easy. It basically, you know, it really does taste like lemonade. I want mm -hmm. really though. Can I dump this in one of the other in like your drink? Because I want to try the other one. Yeah, put it in my glass. Oh, okay. wow. Other wine one? Oh yeah, go for it. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, go for it, dude. Yeah. You want to try the other one? Who wants to try the other one? Do you want to wow. pour yourself? Want to pour it? Yeah, I'll go for it. Yes. Uh, Bartender's back here. Sorry, I'm like, I'm, uh, That's okay. You got a nice blue tone to your arm. You can I don't see know your why. biceps. Oh, it's from the... You can see your biceps quite nice. Give us a flex, Glenn. <laughs> oh, I'm out of shape. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no flex. I'm my legs that I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's true. It's fucking true. I think you are the only person who would pop out of the stream where your legs would be visible because you were so freaking tall. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Just do it like a big boy. Yeah. Oh my god, it's great so far. Yeah, dang, you got a good. Woo! Yeah. And, and you're. How long have we been going so far? We have 22 and a half hours left. Woo! All right. You can, you can oh, definitely well. start to feel this already yeah, too. I'm like, feeling it back there. there. <laughs> Actually, you might fill me up with my water. I'm pretty much empty over here. It's the yeah, you're right. this one's a little more like, like oh, there's like a little. Which one? The, le the lemon one? The it's lemon one? Strange. Yeah. Like yeah. It hmm. has some potency to it. Maybe that's from the lemon juice. It's versus, possible. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Oh. You know, I remember when I was looking through the Liquid Intelligence book. It's very interesting to see like the different types of sugars out there and acids. They have a completely that different meaning between those. Lemon. Well, I just tasted it. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Well, it could have been the lemon or the lime. Could have been the peel. Could have been the peach brandy. Could have been the cognac. Could have been the. I'm missing something I mean, here. I know it wasn't. The like... drum or water. Which I got from the tap. So. <laughs> this one wasn't the filter. Hey, no. That's a lot of cups of water. Do you mind if I dump this in yours too? Again? Oh, please. Fill make, me up. Make a concoction for You're you. are reminding me of the way that Anna and I drink cocktails together. It's like Cameron gets a cocktail, Anna gets a cocktail. Cameron, Anna doesn't like the cocktail, so Cameron drinks both of them, and Cameron's very happy. Man, it's good stuff. Oh my gosh, yeah. So like that's again, that's not bad. Like, oh yeah, good job, guys. Thank so you. I think, I Thank think, you. I think summary of the fish house punch. Like, this is this goes down like lemonade. I think that was very succinctly put there. It's almost like you're drinking lemonade, but there's this other like there's this other component to it that is not quite lemonadey. It's not necessarily just the lemon or the lime itself. It's not just like a very sugary sweet sweetness. I think the alcohol in this case, the peach brandy in particular, and the rum. The cognac is kind of lost on me, but that's just probably my palate. Adds like a, a different dimension to it. That's it's a lot more like, like molassesy. If I if I had to describe it any any other way, like there is something like if you added instead of like just say like tabletop sugar, you added a bit of molasses to your I guess to your lemonade and stuff. Um, but it's good. It's yep. very very good. Very nice recipe here. This uh, again, this we we created Philadelphia Fish House Punch, which uses the, the the measurements are a little lost on me, but I will at least recollect the ingredients that we placed inside of it. To create Philadelphia Fish House Punch, you need lemon or lime juice added to a mixture containing Jamaican rum. We use Myers cognac brandy. We use Cavassier. Oh, Cavassier. Cavassier and best peach brandy, which we use. Jaw. Whatever peach brandy you can find, because it's, it's very hard to find. I use brandy. Paul Mason, and to that you also add a bunch of water uh, for dilution purposes, and best loaf sugar or just whatever sugar that you have. Cut it a little bit because sugar that we have nowadays is a lot more sweet than the best loaf sugar yep. of the past few times. And it's oh my god, it's so good. Yeah, I'm gonna have one more. I'm gonna have one more glass. Absolutely, go for it. I'm gonna have one of yours actually. Oh, please go for it. Oh, I wouldn't consider either of these to be mine or the other ones. It is totally communal. They are. Absolutely. There, it, it is interesting that you do get a little bit of different flavor from the different juices. It's, it's very interesting. Yeah, and I mean, when I was originally buying the ingredients for these, I went to the store thinking that I had to put lemon and lime juice in it in equal parts, like separately. And I'm actually kind of glad it didn't work out that way. Yeah. Because now we have two different punch bowls, and they taste a little bit different. We've got a little bit of a yeah. variety here. And that's very, cool. very interesting. Absolutely. Good stuff. Yeah, so I think what we'll do is we will move on to, I guess, or unless we want to do a little break. I usually do these things on my own, so usually I just kind of roll on through, but if we're feeling like breaky, I don't know. I'm doing okay. Yeah? All right. Yeah, let's keep going. I saw I saw a pepper hand in the corner. So, when I come here, normally I ask Cameron to make a sour for me. You are being heard. That's great. Very good. I was wondering if that might be a topic of conversation is how he makes them. Because mm -hmm. All about the egg whites and stuff. Variety. Egg white versus otherwise, you know? Yes. 
Yeah. So, yeah. So, so like whiskey sours, like that that type of idea. Yeah. So I'm 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 a big believer in using egg whites. I, I completely uh, agree there. In, in whiskey sours, so it gives you the foam mm -hmm. uh, texture that maintains the head on the sour oh, yeah. after you shake it. And it's so interesting to find like like for example, an espresso martini does not use any egg white in it, but it's still got a foam to it. And I gotta wonder like what is it just making me think like the commonalities between let's say espresso and egg white that allows that foam to form. I'm sure they're fundamentally two different reasons, but the fact that the end result is both something foamy with like a very thick head on top of it is just something that's kind of interesting to me from a yeah. cocktail perspective. Yeah, and I think, I, I don't know for an espresso martini specifically. Mm. Um, I do know though for sours, um, when you are shaking the egg white, there's mm. actually a big difference between shaking it initially with the ice versus not with the ice. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is something that uh, the dry shake versus the wet shake. Yeah, yeah dry so versus speak. wet. Yeah. So, <clears throat> do you do a dry or a wet first? So I do the dry shake first, okay. and then I do the wet shake afterwards. I think I heard that on a cocktail video somewhere, and it was just kind of been the rule that I go by. Yeah. So um, I think the the one idea is to be able to kind of get things up to temperature, and then the next one is to be able to like emulsify the egg whites and really like constituent i don't know what the word is to use for that there's science stuff going on there yeah so dave dave arnold actually uh talks about that in his liquid intelligence book which is oh, another yeah. fantastic book to, to look into yeah, for cocktails that. and Glenn, it's if right you find a there. book that says liquid intelligence down there it should be like right on the bottom the right on the bottom there it's black black spine book but yeah you actually will get more volume yeah here there we go liquid intelligence by liquid dave intelligence, arnold. that's the one that is a fantastic book also not sponsored if dave if dave arnold is watching we're open to suggestions we um, have a very <laughs> random question in, in, in chat here yeah. uh, the question is cameron how many of the letter s are in the word espresso uh it's obviously three you just typed it out from us and it's pronounced espresso espresso I've been learning, one of my coworkers is a very, very protonacious Italian man, mm -hmm. and he shares a lot about, I've been trying to figure out how to, like, to, I guess, vocalize double consonants in the Italian <laughs> language, and uh, I'm Espresso. learning. Espresso. Espresso. You kind of, you yeah, try you to put an accent it. on the, va the, the, the it's consonants. Like it's like a bounce yeah. right on. And apparently there's a difference between exploding like sounds and non-exploding sounds. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, not exploding doubles and non-exploding doubles. I'm still trying to conceptualize that. Mega says nice. You too. That may or not be the very pertinacious Italian man who shall remain unnamed. But in any case, <laughs> espresso. Um, so, finish, Three so finishing our conversation on egg, on egg white foams. So if you shake a, so let's, let's say you want to make a sour. Oh yeah. You get all of your ingredients into the shaker. You put the egg white in there. Mm -hmm. I, a lot of recipes will call for a specific volume of egg white. I just use a whole egg white. It's kind of it's kind of hard so to measure it they, out unless you got it in like those squirt containers, which right. Is, so they, yeah. they they give that for bars to put in a squirt bottle. Yeah, yeah. So that's why they do that. And but I think you can you can buy egg whites like in a and I guess a, a you measurable also, you, form. You can, you, can from an egg. You, you can buy them yourself too and put them in a bottle if you want to. It's just a pain in the ass, and they don't yeah. they don't last for that long. That's a yeah yeah. I imagine so unless so. you're drinking like a lot of sours, mm -hmm. it's it's not worth it. Honestly, um, that may be that maybe it's a theme at some point. So I usually just use the whole egg white. Oh yeah. Um, and then you get everything into the shaker. You shake it really hard for about ten seconds. And oh, yeah. it, it's important when you're doing that you shake really to gotta hold, hold it there because yeah. the, the, the pressure when you're shaking things there's a bit of a pressure differential that happens there when you're doing something with ice in, uh, with ice in it the air inside of the container kind of condenses a little bit and creates a pressure differential that takes the atmospheric pressure and pushes inwards so you have a, a seal in your shaker versus with a dry shake you don't have that same like cooling effect happening there so the pressure is actually reversed if you're shaking something dry with egg white in it your shaker kind of wants to explode and let out that air so you get a lot more prone to make a mess there if you're not doing it that way it also causes the metal of the shaker to contract mm -hmm. which is uh another reason why you oh, have yeah. to, you can't have a double glass shaker it doesn't work this is a fair you have thing. to use a metal plus glass or double metal the glass is just not going to take it no you, you can have you can do a, like a regular glass with a metal cup yeah yeah and i think i think for a glass. while i wonder if i had my pint glass over here but yeah. i did i did usually do like my metal shaker on my pint glass and i realized that the ice cube sizes that we're using i was shaking that thing so hard and it started cracking the uh cracking the uh, the metal glass. glass there but so i think when i was reading liquid intelligence uh, i think um david arnold was like you can use the metal ones anyway and i think it yeah i think it's probably preferred so yeah. i think i'm gonna switch to that yeah so it's, I, it's good it's I a use, game changer i use double metal shakers and yeah. they're they're way better i think i started off with that and i was just like oh pint glass this works and like it was hurting me for a good like year and a half or so but i can't keep another um, pint glasses and stuff another uh youtube channel that has looked at this specific phenomenon mm. is uh cocktail chemistry mm. if you've ever watched their yeah uh, yeah i like cocktail. he's the dude with the the apron he's yeah got a very soothing voice yeah he, he has a he his he has almost like an esmr type oh my god oh my god 
Um, but his, his um his cocktails are really really good. Mm -hmm. And actually, I haven't um, seen him a lot in a while. I wonder the the Google yeah, feed is not is not serving him up to me. Yeah, I think he he slowed down his production a little bit too. Oh, okay. Because he he I know he got married and everything. So oh, he, congrats. He, maybe him. maybe he had a family or something. I don't know. Who knows? But um. Actually, the man, the chocolate Manhattan we make yesterday, based off of his recipe. Oh yeah, um, which Ooh. is really really good. Ooh, that's, nice, so nice. We're gonna be doing that a little bit. But anyways, he looked at this uh, shaking of egg whites as well, um, and uh, it was a basically you can almost like double the volume of the egg white by no doing kidding. the dry like, shake before the wet shake. Versus, oh wow, versus I didn't realize that. It actually has like a volume change there too. Yeah, that kind of makes sense because I suppose it's less dense. Winds up bubbling up. You get that foam up on top. I assume it's got to be less dense than everything else below. Yeah, it. I, it makes sense. I think. Uh, the reason that that happens so if you look at like I'm taking this idea from cooking so yeah. when you are whipping egg whites mm -hmm. for like a, a souffle That's or, a for, point, or yeah. for meringue uh, often they have you add cream of tartar to it, right? What do you think and is cream of tartar? Cream of tartar is a acidic residue that's white that's left over in the inside of wine barrels from the storage of wine and the evaporation of wine. Oh, um, there's, so a, there's an acid at play there. Is it acetic acid? Tartaric yeah. acid, I believe. Oh, tartaric acid. That makes what, sense. That's why it's cream, cream of tartar. tartar. That makes sense. Um, so it's an acid, right? Yeah. And uh, you add that to uh, egg whites when you're whipping them uh, for, you know, baking or cooking For your uses. meringues and stuff, I think yeah, you said, in, right? in order to stabilize the... Uh, the whip, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember what they call it the mesh of the, you know, the, the sure, there's like the a foam, filament, foam, like the foam. The foam. Yeah, yeah. You, you stabilize the foam that way. Mm -hmm. I think doing a dry shake uh, is the more or less the same thing with the acid that you use from like a lemon juice or something. Gotcha. So interesting. When you add the egg white to the lemon juice, the acid and the lemon juice is Has helping to stabilize because it's also an acid. Yeah, that's a good so, point there. And, and if you shake it with ice, there's more stuff in there, so it doesn't stabilize it as much. Um, hmm. That's my theory. I don't know if that's true, no, but that's, that's, yeah. my, that's my biomedical Either theory. Either way, what winds up coming out <laughs> the other side is very oftentimes this very, very, very dis distinct foam on top of your sour cocktails and stuff. It's when you put the sour being, you know, pretty much any acidic thing, like your lemon juice and whatnot, with your egg white that kind of gets dry and chicken it's, first. It's kind, of like the, it's kind of like the head on a really creamy beer. Oh my that's, gosh, yeah. That, it's, it's so good. Guinness. Like very, head, very head on a Guinness. beer. Dublin Guinness. Oh my gosh, yeah. Very good stuff. And it says, this is starting to sound a lot like chemistry. Dude, dude, what was it? Molecular gastronomy? No, yeah. That's, that's, the, that's the language <laughs> we're trying to speak here, at least. We Maybe do. One day. I think uh, ke chemistry and cocktail making is like so intertwined. It's it's really fascinating because oh my there, gosh, there's, yeah. there's so many uh, techniques that we learned over time without knowing the chemistry. And now that we do know the chemistry, you can kind of take them to the next level. Yeah, because if, if you think about it, like, I feel like humans of a civilization has been, like, cooking things and combining things together for, like, add infinitum every we have we got to eat and we want it what we eat we want to have it's got to be nourishing it's got to be tasty it's got to be something that people want to actually have so that people aren't like you know sad when they eat their porridge in the morning but so we've been doing this stuff and like it's interesting thing too that and i don't remember if i heard it from you or perhaps some other folks but like I, the interesting fact is like i think for example every single civilization out there has all come up with a method of fermentation or like making bread like for, uh, in some way or another and they're more or less distinct from each other which is interesting. It's like a fundamental truth of like civilization itself, which is really, really interesting. Yeah. And I don't want to pretend that I'm a historian or an anthologist or anything like that. So I might be pulling this out of my ass, but it seems your history is getting better as we drink more of this. Brunch. I think so. I think so. I think I'm just becoming more confident <laughs> when I talk yeah. about it. <laughs> I all of a sudden am remembering more history as we speak. <laughs> Gosh, it's almost like I'm writing the book right in front of me. It's all right. Great. Let's have one more glass of this and then I start moving that. on to. I think. Our I think Manhattan's. what I'll wind up doing is I'll fill up this glass here and I'll kind of move the punch bowls over to a different location. Location so we can kind of clear space up here, do a little bit of cleanup, and I think we move on to our next segment of the evening, which is going to be uh, um, Eric here has uh, has so graciously decided to de donate his time to be able to give us a little bit of a history lesson on Manhattan's, both on the history itself, the technique, just like what he's wound up learning in his career so far. Oh, excuse me, career to say. <laughs> Biomedical engineers know a thing or two about Manhattans. <laughs> let me tell you. We need we need a drink. It's, it's true. It's important. So I think we're going to do. do you want to move these two? I have I have one of my helpers, one of my Christmas help, my thankmas helpers over here, um, Lycos, who gave us a bit of big old belts from over there. Oh, Could I bother you to fish take house, these fish house, but belt. fish house punch belch to take these punch bowls and put them over on the table over there? If there's any sort of space, uh, is there space yeah, over there? Yeah, we can make. Space. You make space? That's perfect. That's perfect. Help, helper number two, can you make some space? He'll go. He'll go the lemon one. Um, I got post-it notes and stuff elsewhere if we want to label them. I I don't know if it's necessary, but you know is this your only bar spoon? What's that? Here's your burritos. Oh my god! Whoa, we got dinner. Burritos. We got, we got burritos. Oh yo! Oh yo! Jesus. 
Uh, okay. I'll take a, I'll take a cheese one. Oh, I'll take a cheese burrito. Thank oh my gosh! Thank you so so much, yeah. Hippo Matt. Hippo Matt, Woo. the finalist of Rhapsodies. Oh my goodness, this is great. Thank you, Anna. One of the things that we're trying to promote here on the charity stream this evening, I don't, I'm usually up here alone, more or less helped out with my dearest Disney queen over here, but we decided to invite, invite literally everybody, well not literally everybody, but a lot of people who are very close to me in that life. And just as a bit of a kind of a summary of it so far, uh, I invited up here quite a few people. The ones who were able to make it were Purple Intet, Eric, we have Dalukare, Pepper, we have Final Rhapsody, Matt, Lycos Lore, Glenn, and Disney queen, Anna, my lovely fiance. And we're all just kind of around here camaraderieing together. Together. Uh, Eric's gonna pop out a little bit early. He decided to join us for the cocktail stuff, which is absolutely awesome. Uh, the rest of the folks we'll probably see tomorrow morning. Glenn's gonna come on a little bit later when we're playing some GameCube games. We're gonna be playing them literally all night. I think we have multiple Shrek games on the docket because we try to make things weird around here and interesting. In the morning, we'll be doing a little bit of a like a breakfast mukbang thing where as people are kind of waking up and kind of rubbing their eyes, we're gonna eat some food, bacon, eggs, stuff like that, and we're taking the camera in the basement. Make After that. Mickey Waffles, it seems, because we have a Mickey Waffle maker. Mickey Waffles? Mickey Waffles, indeed. My goodness. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And then afterwards, we're going to play board games and whatnot. I'm going to test out a whole new angle. And, th and if that stuff, if that does it for you, I appreciate your feedback. Because otherwise, I got literally no idea. But we're going to do it anyway. And then after that timer up there completely ends, we're going to be tallying up all of the subs and the bits and the donations on Twitch and Tiltify. You're going to see how much money we made to be able to support the world. Uh, the world. Oh my god. World Central Kitchen. I forgot for a moment. WCK it's otherwise. A, it's the fish punch. It's the fish punch. He's yeah. doing it for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. This is this is awesome so far. Yes. What's up? Do, do you have ice? Mmm, bro, ice from my freezer. Why? I need ice. Why? Who's asking? I need ice for my tea. Go for it. Yeah, ice in your tea? Ice yes. tea. Oh, um, yes. I see. I, I see. I see. All right. All right. We let's, talk about, let's talk about Manhattan. Oh my so. God. Let's talk about the Manhattan. Oh my gosh. Oh. Where do you want to start? Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep on eating my burrito here. I got to make sure I stay all. So oh, I, think, I think where we should start is talking about what is Manhattan. Nice. All right. right. What is it's an island in New York. It's, it's true. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, the most heavily populated area in the United States, to my knowledge. Very, very dense so area. It's, it sucks to park there. Mm -hmm. I, I, hate oh my God, yeah. I hate driving through Manhattan. It's even, I thought I hated parking in Philadelphia, but it's even worse here as well. I have to go to Manhattan for work periodically, so mm -hmm. it's, it's not my favorite thing in the world to do. But um, we're going to be talking about the Manhattan today. It's a very classic cocktail. Um, it's a great winter cocktail, which I think is, is great for our event that we're doing here because it kind of fits oh the Christmas gosh, yeah. theme. It's a little tough to drink in the summer, honestly, because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a heavier cocktail. It's very heavy. It's a little, it's, I'd say as opposed to the punch, it's a little more in your face, is what I would say. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and pull out the components. Ooh, bloated, first time chat. Bloated, bloated, dead, bloated dead rats. My goodness, that seems very, I wonder if the rats got bloated because of the alcohol. Cheers. Cheers, my friend. Cheers. To charity and thankness. So let's pull out our ingredients. All right, we got a Rittenhouse ride down there. I think you can see that. You got that. Um, I got some. I got some vermouth. I have an unopened bottle of vermouth on the left-hand side of the refrigerator, but I also have some chilled stuff on the inside, uh, on the bottom layer. That, yep, yep, yep. I have a bottle that's already open. We want to use it for like display purposes. Yeah. Like I got that as well. It should be. Oh, it's not something else out there. Oh, right there. Yep. And I have so what kind of bitters are we going for? Because I got I got all of them here. Uh, orange orange and Angostura. Let's do some orange and, we'll, and Angostura. We'll talk about. I'm going to talk about a regular Manhattan first, I and got then we'll, an orange. we'll go on to the and other I've one. Got a, let's see, I got a couple. Of, where's my other orange one here? Cameron, which one's the Manhattan? Which one's the Manhattan? The one you won't like, Anna. Keep on listening, <laughs> and you'll find out which the one's the Manhattan. You'll find out next time. Next time on Cameron with an X. JK. Oh, actually, you know what? Those are nice orange bitters. I'm stepping. I'm stepping on my citrus bag. Can I have somebody come over here and this, my citrus bag? We're gonna need an orange from it. Oh, we're gonna need an orange. Give Put me on him. Give orange. us one orange. Should we need the peel? Yeah. All right. Um. Yeah. Give me one of those oranges. And we need the peeler back. Please. And oh, thank you. I will go grab the peelers. Okay. Right back. So let's talk about Manhattan's. So Manhattan's fallen. It's a whiskey cocktail. Oh my God. Right yes, it is. Uh, there is a a lot of uh, debate in the cocktail world of what the best whiskey to use for a Manhattan is. So interesting. Traditionally, and I think the best option is to use rye whiskey. I feel like um, that's kind of the consensus from what I've seen at least. Yeah. The, there are a lot of people that like bourbon Manhattan's. Hmm. Um, and. That is still technically a Manhattan. That is yeah. not Ron. 
I think that with the way that a, the flavor profile of Manhattan is built up, the sweet vermouth is supposed to be the sweet piece of the oh, yeah. of the cocktail. Mm -hmm. And so you need a bitier alcohol to counter that. Something so. that's got a lot more, like, I guess rye whiskeys have been described a lot more as a, thank you, dear, as kind of the spicier whiskey brand, yeah. brand as opposed to a bourbon out there, which is a little more, it can be a lot more rounded out, it can be a little more sweeter on top right. of time. So we'll talk about the difference between whiskey. So rye whiskey uh, requires at least a 50% mash bill of rye specifically. I'm so glad um, that you're coming up here with the numbers and stuff because I remember yeah. learning about this stuff and yeah. it's just like, I cannot recall it at all. Yeah, so there's, the, they're all whiskeys have Basil Hayden's rye is good. I, I totally agree with that. Basil oh Hayden's gosh. rye is fantastic. That's, that's up there. It's a, it's a pricey um, one. I'm going to talk about why we're using Rittenhouse Bonded uh, in just a minute because this is my favorite rye for a Manhattan. Mm. Um, but I agree Basil Hayden's uh, rye is also fantastic. I love the Basil Hayden. Do you have a bottle of Basil Hayden's at your place? I have Basil Hayden's bourbon, Okay. Um, okay. which is one of my favorite sipping bourbons, but I actually don't like using Basil Hayden's in my cocktails gosh. very much. I don't think it mixes well at all. Hmm. Um, but I think it's an excellent bourbon if you drink it neat or like with just like a, a rock or two. Oh, absolutely. Um, but yeah. not, not a big fan of mixing it. Uh, I don't, it just has a weird flavor prof profile when you mix it. Um, so rye whiskey requires a 50% mash bill of rye at least. And then mm -hmm. there's corn and, and other well, stuff. Well, I think for the most well. part, I don't, I don't know what the laws are like here in America, but if you call your whiskey rye whiskey, does it have to use a little bit of rye or does it have to use no, at least leg percent? Legally, it must have that. Okay. That that fifty percent mash bill of rye. Otherwise, you can get hit with fines and stuff from the FDA because you're technically uh, lying, kind of breaking marketing the law your here. marketing your product incorrectly. Mm -hmm. It's the same. Yeah. It's the same reason where why like um, bourbon versus Kentucky straight whiskey. Mm, that's fair. Uh, yeah. Is, is, or is it like because bourbon's from a specific region, very specific part, and then but you can still have uh, you know Kentucky straight whiskey, which yeah. is basically the exact same thing as bourbon, it's just not made yeah, in the bourbon exactly. region. And, and right? do you do you recall what it is that it's distinct? Aside from I guess the locale portion of it, uh, bourbon is more. It's a particular type of grain. It's a particular percentage associated. I think it's sixty percent or something. Or uh, the mash bill. The mash bill mm. can vary. It just I think it has to it has to be at least fifty percent corn. Okay. All right. Um, it might be it might be sixty. I don't remember exactly, but mm -hmm. it has to be at least at least fifty percent corn. Mm -hmm. um, we have a comment here. Annie says, "Like champagne, right? Yeah, the champagne is has a particular locale uh, proponent to it, like champagne in France, or you have tequila from Oaxaca in Mexico, or bourbon. In this case, has I don't remember where it is, but it's in Kentucky. Kentucky, yeah, Kentucky bourbon. It's the one. Um, or I'm sorry, in uh, Tennessee, Tennessee. Oh, okay, yeah, Kentucky, it's, Kentucky. It's in, it's in Tennessee. Tennessee. Yes, that's where Jack Daniels is. Oh, that's where Jack lives. Yeah, nice. Um, Does have similar, similar to T, similar yeah. to. Mm. Um, Indeed, like the location. Yes. So, um, that's what rye whiskey is. So rye, it, just like from a flavor profile perspective, bourbon's a lot sweeter than rye because mm -hmm. it uses more corn, like rough, uh, comparatively to everything else in there. Which if you've ever had like so, corn, like you can kind of understand that like corn, corn itself is a lot like, very sweeter. Like sweet corn. Sweet yeah. Corn. So that's why, that's why bourbon is sweeter than rye. That makes a lot of sense actually. More corn I, I think, I think when I've tasted a bourbon, oh, bourbon, bourbon, bourbon is rye. Kentucky. You're right. Mm. Yeah. I, I misspoke. You were, thank you bloated. I was right the first time. I, I, I we do cocktail lessons with correction around here, <laughs> but yeah, I think I recall like I have, I have like this, I don't, do I have my bottle over here? I think it's behind the, the refrigerator. I have this like bottle of some combination of whiskeys and bourbons out there. I called it my infinity bottle. I'm trying to get rid of it because I don't like the, the, the concept of it anymore, but it's got a lot of bourbon in it. I find it's a lot more sweeter. I didn't I don't think I had like the vocabulary to say that it was sweet per se, but I guess a little more like I guess deeper if I had to describe like a depth of it. Yeah. So it's a little more on my tongue than otherwise, which is naturally something that happens at least for yep. me for sugars and stuff. And he's saying rain makes corn, corn makes whiskey, wiki, wiki? Whiskey. whiskey, whiskey makes my baby feel a little frisky, lol, whiskey. It's an, it's an excellent is country, that a reference? Country, it's a country song. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Oh my god. I'm not a country listener. I'm not, I'm not I know sing. Wagon Wheel, yeah. that's pretty much it. Oh, and, and Red Solo Cup, naturally. I'm not going to sing it because I'm a terrible singer, but that, <laughs> that's a good reference. Okay, so that's what rye is. Now let's talk mm -hmm. about what bonded rye is. Um, mm -hmm. Because today, for our Manhattan, we're going to be used Rittenhouse bonded in, bottled in bond. Okay. So it's uh, right on the bottle. So yeah, it's right on the bottle there. Rittenhouse bottled in bond. So anytime you have a whiskey that is bottled in bond, uh, there's a couple things that that means. One, it had to be, the bottle itself had to be generated from a single barrel of whiskey. So if you buy commercial whiskey, um, what they'll do is they still age it in barrels, but then they take all that aged whiskey and they mix it to get a consistent flavor profile across the board. Um, that cannot be labeled as bonded whiskey. Um, mm -hmm. If it's bonded, that that means that this the the liquid in this bottle 
came from a single barrel and you still can get like a lot of bottles out of that one barrel right oh yeah totally but, but it doesn't mean that well, they barrels mixed. are pretty I guess, is there a specific size i don't know if you would know but like is there a specific size of a barrel you have to use like are there I don't requirements know. on that yeah i don't i don't I know wonder. that's I think, a good question really going on that i think i'm gonna look it up yeah that's i know i know um bourbon in particular um can only be it has to be in a virgin barrel so mm -hmm. so it hasn't been used for so long. it hasn't been used uh, uh Otherwise, uh, there's different distinctions of whiskey. You can still make more whiskey in those barrels, but you can't call it bourbon anymore. Um, Interesting. Oh, yeah. Well, that makes sense, actually. Yeah. Um, the other... Uh, some of the whiskey companies will also sell their extra bourbon barrels to, uh, like, beer, like, beer companies mm -hmm. and stuff. So, like, they'll age their beers in those, yeah, in those, yeah. in those uh, barrels to, to get the flavors out. So, that's the first part of what Bottled and Bond means, is it comes from a single barrel... Um, the second piece of bottle and bond is it's actually stronger per um, for its proof, right? Mm -hmm. So the majority of whiskey is 80 proof uh, in the bottle. Mm -hmm. um, 40%? Right, 40% whiskey, or 40% alcohol. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, so for, for the proof, you just take whatever the number is and divide it by two, and that's the percentage of alcohol. Mm -hmm. uh, bottled and bond alcohols are 100 proof. So the 50% alcohol. Mm -hmm. So what that means uh, is they're a little bit stronger. They give a little bit more alcoholic content to a cocktail. And that's actually a really good thing. You generally want to have stronger alcohol content in your cocktails mm -hmm. um, because it increases the flavor in the cocktail, right? So you, you can taste the alcohol a lot more through the other things you're mixing it in. And having a higher proof cocktail is generally a good thing because that means you can serve a smaller cocktail, which means you can get more flavors into it. Mm -hmm. Right, bigger cocktails they can't buy as many of too. Right, so it's that's another reason why why they generally want to make cocktails stronger. Um, so that's in essence what bottled and bond is. So it's it's usually better quality alcohol. Like it tastes better. Um, yes, there's mm -hmm. more oomph. Oh um, my and gosh, that is, yeah. And that is always sure. a, that is always a really really good thing. Um, I I think broadly that bonded alcohols taste better. Mm -hmm. um, even though they're higher proof and you're like, okay, it's just more alcohol, like, yeah, well, I think content. When it's... you have something a little more higher alcohol, like, I guess thinking about it from, like, let's say an infusion standpoint, like, I don't know exactly how much time these, these, like, um, like the spirits themselves wind up spending in the bottle, in, in the barrel itself, which in this case, apparently 53 gallons is the size of the barrels. Don't know exactly what the reason is for that, but that's the prominent number there. But, um, depending on, like, if you have a higher strength, alcohol there it winds up ripping more out of that solution than otherwise what's the price point on that and the written house rye i have to take a look at my this, this bottle is about 30, it's about 30 dollars. yeah i would say so um or maybe 40 it's either 30 or 40 i think it was about 30 35 yeah i think somewhere in, in the middle. De depending on where you buy it it'll mm -hmm. be a little bit different philadelphia's got really weird liquor distribution and laws and whatnot anyway so it's yeah. probably a little offset yeah so it's a it's a ni somewhat nicer bottle mm -hmm. um yeah. like you can definitely buy cheaper whiskeys Mm. Um, you can definitely buy cheaper ryes. Like, I know uh, Jack makes a really cheap rye. There's an Evan Williams rye, which is just mm. dog shit. Like, don't, oh my God. Don't, don't get that one. But you can still call um, it rye, I guess. Right. But, uh, but this stuff is delicious. It's really not that expensive. It's not like it's an $80 bottle. Yeah. Um, and I know, like, when I went to the store and I bought the bottle and bomb one, I was actually kind of thinking, like, okay, so it's a rye whiskey. I found that, like, the ryes, in, from what I found, are a little more on the expensive side. And the bottle and bomb, I felt like, oh, this is going to, like, strike the, <laughs> like, really skyrocket the price point there. Yeah. It, you, but oh, Blitter agrees so that Evan Williams oh is terrible. Gosh. Yeah, that's we used to drink that in college, and that's that is uh, oh, yeah. horrendous. Uh, oh yeah, alcohol. Oh I, look at that, we got Quan in here. Twenty-two hours to go. That's right. Take a look at take a closer look at that timer up there. Twenty-two hours to go. It's a it's a it's about nine fifty-one Eastern Standard Time around here. We're still going. It's not cocktails all night, but if you're into that kind of stuff, stick around. and We'll continue to go with it for as long as we're able to. Yes. Okay, um, so if you guys have any other questions about uh, rye or bottled, uh, bottled and bond mm -hmm. whiskeys, feel free to ask in the chat. Yeah. Uh, we're going to continue moving on to the second component of a Manhattan, which is the vermouth. Oh, yeah. Okay. So first off, Cameron, what is vermouth? Vermouth is a what you would call in generally a fortified, I guess mm -hmm. a fortified wine. I was, I was going to say I was a little less confident on that because I was like, oh, like pork and sherry and stuff like that. But a fortified, it's a better, it's a better example of a fortified wine. Fortified in the sense that it is technically wine in a bottle, and it is fortified in such a way that allows for the alcohol content to rise a little bit higher. Because usually when you're, when you're fermenting wine, what winds up happening is the basic chemical process of creating alcohol, at least in this case, is you wind up having this sort of yeast structure. You wind up giving the yeast sugar, and it poops out alcohol. The particular ethanol, I believe, is the particular alcohol 
in this case. But what winds up happening is as you have more alcohol in your solution, it gets more deadly for that yeast. So at some point in time, the more alcohol, the more sugar you feed to those yeasts, the more alcohol that you have, the yeast cultures inside of the liquid wind up dying off. So you gotta wonder yourself like, okay, well, how in the world do I get more alcohol if my yeast keeps dying? And there's a bunch of different methods out there, but if you continue to strike that alcohol content up a little high by, again, various different methods, I don't know what the method is here in particular, you can get fortified wines in this case, where otherwise yep. the yeast would have probably died off by then. The other, the other important thing to note with sweet vermouth in particular mm -hmm. um, is it is infused with herbs and spices. Oh, yeah, it certainly um, is. So it's, it's kind of... Uh, it's kind of in a uh, the same family as like Benedictine and like some of those uh, mm. her herbal infused liqueurs. Yeah. Um, like chartreuse is another one, and th those are like on the more extreme it's, end because so, those are hard alcohols. It's so funny that you mentioned chartreuse and um, oh my god, what was the first one? I'm blanking. Uh, Benedictine. Benedictine specifically, because yeah. like those are like the two liquors that I've had my eye on for so long. I was like, I gotta get yeah, some of that. And they're and pricey. They yeah, they're, they're they really are. pricey. Oh my god, it's like seventy, eighty dollars a bottle. Yeah, and you need like chartreuse. You need to make a last word, which is oh my, really, yeah, really, really, really the entire cocktail. family of like word cocktails out that has been completely barred off from yeah. me because I've never had chartreuse. Yeah, one of these one of these days I'll get a bottle. I have I have Benedictine, which is really good. Yeah, um, yeah. And the good thing is like once you buy a bottle of that, it lasts for, like forever because it's just a very small amount you need for a cocktail. Yeah, yeah. You only it's like a teaspoon or so. It's a so, very it's a very potent flavor. So very similar ingredients to how those are made are mm -hmm. what goes into into sweet vermouth, mm -hmm. which is very interesting. So there's like mm -hmm. the barks. Um, there's like the the herbal notes like there's all these different things that go into sweet vermouth Absolutely. Um, And it's a sweet red wine to start with so I, th I think it's about 16% alcohol. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is 16 and a half So, uh, yeah, that's roughly where all sweet vermouths fall. There's there's a, a, Only a few sweet vermouths on the market that you're gonna see the most popular one that probably all of you have in your uh, liquor cabinet right now is Martin and Rossi. Yeah, um, that's the very very classic one. It's in the green bottle. You can kind of see through it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, your parents probably have one from 1980 in there. That's you know? that's the like yeah. that's the vermouth that I started out with, and I swear like I don't use a lot of vermouth. I didn't used to use a lot of vermouth. I'm a lot more of a fan of like Manhattans and whatnot nowadays, so yeah. I use a little bit more of it. But I still had this big big bottle of vermouth, which. Kind of a no-no on the big big bottles of vermouth, yeah. but I had it for so long. Yeah, we'll I still have the dry vermouth one as well. Yeah. So, interestingly, most people, Cameron, mm. do not like any cocktails with vermouth in it. So this is. So like I feel like I, I feel like I can understand yeah. that though. So I found that when I first had vermouth for the first time, and I tried the sweet vermouth for the first time, and I was like, "Wow, this isn't sweet at all. This tastes like vinegar. I don't want the vinegar aspect of it. What the hell is going on there?" And as I kind of got drank a little bit more, dry vermouth is even more like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Ga Gallo is another really good brand. Uh, oh, another brand. That's yeah, that's nice. that's an excellent brand too. I've I've used that one before. Is that is that um, dry and sweet? Yeah, they have both. Oh, excellent! They, I, I know you were mentioning Dolan to me the other day. Yeah, but, Dolan mm -hmm. Dolan is another really good brand of vermouths. Um, specifically their um, their Dolan Blanc, mm. which is not it's not a white. Oh my gosh! It's, no Do kidding. Dolan Blanc is something you can use in a lot of older cocktails. Mm. There was a, there was um, another there was another uh, bartender on Twitch the other day who was specifically using like a Blanc, and I think it was one of their first time using. Yeah. It. Yeah, Blanc, uh, Blanc is like a more spiced version of a white vermouth. Which, Interesting. And like the 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 white vermouth is what you'll use in like martinis and stuff like that, like he was talking about. So very cool. Dolan, no, I've never had the pleasure. Yeah. So I use if I'm making martinis, I use Dolan white. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the other day I was I was making I was dry, just using dry, like a dry dry technically right. Yeah, like dry, yeah. Dry I think vermouth. I was using like a dry martini and Rossi one. It was that one's fine too. Mar it's fine. It's perfectly yeah, yeah, fine. Mar yeah. Martini and Rossi is fine. Like that's not a bad brand at all. But I, but I feel like 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 again I don't have a lot of the context on the other like blanc vermouths out there or like I guess the higher end like dry yeah. vermouths and stuff. But I feel like those martinis are like because we we were out the other day and we had the martinis at the one bar and they were distinctly different than any martini I had had on my own. And yeah. I don't know like could you tell that it was let's say a higher end dry vermouth or perhaps a blanc there. I personally couldn't tell, but I knew that it was different than the vermouth that I had been using. Right. Like for sure. So the the reason I was going to that story initially though, is like most people that have tried these types of cocktails don't like them mm -hmm. because they're using the bottle of vermouth that's been in their liquor cabinet. That's fair. For it's a very years. fair point. And these are wines. These, so are, not, these are, are not liquors. Oh and my gosh. When yeah. you open a bottle of wine at home, like you, you open up your cab, you know, for you have, have your steak for dinner, you, you put it in the fridge, right? And you drink it after a week because after a week like it starts into the conversation yes <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yes. after a week it starts tasting really poor right yeah it's true and so vermouth is exactly the same way 
it, it's a wine, it's a little stronger than regular wine, but that still doesn't change the fact that it does deteriorate in flavor over time. Mm -hmm. So there's not enough alcohol in there for like to kill everything yeah. off in there. So there's going to be a lot of like middle body, there's processes that wind up happening just because of the air out yeah. there and the microbes that live with so it. So your flavor is going to go down. It's going to start tasting vinegary. Mm -hmm. that, that's the natural yep. process that it goes through. And that's why so many people hate these cocktails. So what you need to do to make all these cocktails is you need to buy fresh bottles of vermouth and okay? small ones too so buy small bottles so you have to keep buying more vermouth mm -hmm. every time you're going to do it so it's always going to be relatively a, fresh yeah, compared right. to something that's unless you're unless you're your drinking a shit ton of these that's drinks fair. which that's is fine just get, get a big bottle if you're doing yeah. that but but and if I, you want the best tasting ones buy small bottles and then go through them and then buy another small bottle because oh, yeah. the longer it, it take it you use it for the, mm -hmm. the worse it's going to get and it's going to taste really poor and i'll find too like i've, I've kind of gotten a little more into like the wine world recently and what i wind up doing is i bought this like little oh, private cool. reserve of like inert gas and stuff it's got like argon and nitrogen and stuff in it but the idea is that you can take like let's say a bottle of vermouth like this you know you put this little thing in the center and you put like a couple of you know i'm just gonna do it fakely because this vermouth is old and i don't want to waste it on it put like a couple of taps in there and it creates this layer of inert gas that actually sits on top of the liquid within and it prevents a lot of that oxidation process which would create things that are a little it would create a flavor that's a little more vinegary exactly watch your head dear Put my Anna's gas under the back. table. So, Anna, Anna's down there doing something. Anna's picking her brushes for tomorrow. We have to go prime. Glenn, can you hit me up with another glass of Fish House Punch, please? Oh, sure. Which one? Uh, you can be the bartender this time. <laughs> He's the bartender now. Love it. Yeah, uh, Cam is thoroughly enjoying the Fish House Punch that we worked on earlier. Can you use the airlock pump? Airlock pump. Oh, oh. Um, I know. I, know what he's I have. I have you stuff have, like that. You have one of those. You can. You can. Yeah. I think personally, what I've used in my particular uh, instances is I'll kind of I'll take the inert gas. I'll put like a little bit less in there because I have a lot more faith in the air lock thing that you use as opposed to let's say because not not all like wine bottles come with like this cork kind of structure here some of them come with just a little bit like plat like kind of plasticky almost rubber maybe metal caps on top and there's not as good as a seal there so I use a little bit more of that gas in that place mega says can you make a drink with fish sauce we could try probably I mean anything I don't possible. have I think I have oyster can you sauce downstairs meat sauce thing? you can actually actually there is a twitch tender out there who goes by Lyrics Larasina, who does a lot of meat cocktails, and for the sake of that, because I brought them up, I don't know a quick I, shout out here. I don't know it's any of those, stuff. but that's interesting. Oh, yeah. Um, so vermouth, like we said, buy small bottles, use it often, fri refrigerate it after you open it because it does go bad just like regular wine does. Yeah, now I'll, I'll say real, I'll say real, yeah. quick, real quick like, if y'all are out there and like really, really into cocktails and stuff like that, Larix there does there's a little follow thing that popped up in chat. I don't usually do it, do this because it's new to me, but like, he does, he, he's done a lot of meat cocktails and stuff before and it's it's really really fascinating and i feel like it's absolutely worth mentioning he does his own twitch cocktail streams as well so drop him a follow if you can it's really cool stuff so the reason that we've been talking about the vermouth so much is that oh gosh, i yeah. have a very good vermouth that i love using for manhattans this is the best vermouth on the market um it's expensive so be prepared for that but it is very very good carpano um, antica formula yeah carpano antica uh, it is a amazing vermouth, and what we're gonna do is, I actually would like us to have a little. Oh please! Oh, um, do we have a sniffer glass back? So uh, back so? Oh, Snifters? Anna, <laughs> thank Miss Elves. Help us with the snifters. We need them back. So this sweet vermouth is much darker in color than martini and it rossi. really is you know it's interesting that you bring that up too because i feel like i went straight from martini and rossi and actually it's in and i went straight from that to uh carpana antica because i had heard i would be working with the same bottle of vermouth and i had really been using it for much too long and i realized like i really got and i told you up. and i told and you were like carpana <laughs> antica and i was like i gotta go for that and it's it's so different to me as opposed to being vinegary, it's almost bubblegummy, and it's like it sounds kind of wild when you put it that way. But like, I, I think it, I don't know what do it's, it's really, really good. Your small glasses back here. Oh, you, you found, found them. Great. Oh, excellent, it's excellent. On your desk. Thank That's you, lovely. Perfect. That's still. Oh, I see the measuring cup down there too. That's okay. We can keep it there. Just I know that it's take, there now. We're just gonna take a small pour of this. Absolutely. And we're gonna do a little bit of that zoom action. Here. Oh, let's do. Let's go for it. We got it. Let's go for the zoom here. It is the coolest so what, feature we have here. Yeah, this is very high tech stuff. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna take a look at this glass. Okay, and I'm gonna try to. Yeah, yeah, and you can you can keep on zooming like it goes. It yeah, goes that's so impressive. Far. This is a good camera. Camcorder. Okay, so you guys can see the color of this is very dark. You can see it nicely against my green. There we go. <laughs> so this is a very very dark uh, vermouth, and that's actually uh, great uh, because it has a, a ton more flavor in it than Martini Rossi. If you if you poured Martini and Rossi uh, into the same glass, it would be a lot more like ruby red color. Yeah. 
whereas, absolutely whereas this is a dark red if i'm i'm out otherwise we would have done a comparison yeah yeah it's okay if if you compare it to like ports this would be the equivalent of like what a tawny port looks like compared to a ruby port yeah that, that's kind of a way to think about i do it. I, I do have some ports if we want to do the comparison now. yeah i'm not sure if we'll be we'll, we'll do that after yeah all right. see how we're doing on time absolutely so um, we're at about about two hours and seven minutes or so i know right. i know you're a bit of a time crunch so yeah I'm we're doing sure you get that I'm, do, I'm doing okay excellent, excellent. I, I have to drive to the outer banks at three in the morning tomorrow morning so oh my gosh best of luck with that As, hopefully either, you're getting yourself some rest well you're yeah. a little bit on i'm here, either yeah? i'm either gonna so i'm either gonna just chug a lot of water and then let grace drive the first half that's or, a fair point that's a fair point <laughs> we'll see what the happens. other half of all right so so we're gonna do let's let's take a little sniff of this get the nose and tell me what what uh smells you're getting on the nose so this. what i'm used to with sweet vermouth mm -hmm. is things that are a little more vinegary but i honestly don't get much vinegar here it's a lot more it's almost it's almost rubbery to me there's other botanicals in there that I can't quite sniff out. I wouldn't say it's very woodsy, like some Amaros that I've had in the past, but... So I, I definitely there. get caramel. Like, it, I think it has some caramel notes to it. Yeah, yeah. More so more so on, like, uh, I feel like I've had, and, um, and, uh, like, caramel toffees before. Yeah. And it's very caramel toffee to me. And then I also get cherry quite a lot. There's a lot of cherry That's fair. kind of cherry, cherry. Cherry is such an interesting flavor to, like, pu like, pull out from, like, various different wines and whatnot. And I always feel like I get myself kind of stuck, because I feel like anytime you have something red, you're like, oh, of course it smells like cherry. Yeah. But, like, cherries smell differently depending on the context. Like, my my family has, like, a cherry tree that, show, that grows in, like, the backyard, and the smell of those cherries are very distinct from, let's say, like, a Luxardo or, like, a Maraschino cherry. It's very different from, like, like a cherry pit in the middle, or, like, a, a cherry dum-dum lollipop is a different smell. So, like, right. when you say cherry there's actually a lot that you're covering there and so because of i think the 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 wideness of what you say when you say it smells like cherry i feel like it evokes something different for everybody yeah but like to me i think the carpana antica is kind of bubblegummy and i'm pretty sure bubblegum has a bit of uh has a bit of uh cherryness in there <laughs> Quan saying bro fish sauce will mess up the smell oh my gosh dude if you've ever smelled oyster sauce i have oyster sauce downstairs it is potent it's very very potent make some cherry meal ah Make some cherry meow. 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 No. <laughs> All right, so let's have it's a taste of nice. this. Yeah. Mm. Oh my gosh. It's like, it's like almost chocolatey. Like oh, mead. Like mead, that's what he meant. Cherry oh, mead. Oh, no, absolutely. Cherry mead. Oh. We're, I was confused. I was trying to figure out what you oh were typing there. That's, well. That makes a lot of sense. Oh, such otter, such otter nonsense just dropped a follow. Such otter nonsense indeed. <laughs> we got a couple of drunk men on here, like, drinking vermouths and talking about alcohol and stuff. Now, Cam, if you don't science. mind, I wouldn't mind us Ooh. opening this one. I don't mind at all. I am, Ooh, because, I am prepared to preserve it. Yeah. So I'm gonna grab my inert gas compound. So you, how long did you have this bottle open for? Um, this one here? Yeah. I would say a couple of months or so. Yeah. And so, I, I think I didn't start preserving the wine stuff until afterwards, the remove. Yeah. So I think this is, this bottle here completely open to unopened. I bought it two days ago. Fresh. Yeah. Super fresh. And this here, this here, I wouldn't say it's very fresh at all. So like what, not what I would like to do just to show you how important the yeah, saving of vermouth is, is I'd like to open this and have you taste this one as well. Absolutely. Now. And you're going to see it's how crazy It's all about discovery and stuff. Because that, that still tasted amazing. Like mm -hmm. this vermouth is absolutely amazing. It's still, it's got so much like, as opposed to something, because it's not as high in alcohol, for me, I get a lot more flavor components for it. I'm getting things like, like a forest floor. I'm getting sweetness. I'm getting candy and almost chocolate and stuff, which is awesome comparatively yeah i was gonna say if you want to put a, little, put a little bit of water and give it a little get a little clean there so the one thing i'm gonna note is in that sip we had there was a little bit of acidity still mm -hmm. um yeah i would definitely say so, so. You, you can taste that like uh vinegary acidity to yeah it's definitely it's existing in the back so, for me back in my tongue. so let's go ahead and open this one and i'm going to show you the difference now of how much absolutely would you like taste. to do the honors yeah i'd love to actually yeah, we shall we shall you, a, you got a cutter i do i got a cutter back here somewhere i got a little one of these things is a wine opener Oh, there he was. Have you ever had Have you ever had mead while uh, while we're chatting about? Uh, I have. I have common? had some mead before. I think I may actually. And if you wouldn't mind me excusing behind me a little bit, I got some. I think I have mead down here. And I want to check to see what it is. Mead is an area of alcohol, specifically honey distilled alcohols, that I haven't really gone so much into because I don't exactly know how to use it. I'm kind of I'm kind of afraid. I don't want to like mess up a mead that I got. I know I have mead. Down here. Yeah, I've had. Oh, there we go. I've had it. I've had it a few times. I had honey, honey, honey meads. My favorite. I got, I got here. No, it's better here. than that. Yeah. Now. Don't tell me. There's the one bottle of mead I got. It's orange blossom mead, which Ooh, I tried once upon a time. And orange blossom is a very particular flavor. It's, it's very nice for an accent, but as a main flavor and things, it's, 
It's distracted. All right, Cam, come on over here. Oh, here I come. So this is brand new fresh bottle of Carpino Antica. There we go. I'll take the, oh. take the small corner over so, here. Oh man, it smells so good, man. Ooh, what am I dropping? Oh, what is that? Oh, graham crackers. Look at that, graham crackers. Nice. We're we're ready for this stream. Popping out of nowhere. We got we got everything ready for this stream. Oh my here. gosh, I I have prepared for a cocktail, right? Or right. Uh, a hot chocolate recipe. So now what we're gonna do? Oh so, yeah. Look take, that. So take so it still looks the same. Yes, indeed. Uh, the nose is different. It is. So, tell me what you smell on this nose now. It's a lot. It's a lot <laughs> it's, more of that caramel. It's a lot more like it's it's like it's like a. It's like a candy shop. Yeah, it's way different, right? Oh my like gosh, the, yeah. the smell tastes so Compar much different. Comparatively to like the this was, this is the new one. This oh is the this is the new bottle. Yeah, I'm definitely smell the difference there. All right, and then go ahead and go ahead and take a sip of it now. Oh, cherry. I'm getting a cherry now. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> that is so, like that is so potently like a dark yeah. fruit. It's so sweet. So that is the difference between having a fresh bottle of vermouth and a wow. older bottle of vermouth. I don't think I've ever made that comparison before. Yeah. There, there's like there's no like acidity there. No, what I zero. Can tell. It's, there's like there's no bitterness there. It's not unpleasant like at all. That tastes like full that, on like that tastes like drinking an aged port wine. Yes. Like that's exactly. That, that's, what exactly. It, that's what it tastes like. It's, oh my god, it's so it's cool. Unbelievably good. Oh, blackberry and stuff. It's great. All right. So we've got comments out here too. We have such utter nonsense. We just popped the follow. Uh, thank you. Uh, who says the orange blossom meat sounds delightful? It is pretty good. I haven't tried it in a while. And honestly, we were talking a lot about like the kind of oxidation of. Of a lot of like mm -hmm. especially things that are wine based things that are yeah, a little low proof and it probably doesn't taste as good as when I bought it like over a year ago this but absolutely and apparently bloated dead rats makes their own mead I'm assuming which is something actually I've always wanted to do and I've seen like the kinds make, of like the car boys and stuff like that and I've always wanted to make my own mead but I just I haven't I know there's a lot of like danger in that because some things are deadly and stuff well so yeah so like when you so if you don't so depending on what kind of yeast winds up mm. finding itself into like your cocktails and stuff sure, or your like Libations, it can be deadly in some cases. So you gotta kind of be careful. You kind of gotta know what you're doing. So you can make murder meat. You could make <laughs> murder meat. There we go. That sounds like a magical it's item. It's bitter. That's good. It's hard. I don't, mm, those are the tastes I don't yeah. like. There's like an undertone kind of like strong. something. You wanna try it compared it's to barely... the one that's been sitting? What? Would you like to try? That's what we, that's weird. That's kind of weird. We're, we're, we're tasting an open bottle of vermouth for like a couple of months versus a brand new bottle of vermouth. And oh. it tastes crazy different. Really? Yeah. And let me let me preserve this one with my inert gas. I heard it. It went off. You couldn't hear it on the microphone, but that went off. Yeah, you can hear it. Here, here, here's a little here's a little bit of uh, inert argon gas ASMR. I wonder if this picks it up. And real quiet, real quick. No, I can't even hear it. No, I didn't do it. You gotta be totally quiet. <laughs> I think it, I think it picked up. That's I think maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit. <laughs> okay. So, anyways, uh, so what? what so you get cherry. Dis distinctly different. Do you there's, get, do there's you like the the, ch the chocolatey notes yeah. in here now too. Yeah. I think uh, what I was getting was a little more like kind of cacao, like kind of raw cocoa with the one that's kind of been sitting out for a little while. But this is almost like bottles. confectionery Bye. chocolate. Bye, y'all. Doing their stuff. Are they gonna paint the Nemesis models? Yeah, I think they're I think they're priming the yeah. Nemesis models. Good. They're they're we're, we're, we're planning on um, playing that tomorrow morning. That game is great. Oh. Yeah, Nemesis is a really fun game. For um, those of you who might be joining us a, a little bit later, as you may notice, there is a big old countdown up there. That is actually how long we plan on continuing to do the stream on. Tomorrow morning, which we will be streaming by then, we're going to be playing a bunch of like board games and tabletops and whatnot. So if that's kind of your thing, we're going to be playing a board game called Nemesis. I think we've got a couple other things popping up. There's one that involves drinking. I really want to play it. Maybe not necessarily alcohol, but it's going to be great. That'll be about... 12 hours from now so stick around if you'd like to or like go to sleep get your rest and then pop on again also, tomorrow morning we'll this see fish bobs punch is getting better as Ooh, it sits. you were saying you were saying as it sits a little bit it as gets it better sits, well it's got the peels in there so it's pulling more of the it like, smells the, different the stuff out <laughs> it's so good <laughs> It's even better than it was previously. Oh my god, it really, it really is. Would I wow. ever, would I ever steer you wrong? Cameron? Never, never, I would, sir. I would never steer you. This wrong. is really good. Okay. It's like it's a lot less um, sour than it was previously. It's got a lot more of those sweeter notes yeah, to it. It's it balanced uh, out a bit. It balanced a little. And it's probably, um, I guess we didn't have a lot of 
I said it, so it wasn't like diluting or anything anyway. It's no. just coming to a different temperature. Yeah, no, I think uh, Fish House Punch ages really well like, mm. over time, but like letting it sit for a bit, I, I do think it's pulling more of the peel. I think so. Uh, uh, oils out. And yeah, that, that's yeah which tends to be a little more sweeter, I think. Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's going to get better as it sits throughout the night. So oh, yeah. <laughs> that was the first recipe we made. We took like an hour and a half or so to create Philadelphia Fish House Punch, which uses a bunch of different things. The most notable ingredients being peach brandy, cognac, and there was another one. Jamaican rum. Jamaican rum. That was the one. Super, super traditional Indeed. cocktail in the United Yo, States. Yo, loaded dead rats here with the follow. It sounds disgusting, but it's actually beautiful. Thank you for following bloated dead rats. I hope there's at least one of you out there. Next time you're in Indy for Gen Con, I'll have some yes. meat for you. Dude, we'll be there. We will most definitely be there. I think I think I have an idea of where we're going with this. All right, so it's only been a half an hour, and we've successfully gotten through two of the ingredients of a Manhattan. Yes, so what an that's accurate good. representation of the kind of time we spend okay. on things. There's, have, there's so much depth to these drinks. Oh, yeah. Like, and there's, that, there's a lot of yeah. time to spend on it. And, and I think it's important to get the right ingredients mm -hmm. because it, it's one of those situations where if, if you get – really really low-end stuff mm -hmm. it's not going to taste good it's noticeable also if you buy too expensive stuff you're going to be disappointed because you spent so much on it so you got to yeah. find the good in between this is the good combo of in between absolutely the rittenhouse the rye, bonded the rye whiskey is not super duper expensive no. it's distinct enough that it's not like it's not shitty rye it is good rye but it's not it's not gonna like break the bank or anything this is like would you say this is like top of the line sweet vermouth oh here? it's the best sweet vermouth you can buy and in uh, that case i think it really really matters because there's yeah. a lot more and depth that happens and this, there's a lot more change this, that can happen for this too. small bottle you probably paid like what twenty eight dollars or something i think so it was like 30 37 i think 30 32 yeah somewhere i think so so like say 25 to 35 dollars yeah um depending on what store you buy it at. yeah and that's like this is um and i if, think it's half the size and if you, can, so? if you compare that to like martin mm. martini rossi it's a lot more expensive because like a bottle of martini rossi is like, like dirt cheap it's like, like 15 eight, oh not even that, like ten dollars <laughs> it's even less than that it's it, especially a small bottle of it yeah. it's like 10 bucks it's, oh that's a good point it's really really cheap point. But um, this, this stuff, stuff is totally worth it. You can also drink this stuff on the rocks. It is so like, good. Actually, this is the first time, I think, aside from when I first tried Sweet Vermouth, this is the first time I've actually had it on its own, and I'm not disappointed, like, yeah. at all. I might have been a little like, eh, whatever, if it was just, like, the stuff that's been sitting around, but cracking that bottle open and trying it right as it comes out <laughs> the first time is, like, I knew that was game, I, game I, changing. I, the second I tasted that one, I was like, I knew when we opened that, that, that was, one. That I'm actually, I'm really glad that I went up and I picked the other bottle. I was yeah. just like, I feel like there's something here that I'm missing, well, cause and... You, that first one tasted great. Yeah, but this, it's so the, the, good, this but one this is, is like even it's like divine. Better. It's like divine. It's like so if good. this is like if this is like if I had to make a comparison, if this is like if they're both candy, this is the candy that's kind of been sitting around in like your grandmother's candy bowl okay, next to the lounge I, I chair. Taste the difference, right? Oh, okay. Oh, yes. Anna's coming out and taking the difference. Just let her pull from the bottle. This is this. <laughs> yeah, just take a sip, honestly. Really? You yeah. might as well. There's is not much. There's not much bad? left. There's not much left in there. No, it's not. This? It's not. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Oh, this is yours. It's fine. Yeah. All this is mine. It's your boat. Aside from the Kahlua and the Molo, the, the whoa, mole. The mole. Yeah, we'll get we'll get to that. There's some chocolate funny. mole bitters coming soon. Oh my god, exciting. yes. Mole good. That's it's so this one, right? It's sweet. It tastes sweeter. Interesting. Hmm. The other one. Looks I wonder. Really I wonder if the this sweetness that you're kind of getting is from the. Maybe there's a certain. Do you like vinegar heavy things? I'm okay with vinegar. Maybe that's why. Maybe you that's the down. preference there. This, this is more acidic than this one. Taste this. Taste this one again. This is this is more acidic, or I'm sorry, that one, the other one. This one would be more acidic. That would be a I guess more on the sweeter side of things. Yeah, it, it also didn't hit the air because it's not in the glass the same. So that yeah, also that's true. affected it. Thoughts. Tastes different though, right? Concerns. Complaints? There's a difference now. I can't tell you what the difference is. That's okay. Just as long as you acknowledge, remember. she agrees with us. That's <laughs> <laughs> that's the difference. Yes. Thanks, I Anna. <laughs> Thanks for coming to the show, Anna. <laughs> Bloated says, <laughs> Bloated says <laughs> mullets. So mullets? You? Oh, I don't have a mullet. No, unless and that's a term I'm not you familiar want, with. You want to see my mullet? <laughs> oh yeah, let's, let's check just, it out. No oh mullet. my god. Look mullet. at the hair that we got on the stream over here. All right. Oh my God! Hats back, back on. To the festivities. We're doing. We're we're professionals here. We we're, gotta, we're also we ashamed of our, our upper heads for various reasons. <laughs> so we keep it covered. Okay. For COVID. So the last ingredient in a Manhattan. Bitters. Well, there's two more technically, but yeah. one of them's a garnish. Yeah. So bitters, right? Mm -hmm. So traditionally in a Manhattan, if we're doing the traditional method, we're gonna use Angostura bitters. Uh, that's the one in the yellow bottle from the company Angostura. There's a lot of other companies that make a similar, like a but a um a what is it? Aromatic bitters. Aromatic bitters, yeah. yeah. There, there's a lot of companies that make a similar uh, product to Angostura bitters. 
I would just go for the brand because it's, yeah. it's a very specific flavor. Yeah. They're the only ones that have it exactly like that. I mean, I feel like if you're going to go out there and try to find find something that is like kind of like a copycat of it, like like yeah. it, the, pri- the price point is it's relatively very – it's very easy to grasp onto and it's available pretty much everywhere. Oh, they're super so you cheap. You might as well just go for the one, store. One of these bottles will last you a year. Oh, so yeah. It's, they're, they're, they're really, really good. Oh, yeah. The other Unless you make cocktails that use Angostura as like a ounce to two ounce ingredient, right. which are those, – those are wild cop- – have you ever had like a Trinidad Sour before? Yes, I have. Oh, my God. It's actually very good. It's game. Like, I like that a lot. That's that's um, when I started using more Angostura. Interesting fact about bitters, mm-hmm. uh, quickly, since we're talking about them. Absolutely. Uh, I actually don't know much about bitters at all. So bitters bitters are one of the two highly alcoholic uh, items that miners can, can buy. That's true. Yeah. Do you know what the other one is? Bitters is one of them. What's it's, the other it's one? It's, I guess, like cough medicine and stuff? No. Nope. No? Um, is, it, is it not medicinal? I'm gonna add, oh wait, vanilla extract. There we go. Vanilla yes, extract. yes. There we go. Vanilla we extract. Got we got it. So vanilla extract is uh, like 55 or 60 percent alcohol. Yeah. Uh, because you yeah. need the alcohol to extract the vanilla. It's true. Uh, same and these bitters, are bitters. Yeah, you bitters can pick are, them up in like Walmart. And yeah, stuff. bitters are like 50 percent. Oh yeah. The, the, the FDA, the FDA has determined that they are so disgusting on their own that no that one can nobody, get drunk off them. Exactly. So. Exactly. <laughs> but like, but like you most. I mean, personally, I've never chugged a bottle of Angostura bitters before. But like, it's pretty hard to drink straight bitters. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one, intense. One very nice uh, non-alcoholic drink uh, if you're interested in doing that uh, at a Mocktails party or something oh, yeah. uh, is bitters and soda I love bitters and soda actually oh yeah um, I guess so you, you can consider it non-alcoholic because yeah you know, it's it, 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 it's a honestly, good drink what it, I what I wind up doing especially with my bitters and stuff, when I get like new bitters I, what I wind up doing is I take a little cup of water actually the water that I started off with when you shared with me the mole bitters from earlier I just put a couple of drops in my water and I was enjoying that for the first half of the stream so far mm-hmm. and it's it's wonderful you kind of get to know your bitters and you can kind of d- experiment with the different yeah. like, aspects of the flavor there and i like it with the bubbly a lot too oh my god it's, yeah it's, it's really really good like the bubbly it. brand soda well or just like any club soda like it's, it's true. really good club soda oh yeah um so angostura um there's a lot of commentary you could have on like how bitters are made we're not going to go into that it's just it's it's, it's, like it's it, highly distilled is it like is there a particular process oh yeah like there's okay. in liquid intelligence there's actually recipes for bitters in there <laughs> Yo, um, yeah, <laughs> excellent. I also have I have a book by the Bitter Truth as well. I think it came one of those yeah. bitter packs, and I it probably goes to the same, yeah, yeah, or maybe something similar. Yeah, Bitter Truth is a great company. Oh, um, there's excellent. there's I think there's I three the bitters here. Yeah, there's three main companies that make bitter products: Angostura, uh, Angostura Bitter Truth, and, and Bittermints. Bittermints. Yeah, so that's okay. where that's what that's where, that's where my, your bitters. That's where these mole bitters. We got them all here. So we're gonna be looking at these a little bit later. Mole bitters from Bittermints. Absolutely. Okay, so we're gonna be using Angostura bitters for traditional. You can use orange bitters too. Yeah. Um, How are you? you also can make a Manhattan with no bitters because <laughs> technically the sweet vermouth is already kind of bitter by itself. Mm-hmm. I think it helps a little bit. Bitters are a really good thing uh, to use. And you you can think of them as like salt in a cocktail. Yeah. Where it, it, it enhances it the enhances, flavor of the cocktail, yeah, exactly. but it doesn't add to the flavor necessarily. Mm-hmm. Same thing with salt and food. You add salt and food, yeah. unlike Anna would know, uh, <laughs> you, you add salt and food to enhance the flavor of whatever you're eating. Yeah, the bitters, not, that, not to give it the taste the of bitters the salt. that you wind up having like you can use various different types of bitters and stuff there are plenty of bitter puns out here especially for people who are making the bitters and stuff yeah. but like so various different like, i have a couple of different bitters type back here there's like a celery bitters there's like a creole bitters there's peach bitters and stuff and for the most part like when you add let's say a peach bitters to a cocktail like for example a manhattan it's not gonna taste like peach necessarily but it's gonna it's gonna modify it in a way that kind of accentuates like different aspects of the other ingredients that go into it for example the rye whiskey and the sweet vermouth and whatnot yes all correct. Mm-hmm. All right, let's make a let's make a Manhattan. Let's make a fucking Manhattan. Let's go for it. So let's All grab right. a mixing glass. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take yeah, the let's, let's let's get rid of that other one. stuff and just put it uh, put it to the side behind yeah. this punch. Let's use here. let's use the good stuff. You got a nice little <laughs> mixing glass. Oh my god, where did the Sven come from? I think Sven fell off the tree. Sven. Hey, Sven. Uh, are you Sven? Sven? No, he quick, fell on my quick comment glass. on mixing glasses. Mm-hmm. Buy a really heavy bottomed mixing glass. That's the one. Uh, with a wide rim and it needs to be straight sided. That's very important. There's there's mixing glasses that are flared. Yeah, and they're I'm not very a fan. hard, very very hard to mix in. So Absolutely. you want to buy a straight sided, very heavy bottom. So one. I think I think this would be benefited. You wouldn't mind grabbing that yoga block down by your foot over there. I think there's another. One. Oh, there's one right behind me. I think this would be benefited by it's kind so of. It's down. it's really what's that. Oh, that's not there before. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so we kind of stack them on top of each other. This is kind of do? my way of kind of my way of kind of performing like a little bit of a platform ah. to, be able to zoom in and get a really good look at the. Do you have a jigger Manhattan also? Problems here. Oh yeah, I do. Um, okay. Would you prefer a metric one or probably here? Here's this one. Yeah, this Use one. ounces and stuff. It's just from uh, Barfly. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I could benefit from. Uh, Lycos, Lycos, sir. Yes. Could you hand me one of my thick cocktail books? 
Uh, Down over there, it, on the bottom shelf, should be one called Drink. Yes. Wake up, Drank. Wake up, Drank. Go to sleep. Drank. How is uh, how is everybody in the in the peanut gallery enjoying the fish house punch? Any anybody in the peanut gallery? Where are you the crowd? How's everybody punch? doing? I was gonna ask. I was actually gonna request a sour myself. A sour. We, we, we will make, make, make you one. We will make you one soon. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. By the way, if you guys do end up making uh, mocktails, you know I'll be I'll be down. To yes, and that's that's the. We plan. can give them bitters and soda. No, you, we can do, do that. You, do you have club soda? Oh yeah, I totally do. Do you want to try oh, bitters yeah, and totally soda? Do. Here, I, I zoomed in on the glass preemptively. I gotta yeah. zoom back out. We're making. We uh, the thing is, so usually, at least if you pop it on Wednesdays, usually there's chocolate? not many people here to wind up like, like imbibing in the cocktails aside from me. We got people to serve here, so we're going for it. I got some club soda down here. Hey, yo. And up here, we're gonna make Glenn, oops, sorry about that, uh, who usually is a little averse to the alcohol from bitters and soda. It's a wonderful grace. It's great glass. Let me get you, what kind of glass? Anything. Oh, I thought you said a square glass for some reason. Let's go for, you think something tall or more old fashioned? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Let's go with a, a little toddy glass. I don't plan on doing anything hot. A little toddy. That's a, that's a cute old glass. A cute stage for the cup, and LOL, yes, my sacrificial yoga blocks and stuff. What was the punch that you made, Sid Bloated? We made Philadelphia Fish House Punch, which most notably has alcoholic ingredients, including cognac, peach brandy, and Jamaican rum, like a Myers rum, a dark rum, for instance. It's also got water, lemon or lime juice, sugar, and lemon peels. Correct. And I think that was it. I think I wound up getting everything. Philadelphia Fish House Punch from 1795? Correct. We got it. I'm learning. It's an excellent, excellent cocktail. Like, mm -hmm. if, if you ever have a chance to make it, it's so good. And we've been it's drinking. It's so good. We've been drinking it the whole time. We've been drinking it's for so the great. last hour. Isn't that good? The bitters, that, those bitters. That's interesting. I'm interested. Actually, so you use, what kind of bitters do you use? That, was my, that was my chocolate mole. The chocolate mole? What, what do you think, Lycos? Okay. I'm getting like. A lot of just obviously the bitter part of it. Yeah. Actually. So it's, do, you want, it's, do you want a little more, little more soda? Uh, yeah. Little yeah, you can. You, that's the beautiful thing about this. You can kind of change it up however you want to. I almost. Like, the bubbly. Me not, me not drinking. Absolutely. Much. It kind of looks like beer a little bit because it's a little bit. Yeah. Light. It's got a light, like very light yellow. So we'll talk about the. We'll talk about those bitters in a few minutes. Hmm. That better. It's interesting because like. It's mainly that like that club slip like that club soda flavor, but like there is those notes of chocolate. And I'm just like, it's interesting. It's yeah. weird. What, what, do you, what do you think? You, more on the weird side or more on like the ooh, that's pretty good. Like honestly, like it's definitely like on like that eight, like right on the verge. Cause like, mm -hmm. like I'll take that. It's not, <laughs> absolutely like. Would I drink, like, if I had, like, a whole, like, plethora of options when I drink this again? <laughs> I'm not sure, but, like, it's not bad. That's great. Yeah. I'll take it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, we've converted another one to bitters and sodas. Also, Bloda, I love your comment. It's a Philly Long Island. That Philly is Long Island. very, very close oh my to exactly what it is. That's a, that's a great uh, way to describe it. We don't it. spread ourselves so thin as we do with the Long Island iced tea. It actually thing. does taste a lot like a Long Island. It does. Now, now that you think about Except it. Except instead of the sour mix, you've got like your you got your lemon juice, lime juice in there, which has the sour component. You've just kind of got like the other ingredients in there kind of making taking the place of the other stuff. And there's no Coke. It's true. There's, there's coke in a regular one. I guess we could technically. I wonder if we add bitters to it. The mole bitters. Will there be a little more? Yeah. I got some sassafras bitters down here. I don't know if let's we'll leave. change it up too let's, much. Let's leave it how we'll it is. It. We'll I think keep it's it good. perfect. All right. We're zooming back. Absolutely. Back in Time our to make a Manhattan. Sacrificial so this is a market. traditional Manhattan we're going to do. Let's go. Tell me where to stop. Right there. Yeah, this is pretty good. Cool. I'll take it. All right. So the first step we're going to do, you always want to do uh, in a mixing glass, the ingredients from cheapest to most expensive. Oh, interesting. If you mess up by accident, there we go. You don't waste you spend your less most money. Yeah, there exactly. You, go. you don't mess there up your go. most expensive. So, Cameron, pop quiz. What of our ingredients is the cheapest? The cheapest one here would probably be the bitters. The bitters, correct. Absolutely. So we're gonna start with bitters. Yeah. It also is it's usually. It's also a good idea to do uh, bitters. Uh, Can you move anyways. the cup so it looks like the gingerbread bread is taking a bath? Oh, interesting. I like that. There we oh, go. Oh, I see. There we go. How much further over? Move these carrots to the side. There we go. I like that. There we go. Perfect. Well, if I move the cup higher up, you'll kind of hang on the inside. I need some more books. I don't want to. I don't want to take your punch book. It is yeah. a very, very nice book. I'm not going to sacrifice that. He's he's but thinking about diving. He's, th in. he's still thinking go. about diving right in. There we go. Okay. So, whenever a, a recipe dashes, calls, right? yeah, whenever a recipe calls for dashes, just do a couple little dashes. Yeah, absolutely. You don't need too many in there. LOL. Thank you. You're so welcome. Cherish. All right, so we did about that's like a dash, like maybe two dashes on that. You can you can definitely see that there are bitters in this container. Yeah, and a good way to look at it when you look at the bottom of the glass. It's kind of hard to see here, but it should. Mm -hmm. 
barely coat the bottom of the yeah, glass. Yeah, it's, that's, it's, that's not, it's not super duper yeah. much. Okay, what is the next cheapest ingredient here, Cam? I would th- well, I would think it's probably be the Rittenhouse rye in it this is, case. It is the Rittenhouse. Yeah, our, Carpano is our very, is, very small. Our vermouth is pretty expensive. Absolutely. So we are going to do two ounces Makes sense. Yeah. of the Rittenhouse. Gotcha. Okay. So I'm going to let you take the lead on this. Go for it. Maybe right. I'll make the next one. We're going to go straight in. Two ounces of Rittenhouse. Two ounces, about 60 milliliters of your rye whiskey. A little bit of a spill. Bottle there. and bond if you got it. Okay, now this last part is has a lot of discussion amongst the world of mm-hmm. mixology. Some people will say you use one ounce of, and some people say half an ounce, maybe. No, uh, three quarter ounce. Three quarters. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm more on. I, I like the taste of the vermouth that we're using, so I like to yeah. use the full uh, half ounce. Yeah. Uh, I think it also makes the ratio a little more easier to digest if you do like the yeah, two, and actually, like the two to yeah. one. We can we can look at uh, liquid intelligence. Absolutely, yeah. It's it's definitely in that it's in that uh, bookshelf somewhere. There you go. You got it. We go to that page where it's got all the cocktails like in a. Yeah. It's like sort of in a. Nice. I didn't even know that page existed. So I just, just want to see what he says just to compare. So this is from this is from Dave Dave Arnold. Yeah, Dave Arnold. Dave Arnold's book Liquid Intelligence. He's got a whole thing on the Manhattan. In so here. he calls for a fat three quarter ounce. So it's big. Just it's like 0.875 ounces. There we go. Sweet vermouth, which is a little bit less than an ounce. Yeah, I like an ounce. Yeah, that makes sense because I, I like the taste of it better. I'd say that'd probably be about 24 milliliters for the folks across the pond out there. Yeah, it's 20, usually usually 22 for like three quarters of an ounce. But it's supposed to be a fat ounce, maybe a fat fat three quarters of an ounce, probably like 24, yeah. 25 or so. So I'm just gonna use a full ounce. Yeah, go for it. That's usually when I when yeah, I make them myself. I, I like I like it's easier to remember. I agree. And I just think that's a better amount. Yeah. Um, I don't disagree with Dave Arnold if you're listening dave <laughs> uh you you are the master at this but that's just how i like mine oh absolutely so yeah. we're gonna do definitely appreciate appreciate a drink that's a little more vermouth forward if i had to be more specific especially considering we're using a really really good vermouth absolutely right? yeah it's it's excellent i feel like for the most part none of it winds up going wasted unless it's spilled on the bar but right. if it goes in the drink it's like it's, it's, it's all for it's show better. it's okay true. so now uh we're gonna stir this uh i'm gonna grab one of your big ice cubes yeah absolutely and i think uh these are the these are the uh bar spoons from before so i think i'm gonna give them a little bit of a wash here i got i got like clean towels over here so i'm gonna give wetting it up a little bit just give it a little bit of a clean some cranberries in here Oh yeah, yeah. I had some cranberries from um, it was Thanksgiving cocktail stream a little while ago, and I just didn't have the heart to get rid of them. Cam, right. uh, Cam got one? to Cam got to come over to my house for a friendsgiving uh, that we did. Oh my uh, goodness! And, it was uh, like the best really food, food I've ever had on a Thanksgiving slash friendsgiving occasion, like ever. Eric, Eric over here is. T- 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 Suffice to say, quite the cook, quite the mixologist, and quite the cook as well. Tons of for me to learn here, and if I ever get into cooking, we got a lot to learn there as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna Dude, crack this ice in here. Just I gotta, a little. I gotta watch your technique on the cracking the ice cube because I can't seem to do it. I'm, I'm terrible at cracking ice. I'm doing it at kind of a weird angle too. Mm. Do you usually kind of rotate it around so you get yeah. like the right thing. There we go. Yeah. Cool. That's perfect. Yeah, close there enough. we go. That's perfect. That's right. perfect. That's so, better than what I can do. So we're gonna go ahead and mix this, and. Mm-hmm. What we're looking for here. There's a question out there from Blooded Dead Rats saying, is there a reason to do the least and most expensive? We were saying before, like, if you mess up with the least expensive one, then you're wind up spending the least amount of money on a co- cocktail, yep. so to speak. Yeah, so you don't want to... Making mistakes in the beginning. If you, if you fuck up, yeah. you, you want to make sure that you didn't waste a lot of money doing it. That's true, that's true. If you're the kind of person who you screw up and you're just like, ah, ditch it, and you want to throw it out, you're going to throw out... The least expensive ingredients first. So you screw up. Really so with well. a Manhattan, you want to err on the side of under stirring it rather than over stirring it because it doesn't taste as good when it's ice cold. Mm-hmm. So right now, yeah, the, I agree with so, that. So right now, the side of the glass you can't really see it super well, but the side of the glass is starting to frost. Let's that see, means that can get a nicer, nicer yeah, view. Yeah, that means it. That means it's done being stirred. Yeah. So um, you can see like there's a little bit of a slight like lighter coloration, especially on this side as well. I can I can feel it over here. But if you have something that's a little more kind of like not quite too too frost on the outside. So there's then, a whole there's a whole theory on like, so like you have a, and stuff. You got a julep strainer? Uh, no julep strainer, or, unfortunately. Uh, you got a hot one. You got a hot one. That works yeah. too. Nice thick one. And then give me a glass. Give me a nice glass. Get so the, uh, I usually would use a julep strainer for this. The strainer um, landing right up on just top. Just because that's usually what you do for yeah. Um, I actually don't have board any cocktails of this, like this. Yeah. And then I usually also would serve this up, like in a Nick and Nora or something. Nick and Nora. But this oh, also yeah. this also works perfectly fine. Like yeah, this. yeah. I've been um, just been going way. for the smaller glasses because I've forgotten. Okay. The other ones are good. Uh, there's two garnishes that you can do for a uh, Manhattan. I'll go ahead and zoom back out. Absolutely. Here we go. 
go. So there's two garnishes that you can do. You can either do a cherry or an orange or both, because <laughs> I, I actually really like both. I think. No, yeah, I feel like that I has think, a lot of flair to it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do an orange peel here. So let me grab that peeler. Nice, we got a special zoodler over here. I expect you're pouring that, you kinda, ooh. That one didn't I think you zoodle it. Did I zoodle it? I think you zoodle it. <laughs> No, I didn't have it on side. That was interesting. This is a very confusing yeah, that's the one. It's a very interesting it's like this, apparatus here. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. There we go. Definitely peeled better than my There we go. go. Yeah, nice. All right, that's close enough. Perfect. So we're gonna, so we're gonna take a small peel here. We're gonna Espresso. turn it sideways. Over the top. Espresso over the top. Kind of get the oils from the peel and rub just it around rub there. It all the way around. And then put it in. And then I also brought uh, some Good. Luxardo cherries. So mm -hmm. uh, these are the best uh, like cocktail cherries there are. Top. Top um, wide. These are also really expensive, but they last you a super duper long time. Yeah, and I mean, if you use them sparingly, like you're more or less good. You're, like, you're not oh, gonna yeah. be using them all the time unless you're making a bunch of Manhattans. Yeah, there's like 50 yeah. of them in here. So just oh, drain yeah. off the juice when you take it in, pour it in, and nice. that's our Manhattan. So Cam, go ahead and give it a shot and see what you think. Here we go. A Manhattan with your rye whiskey. Got your sweet vermouth in there. Campana at Carpano Antica, the rye is Rittenhouse rye. We got a expressed orange peel up on top, a Luxardo cherry, and a couple of Angostura bitters in there. Super duper pleasant. It's like a little more, it's forward on the rye. I would say the potency and the more, I guess the higher proofness of the rye mm -hmm. bottled and bond is show is showcased a little bit more here. And I will say that the it's a benefit though. Because something that I don't usually get in the non-bottled and bond rye whiskeys is that kind of potency right up ahead. And it pairs really well with a lot more sweeter of the components of the Carpana Antica, which usually I don't get either because I just bought this bottle two days ago, so I haven't had a chance to test it out yet. But it's good. That is an excellent Manhattan. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think the the heaviness of the of the Carpano Antica is what really gives it the flavor. Like there's so mm. many more flavors going Skull. on than normal. Skull, yes. <laughs> um Oh my gosh. That's a great Manhattan, isn't it? Yeah. Now, if you if you had to put your notes on it, the Angostura here, as opposed to, let's say, the Mole Bitters, like, how does that kind of, like, change this drink as opposed to, let's say, the, the next time that we wind up making Yeah, so if you use, like, a, like a flavored bitter, like chocolate bitters or mm -hmm. mole, like mole bitters, like we're going to use in a minute here, that yeah. definitely lends that flavor into it. Absolutely. Um, the other type of bitter I will use in these sometimes are orange bitters, and that's yeah. when you want a little bit less of, like, the um, herbal flavor and more of a fruit flavor. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think orange bitters are great in uh, in this drink. Also. I think mostly when I when I do my Manhattans, I usually do the orange bitters there. Yeah. Because yeah. what I wind up doing usually is I'll do the expression. I usually have a lot more lemons around here, so I'll express a lemon peel over top and I'll add the orange bitters on top of it to kind of kind of yeah. regain that orangeness back to it. And it's now, very it's very very tasty. Again, a, I haven't been able to have the let's say the, the the difference between the Manhattan that we have here as opposed to the Manhattans that I usually make on my own. I'm usually not using a bottled and bond rye whiskey, um, which is a little more higher proof. It's coming from a single barrel it's got say more character would that be a general way of referring to it yeah. and we also are using a sweet vermouth that is pretty much fresh fresh out of the bottle as opposed to something that's kind of kind of sitting around a little bit so mm, that's a good manhattan it's, it's, it's a definitely and level up i think uh the most important part with when you're stirring manhattan is like you don't want to get ice cold mm -hmm. so like negronis are really good ice cold oh my god um, yeah. that's that that's a drink you want to be like as cold as you can get it mm -hmm. um manhattans are not as good like they actually are better when they warm up a little bit yeah i agree with that because like there's a certain warmness that's kind of lended from the rye whiskey itself and i feel like so if what, you kind of chill it up a little bit like it kind of it gets a little lost so what, what we're going to do is we're going to taste that in a couple of minutes once mm -hmm. it warms up a little bit more i did it, i, I yeah. Got it to the right, I got it to the right amount to start with, but like just to see the difference in the taste, we'll wait for a couple more minutes to see how the how the taste changes. Absolutely. Okay, sorry, I bumped the microphone. No, you're totally all good. Um, Actually, out of curiosity, uh, I need, think I need a little bit of a bathroom break here. Do you feel comfortable perhaps taking things forward and continue talking about the Manhattan while I go take a little yes, break? Yes, yeah, go for it. Absolutely, yeah. All right, I'm going to leave you all in the capable hands of Eric here to talk a little bit more about Manhattan, perhaps prepare a little bit of the next part of it as well. Yes. And it, I think I'll do a little bit of a cleanup here as well, I'll bring some things downstairs and whatnot. Okay. Um, um, let me grab the other, I'll grab this other mixing spoon here. It looks like anything else that can be kind of cleaned up a little bit. Mm. I think we're pretty much good. This. I think most of the stuff can kind of go in white. Oh, club soda. Yeah. That's perfect. Thank you for catching that. All right. I'll be back in a little moment. I leave you in Eric's capable hands for a moment. <laughs> So guys, uh, one other thing that I did not mention uh, while we were talking about the stirring of the Manhattan is uh, how to know when your drink is chilled appropriately. Um, I think that's a really, really important concept to talk about. Uh, that's something that's not really uh, looked at quite often. Uh, there's an interesting theory, and you know, uh, Cam and I talk about the cocktail books that we read a lot because we're really into reading about these like uh, juggernauts of the industry 
and what their approaches are to creating cocktails, uh, to, to creating recipes. Uh, Dave Arnold from Liquid Intelligence has a really unique theory on the, it's basically he calls it the theory of chilling. And basically the idea is uh, when water melts, it chills the drink. And that's actually the only way that a drink can be chilled is when water melts into the, into the drink. So there is a unique uh, relationship between dilution and chilling. Um, and so interestingly, if you get a drink to a specific temperature, let's say you stir it until it's at 32 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, right? Um, that will actually not dilute any further unless you let it sit for a substantially longer period of time. Um, just like letting the ice naturally melt. But the, the li excuse me, the liquid itself has actually reached that temperature and it will not dilute any further. So uh, a cool thing is basically what he's saying is as long as you start with ice that's not sopping wet. So if you take ice out of your fridge or your freezer, you go to use it and it's not like, you know, dripping wet in your hands because that's obviously a lot of extra liquid. When you go to start mixing that in the drink, as long as you mix the drink until it feels cold, it will have the proper amount of dilution. As long as you have used the correct, um, the correct ratio of alcohols. Um, so that means you can use like little tiny ice cubes. You can use really big ice cubes like we used here. Basically any size ice cube works as long as it reaches a specific temperature. Um, so it's kind of an interesting theory uh, with uh, the chilling of cocktails and the way that you get cocktails to the correct temperature, but also the correct dilution. Because if you drink a, mi a cocktail mixture straight after mixing it or straight after putting it into a glass without mixing it with ice, so you, let's say our we took our Manhattan mixture and we drank it straight just like that, it would be way, way too strong. We need that dilution to occur. So uh, I know that's a little bit of a sciencey explanation, but that is that's oh, how is we, were we were talking about uh, dilution and chilling. Oh yeah! Oh my gosh! It's, it's, a, it's incredible. It's, it's really that you bring, fascinating. That when you bring up, when Eric brings up the whole like dilution and chilling part, there is an excellent like. I feel like I've talked about it a lot on my streams, but the book Liquid Intelligence by Dave Arnold it goes so much. Like if you're kind of like so like we're both engineers here, so I feel like we're very much inclined to talk about the very sciencey aspects of cocktail mixology and whatnot, and it goes so well as to kind of explain it in a very digestible manner, as well as kind of bring it down to a level where even people like us are like, oh my god, like we totally totally get this, yeah. and there's an entire higher like like chapter like section on chilling and dilution in there that explains it super duper well if i had to be if i had to be honest there and it's great and i haven't even gotten like nearly through the book yet so bloat 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 has had a grace qu yeah yeah, Let me, yeah let's switch all right i started taking over the stream no you're totally <laughs> good oh my god it's so it's addictive right so bloat so bloat just asked what about whiskey stones i've heard the slight water of melted ice brings out notes hmm. i prefer ice myself or just straight whiskey that's a great point bloated so um Let's let's look at that from two perspectives. So whiskey mm -hmm. stones are a cold, very, like, very cold, like, like yep. piece of metal, right? Or, um, or rock. Or you need soap well, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. So let's let's first let, let's talk about ice first, and then we can Absolutely. talk about and we can talk about other substitutes, right? Yeah. Your thing kind of went away there. Yeah. Um. um at, at there are no new chats yet. Oh, I'm there checking you go. the uh, donations. Gotcha. Um. So if you're using ice, let's say you have like a straight glass of whiskey and you add a rock into it the the whiskey is at like room temperature right it's like it's like 70 degrees while, and while you're doing that i'm gonna blow up a balloon and then that's another donation that go for it in. i yep. keep seeing to miss these i'm so sorry guys but it was ten dollars from maddie Vassell. thank you Maddie. you're very much appreciated <laughs> and your name will go up on the wall <sighs> so um so when you add the ice let's say you use one big rock in a glass of whiskey because mm -hmm. that's like that's like a very common thing that you'll see at like really nice bars and stuff right yeah so you put that big rock in to the whiskey the the rock is 32 degrees right so it's the ice is 32 degrees the, the whiskey is 70 degrees uh the ice will begin to melt because the heat from the whiskey is being absorbed by the ice which naturally right? winds up melting it makes which, there's a phase which, change which makes it there. melt right and there's there's a, we can get into the whole latent heat of melting of ice which is actually very high because you have to put a lot of energy into 32 degree ice to turn it into 32 degree water it's true right yeah. when there's that an energy when, when that dilution occurs there's a set amount of energy that is taken from the whiskey into the ice that dilutes the whiskey or i'm sorry it, it it releases water into the whiskey which dilutes the whiskey so you are not wrong uh bloated that you do end up diluting whiskey to an extent when you add a rock the difference is that uh that rock does not melt quickly if it's a large uh piece of ice and so it doesn't dilute it further so the really diluted whiskey that you end up getting is 
when you have smaller ice in there and it ends up melting from the air and that's when more water goes into the whiskey so the whiskey is going to be 32 degrees the entire time mm -hmm. um the difference is that there's going to be more water going into it because now it's melting on top of the whiskey and then that create that makes it more diluted yep um but the cool thing is if you took a, a some ice you stirred the whiskey until it was at 30 you know 32 degrees yep that if it took you five minutes to get it to 32 degrees or if it took you 30 seconds to get it to 32 degrees based could on be the same amount based of dilution on, right there. based on how big the ice cubes were mm -hmm. they'd be the exact same amount of dilution exactly yeah the that's kind of the really fascinating yeah. part about it too so like no matter how much you like when you're stirring like when you're stirring and whatnot no matter how long you wind up stirring for like because of the way this like thermal equilibrium happens and i've never taken a thermodynamics class in my life so i'm very unfamiliar with this stuff but the the beauty of it all is just like you could stir for five seconds eight seconds or continuing on so long as it's not an absurd amount of time for i guess the rest of the environment to wind up melting the ice cube you still have a very very well diluted drink that is more or less the same every single time do you have a sipping whiskey down here anywhere um i got a couple different whiskeys down here so i'll uh I'll show, you know, one. A couple of I'll I'll show one i'll show one i'll show one 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 this thing is, this is a nice one you ever have a uh, uh, bourbon Ooh, yeah. savannah i've heard about this before. yeah this is a supposedly me, really tight top rated one come here rack's glass real quick if you got one over let's there. go for it yeah i got one down here there's one over here oh, actually i'm gonna go for one of the smaller ones i use it very often oh yeah just... okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna quickly since we were um <laughs> what did he say? I can't. Science. I yes. uh, Yep. Science. Science indeed. It's a lot of science talking cocktail mixology. That's uh, if you've ever, have you ever seen the movie Twenty Three Jump Street, or yeah, or, or, or Twenty One. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, 20, I've seen, I've seen Jump Street, where uh, he ends up taking a bunch of drugs and he like goes into science class and he's writing a bunch of like sevens on the board. And then he turns around <laughs> and he's like, "Science, bitch!" <laughs> Classic. Or no, he's like, "Fuck you, science." That's what yeah, he says. Yeah. That's that's what I thought of when he said that. Oh okay. Uh, quick note: when we're talking about whiskey uh, on uh, neat uh, with water on the rocks, there's a lot of different ways to enjoy a really nice whiskey by itself. Mm -hmm. When you drink whiskey neat, that's just like this in a glass. So you're not doing anything to it. It's straight up the whiskey. Um, one of the best ways to enjoy whiskey neat and this is a trick that i learned when i was in uh miami hmm. uh i lived in miami for quite a while actually very I, wonderful I learned this from some of my business partners. very warm down there what you do is you so the theory behind this is you take a sip of whiskey and it will interact with the air in your mouth mm -hmm. and uh it actually creates stronger flavors no kidding uh, which is more bitter and it doesn't taste as good so, when you're drinking it straight like with no yeah. rocks at all well yeah so but there is a way to counteract that what mm -hmm. you do is you blow all of the air out of your mouth first first before oh, taking and, a sip? and then you take a sip but you don't breathe in when you're taking the sip huh, so the okay. way it looks is like this so it's like And it and it tastes incredibly smooth. It's interesting so, that you say that specifically because I feel like I took I I have mentioned this a couple times. So, uh, oh, Anderson's on here. Hey, what's going on, Anderson? I wish I could say I'm as much as an avid book reader, but I just turn up and make the drinks and learn that way. Nah, it's totally fair. That's the way to do it. Oh so, my gosh, so, yeah. so I'm gonna let you do this uh, trick. Actually, this is yeah, actually, trick. I'm very so, curious about this because so like the, I feel so like the first thing I want you to do is. Take a sip as if you were taking a sip of anything. So don't don't do my trick. Just what kinda, I usually do just breathe is breathe in when you're taking the sip. I learned from when I went to like a wine class and whatever, like when you're making your sips and stuff like that, you kind of you take it in, you kind of aerate it a little bit, and yeah. then you kind of breathe out and to try to feel like feeling. So try it. So do I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try it like it's that. It's gonna hurt, but do it. <laughs> yeah, it hurt. That hurt. And it does. Yeah, that hurt. It does right? really, really hurt. Okay, now take a, take a sip of the fish house punch just to like uh kind of water clean your out. I guess, I guess water over here. I guess you got bitters and water. We got a lot of drinks going on here. It's, There's a lot happening here. We got oh my god, and how many <laughs> how much do we have left? Oh my god. There's still over 21 hours left of this. It's not all alcohol. We're switching at some point. We're gonna we switch to coffee. We'll switch to coffee at like, some point. Like any good like any good Also, take, take a sip of the Manhattan now that's warmed up a little bit and see. Oh, how I it's forgot it was over there. Oh my see, god, you're so totally right. Now see how the flavors change. Now would you suggest that I aerate this one or no. perhaps just drink this one normally. See how the flavor changed? Yeah, it's, dude, it's crazy. Oh my god, it's so much less bitter. There was yeah. a, there was a little bit of a bitterness there, but that's like it's really really yeah. combined together. So that's because it was so cold that it was uh, blanking the flavors of the vermouth. Oh my gosh, yeah, I so, definitely taste the vermouth. So yeah, I, you know what? It was a lot more rye forward for, first of all, and now it's a lot more vermouth forward. Science bitch. Science bitch. <laughs> so I I I overstirred it a little bit. That's why. So 
that's why it's surprising. It's surprising. You're so humble. You caught yourself. On yes. That. But it's surprising that like you've been at this for like you got enough experience to be able to like, like catch yourself. Like, yeah, we're through this mm. a little bit. Because now it but tastes it'll like get better it tastes, overall. It tastes that much better. Now, now it right? does. Like it's, it's a so, lot more. And we'll try it. We'll try it again in another five minutes, and it'll taste even better. All right. And I'm gonna try to go back to this whiskey right. here. Yeah. So now what so, you're gonna do? So blow all the air to your mouth and do not breathe in when you take the sip. Ooh, get a little bit in the back. But it's not, it's not as burned. It didn't burn as much, right? No, not at all. And you get more of the whiskey flavor. Actually, you know what's funny? As I take the sip of the whiskey, I breathe a little bit more because I needed the air back. And as I took in more air, it started to burn a little bit more. So there's something about the whiskey itself, probably the alcohol, I guess, that's like, it's it's causing that burning sensation, but only when I take in the air. It's yeah. kind of interesting. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, and I got, I definitely got a lot more of the flavor components when I didn't wind up doing the air. It's interesting. Like it kind of turns it, turns it on its head. Usually, I'm so used to aerating what I'm drinking to try to get all the flavors to it. But with something like a, like a bourbon in this case, where you kind of have to take it into consideration that if you wind up putting the air, there's, there's a secondary like, I guess effect that's happening there where you know it's kind of distracting from it. All right, the last trick we're gonna do. I added about two drops of water to this. Um, this is another way oh, that you, you know what? This is another yeah. way you can have your whiskey. So take a smell of this now. And it's gonna smell significantly different and it's gonna taste different too. It's like it's like butterscotch now. So you hear how you see yeah. how, see how yeah. the smell is different? Absolutely. So I, I, I literally put two drops of water in there. And then take a sip of it. What's the science behind that? I'll tell you in a second. Wow. It tastes different. Butterscotch. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> I've never I've never gotten butterscotch notes from this whiskey before. Yeah, that's cool. So that's called opening the bouquet on mm. a whiskey. That's that's that the term for that. Okay. And what the water does is there are flavors that are trapped in the matrix of the or like not the matrix but like within the alcohol molecules. Because yeah. the molecules are charged and so it traps flavor molecules because flavor flavor Yo. Mole flavor molecules have a this lot of charge. This is getting really them. chemistry science. Yeah. When you add the water, mm -hmm. uh, alcohol is hydrophobic. Right? Yep. So it, it so it moves separates away, a bit. It separates and from the water. And despite it allows, the fact that it's so charged, it kind of separates. Yeah. It. And it allows those flavor molecules to, to release. come into the air and release. Wow. So you smell the butterscotch and stuff like that, and then you taste it too because now it's in your mouth more because the water is a lot. That is it such escape. a cool technique. I, I had no idea yeah. about that. Out so, of curiosity, is that somewhere in one of these books that I have here? That one, Open no. No, that's, a, no? That, that's, that's from, a whole new thing. That's, wow. from the, that's from the book of Eric. Oh so. my gosh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. and then, It's all about learning new things. So, so whenever I try a new whiskey, I try it straight, like yep. neat. I do two drops of water, and then I do it on a rock. Mm -hmm. And it tastes different all three ways. That's wild. Because if we put that on, an, you, we can try it actually if you want. Yeah, well to be fair too, like I've never actually, I've seen like um, whiskey tastings before. Like I've been to wine tastings before. I've been to like um, other types of tasting as well. But I've never been to a whiskey tasting. Because like, like usually I'm one up uh, traveling with Anna and she's not super into the whiskey scene. So it would mostly just be me enjoying myself. But I've never done a whiskey tasting. And I feel like that's a very important aspect of it. Let me say, my God, how long have you been a mixologist? You're spot on with whiskey tips, <laughs> this guy here. No, this guy's been at it at least three to four times longer than I have been. Well, I'm, I, I've only been drinking for 10 years. Naturally. <laughs> and I've been drinking for, let's see, I'm 25 now. So obviously I've been drinking for about four years, naturally. I'm a, uh, I'm a very, I love to cook. Like Cam was yeah. mentioning earlier, like I, I absolutely love to cook. Um, and I got really into cocktails because of my love of cooking, actually. No because kidding. It was actually from the cooking to the cocktails. Yeah, that got it, you. Was, it wasn't the other way around. I feel like eventually I'm going to get to a point where I love the cocktails so much that I'm not getting into it. Yeah, because I, I, I think uh, when you cook, like, you realize that you also want to be making, like, really... Because, like, Cam's been to my house a bunch of times. Like, we, we, we love to host. Eric is and, an excellent host. <laughs> like, yeah. absolutely. We, we, we love to host. Uh, it's it's really, really fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and you got to be able to make good cocktails. Oh, my God, yeah. And yeah. I'm, all, I'm also, like, a very sciencey guy, so I love, like, sort of learning about the science of how this stuff works. It's um, so interesting, too. Like, I, like, I, I would consider myself a very, like, sciencey person, too, but it's interesting to think, like, different people have, like, this sort of granularity of how much science they're willing to go through. Like, for example, like, thinking about, for example... Osmosis is a scientific concept. That's really, really cool. That's sciencey enough for a lot of people. But now we're going into the actual like molecular structure of whiskey is formed in a certain way. When you add water, which is hydrophobic, you have these ion thing going on, like charges acting out here, and you have flavanols and whatnot being produced because of this blossoming effect. That's like, it's almost like it's a more granular level of the science than something that I would usually go into. I think it's my excuse is that I feel like I'm a busy person, so I don't pay attention to that stuff. But really, you know, you wind up getting like a sort of like um, 
appreciation for it. You think, why is this happening? And you dig into it a little bit deeper, and there's answers to be found, because people have figured this stuff out. Yeah, and I think uh, I didn't figure this stuff out on my own. Like, it's like, there's sources to find. Oh, yeah. Stuff, and, you know, yeah. Dave, Dave Arnold's a great one. Mm -hmm. David Wondrich is another really good one. And I know, um, personally, I've only just recently gotten into, like, the David Wondrous, Dave Arnold world, yeah. where I think if, if in the next year or so, like, if there's, a, if there's a point of growth to be had here, this feels like it's the next level. It's at least from a personal standpoint, yeah. which is, it's really, really exciting. It also helps you understand, like, why your cocktails aren't tasting good. So if you're missing, mm -hmm. if you're missing something, like, you understand why. Yeah, I think a very, very important to being, uh, important proponent of being mixologist is kind of taken, like, let, let's say you wind up making a mistake. Mistakes are something that we can all, like, wind up learning from and whatnot. But if you make a mistake, there is a huge point of, like, skill there to be able to recover from that mistake. Like, to really realize, like, okay, something isn't tasting right. Why isn't it tasting right? Well, let's take all the lessons of of your temperatures and your mixings and your god literally everything else to see like how can i wind up fixing this i feel like if you can if you can kind of fix something that is quote unquote broken from like a mixological or cooking standpoint that really shows your skill as like a person practicing in that field right so try with the rock now so i have an ice glass in here so this, this is the yep. last stage of the whiskey tasting here so would you recommend the breathing technique probably not in this case uh, it doesn't really matter at this point oh all right because it got a little cool in there It's different. Spices. Again, right? Yeah. I'm thinking like I'm getting like cabinet spices now. Yeah. Actually, there's there's a very um it's like all spices. So remember, like I it's very it's cold, very, very like cabinet spice now. So cold, blunt, sweet. Mm -hmm. So that's why like a cold dessert always tastes less sweet than a hot dessert. Yeah, it's because... definitely not as sweet as it was before. So like previously, so when it was warmer and I was doing that, I was doing the technique where you don't have as much of the breath in there, it was very, very um did I it say was, it was caramel? It was, it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was sweet, sweet, but like very alcoholic. Absolutely. Right. Now, it, now it's not as alcoholic as it was before, and I'm getting a lot of like cabinet spice notes from it, like all spice or clove or something. And I mean more like not necessarily like the like it in like a pumpkin pie, but more like it as if you were to take this and just like take a bite of it. Yeah. We have final rhapsody. Our mat over here is this one of the cheese ones. Yeah, I have more cheese. I'm good. I will. I will grab this over here and put it on standby. Burritos go very food. well with whiskey. That's. Ooh, that's we've a good, got a great that's, combo that's good here. Combo. <laughs> that's great. But like now, what I'm getting is I'm getting a lot more of the spice components there, which for a I think this isn't a this isn't a rye whiskey. I no. think supposedly rye whiskeys are very very. Which one um, is it? This was the um was the Savannah Savannah bourbon. Oh, this one. Yeah. Yep, that's all one there. Exactly. There's a couple of wires down there. Apologies for that. Yeah, Savannah, Savannah single, single, barrel. single barrel Founders Reserve. So this is straight sure, bourbon, bar, straight bourbon whiskey. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Yeah, this, this is good stuff. So, yeah, it's very, very tasty. But it's, I, I think it's fascinating. That you can have a single whiskey, and that this is this is the whiskey, by the way, that we were drinking. So, yeah, you can you can have a, a one whiskey three different ways, and and they taste significantly different by doing it that. Those I think I never knew profile. I never knew about that other component okay, of the whiskey tasting where you could do it. You could do it chilled. You could do it with the breathing technique, and you could do it otherwise. And like that granularity of tasting whiskey which i feel like like I, I i sit here and i'm like i feel like i've i've like um kind of chickened out of a lot of like whiskey tastings in the past but i feel like i would have known this stuff if only i were to have gone to one yeah. of those things but whatever it's it's, it's all but, behind me but this it, is it, it's it really kind, really cool it kind, it kind of blows your mind right yeah like, well because like there are some whiskey there's some like bars out there where just like oh yeah we've got like 40 different whiskeys that you could try and i'm just like yeah why i don't necessarily understand that i wouldn't know if i sat there at your whiskey bar with 45 different whiskeys i'd be like um i don't know what i'm doing here i literally have no idea how to navigate this space here but with something like this i feel like if i were to have that first sip and somebody starts making like comments about that one in particular i know how to navigate everything that comes afterwards because of these different techniques here which is really really cool yeah definitely yeah. and i would say too like i'm still at that point where i i realize that my palate is kind of incomplete and i'm really trying to figure out like what where the gaps are and whatnot to try to figure out where things are and i, I think i think i was talking to anna and i think she was saying that you knew of a particular not maybe like a not a podcast or a video of a way to kind of like how you were able to kind of figure out like your different um way to like piece apart different cooking recipes or flavors and whatnot oh yeah there's there's certain books that i i've used for my my cooking learning over the years mm -hmm. um like a really really good one uh if anybody on the stream likes to cook is uh salt fat acid heat by sam and nosra it's just salt um, fat acid heat Heat, 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 yeah, heat. not heat. salt, fat, yeah. acid, heat. <laughs> that it's actually on Netflix as well. It's a no uh, kidding, it's a special. But it was a book. That's cool. It, it was a book first, 
Um, and basically that talks about like, you, write that down you can, my reference. yeah, you, you can balance any flavor in a dish with salt, uh, a fat, so like olive oil or butter or something, uh, acid, so that would be like lemon juice or vinegar, yeah. or, and then change the flavor of the food with heat. Like, so that's either through browning or boiling or, you know, whatever you're doing, right? Absolutely, and, yeah. Uh, so that really changed my views and my like skill level of how to um, adjust the flavor of foods. So, like I can taste the dish now and basically like know how to adjust it if it doesn't taste right. And I like I was saying before, I feel like that, like from my perspective, that is like the, that's the proponent of somebody who is really, really skilled in their craft. Maybe like, a, maybe not like a master or whatever, but I, I, per, from my perspective, I think that you are a much better cook than I am. And I think you're a lot more, I guess, a lot more focused of a mixologist than I am because you have that kind of ability now that, I mean, it's not a talent. It's probably something you've determined, like you've kind of developed over time with the practice and whatnot to be able to piece these things apart and be able to identify, like, now that I know how to break things apart, now I can form it into whatever I want it to be afterwards. If it's broken, you fix it. If it's fixed, you can change, yeah. you can riff on it and make it different. Well, and I, I appreciate the kind words. Like you, those are not necessary. But, <laughs> um, but I, I, know, I know what you're saying. Like, I think it's, uh, once you understand, like, the building blocks of this stuff, it makes yeah. it a lot easier to make them. Um, another really good example in the cocktail world, totally. um, and this is for anybody listening on stream that likes margaritas, Ooh. you can make your margaritas instantly better by shaking them with a little bit of salt in them. Makes in, sense. In, in the mixture, because it brings the flavor out more. As opposed to even it just if, being on like the rim. Yeah, or you could even do a sugar rim, but I mm. use I use like a, um, I think I use a 40% saline solution. It's literally whatever Dave Arnold does. Oh yeah, he, he's got a margarita thing in there too, yeah, I think, and right? It's, yeah, and he uses like, I think it's a 40% saline solution that he uses, and it, awesome. it, it makes them unbelievably good. Um, yeah, like well in this case good. the salt winds up kind of, it adds another, it kind of enhances the flavors that are already there. And tequila is a an immensely complex like drug oh, yeah. based spirit as well. I, I actually don't Pretty like much, tequila very much. So tequila it's... was something like, it, th there was a particular smell of like the agave in the tequila that like really, really turned me off for a while. My mother is super into tequila and it followed me throughout my life and I was like, ah, I'm not really a big fan of it. But tequila to me is very similar to certain whiskeys and stuff, especially when you compare like, let's say like a really, really potent bourbon to like literally any mezcal out there. It's like, it, yeah. it's wild the amount of like the the um the specificity that you have in the flavors there which is very, very interesting so we are we're getting a little close to the time where i got to start heading out soon oh we should do so, the, yeah do the so, next Manhattan so I, I do want to do that we, we have time to do that we have plenty yeah, of time for that I perfect just, um and then if there's any other questions for either of us in the chat about uh cocktails go ahead and throw them in there uh soon here so that we can answer them uh, before absolutely we wrap this section up so and if I there's think, something we don't know we'll end up looking it up and trying to yes, see if we can find, we'll find, we'll find the answer for you but uh this will this will probably be our last cocktail um last cocktail while i have while i have you here yes. we'll wind up chatting with the other folks who are around here as well we might i have a bunch of holiday recipes also queued up and whatnot and i'd love to do a couple of those oh, right. after you leave okay. so that you can wind up and then rest. take another taste of the manhattan because it's been sitting for a little while yep, so see how the flavor's changing absolutely so it's a little warmer now and it's probably going to taste even more vermouthy now. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. I think I'm getting a little more of those, like, it's not quite bitter at this point, but it's a little more, I guess, I would say it's more earthy now. So it's less of that kind of, like, candy shop sweetness chocolatey, and mm. it's more like the bitter cacao yes. and more, like, kind of, I would say, like, tree bark, I guess. Yeah, so that's getting on the edge of the temperature range where you want it to be now, because yeah. now it's starting to get more harsh. But it's isn't it fascinating yeah. how the it, it changes over the time? evolution of the yeah. drink. Like the idea that like drinks can evolve in flavor over time is something that like I think I kind of like touched upon a bit in like my own mixological journey so far. But it is really really cool yeah. to see something evolve, and especially when you drink it over time. Like if some drinks are really really good when you take them down as soon as they're cold, and some drinks are a lot better when you kind of let them sit for a little yeah. while and well, sip on them. And like I said, there's some drinks that you don't want to serve ice cold. Like Manhattan's, you do not want to serve ice cold. Mm. Negronis, you do. Negronis are great ice cold. Is it because of the, like bitter Campari component in there? Or? Uh, I don't know. That's a good. That's a good question. <laughs> I wonder. My, yeah. My that's probably a good guess. Yeah. Um, I think it's because a Negroni is bad when it's warmed up, mm -hmm. so you need it to stay cold as long as possible. Yeah, well, I guess, like, because when you have Campari in there, it's a, it's a lot more bitter it forward. It's a bitter sweet It gets dish. super bitter, super if, it's, bitter. If, it's, if it's hot. Yeah, I've had, I've had Campari straight before, like, with nothing on it, and it's like, it's like, 
There's still a sweetness to it, but it's it's also, kind of unpleasant. This stuff makes the best Negronis too. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, so I don't think it's like I don't think I even have any Martini and Rossi sweet removed in here anymore because I yeah. just completely switched the Carpana yeah. and Tika. Yeah, Carpana and Tika is the it's best stuff. Amazing. It's completely because you made the Negroni for me one time. And I was just like I've oh yeah, I've, I forgot I've, I I completely that. transformed. I made, I made that for you. In my that house. was I, I went to the store like like the week after. I was just like <laughs> I gotta get the Carpana stuff. Yeah, it makes it such a difference. Yeah, for for anybody listening that likes Negronis, for I use Carpana and Tika sweet remove. Bee feeder gin, mm. I, I think is the best one. Uh, and one. then I use um what's the last ingredient? Get your whiskey in there? Right? Oh yeah, this is a Negroni. Um gin. Kim Kim uh, Kimpart, Kimpart, yeah. Kimpart, yeah. It's, that was the easy one. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I've had a, a few drinks at this point. That's fish, okay. I want another, a, another cheers to the flushed. fish house punch. Ooh, absolutely. I'm gonna finish this one off. It's like my fifth glass. <laughs> It's like we're kind of i'm feeling it pretty good from this stuff no yeah no I, I i'll be honest with you. So usually what i wind up doing is i don't usually complete a cocktail i don't usually drink a complete cocktail on these cocktail streams because i know like i'm gonna go for a yeah. couple of hours i'm gonna get up for work in the morning but it's a friday night we're going for a hell of a lot longer they have had a couple of drinks so far but luckily i've got the entire evening to sober but up, so. the funny thing is like this one doesn't even taste like alcohol. no it's like, so it's, it's so dangerous <laughs> it's got a bit of a heat to it oh my it's god bad. it's 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 dangerous for sure <laughs> all right i gotta so, stay away from that fish house, yes. fish house punch now all right but now the we're gonna do a manhattan we're gonna, another one yeah we're gonna, we're gonna do a spin on a manhattan this is my favorite uh variation on man there's a, a million variations of course, on manhattan's of course. Out there. a million of them this is my absolute favorite one. Um, I based this off of a recipe from Cocktail Chemistry, but I've changed it a little bit. So this is nice. this is kind of my own recipe. Cool. Um, so it's a choc. I call it a chocolate Manhattan. Nice. Um, and there's two changes that we're making to the main Manhattan recipe. So we're still using Rittenhouse Bonded. Mm -hmm. That's really good stuff. Naturally. Sure. We're still using Carpano Antigua because duh, right? It's the best. Yeah, best, it's the best, best one out there, there right? Um, but we're gonna be changing the proportions a little bit of mm. everything we're using, and we're gonna use some different bitters. Okay. So first off, Rittenhouse rye. That's still gonna be two ounces. So we're still gonna use two ounces of Rittenhouse. We're still gonna be using Carpano Antica Vermouth. But I guess dropping it down a little bit. But it's gonna be a half, half ounce? Half ounce now, okay? Nice, about 15 we're, milliliters. We are going to replace that half ounce with a half ounce of Kahlua. Um, you Coffee could also, liqueur. You, you also could use Mr. Black liqueur uh, in this. Got uh, some of that down I think here. you have that down there. The, the, important, MRO, the, but... the important thing with Mr. Black, uh, coffee liqueurs that stuff is way more bitter way more, way more bitter coffee yeah so i feel like you probably use a little bit less of it compared to this because kalua has got a sweet it's coffee but it's a lot more sweet so than what, a mr. Black I, what, I, what i would do is if you're using mr black i would use the same amount of mr black but uh, a teaspoon of simple syrup also that makes sense yeah that, that replicates the flavor of clue because clue is a lot sweeter yeah. than 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 uh mr black Mr. Black is awesome. It's delicious. It's amazing. It's, like it's, for somebody, like I'm a bit of a bear, coffee buff bear, bear, myself. Powerful, powerful. Very, very coffee forward. Okay, and then we're also going to change the bitter, uh, the bitters palette on this uh, drink. So we're going to be using a combination of bitters. It's going to be half orange bitters. And remember, really? I said okay. orange bitters gives that more like fruity flavor yeah. to the drink. Um, and and then, like orange and coffee go very, very well together. Yeah. And then the and other, chocolate too. and then the other bitter we're going to be using, and this is a bit of a hard bitter to find, but it's really good is chocolate bitters. Okay. Mm -hmm. So these in particular are mole bitters from Bitterman's which yeah. is a really great company and i'm actually going to give you a little bit uh to take a, a smell of here i want i want you Absolutely. to give your tasting notes to the uh how do we want to do it i got i'm a little, little if you want to fill it up with water over there yeah. we can, actually you can put it right just, inside just put it right in there absolutely so take a smell kind of give your your thoughts on the tasting notes of these bitters uh to explain to the to the audience here it's it's like a like if you imagine like a spicy chocolate not specifically like a milk it's not milk chocolate it's like dark chocolate but it's a little darker than chocolate more like a baking chocolate but you added a little bit of like a almost like a chipotle seasoning to that yeah it's very it's very very nice it's very much like um it reminds me of heat like heat of a particular area but not necessarily spiciness. I imagine it would taste spicy, but I don't think it's if, actually too, too if, spicy. If you've ever had that like Incan style hot chocolate that's got the mm -hmm. the spice mixture mixed in oh, it, that's actually, what it smells like. I just took a sip of that and it's very, very bitter chocolate. Yeah. Like in the be in the best possible ways. Anna's got, when Anna went to Guatemala for her um, her uh, hearts in, uh, I think it was hearts in motion thing, she brought back some like straight up like Keiko blocks from there, and that tastes like what I'm basically experiencing here with these mole bitters. Yeah, it's like it's so very very nice. They're they're awesome. Yeah, I love they're, these. They're things. intense. Yeah, very intense. Really really delicious. Um, this is where the chocolate flavor is coming from. Oh yeah, so absolutely. Um, that and and the Kahlua. Kahlua kind of has some chocolatey flavors to yeah, it. Yeah yeah. All right, so what we're gonna do? Uh, this comes in like a vial dropper. Yeah. You want to you want to zoom in on this guy? Yeah, let's go for it. 
So this Got comes a little bit farther in on our mixing wise over here. Yeah, so this this comes in a like eyedropper type of thing. So I'm gonna do two eyedroppers worth of my chocolate, but maybe three, because these are kind of small ones. I'm mm -hmm. trying to do that. How long have you had this particular bottle of mole bitters for? Uh, like two years, probably. Nice. I remember were... seeing one, I was down south, and I was like, oh, mole bitters, never heard of that. Don't know what to use it in, and I, and I, um, yeah, I'm getting I pretty... skipped on the offer. I'm getting I really should have. Bittermans you can order on Amazon, I think. Oh, excellent. I, I, think, I think they're on there. Um, and then we're going to do a couple dashes of orange bitters. Mm -hmm. And I just usually like to take a smell at this point to make sure it's got the right chocolate. Yeah, so that you can smell it. It's very chocolatey smelling. Yeah, it's got a nice chocolateness to it, but the but the orange is not it's not gone. It's, no, it's very prevalent. No, and it it cuts a little bit of the bitterness mm -hmm. off of the off of the bitters there. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, we're gonna do uh, our patented uh, cheapest to most expensive method. Mm -hmm. You can almost make this like a oh, like a, naturally like a uh, what do you call it? Price is right game or whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> which one is the which one's cheapest? So I think we're gonna start with the the Kahlua feels Kahlua. like the cheapest option here. I think that is the cheapest. So half ounce of Kahlua. Gotcha. About fifteen milliliters. All you Brits out there. All the people across the pond. Mm, see if I have enough here. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, we got enough. Just enough? This reminds me of the bottle of Kahlua that I kept around for so long. And just, there was I will so say, in it. I usually do fat half ounces of these. Because yeah. I, well, I like- I think you kind of want a little bit more of the coffee chocolate thing there. Yeah. If you're going for like a chocolate Manhattan, you know? So I usually do fat half ounces of both. I'm gonna go ahead and even, I'm gonna break my rule a bit and go ahead and do the vermouth. Just yes. Yeah. Nice. It's, uh, the vermouth in this case is the more expensive one of the bunch. Usually you'd go with the uh, the, the, the rye. House rye, the bond and, uh, bottle and bond next. This is the least expensive one there, but I'm, just yeah. break, I'm breaking my rule a little. That's okay. So fat half ounce of that. Put that down. And then we're going to go two ounces of the written house. Nice. And again, I, I really firmly, I've made Manhattans with lots of different alcohols. I very yeah. firmly believe Rittenhouse Bond is the best one for it. I see. I think the, the thing that I really got to do most of is oftentimes what I will do is I think the only time I've done it is when I'm trying to compare rums together. I've done rum and cokes to try to determine the difference between different types of rums. And I got a pretty good idea of like various types of funk, dark, light, rums, Jamaican, you know, Trinidad, various different places, you name it. I wouldn't say I'm that good at it. However, I feel like I have a good idea, a relatively good idea of being able to distinguish different types of rums together, but I don't can't do the same thing with whiskeys and whatnot, or vermouths and stuff. And I would feel like if I made more Camparis and Negronis, or, I'm sorry, uh, Negronis and Manhattans and whatnot, that I'd be able to distinguish, to make that distinct, distinguishment a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also on this one, I usually don't garnish this with orange because I think it overpowers it a little bit. Mm, okay. So I usually just do the cherry. And we got we got Luxardo cherries for these ones. These are these are the good ones. Yeah, those are fantastic. Oh my god, yeah. They were coming here with a nice ice breaking technique. I'm usually too afraid to do this. I don't know. I don't know what it is about it. Like, do you, are you usually very hard on the hip? I try uh, to make it last a little bit less amount of time, just so you try to control the fall. Yeah, I'm, I'm firm. So that's about how much you want to break it up. Yeah, yeah. So this is stirred. You got a glass for me? I do. I can grab one for you. Thank you. Okay, the corner over here. My spoof. Christmas tree is picking up my bar. Oh, that's a pint glass. Easy. Let's grab one of these guys. On the side. There you go. Got you. I have a glass for you. Very good. All right. Now let's Hawthorne that up. There we go. Hmm. Little Indiana Jones switch. There we go. That's beautiful. And then I garnish this with a Luxardo cherry. Excellent, excellent. And this is one the of the best. Chocolate Manhattan. This is one of the best Manhattan variants you will have. It does need, the, it really needs the cherry though. That's important. Yeah. That's really important. Nice. So in your opinion, when you add the cherry to it, because I feel like most of the times I usually see it garnished with like the orange peel or lemon peel, because that kind of gives a sort of like an olfactory component to it when you're giving it a smell. The cherry, what do you think that, that adds to it? Because I noticed that you're trying to kind it, of it adds, skim off the, the actual juice associated with so it. So I want the flavor of this to be chocolate forward, not uh, fruit forward. Mm. And the fruit, when you, when you add the fruit to the... Um, like the fruit peel. Yeah. Uh, it, it's very like in your nose fruit. That's fair. Cher Whereas this one is kind of more cherry, of accent. Cherry focuses on more of like the umami flavors of the chocolate. Mm, yeah. So go ahead and give that a sip and see what you think. Oh, absolutely. So this is the chocolate Manhattan. It had the, it was a Rittenhouse rye in there. Mm -hmm. The Carpana Antica uh, sweet vermouth in there. Got some Kahlua in there. There was chocolate mole bitters from, it was Bitterman's, Bitterman's, I believe. Bitterman's, yeah. 
and some look and looks at our cherry. Ooh, that's so much more savory. Wow. Isn't that good? <laughs> that's like a... The breathing out on that is like a... I think... I, I want to say it's probably... It's the bitter component in there. So mm. I feel like it must be the chocolate mole bitters. When I breathe out on that, it's got the... God, I feel like I don't even know how to describe that. It's so good. It's like a dark chocolate. It's like a like a 60% like special dark chocolate. Like a Hershey's special yeah. dark chocolate. It seems like. It is so good. Bloated tea. Blo oh my god, I forgot what your name was. Bloated dead rat says consume. Oh my god. We consume this cocktail here. It is so good. I'm going to take another sip of that. It's so tasty. Wow. It literally tastes like... Like one of those like special dark chocolate things from like Hershey's chocolate, like the good stuff. I am a yeah. big dark chocolate fan, but it's also got that kind of like spicy component to it. It's not, it's uh, not, not, not spicy, but it's almost like somebody added like a little bit of cinnamon there. It's almost like somebody did a little bit of cinnamon on top, yeah. but there's no cinnamon in there. There's not even, did you add any Angostura bitters there? No. Not at all. It's almost like, because I feel like Angostura bitters are a little more like kind of cinnamony to me. And this is just like that cinnamoniness. But there's no Angostura, and there's yeah. no cinnamon. And it's it's pretty alcoholic, too. With oh, the, yeah. No, it's it's strong. Dry. It's strong, but it's, it's very, very it's not, Isn't that good? It's so good. It's a, That's one of my absolute favorite uh, Manhattan variants. Wow. I'm so tempted to try this with, like, a like a, like a a Mr. Black instead of the Kahlua. That's just the kind of coffee that I, mm -hmm. uh, the coffee liqueur that I prefer. But the Kahlua has, like, it, it lends its sort of, a, like, a sweetness there, which I feel like for a while, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I don't want to use Kahlua. If I'm trying to get a coffee flavor, I got to go with something a little more cold brewy, a little something a little more bitter. And so I kind of turned to Mr. Black, but I realized there are a lot of times that the bitterness of the coffee is actually a little bit too much. And so, you know, to your point, you can add, like, a bit of a simple syrup there to kind of even things out. But in that case, the Kahlua winds up being like the better option there because you don't have to do, put in all the effort afterwards to kind of correct yourself. You have this, this spirit as well that just kind of gives it to you from the start. Right. And I'm, I'm going to show you chilled down just a little bit more mm -hmm. how it tastes just to compare. He's putting a smidge of ice in there. So I put a big, a big piece so it doesn't over dilute it. Absolutely. Um, but just to show you what the, the change in temperature tastes like. Because mm -hmm. it does taste a little bit different colder. Nice. I'm also, I'm getting used to your setup, so I don't have my staring times perfect. No, I, to I totally get you perfected there. Perfected, exactly. All right, try that now. Consume, says Dis Disney Queen. Uh, oh, the last one wasn't eat it. Take a little sip of that drink. Oh, we're doing it. We're doing it here. That's even better now. So Ooh, with a little bit of your chill to it? A little more chill on it. Yeah, it's, that's even better now. Oh my God, it's even more like that. I'll admit, yeah. I, just, I just sucked in the air there. So I kind of ruined it a little bit for myself. Take another. I'm gonna take a. Whew. Yeah, take a breath. And take I gotta get used to this new flow. I'm so used to the old one. Wow. So I knew it needed a little bit more chill on it. That was it why did. I tried that. It did. It's a lot less spice for it. It's interesting. Just like with the rye, when it was a lot like with the um, it wasn't the rye. It was the um, it was the Savannah bourbon. When it was colder. I get a lot more of those like kind of table spice components to it. Yeah. When it was warmer, I had a little more of that chocolate component. This I'm getting a lot more of these spicier notes to it. Not spicy. Like, I I wish I could pick like out spiced. which particular spice. Like, not like hot. Yeah, spicy, not but spicy, like spiced. but spiced in that case. Uh, almost like a spice cookie. Yeah, yeah. And I wish I wish I could say like what kind of spice that is. I, I it, it's similar to a ginger, but it's not specifically ginger. Yeah. And I wish I could tell the difference, but I can't with my particular palate now. But it's like a spiced chocolate. Yep. Now, honestly, for the most part, the kind of I guess bitterness that would lend itself to I guess let's say a my vermouth, which would sit for a lot longer, is not present at all. Nope. It's mostly, it's that umami. It's like, and super, super smooth. Super, super smooth, super savory. It's almost like drinking chocolate, except it's cold. Yeah. It's like molten chocolate, but molten chocolate, but cold. Yeah. Which it's, is very, very fun. So that, that's probably my favorite cocktail. I love that drink. I had to take another second to just like appreciate that. <laughs> it's really, really good. Wow. So it's really good. Yeah. Again, if no, I, absolutely. If anyone wants that recipe, so it's two ounces of Rittenhouse, a half ounce of, of uh, Carpano Antica, half ounce of Kahlua, uh, 
two like two ish dashes of chocolate bitters and two ish dashes of orange bitters. Yeah, so the two ounces are the two ounces are going to be sixty milliliters. The half an ounce is going to be fifteen milliliters. It was half an ounce, half an ounce. Yeah, right? half ounce, half ounce. About 15, 15 milliliters. Like fat, fat half ounce. I do like twenty milliliters. Yeah, be a little, be generous with yourself. It's, You'll enjoy it. You want? You will. You're using a really good vermouth, so you want to taste more of that. Mm -hmm. And the the high alcohol content of the rye cuts through the flavor of that. It so. really does. You know, I, throughout the, this entire thing, I completely forgot that we were we were using the bottled and bond rye whiskey here so it's higher proof than normally and it i, I completely forgot about it yeah. it's mixed so well that the extra alcohol component does not really like like if, i don't notice it made, as much if before. you made this without a bonded whiskey it would be more dilute it would taste more dilute yeah and it would taste like the manhattans you get at restaurants honestly no seriously like, the manhattans at yeah, restaurants are really that's bad. a really really good point i feel like anytime i go to like i say like when i go out to a restaurant i'm like i want to try like their particular version of a cocktail and i feel like i've never had a classic cocktail like a manhattan that is really 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 good at the or mixed very very well at a restaurant that i've gone to naturally i don't go to like the very really like high end like kind of bougie places where you spend top dollar for like a piece of salmon or stuff like that but like for the most part it's it's okay or they what have I, their fancy like floofy version of a cocktail yeah like what i wind up learning is that like for example there's a different whiskey out there that you can use or there's a different sweet vermouth that i can use out there but not that the ingredients that i'm already familiar with can be elevated in such a way because it's mixed so well right that's kind of that. That's kind of the difference here. Yeah, and I think if you, if you get good at making the classic cocktails, then you can riff. So like this is a riff on a classic Manhattan, but like yeah. if, like we know how to make the classic Manhattan really well. Mm -hmm. So now you can change an ingredient slightly and get a new flavor profile. Oh yeah, it's almost like like I'm getting now like now that I have like a sip of that kind of sitting in my mouth for a little bit longer. It's almost like I took like a huff of like like really really fine cocoa powder, powder. but it's sit, he but took, it's, he it's, took it's a huff of powder. It's that's not cool. unple it's not unpleasant <laughs> there, and it's very it sits super duper well. Like there's just just this mm -hmm. constant air of chocolate in my mouth that is like and, and for me at least when i have like like processed chocolate foods nowadays there's a certain like a uh, like flavor component that it with mm. to it that sticks oh, around that very good. unpleasantly right now there's nothing unpleasant about it this. changed a little in the glass against Ooh. you and this I, I love how you can look at how um how how things change in the glass over isn't that good man Oh my god, it's so good. It's it's those it's those chocolate bitters. It's the chocolate bitters. <laughs> it's the mole bitters. I swear to God, so I'm good. like I go to the store. I'm like I'm looking for the. Ever since I missed buying these chocolate mole bitters, I'm like uh, I gotta so find good. them. They're, I gotta find them. I need so, to find these. So I go every time and I don't see them. I'm like no, I can't believe it. Yeah, bitter bitterman's is the one that makes this. Mega, and you're saying so Cameron takes a huff of that powder as they say, as the kids say, "Where's the fucking blow?" <laughs> so they say. Coco. Where's the cocoa? The coca the coco <laughs> the cocoa, in this case. The cocoa blow. Oh my gosh. This is excellent. <laughs> oh. Gold Osborne, welcome so much to the bar. Gold Osborne walks into the bar. What does he find? They find a excellently mixed chocolate Manhattan. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. I'm feeling like I'm feeling all like melancholy and sad all of a sudden because like you came up here and mixed these <laughs> the excellent oh my god, these excellent cocktails. I'm like, you gotta go. Yeah, but like, I oh do, my god, this is so cool. Yeah, I do got to get going soon here. My no, uh, my fiance and I got to drive to the Outer Banks at like three o'clock tomorrow morning. So it's Dude, got some it's got some early early morning driving. Get, this is excellent. We get like three hours this is, of sleep. This is wild. Yeah, dude. Um, is there is there anything else that you wanted to cover? Like, kind of why you got the stage here for a moment? I, I, like, my final comments are just like, so like Eric here is somebody who I met a little bit later on in my life after I've been kind of mixing a little bit more, and you can learn a lot from the people around you who kind of see things from a different perspective. I would say that Eric here more so than I focuses more on like a scientific like almost like molecular component to the cocktails that he winds up mixing he takes a very very particular like sciencey approach to the cocktails also with cooking too he's actually the person who went from cooking into cocktails as opposed to as opposed to me who's kind of from cocktails into cooking and i still haven't caught on to that yet but i've learned a lot from his particular ex perspective on it especially in terms of the books that he winds up having in his collection as opposed to mine i more like fill up my library with recipes i wanted to have like quantity of recipes so i know how to use like all the different liquors out there but you i think in particular kind of use the liquors that you have in small number and try to get the most out of them which yeah. is something that i personally have found that i've learned a lot from or from you at least over the past i, year have, so. I have a lot of bottles too that i, oh, I, I like doing that too that's but true you've got you've got the little like kind of like uh like um kind of i don't know what the word for it is but my bar, bar the bar cart the bar cart yeah absolutely yeah, yeah I, I i definitely take more of an approach of like learning techniques rather than recipes and oh like yeah the recipes come it's from like that. it's like a specialization as opposed to like a let's say like a like a as opposed to like a freshman year program you're kind of specializing you're getting your phd in like cocktails and stuff right yeah in particular bottles 
But uh, thanks for having me on. It's been a lot of fun. Absolutely. Uh, always, always fun to mix some cocktails with you guys and chat about everything. Absolutely. You know, guys, it's and and before you head up, it seems like there's a we got a big old highlighted message here from Gold Osborne. I have a recipe for you if you want it. It's called a cheesy bacon. It's a cheese stick with bacon wrapped around it, and then the better deep fried with a side of Thousand Island dressing. It's really good with all different types of cheese stick. I, am, I feel like maybe you'd be able to take. So Eric here is not much into the cheese realm of things. I for I'm, one, I'm horrendously lactose intolerant. I, so. Love, I love, love cheese. And I do there. like, I do really like cheese a lot. So mm -hmm. it's like that's actually probably my favorite food. But I like can't eat it anymore. So, oh my gosh, it's a <laughs> so I, I appreciate the recipe. It sounds delicious. I'll make that for Any, my friends. Anything but. bacon wrap is like a guilty pleasure of mine. Like I can't say that I'd be able to make it myself. I absolutely appreciate the, what like, is, the recipe what, coming. What is your there. favorite thing, bacon wrapped? Bacon? Th oh my god, bacon wrapped scallops? Yeah. Oh my god, that's my favorite thing. Yeah, bacon wrapped scallops. Are, I've made those before. I love bacon wrapped yeah. scallops. Um, oh, they're so good. Have you ever done fat washing of uh, I've never of done fat washing before, but I've seen a couple of people in particular, a couple of Instagram accounts that I follow right now who do, who've done a lot of like fat washing stuff recently. It's very cool with like chocolate and uh, olive oils and stuff. And it's, it's very interesting. Something I personally haven't done yet. Cause I'm kind of like, I'm kind of anxious about it. I'm like, I don't want to like ruin, let's say like a good thing of whiskey by yeah. put, like, like sticking a bunch of olive oil or chocolate into it. But one day, one day, now that I have the liquid intelligence you book, can, he's had a whole thing on washing. You, yeah, you, so. can, you can fat wash with bacon. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, my God. You can, you yeah. can make like, bacon whiskey and stuff yeah. like that. And it's, it's interesting, too. There's, there, there's a website that I'm on now called Crafted Pour who kind of – it's 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 mostly just recipes and stuff like that. But there are a lot of folks on there who will kind of say, like, hey, this ingredient – like, let's say this particular cocktail calls for fat wash whiskey, and this – I'm going to describe to you how I do the fat washing. I can't think of anything in particular, but uh, that's just all of, like cocktail, or, like like a different guy or like a punch drink time of website type yeah. thing. Where there's the things out there. Gold Osborne says I've been jumping in different streams and sharing recipes. Have fun with that one. Have you ever tried caramelized bacon? It's basically brown sugar in a caramelized way with the bacon. It's good with adding chocolate onto it and turning it into a candy bar. I don't think I've tried that before. That does sound good. I've yeah, done especially I've done, the caramelized bacon part of it. Yeah, I've done like glazed bacons before. Mm -hmm. um, like I've done like maple maple syrup glazed oh, bacon. Oh, classy, classy. Um, Never made it myself, but I've also I'm done. A fan. I've actually done whiskey glazed bacon too. So you can Ooh. make a, you can make a glaze with like uh, either simple syrup or, wh or maple syrup and whiskey. That sounds and then uh, in the you, you do it like on a sheet pan in yeah, the oven, yeah. and then you uh, brush the bacon with the yeah. glaze, and it's like candied. It's basically like a candied bacon. Yeah, that's a whiskey flavor to it. It's very good. Yeah, I feel like for some reason, like I feel like it, there's so many different things that you, like I bought it like a punch of bacon the other day because we're gonna do like I'm making breakfast in the morning and stuff, and I feel like I might like I might text you afterwards and be like, you know, what can I do with all this bacon and yes. stuff? Yes, caramelized kind of <laughs> in the morning because it might be a good yeah. way to kind of start the day off. And then uh, if anybody on the stream ends up asking for any of the recipes, feel I'll let you know, and we we can post them somewhere. Or wherever. Absolutely. So I guess this is a good place. This is a great uh, like uh, segue to wind up plugging the Discord server that I wind up posting here. So there's a di um, if you type exclamation point Discord over there, it's it's down in the about section below. So there's a particular channel there for drinks and whatnot. Eric there, he goes by Purple Intet. I'm there. I go by Cameron with an X naturally. And so we kind of share our recipes there and whatnot. It's it's usually a little bit quiet, um, but for the most part, we're trying to kind of encourage more people to kind of like share whatever recipes they have out there because there's an entire world of cooking and cocktails and in general mixology in solid or liquid context that is just it's a really really fascinating field personally i want to become more of a cook in my life so i find that there's something that i kind of want to gain from like people kind of sharing their recipes around and i think i mean in your case like you've already got it all down pat for the most part <laughs> but i'm sure there's a lot that we can learn from like i mean the I'll, you... I'll teach you how to make the turkey oh the there we go turkey, oh so. my god <laughs> we, were, we were over at eric's place for like a, a thanks a, 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 a friends, friends giving um get together and it was probably like the most delicious friends like thanksgiving like meal i've ever had in my life <laughs> and as well i think the thing that stuck out to me was the it was the green beans pomegranate like mustard seed that yeah. you had put together that was like that was yeah, like that was amazing blanche, like the blanche green beans oh my god it was yeah. so green it was so crunchy it was and it's, you need, it you, totally you need something point. acidic and all of the Thanksgiving food to cut through like the just insane richness. Oh yeah, and it was, it was yeah. nice. I feel like as opposed to having let's say like a cranberry sauce there that's kind of like a really really sour component there, like the green beans was like perfect. Yeah, like, perfect there. It was, it was really, a lot, really of, and, we, and we had a good time. It's always fun doing Friendsgiving. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Absolutely, buddy. Eric. It always was an fun. absolute pleasure to have you on here. I learned a lot about the Manhattans. I learned a lot about like uh, the, 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 the um, whiskey. Well, the whiskey in general, uh, especially on like the tasting techniques and stuff. And the Philadelphia Fish House Punch was something that just like honestly, I usually just, I don't end up making the match stuff. So it was an excellent excuse to be a kind of a kind of share it with all with everybody else, and as well to be able to kind of like see it in a way that I wouldn't necessarily be familiar with. Yeah, so it was really really cool. Awesome.
awesome, man. All right, man. Yo, have a, I hope you drive well. Have fun on your trip and whatnot. Thank you, sir. Tell Grace, the fiance, I said hello. I will. Absolutely. Thank you all. Pleasure. All right. That was Eric, AKA Purple Intent, who popped on for the thank miss section of the screen. We had another comment from Gold Osborne over here who says, that should, ooh, it was the chocolate on the bar thing. That should sound pretty good for one of the other recipes. It's a breakfast shake. It's a real maple syrup with vanilla ice cream blended, add chunks of pancake or waffles, then a caramelized bacon whipped cream and whatever left of the pieces of caramelized bacon and waffle or pancake pieces and drizzled with more maple syrup. Goodbye to Eric, he is heading on off now. The recipe, the, the description that Gold Osborne is giving here reminds me a lot of there's a particular account that I follow on Instagram who goes by Chef What's Chef that? Raz. Uh, Chef Raz does a lot of like really it's it's kind of geeky but it's really really cool and appreciable. He does a lot of really really cool stuff with like the syrups and pancakes and waffles and stuff. It is absolutely delectable and um, I, I would say like if so so Gold Osborne if you're out there trying to look for more recipes kind of like that I would definitely recommend Chef underscore Raz on Instagram. I would definitely recommend that because he's given me a lot of inspiration and stuff so far. And it's really, really cool. And it's also very geeky too. I'm a bit of a geek myself. I kind of like, I don't, I don't like, uh, I like d and I like uh, Stranger Things. I like video games and stuff like that. So there's a lot of stuff there. We're, we're all collectively geeks together and it's a wonderful, wonderful time. And so I see Eric kind of making it, kind of pulling himself to get over here, kind of preparing for the walk on back. Again, absolute pleasure, Eric. It was oh, yeah. very cool. Yeah, do you, do you want to bring back your um, this yeah, kind of stuff that you brought here? I'm yeah. If you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I get your Kahlua. Uh, you grab the mole bitters. Yeah, they're right. They should be right in there somewhere. Somewhere in here. I see it here. Oh, and your Luxardo cherries. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to take this stuff away from you. This is this stuff is too good. It's something I can learn from and go pick up some of my own as well. Yeah, that stuff lasts forever too. Oh my god, yeah, it's perfect. Perfect. I've had, I've had that jar of cherries for like almost a year now. This is this is even better a reason for me to wind up going out of my way and just like so like personally I'm kinda I try to keep myself a little more frugal, so I try not to spend too much money on stuff and whatnot. But like when something like for example, a mole bitters walk into your, walks into your path and there's a thirty dollar labor a lot of it, you're like Okay, do I walk by or do I like, do I take the chance? And now you've had the chocolate bitters. Now you've had the chocolate bitters. You've had it in an excellent chocolate Manhattan and it is amazing. And so you take that, it's 30 bucks, but like it's 30 bucks well spent and it's just absolutely amazing. Eric, I want to thank you once again. Have an excellent drive back, get some rest and whatnot. And I hope it was well, well spent for you. Yeah, okay, a lot of fun guys. All right, All right. peace out Eric. See you, Eric. Purple intent. Okay. So at this point, I've we've made a bit of a mess here over on the bar, and we're about at the where where are we at right now? Let me take a quick old look here. We are at the tw we are at 20 hours and 30 minutes left. Something that I don't usually t um I guess there's a time to kind of stop read some of the comments so far, and I'm gonna do that. So uh, bloated dead rat says nerd. Uh, no you. Just kidding. We're all nerds here. And Gold Osborne pops some more knowledge in here. Well, before I leave, says Gold Osborne, here's one more. If you've ever messed around with sugar glass one of the things that like they like to make is to make sugar glass wrapping and get some chocolate mousse put inside of it and then wrap it around so it looks like candy and wrapping paper also if you'd like to know you can use this method to make things like special cocktails where you can just drop in the drink and it will blend itself the idea that you can kind of take like a ribbon of a ribbon of let's say sugar or chocolate whatever you drop it in your drink and it kind of infuses all in on its own I am joined here okay. by my dearest Anna oh, how the how interview, long how's are going? we uh, still cocktailing how long are we still cocktailing yeah. um so i have an entire slew of recipes that i have prepared to be able to continue the evening with however we have for context uh there's like four other people here and yeah. we're all different types of content creators and people as well what do we want to do what, what do you have you walked out here at my bar so want a goddamn sour pepper wants a goddamn sour we can absolutely do that so i think that's something that's well intended. i am I, going to enlist the help of my wonderful thank miss elves to help me clean off this bar here Holy so shit. i'm gonna i'm gonna offer to the crowd this is a wonderful wonderful and a wonderful chocolate manhattan that was made by eric before he left on here it's it's amazing would you take a sip, a sip, take a sip of this oh, sorry i don't really like chocolate I am gonna take my the excellently made Manhattan and keep that with me. This is a dirty glass. I think this is the part of the stream we're gonna do. No, fine. It's mine then. Oh, I will take that it. Tastes like Here, take alcohol. this Manhattan instead. You're gonna like it better. Yeah. You're gonna taste it. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love my nuts. I'm really concerned. What Sham if it tastes the same way? Go ahead, try it. I tricked you. I got you. It tastes terrible for you at least. <laughs> Why are you giving me Manhattans? I don't like Manhattans. Sing! 
So I'm gonna keep all the drinks here. I'm gonna at least the health of my thank Miss Elves here. I have various different things. These these peelers are totally, totally clean. If you'll excuse us for a little bit of a moment, we're gonna kinda get our shit together over here. We're in a transitional period now. We're gonna transition to I don't have my I don't have my like cocktail wingman here. We're gonna make a couple other cocktails and whatnot. Mocktails, cocktails, other libations and stuff. We need to clean the shit out of this bar here. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda my sacrificial yoga box I'm gonna put away. Glenn, would you mind yeah. putting that drink thing back onto the shelf there? Let's do that. I have a couple of different uh, liquors and stuff. I'm going to put that away and sort things out a little bit. I have a jigger that needs to be clean. I'm going to put things that need to be clean up here. Um, I have a knife that needs to be clean, a jigger that needs to be clean. I have bar spoons that need to be clean. This here, if y'all wouldn't mind, I would greatly, I, greatly I appreciate it. Perfect. I have some bitters here. We're going to go for that. This is fine. Let's grab some stuff. We'll do this as well. There's Go here. I am, I am feeling so very, so very touched right now because usually I wind up doing this stuff alone, and this is like the first time that I've been really like, I've really been able to like share this experience with other people, especially people who are really close to me in my life, and this is a joy so far. So this is really, really exciting. Wait, wait, I have one more thing. Oh, they're walking away. They're walking away. But I have one more thing. I have one more thing. I'm gonna grab a couple. I'm gonna grab a couple coasters. A couple coasters. Have, you like wait, spray here comes the coasters, and I have this thing here. This is this is my um, this thing can be sprayed off with water and more or less dried. It's a little it's a little thing. It's very very moist. I have another one, and it's down in my drawer over here. Here's your spare. Here we go. We got a spare. We got the least about spares here. I don't want to wipe off this bar a little bit. Oh my god, it's great. What are we looking out for? Oh my goodness. There have been a couple of comments so far. I, I'm not trying to ignore chat at all. I also want to make sure that I keep track of all of these, all of these different donations and stuff that wind up coming in. So I'm gonna check out the Tiltify page real quick to see if I haven't missed anything. We've had no more donations since the last ten dollar one from Maddie Michelle. Like us. What the? What the? What the? It, 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 it. What, Coming out here perfect on my stream. I can't believe you now. Now. Oh now, my I'm gosh far, Oh my gosh, I will also mention as well. There were some more comments by gold Osborne over here as well uh, Bloated te bloated dead rats was talking about nog drinks cheers and queuing the cleanup song. Oh my god I'll get to that like in a second. putting this down. No, I will but I want to clean up the bar a little bit oh. first. How are you cleaning up the bar? Clean up. Everybody you care. Beautiful. That's what we do. It's a cleanup song. Um, I'm gonna need a little bit of a moist towelette to be able to clean oh. up this stuff here. I'm gonna put this. Can I put this in the citrus bag? Do we still have the citrus bag? Um, the citrus yes. bag is right Where the citrus bag at? Also, so we gotta keep on. Keep on going. We're gonna make some sours up in here next. That's kind of what we do. Can we make do. this a lemonade for tomorrow morning? We can make some lemonade. We have so much citrus on here. I'm gonna do a clean of my bar here. Gold Osborne also had said, "Well, before I leave, there was one more thing." Uh, oh, Gold Osborne was a bartender. Ooh. Excuse me, I had to make for their burp there as well. They made the Sonic, when the Sonic movie came out, something called a Super Sonic. It was vodka mixed with blueberry snobs lit on fire. Have fun and have a lovely day. I'm so sorry I wasn't able to acknowledge that when that came in, but in the least bit, I'm glad I was able to at the very least. We also have a chat here from, it was Looter Scooter 69 I love you, Cameron. Looter Scooter, I love you too. Love is a very interesting thing. You know, in the English language, love means various different things. Love can be a romantic thing. Love can be a familial thing. Love can be a sexual thing. And honestly, I'm not sure what type of love that I have for Looter Scooter 69 over here, but I love you. You came on here and you acknowledged me as a human being. And for that, I am very, very thankful. And there is love in my heart to be able to give to you. And I appreciate that. Blood, de blo blooded, blooded dead rats. And a completely other side of things says, Snoo Snoops. However you spell it, schnapps. Oh, we got schnapps on here. Schnoops, schnapps. Did I say something incorrectly? Oh Probably did. Oh my god! Oh my god! We're playing. We're, we're making cocktails over here. I need a. Ooh, look at look at her go. Oh my god, Anna's so good at cleaning my bar. Look, look at her go. Keep going. Keep going. So look at her go. While you do that, I'm gonna put my bitters away and also. Sorry, my backstab. I'm gonna eat this burrito. Yeah, we got burritos. We have 20 and a half hours left. Are you gonna be awake for that? I'm fucking exhausted. Oh my god. How are we gonna keep this going? You can take a nap while we- I'm not taking a nap. I am the host. This is camera with an X. I am not stopping. We are gonna continue. My god, I need to move this microphone closer to myself. Hey. Hey. 
Is this microphone action doing anything for you? Okay, and now we can put down the thingy, right? This is this is more drinking than I've done on stream literally ever. So, but on the bright side, I have 22 hours to be able to continue to oh sober up from this. We're all Free good. Water. Do you have water? Where's your water cup? Oh my! Oh, I, my water cup was cleaned. Oh, hold on, I have another one. What? New water cup. My new water cup. Yes, drink water. Oh my god. Um, what else did we need? Um. We were cleaning some stuff. I have my bar spoon here. I'm gonna put that back where it was. I, I think it's relatively really clean. Required a uh, required huh. a shower of some sort, right? That was something. We're gonna make a sour. Uh, I didn't plan for a particular sour, but somebody at the somebody at the uh, with an ex household wants a sour, so we're gonna we're gonna fucking make ourselves a sour. Um, I do have some egg whites and whatnot in the fridge. That's gonna be great. Um. Yeah. So I've been drinking a lot. Uh, I've been drinking a lot of water as well. And naturally, when you're trying to stream for a long time, or you're trying to make a bunch of libations and stuff, you should absolutely drink a lot of water down there. Um, my gastrointestinal tract is very, very quick. So I actually need to use the bathroom and go pee again. So I'm wondering if there's a volunteer to entertain the crowd for the five minutes that it'll take for me to go take go to the bathroom. What am I discussing? Before I head off to the bathroom, I just want to make sure that I mention that, of course, the, the, the reason that we're doing this whole thing, the reason that you even have a timer up in the corner is we're raising money for the World Central Kitchen as a part of Thankmas 2022. We, the Camera with an X community, are they're doing a 24-hour stream to raise as much money as we can with a particular goal of $500. You might see a couple of balloons popping up onto the screen here, and that is every donation that we have so far gets its own balloon, and at the very end, if we wind up reaching our goal we are going to do something as yet undetermined or undisclosed we can make the decision and we'll also pop every single one of these balloons at the 24 hour mark which will occur on december 10th at 8 o'clock p.m eastern standard time aka in about 20 hours and 23 minutes we are getting there and it is coming up fast a lot quicker than we think we will uh we've made cocktails so far we went over with the audience whoa we've made a manhattan so far welcome to the party jeff 14 wilson I know exactly who you are. Let's not take that creepily. Hi, everybody. You know, I. Hello, I am Anna with an X. This is now my show. Hi, how you doing? Shut up. I need to yeah, urinate, so I'm just gonna let this happen. <laughs> to all, to all the boys at the frat party out there, hey, I see you. Nurse and Anna's lemonade. I'm gonna go okay, pee. Okay. Don't drink my drinks. I want those. I don't like your drinks. <laughs> I drank it. Okay. So we have the lemon. All right. And we hey. have lemon. Oh my god, I'm so tall. You can't even see my face. <laughs> And we have lemons. I'm too tall. Welcome. Um, I actually. Oh look, hello people. Hi. Hey, what's uh, schnapps? How you spell it? Meth? What? What? <laughs> you stay hydrated. Okay. Uh, I mean, this is what happens when you come in with no context. Yep. Maybe we should make lime juice because there's a lot more limes. Oh no. Limeade. I don't know because there's a lot of lemons that have already been peeled and they're gonna go bad basically yeah, by the end of tomorrow. We should. So use we should probably lemons. use the lemons, right? Yeah, that's the smart one. Okay. I mean, if we get, uh, there's another one oh, of these sure. upstairs. We, can, we can make limeade too. Should we too. wash the juicers? No, just get me the juicers. They probably only had like limes in them, anyways. We're washing right? anything. Damn all that. <laughs> we have a fight over who is cleaning all, at this point. They're all sticky. Oh, I don't care anymore. Oh, this is for me. Citrus bag. <laughs> don't hit the. I need a um a knifey thing. A knife. Um, Shit. Where does Cameron keep anything in this place? I don't fucking know. Audience, um, oh, I need some help. <laughs> Wait, no, it's like Dora the Explorer. Can you find the knife? <laughs> Honestly, at this point. That's a little <laughs> hey Sweet. Matt, you wanna go get me the knives or something? Yeah, I just yeah. need like a small knife or something yeah. so that I can chop these in half nice. and then juice them. Uh, where are we ju Are we juicing them in this? Yes, so we're gonna put them directly in here. This I am special, one like, of those dead. horrible people that do not measure anything. Um, also, I just want those special like Disney container yeah, things. I know. This one's the one that his mom lied to get me. <laughs> My <laughs> mom. <laughs> so the thing, I, literally, I was like, yeah, Cameron's using my decanters for coffee. Now it tastes like coffee. I can't use it anymore. And she's like, oh, I'll just buy you another one. But they're pass holder exclusives, which we discovered that year because like, you know, and so she goes up to them and she's like, she was told she wasn't allowed to buy it. So then, um, so then she was like, she's like, oh, but I broke it. I need to get this for my friend. And they gave it to her. So, yeah, you know, th she kind of lied for me. Shh, don't tell uh, Yeah, don't. What are y'all making? Don't, don't tell, don't tell Disney, please. Don't tell Nikki. 
<laughs> Isn't there like a Mickey somewhere here? Um, actually, I got, there's Mickey right there. I got juice. Mickey right there. Wow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna juice him. Of course, <laughs> of course, spirit of Mickey meows. Uh, we're just gonna make lemonade with all of these. Oh my god, this one's like literally peeled open. What did they do to this thing? They abused them. How do I like zoom in? Where the hell is the knife? Uh, currently, Matt is somewhere downstairs, probably talking to Cameron, who is supposedly peeing. Yeah, we'll peeing out. or frying chicken. We'll do find out. Do you see that? They like demolished this. Yeah, no, thing. they they cut way too deep. They were like, mm, going for it. So that's why we're gonna make lemonade, and this will probably we use, have all the be used for right? breakfast. Yeah. So lemonade. We need sugar, lemon, sugar, and water. See, solution. We're cool. good. Oh, I have to zoom back out. Can we have the freaking zoom? Oh, Glenn, catch! No! <laughs> God, you're gonna scare me. Last, How far out do I go? I'm gonna go with about here. Okay. That way, Glenn can be seen. Yo, boss, we got we got knife. Okay, so we take knife. I go. <laughs> oh Sorry, let me let me let me make that very emphasized. That did not work. What the hell are you doing? So we take knife and we like chop this lemon in half. Uh -huh. You're gonna put it well, inside it the thing. Oh really? Yeah, I used to cut them as professional. Oh, but I was just gonna cut them in half. Cause it's well, fun. Oh, I just like And now we just juice them in the jar, right? Yes. So you juice, just jar. juice it. Yeah. Glenn, what direction are you going with that thing? The wrong way. Wrong way. Wait, put what? the take the lemon out, take the lemon out, and you wanna put it in. So he just stuck it in like this. Okay. You want to stick it in that way so the juice goes down. So instead here's the of thing. Up. I don't own a juicer, so I didn't know this. Yeah. Oh, dear Lord. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Squirt that baby. Okay, maybe we should put this on top of the thing over yeah. here. Yeah. Good job. Uh, hey, Pat. Could you bring over the bucket? What bucket? bucket? Oh, there's a bucket for all these lemons, right? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an idiot. But Glenn, why did you take my knife? I need that. Okay. That was why I took your knife. Okay. Nice I'm... job. This is where we're at. I got a knife. We already have a knife. You took too long. Here we go. You're. you I am currently running the show here. I had to teach Glenn. Currently ruining your show. You guys doing on the stream? You ruined my stream. It's Fuck. time to interrupt the stream with the backsided camera. Hi, everybody. It's dark and it's scary. What's going on over here? I love you, Cameron says Looter. I saw that already. Shops, meth, stay hydrated. What are you making? Make a lemonade. lemonade. Um, so we just go like Nobody squish. Can see my face. Hold on, I can fix that. I have the power. Cameron, you're distracting from my lemonade stream. The desk lamp will be a bright blue. Hey, it's my face. Nope. Um, how about how about something a little more? Um, I mean, sure, because He's currently we're in the middle dick. of our in, we're in the middle of like. <laughs> we're currently Cameron, making the next lemonade. This is in your stream. Let, go suck a lemon. You first. Oh, let him, let him like you know what? Let's have a lemon eating contest at uh the next mile milestone. Ah, sure. Let's have a sucking contest. Okay, guys. Oh, we'll we'll go only... now there with the lemons. A lemon sucking. Got How it. are you getting so much juice out of yours, Glenn? Yo, you know, actually, here's it's a really all cool about technique. technique. When you, when all you, the risk. Oh, you know what you gotta do? Yeah, I'm gonna pop on stream again. This, what? Is, this is my channel. You gotta take the lemons, right? And you do this to them. Yeah, well, we're not doing that right That's now. That's how you get the most juice out of them. Well... We're currently just trying to make- You gotta wait, Glenn. Wait your turn! I am okay, waiting my turn, like except you're not now, juicing so good enough. Like to yours anymore. seems better. We have... 20 hours left, oh my god. What kind of donations have we gotten? Mm, I can't read that. <laughs> uh, god, 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 god. What do you say god? I'm getting the juice in there, man. Um, can I have the lemonade? No. No, we're, we're currently <laughs> making lemonade, Cameron. Coffee? What coffee? Why would I want Why would I drink that shit? I'm talking to the two people that do not drink coffee. I drank drink. coffee once. When I was 11, Did you? black coffee, I wanted to be like my dad, and I was not mad enough to be my dad. <laughs> I am still not mad enough I to be my I cannot possibly dad. be the only coffee drinker in this house right now. Okay, wait one second. I'm going to rejuice this one. Oh, uh, you want to rejuice? I don't pepper trust it. doesn't like peppers. 
I mean, it's all self-tape. That seems ironic. That's very sad. My goodness. Look at all that extra. See, look at that. Okay, I'm mm. sorry. I, I messed up the juice. That's okay. I think yours has like a little bit of a different squeeze style. Uh, so, so, uh, lady, lady and boy, uh, how long are you planning on doing your... I'm just gonna, I'm gonna finish the one and I want to cut this one and then that will be it. And then we add water and then we mix it. I think I would uh, really appreciate some coffee right now. Go get coffee. Well then go make yourself some coffee. We are currently distracting the audience so that they don't miss you because they love us better. Hi, my name is Cameron with an X and uh, this is this is technically my channel, but it's a community thing happening today. We're raising money for charity. Oh, I yeah, you, Cameron, you invited me over so I couldn't Megas do yes, anything. Cameron, mega maybe. Welcome. I'm gonna go make some coffee. Okay. And then we're gonna make more cocktails. We are? Yeah. I thought you were switching I to like still haven't had my what life gives you lemon. A whiskey sour. I'm sorry, I don't know how to make a sour. I know how to make I'm lemonade. Sour. Lemonade sour? I'm making coffee. What's coffee? If you're making a you're doing a twenty four hour stream, I would suggest you take a break. He no. says he's not going to, and that's what concerns me because he's literally going to crash in the middle of it tomorrow. And then we're all gonna laugh, and I'm gonna draw it's in his face. It's gonna be so fun, and it's gonna be the middle of Nexus. When life gives you lemons, party time, correct. When life gives you lemons, don't make lemonade. Do you know who I am? We're making lemonade, Glenn. What? Oh, okay. Honestly, see. Kick life's ass. Wow. Make, make lemon, make life okay. take the lemons back. Wait, I think we're done with lemons. I think these are good. Okay. Right? Okay. Now we're gonna take all these lemons and chuck them at Glenn. Chuck them in the bucket. Never mind, I chucked them in a bucket. Can we put the bucket in the fridge? Why would we put the bucket in the fridge? Because I'll probably eat those later. You're gonna eat the- Oh my god. Anna, those did you are not dead lemons. see how many of those I Next ate? Next thing. Sugar. Do we have the spoon? Uh, the bar spoon? I think it's downstairs. Oh wait, isn't that a bar spoon right there? <gasps> bar spoon! I cleaned it. Cool. Okay, so now we need sugar. 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 So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this thing. Oh yeah, let's pour in no, let's pour in water first. Okay. So Anna. Please don't break my bike. We just paid for it. It's new. Ish. Sorry, wait, uh, the water is in the corner, if you can't tell. I also cannot read it. I don't know how Cameron looks at any of this. There is so much stuff going on in the screens. Yeah, it's kind of insane. There's a lot. You gotta give him some credit. Like, this Does is a lot. Does he have ADHD? Lot. Um, not that we know of, though he does have anxiety now. You know, let's not share his medical history. In what? my sight. <laughs> what? not share someone's <laughs> medical history on stream. Why? I have dyslexia. You're you, okay. You guys didn't hear anything. <laughs> Portal 2 was great game. Who's yeah. played Portal 2? Me. Okay, talk about Portal 2. No, I know nothing. The re I referenced it earlier because I said, like, the oh. D. It's from the Lemon Rant, which is, like, one of the most iconic things okay. from that. Um, now, what game. you do is you dump a shit ton of sugar in this. Ready? Like, oh, God, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you said a shit. Want me to stir while you pour? Let's, let's like, add a little. Oh, that's a. Okay, so there's, like, a whole inch on the bottom. That looks good. All right. So, hi, I'm Cave Johnson. And do you know who I am? I am the man who will burn down your house with the lemons. So traditionally, I understand you're supposed to like have hot water so the sugar dissolves. I have never done lemonade with hot water. Really? Same. Yeah. I always do it water. I mean, it takes a little while. Also, maybe we should have tried to strain out the seeds. Glenn, you weren't supposed to squeeze the seeds in there. I d fucking didn't. How did you do that? I don't know. It's Dude. incredible strength. Yeah. Yeah, how the hell does it squeeze through these holes? I don't know. These, these are very holy. Wait, let's go. <laughs> They're very holy. Yeah, no so we're shit. We're going to just zoom in on like the fact that somehow Glenn got seeds through. How do I? There we go. You know, I have another name too. It's Lycos Lore. Lycos Lore. Lycos Lore. Lycos Lore. Lycos Lore. Ah! Why are you zooming in on my hand? <laughs> Watch as this man stirs. Please understand, it is almost midnight and yet like... We're not the ones say I'm not this saying. This party is just getting started. Yeah. You right. What do we have? We have 20 more hours of this? More I'm so Zoom, sorry. More. more. I'm sorry. Let me just like go back to his hand, okay? I will say though, like going back to Portal. If we Rip, look at this nope. beautiful hand that is now, it reminds me of Uzi. What is it? Umi? Oh, the thing where it's like the hands with the eyeballs on them. What was it? It was like this. It was like. Honestly, this is actually as zoomed as you can get. Wait, 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 okay. That's that's the llama, isn't it? Yeah. Llama, llama, llama. 
Anyhow, I want to actually go back to Portal 2 for a hot sec. That's actually uh, my girlfriend's, that's like her favorite game of all time. It's like po the Portal series, she loves it. That's all I really want to say. It's a great game if you haven't played it. If you like puzzles, it's a great game. Anna, do you like puzzles? Um, I like visual puzzles. I do not like word puzzles. Word it's puzzles not a word not. puzzle. It's, it's, yeah. it's all done in first person. The co-op in Portal 2 is very fun. I've played through it twice now. Okay. First with uh, my sister, then with my girlfriend. Great experience both times. Oh my uh, God, if I use a mug? These are hard to get to. Wait one second. How am I supposed to get any of these mugs? I don't fucking know. It's not hard to get. that sugar water, baby. Yes. I am the baby. Thank you for noticing. You're, what? <laughs> what? Well, I mean, whatever, man. Fuck it. It's fine. It's fine. It's whatever we're doing. Let's not think about it for too long. <laughs> no. I am a very tall baby. Hi. I thought you were going to go, wah. 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 Baby wants milk. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Let's see if I okay, can, I like, say, I like, am going to get these. My hands are actually kind of sticky from the, like, Oh, yeah, my hands are super sticky from all that. Like, we were just spraying juice everywhere. I'm trying to get yeah. the, like, little, the, um, the seeds out, but I have to track them down. I got one. Wait, 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 wait. I totally got this. I totally got this. Ah! I dropped it! <laughs> Okay, Anna, let's just leave the lemons in there, just, the seeds in there. I don't even know where they went. To be because oh, wait, 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 they're, mm, they went away. I'm actually more concerned that we're going to knock this over and then there's just oh, going to yeah. be lemonade everywhere. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Oh. We're going to do this fast. Oh, she got, no, Anna, you literally just spilled lemonade. It's fine. Anna, you're done. Okay, wait, wait, wait. All right, so now I need to taste this, but I don't want to drink from the cup. Do we have a spoon? No, I'm just going to take one of the shot glasses, right? It's here. I don't freaking know. This is your fiance's I'm bar. Trying to reach. There's a drawer in front, and I cannot find where you pull the thing. Okay, let me just go over to the front. Let me just, like, blindly touch. A Anna? I got it. I got the sign. This has shot glasses in it. Yes, so we're going to take a shot glass. Ready? Are we sharing the glass, or? No, get your own shot glass. Oh. She's Glenn. Okay. We gotta make uh, Matt our resident housewife of the night. Okay. Do more dishes. Hey, no, 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 no. Wait for me so we can do cheers and all that. Oh, oh. But you already took a sip. No, I did not actually. All right, cheers. We're gonna try this. Mine has a seed in it. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, no, that's good. It's like a little sour. Even though we put in like a full Wait, like, what the cup worth of. Lycos has pinchable cheeks. Thank you. I guess. Cheek. Ah, my, my cheek. You're welcome. I don't know what they're doing downstairs, but I just hear Cameron talking. Um, this is about all I know how to do for distraction. That's, I mean, honestly, that's good lemon. I mean, mm -hmm. it's freaking lemonade. It's really hard to fuck. Dude, didn't your lips just touch that part of the glass? And your point is, does anyone care here? This is, um... Eat the documents or whatever. Yeah, we're gonna probably drink this in the morning when we have breakfast. Dude, I, I know I will. Mm-hmm. See, the issue is, I just realized, I think our pancake mix actually only has, like, one serving left. So only one of us is getting a Mickey Waffle in the morning. Are we gonna have to have a fight to the death? What games will be played later? Glenn, please tell us about Shrek. <laughs> okay, so... A little background, actually. Uh, Cameron with an X is borrowing my GameCube and some of my recording equipment, and he wanted me to bring some games. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll bring in some good games. I brought Mario Party 7, uh, Kirby Air Ride, Amazing Island, and which I'm actually borrowing from him, so it's basically returning. But in my personal collection, I found Shrek 2 for GameCube, and I'm like, I have to bring this. Like, I remember playing it as a kid, and it's not a bad game. Like, I remember it's really fun. Like, there's, like, the, multi, like, the, uh, the, the campaign is multiplayer, up to four people. Uh, multiplayer, where you can, like, fight each other is up to four people. Yep. So, yeah, I'm expecting to Shrek it up in here. So, I know at Bare Bones, it will be Cameron with an X and Lycos Lore mm -hmm. playing, like, GameCube games. Honestly, starting from, like, midnight and going till, I think Cameron has you guys going until, like, 9 a.m. Ooh, that's gonna be tough. That's gonna be a lot. I might need another um, thing of matcha. matcha. 
we do have the matcha. I mean, Cameron will probably after this, awesome. I'm going to clean up whatever is left and then go yeah. to sleep because I am exhausted. I had like multiple, I had um, two long days, uh, about two eight hour days of score builders, uh, score builders, which is a prep thing for the PT exams. So I've been doing questions since 8 a.m. this morning. Dude. And I am dead. Um, but I am still awake, which is why I'm a little crazy getting some sugar and, you know, like, you know, here. I gotta support my fiance. He's a good guy. And we gotta support, which one are we doing? The world central kitchen. <laughs> Also, I love the fact that like you and Cameron like never remember where it is and I'm like, it's right above you I'm guys like, It's that's right there. We're short. What do you expect from me? I have to go like I hate Freaking short people. Am I right? I don't know. Cameron. So like Cameron drew this and like he didn't even draw this part and I was like, it looks awesome He's like, I haven't drawn anything yet. And I was like, but the words words are there, right? Yeah, it's not drawn though. Yeah, like, but he did the You don't draw words, Anna. Um, I don't know who did this design. I think it was part of the Thinkmas stuff just you in general. I'm just gonna steal this yeah go ahead just it's water that's there for you to drink water well, we have a water can decanter very good decanter hydrate or dive of, of, um yeah stay hydrated remember decanter mm -hmm. of endless water yes it's now it's a D, D item i believe and now it's a magic card is it really yeah well i mean the magic part yes okay yeah, so uh, currently we are waiting for Cameron to come back. I heard like two minutes ago the beans being ground grounded for coffee. So that means he's Cameron is distracted downstairs. Yeah, he's being very lazy about coffee. Like, I, I don't think he's being lazy. I think Cameron's just now in this like hyper fixation -y thing where it's like, oh yeah, we're gonna get coffee. But then he's like distracted. Oh wait, I guess that's not hyper fixation. Yeah, because he's getting distracted, you numb nut. He's being like ADHD. Actually, I have no idea. <laughs> oh my god. Stop saying stuff that isn't true. I am really tired. Hi, really and tired. There are a lot I'm Lycos. Of, we literally went through so many ADHD. Dis oh, so, what? like, whoop. Whoa. You can't endless, endless water. water. Plus Load. folding bolt equals profit. Yes. yes. Oh my god. Wait. Does the okay? So if it's the canter of endless water, yes. Is it on the boat and then it's facing off of the boat, or is it drowning the no. boat and now this boat will always float on top no. of the water that is inside no. of it? No, Anna, 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 you're thinking too small brain. The meta play this, this is, is big brain you use here. the canter of endless water. I'm not exactly sure how it works, so I'm just gonna bullshit. Um, you use that to flood the world and use your your folding boat as basically Noah's Ark. Oh, great, <laughs> Noah's Ark. Okay, we need all of these animals. To come onto no. my tiny boat. Oh wait, no, I don't no, like you. Go no, away. your party is just a bunch of murder hobos. So anyone who tries to get on your boat, you just murder them in response. What? You mean you don't just shank people when they walk into your uh, your tavern? I'm so scared. I'm gonna drop the shot glass in the lemonade. <laughs> I don't know why we did this. I really should have just gotten out glasses, but I was like, this is gonna work. This is my logic, guys. Welcome. Mm, that's you good lemonade. Any water plus floating boat. Yeah, no. Wait, it just says flo folding boat. Well, yeah, because that's an item you can have. It's a folding boat. I did boat. have that. Actually, I had that, and then I had, like, a... So, another thing that I had when I had a folding boat at one point in one of my D&D &D campaigns is we had a endless... It was, like, a pit of the abyss or something. So, what I would do is I'd unfold oh, a circle, and it would literally just be a pit, basically. And so then we would take the folding boat and we just chuck it in there, fully sized. And then I would fold back up the circle and then it would just tuck into my pocket. It was like the funniest thing to imagine. Y'all want any tea or coffee up there? No, Cameron, I have like no content. I need more content. Okay. Can I have some more matcha? Never mind, Glenn wants matcha. Okay. Matcha, Ma matcha powder. It's up, up here. here. Alright, got how much? Okay, the decanter weighs two pounds. Oh my, wait. Oh, we're looking into the decanter. Yes. We you will can, find a way to make this You can use though. an action to remove the stopper and speak one of three command words. Where upon an amount of fresh water or salt water, your choice, pours out of the flask. The water stops pouring out at the start of your next turn. Choose from the following options. Steam produces one gallon of water. Fountain produces five gallons of water. Geyser produces 30 gallons of water that gushes forth at a geyser 30 feet long and one foot wide. As a bonus action while holding the decanter, you can aim the geyser at a creature you can see within 30 feet of you. The target must succeed a DC 13 saving strength saving throw or take 1d4 bludgeoning damage and, and fall prone. 
Instead of a creature, you can target an object that isn't being worn or carried and that weighs no more than 200 pounds. The object is either knocked over or pushed pushed up to 15 wow. feet away from you. <gasps> Wait, matcha powder? What? Oh, I don't know where the powder is. Do you have a Do you have a stirring stick? You do. <laughs> Oh, you're gonna use the same stirring stick? I mean, what else? More do I? alcohol. Wait a minute. Cameron, I don't want to drink before I go to sleep. Um, I also do not like rum. I am an extremely picky drinker. So I like vodka, sake, sakes. That is way too much much. So that's. Fine. And then, Actually, like, when you can mix uh, things to taste like that decent. Cup right there, oh, this but like. Oh. I'm joking. Oh, okay. I thought you were actually gonna drink some no. matcha. I'm like, oh my god. Not so, too I, much. Yeah, I find last, another person. I'm not lasting 20 hours. I'm going to sleep at midnight. Mm, I'm supposed to go to sleep in a minute. That's not gonna happen. Because I need to take a shower, and I need to be in PJs. It's when gonna I go to be bed. hard to take a shower, because last I checked, there's uh, models there. Oh, I forgot the models are in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, okay. So tomorrow, we will spend an hour, like, painting uh, part of, like, for my birthday. Uh, Final Rhapsody got me like this big game called Nemesis, and so we're gonna be doing that. So make the booze taste like candy, and we'll drink it. I don't know if you're just trying to get me trashed, or if you're trying to make it so I survive through like Cameron tomorrow. Because like either way, I still do not like rum. Let me get out vodka. I don't know where he keeps his vodka. Actually, now that I'm looking at all of this, <laughs> do you not know his setup? No. Well, you look at this. There's like a thousand. I don't live here. I don't live behind this bar either. I don't live in this apartment. I live downstairs. Um, that is where the bedroom is. That's where all my sewing supplies is. That's where my school stuff is. And the kitchen. Which Cameron does not seem to like to visit very often. Except when he has to wash all the stuff from the bar. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, there's a lot of there's a lot of booze here. Anyhow, I think we should plug up the lemonade and put that in the fridge. Oh, but wait, 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 wait. I need to like, what where's the vodka? Why do you need oh, to put it? Skunked out. I'm not putting it in the actual thing. I'm gonna put Thank it God. in the wait, wait, wait. Actually, I got this. To appease the masses. I got this. So I'm gonna take this magical thing that is extremely sticky. Yeah, because we are literally just dunking shot we're gonna, glasses like, take, in the lemonade. We're gonna take the shot glass. I will I will try this is skunk town vodka. I think it's the best vodka we had. It kinda tastes a little bit like potatoes. Do you want uh, it? Isn't vodka made from potatoes? Yeah, but it doesn't always taste like potatoes. Let's well, see. Well, I mean, it should. This one is hand peeled potatoes. Po tomato paste. Whoa, wait, what? Tomato paste? Oh, never mind. This is, wait, the simplest of ingredients. Like, wait, I'm so confused. Tomato paste. What? Hand peeled potatoes, tomato paste, lemon juice. The simplest ingredients, all locally sourced, create a smooth vodka with a mildly earthy finish. This vodka you will enjoy neat and blends into all mixed drinks wait i'm really confused did they use tomatoes to make this i guess they use tomato paste oh i poured in your freaking shot glass okay Stop okay me. i yes Stop i will beating around the bush because you're sorry, the only one drinking hey this. how are y'all how how whoa i'm sorry i really cannot read. hey hey all how how all realistic is this is wait Realistic as in I'm alive, or realistic as in we are on the internet right now, streaming to you? No, she's, a she's just a complete deep fake. We have some, like, sweating not, overweight guy. Not all vodka is potato, but the, but the best is made with potato. Okay. Okay. I didn't like, know that. See, I'm being educated because Cameron's not- Like, can you do this on VR this? I don't know. How uh, does that work? Like, I'm willing to Are they asking you to be a YouTuber? I really don't. Well, I mean, that's not our job. That's- Cause yeah, this is Cameron's like, channel, like not us. Job. Maybe there'd be more real. I don't know. Yeah, no, I've actually I've actually went to a panel about like VTube stuff, like VTuber stuff. Which funny enough, my sister was way. also there. VTubing? Yeah, like I've heard like all in all, like making a model, like it honestly like if you yeah, want to pay as hard some, as you think it is. It's not yeah. that hard, it's just um, it also depends on how much money you want to dump. Yeah. Do you think there is VR that you can smell the food? <laughs> ah, smell a vision. I don't think that exists yet. Let's because, like, drama episode about it. 
Just because there's a Futurama Let's, episode about it does not guys, mean it exists now. we just now. need to throw enough scientists at it. Stop this metaverse garbage and let's get into okay. television. Metaverse Wasn't there like a movie that world. came out in like the 2000s that you had like a smell card and you were supposed to smell it in theaters with the movie? Yes, I, I remember that. I can't I don't, remember the movie is by now. I'm pretty movie. sure it had something to do with the Spy Kids at one point, but yes, I don't remember. I it was oh okay, it was Spy Kids. Probably. I think that's close enough. So what you want to do is you want to put on the VR headset you then want to take lemons and put them in front of your face and smell them, and then you will um, have lemons. Just like <laughs> grind them right over your nose. Yeah, just go. <sighs> that might be a little more just intense. Nose than deep like. into those. And lemons. then you will Plus, smell the lemonade you have here. COVID or like any other nasal infections, that'll clear it right up. Guarantee it. Yeah, do you guarantee the next couple of hours will be fun? But hmm. wow, that actually changed this a lot. How, how is it? Is it good? Oh, it just kind of like layers. So you know how like this is a little sweet, but like sourish. Yeah. It almost like emphasizes the sour for a second, and then it brings in the sweet. Oh, huh. hmm. interesting. Which is interesting because like I did not expect vodka to do that. Yeah, I would not put booze in lemonade. Lemonade is too holy for this. No, that's actually my favorite type of um, booze because lemonade I like a lot. Mm -hmm. Like literally, we will keep lemonades because I'll just be like drinking lemonade all day and I'll forget to eat. Honestly, I, I do eat. Don't forget to eat. That's a bad decision. Uh, yep, I very much agree with her. Instead of forgetting to eat, eat one of the like twenty burritos I made today. That are still here. <laughs> I thought you we were going like to say twenty burritos left. Oh no, it's only like fifteen. I think there's only like five. Oh, because Cameron has one here, and then I know I have like my three downstairs. And there's like another six on the lunch ride. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. I'm gonna have to pack them up. That's gonna be lunch tomorrow. We're gonna eat burritos. That's what I do. I'm just excited because I don't get to eat burritos a lot. Dude, freaking. I don't even know what we're gonna do for like food <laughs> now when I get back to my place at the what what I call it the one time the loratorium I called it I think I like that the loratorium yeah listen I got so this is the bar with an X it, the what? X is silent dude I gotta do like a full like I gotta do a lot of work on my end <laughs> the good old Lycos lore channel I would have brought Moot Moot actually but uh he, he's he's at shout home shout out Lycos lore wait I I'm gonna find this out okay, oh my god click on the whoa where is the <laughs> Oh wait, I forgot. This is a different screen. So if I click on it. Okay. So this is when Anna breaks the entire stream. Um, Let's watch. I swear. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the uh, the keyboard just popped up. There. Why are there three keyboards then? Hey, uh, I need the water. Okay, we're gonna like eyes. shout shout out. How do I do this? Does that work? If I do that, no, it doesn't work. I don't know how to shout out a person, but I was gonna shout out like Osor. You don't need. You don't no, need well, to I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it because I'm amazing. I just need to figure out. How to <laughs> so if I click on things, that might break. Everything. Editor me, put in some like dramatic music. Dun 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 Wait, dun, is dun. it this way or no? It's not Naruto running, right? No, he doesn't yeah, do that. Because Naruto running is when it's like the hands are behind you. Go. We made lemonade. I tried it with some skunk cow and vodka in the in this oh, very there, sticky. She may or may not be actually here I, come. I tried. Quacks. Quick, quick, quick. All right, Glenn, put these in the in those things. Quellenberg. Okay. Here, I'm switching out. Here we go. Oh, I have to swap oh, out. Oh, um, goodness. What did I miss, y'all? Um, a lot. What did I miss? Uh, we tried to You made lemonade. Out. Yes, I made lemonade. Milk, I milk, lemonade. What did we make? I tried to figure out how to shout out people. Oh, you have to do slash shout out, and then who are you shouting out? Glenn. Oh, like us, Lore? Yeah. Oh, bro, famous streamer and YouTuber. Yo, yo I got this. No, wait, I got wait. This. I didn't even spell it right. Oh my God, Quacks of Quendelberg. Oh my God, you can't even spell shout out correctly. It's okay. <laughs> I love you and you're dyslexic, so it's perfect. But uh, like this when he falls off the deck table. I was, I was talking about the Loratorium. Mm -hmm. Um, hi there. My I name is. I've been downstairs for like 40 minutes or so, but I, my name is Cameron with an X, and I'm the. Been host downstairs of this for about 30 minutes. It's, you know? it's okay. I kind of lose track of time every once in a while. Um, I made myself some coffee because it's like 
it's like midnight here and we're yeah. gonna be up for at least another um 20 hours or so um lyco slur was up here as well as disney queen lyco slur is cool he makes content on youtube i would definitely recommend dropping him a follow on twitch as well he plays like bioshock and oh, skyrim and shit like that this it's was fucking lemonade. awesome I what you do is i'm sorry fallout fallout not bioshock not bioshock fallout i need to interrupt um, i need to give you the recipe for this lemonade we are gonna do a quick recap as anna gives a Recap the lemonade recipe. Let's go for so it. So what you do is you take a shit ton of lemons, I don't know if it's you divide them in half, and then you stick them all in here after you juice them. Oh, so you juice them. Where'd the lemon bag go? Citrus bag by the garbage. Oh, the bag or the bucket? The, the, garbage. the bag. This is a bucket. So you shit. You put a shit ton of like lemons in here. And then you add a ton of water from the magical decanter, and then you dump a shit ton of sugar, right? Yes. We accidentally put in like at least a layer, so like it was like an inch high. So this is my fiance. Yes. We're gonna get married one day. Mary soon. I'm gonna walk away now. And then that's how. And then you stir it forever, and that's it. Epic. And then add vodka. Yo, this is super epic, guys. I will go put this in the... I'm gonna take a big ol' sip of... What are we brewing next? What are we brewing next? Oh my god, this is this is crazy. So, um, I hi. Switch games. No, we're not switching games yet. So, hi there. Um, we're back at the bar now. Um, the host, the host, the mixologist is back. We were mixing a couple of different cocktails before. In particular, we had our guest star, Purple Intet, on here, aka Eric, who was giving us a whole rundown on the Manhattan and stirring techniques and various different aspects of sweet vermouth and rye whiskey and whiskey in general and perhaps bourbon. Things that you might never have even heard of before, but all in all, we made a couple of different recipes so far. The recipes include Philadelphia Fish House Punch, which is very distinguished based off of its peach brandy, um, um, cognac and Jamaican rum combo there with a little bit of water, or lemon or lime juice. It's, it's great. If you're cur if you're curious about the recipe for the Philadelphia Fish House Punch or the Manhattan or the Chocolate Manhattan that Purple and Ted uh, kind of walked us through, feel free to let, let us know in the chat and whatnot. I'll be happy to recollect those recipes for you as well. I am back, and as a part of continuing with these Thankmas 2022 24-hour stream, we're going to continue with a couple of different cocktails and other various different holiday themes libations now that who i would consider my professional bartender uh not not that good. We're, we're both engineers so nobody's really professional here he is off and gone so we're going to continue with other recipes throughout the night until we feel like switching over to gamecube games which will more or less be co-hosted by me and my pal nyko slow who i did shout out before i have a couple just to take a moment to kind of appreciate all the people who are on this stream so far this camera with an extreme is brought to you by a variety of different people it is brought to you by me hi i'm Cameron with the X, aka Cameron Calv. I like I'm a firmware engineer by day. I like to do th streaming and mixology by night. I usually do cocktail recipes every single Wednesday. We do a bar stream and whatnot, and I play video games on Monday as well. Uh, other than that, we have our pal Lycos Lore, aka Glenn, who goes on YouTube and plays a bunch of different types of games. Recently, he's been playing this all of uh, this game inspired by a web comic called Tome, aka the Terrain of Magical Expertise. Personally, it's been a very riveting series for me. He's one of my best buds so perhaps I am biased, but it's a very, very fun series, and I would encourage you all to check them out on YouTube. I also am joined by my fiance, the Disney Queen, who I'm not even going to bother spelling because she can't even spell it herself, and it's got a bunch of numbers in it as well. She pals around with me. She was huge into Disney and can answer pretty much any of your Disney questions. Uh... Hala at Chapek being out of there. <laughs> bye. Bye, Felicia. Um, and I'm also joined by Dalu Kare, aka Pepper, who joins every once in a while as well, as well as Final Rhapsody, who paints a lot of models on screen as well. 13th best Soul Forge player in America. And is the 13th best Soul Forge player in America. If you've forgotten the name Final Rhapsody and you're already in the Soul Forge community, you are doing something wrong because you don't even know well, you don't even know this guy. It just says Matthew. Make that, but he's also out there as that as well. But it's been wonderful. So we're to raising money for thank. We're raising money for charity right now. We're raising money for the World Central Kitchen, who provides hot meals for uh, families who are experiencing humanitarian crises, climate crises, like natural disasters and whatnot. The goal for the evening, the evening is to reach five hundred dollars in either of our two campaigns that we have going concurrently right now. We have a campaign in chat through twitchtv slash camera with an X, which is about seventy dollars out of five hundred. We've had contributions by the Meeps123. We've had contributions by Annie Toya and Dalukare. Uh, Dalukare, Dalukare. We don't have Dalukare. Do we have? 
Oh, wait, don't throw Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And we've also had contributions. You can see this bar up here on Tiltify. And we've had contributions from Yoda Girl 14369, Maddie Bissell, The Calf House, and Marilyn Knight. And, of course, Lenny, who we can't possibly forget about. The goal is, in total, by the time our 24 hours are around, to reach $500 in donations. Any subs that you that you gift or don't... Any subs that you buy, slash gift or whatever, will be redirected at the 24-hour mark. We will wind up doing all the math there we are equivalent subs to about five dollars a piece and any sort of bits donations as well that go to this channel will also be redirected to the world central kitchen because that's kind of what it's all about i would not feel very comfortable taking any sort of money from the people out there for this particular channel because i work a full-time job i don't need all the money and stuff and we're trying to raise money for charity here so that's kind of what it's all about naturally though it is always very very appreciated and any donation that you wind up making will also be kind of written and in embodied on a balloon with the end out on it i will throw it over the bar and, and at and the I very end if we reach the 20 if we reach the 500 dollars mark or even potentially a thousand dollar mark if we reach a past 500 dollars every single balloon every single donation that we have collected so far will be popped on camera at the 24 hour mark tomorrow december 10th 8 o'clock p.m eastern standard time like a store had a comment please come here come here come, yeah, here. Well, come on soon you're well, very very tall i made sure yeah. the camera was pre prepared for you yeah i mean well like honestly like this is like, listen, if you guys, like, subscribe and whatnot to Cameron with an X here, like, again, like, end of the day here, we're just kind of just trying to give back. So, like, that's why, like, again, like, you guys, if you want to give your money to him, like, that's cool. But, like, in this certain instance, we're going to give it to the charity because that's what no, we're no, here no. to do. No, you know do. what? You know what? Yeah, you like, I, I work a full-time job, uh, 9 to 5. Uh, I work for a startup company called Stell Life, and it's absolutely wonderful. You should absolutely throw every single penny of your money at me. However, if you donate during the 24-hour period, every single penny that you throw at me in particular will wind up being re redirected to the World Central Kitchen. Um, it will it will happen. Yeah. That's my that's my shameless plug. Okay. Anyway. In any case, this yeah. is great. This is great so far. So far, we've had a wonderful, wonderful time so far. We've been starting off with cocktails and recipes and whatnot. That's kind of a personal thing of mine. Uh, what we're going to wind up doing is the next segment that we're going in, going to go into is some holiday-themed cocktails, either for hey, your Christmas. We had an order over here. Oh, my goodness. Yes, absolutely. We are going to also make a whiskey sour. I haven't forgotten about that. Don't you hurry. Oh, well, I'm going to get out of the bar. Holiday cocktails and whatnot. We're also going to make a whiskey sour because we have people here that we need to serve. And as the bartender... Of at least the next couple hours or so, we will continue with that as we raise money for Thankfest 2022. The next segment afterwards, if you're not really into alcohol or cocktails or drinks and libations, we'll be playing GameCube games all night with uh, sponsored by our lapel Lycos Lore over here. Um, he brought his Elgato, he brought his GameCube, uh, he brought a couple of my games that I lent to him anyways, and it's gonna be wonderful. I think Shrek Racing is on the docket. Shrek 2, a platformer, I believe. What are we? What are we? What, are we, what kind of GameCube games are we playing in the okay. evening? Well, the games I brought with me, I kind of talked about earlier while you were making yourself coffee. I was but making I coffee and I'm drinking it now. Kirby Air Ride, which is a classic. Mm, not yes, only, Not only do we enjoy it, but for me personally, like, that's a classic on my channel because, like, not only is it some of my favorite episodes, but it was actually also the first game I ever uploaded on YouTube. I remember that. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. God, I was on, oh god, I was on vacation with you. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, good times. It is gonna be but really yeah, so good. Yeah, so we have Kirby Air Ride. We have Mario Party Seven. You know, the friendship ruiner. Because of course we're gonna do that when we're do Mario Party with you. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. And then I also brought Amazing Island because that's a good, that's a fun one. Mm. I. I remember I streamed that game and I went through it in an entire day. I think it was like a four hour long stream. But like, that game is not long, but it's not one of those games. It's all about you make your own monster and you just dick around with them. It's fun. And then uh, one that just popped into the pile was Shrek 2 for the GameCube. Because I actually remember playing this game as a child. I remember enjoying it. And it's multiplayer co-op for the campaign or you could just fight each other in like their standard multiplayer mode so i kind of hope we'll dip we'll dip into that and you brought up the shrek racing which i'm actually unfamiliar with that one so i want you to kind of explain that one a little bit we have the adapter for the gamecube where you can play like gamecube games Ga so Game apparently Boy. there was a i'm sorry game Boy. <laughs> And so, I'm sorry, I'm a little drunk. I've been drinking alcohol and stuff, you know? Yeah, I know. So apparently, you can plug in your Game Boy games, which I happen to have the Shrek Racing game. So we're going to play that as well. Oh. 
interesting games over the course of the evening. Um, I fucked up. I was gonna say that we are going to do that as a means to kind of, while everybody else is asleep, we are gonna entertain the crowd until everybody wakes up again, but everybody is still awake, and we haven't gotten to the video game portion, and I haven't even done my cocktail stuff yet, so. I, I have a comment. Uh, okay, okay, hippity hoppity hippity. What'd you do? I forgot the disc part of the adapter. Oh no. So we can't play any Game Boy games. Uh, that. no Game Boy games, unless y'all are patient enough to allow for us to download the emulator from a very, very sketchy site and just pop it up on my emulator, which I, I have as well. We are prepared for everything. Yeah, I, I apologize. That's on Personally, my... I'm a smart guy, so I prefer for like those floor series failures. Yeah, and nah, again, like, I try and be professional again. This was an actual slip up in my head. I forgot to pack on my John. Don't I'm worry, sorry. You're good. All right. Hell yeah. Oh, wait, I'm gonna get out of your bar so you can do With that, I'm gonna continue eating this burrito here, and as my coffee cools, we're gonna kick kick off into the next portion of our cocktail stream here. We are going to start making various holiday themed cocktails and stuff. Some of them are mocktails, some of them are not otherwise. It's gonna be it's kinda of what we do normally. Um for the most part, uh, what usually winds up happening on this channel Wednesday nights at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time is we wind up making cocktails of various different themes and stuff. The theme today is Thankmas, aka thanks, uh, thank Christmas, holidays, things that you might want to share with your friends in the celebration of giving back to other people. Um, it's usually very loose themes. I'm completely honest about that. Some of this stuff I just kind of pull out of my ass anyway, but it's okay. We're doing it for charity. That's a really, really cool thing, in my opinion. Um, let's see. I kind of want to see how far we are, how close we are to our next goal for yeah, uh, thank you. Let's see. Currently, our next goal, we have raised on the Tiltify page $330, on the Twitch page $70 so far. So we have so far raised $400 for the World Central Kitchen, which is like really, really cool. That's freaking amazing. That is awesome. Um, right now, our top donation on the Tiltify page is by Yoda Girl, who has a message saying, supporting for this amazing cause, love that this is a true gift, God bless. The mo most recent donation coming from Maddie Bissell for a lovely ten dollars on the twitch side of things I, I i don't have proper analytics as to who has who's had the biggest donations there either but y'all all your names are up on the boards up here if i've missed you please call me out on it i'm a little dense at times and if i missed it it's because i just i, I forgot or i just didn't notice it and i don't mean any sort of harm by it so what we'll do next is we'll go into some cocktail uh holiday libations and i'm gonna quickly adjust the stream title here um, so that the people the people out there who are looking at the channel pages and stuff know what the heck's going on here Let's see. Thank Miss Marathon 24H. Thank Miss Charity um, Holiday Themed. I'm gonna put a hyphen in there. Whoa, I can't spell Holiday Themed Cocktails and to share with your um Folks, that feels that feels totally right. That feels totally right. I, I need to spell folks correctly. All right, and we're done. And with that, we officially move into the next segment of the 24-hour stream for Thankmas. We have 19 point 19 hours and 38 minutes left until the 24 hour mark where we will tally every single dollar and cent that we have had donated so far either through subs or bits or tiltify or twitch or otherwise we will kick that off then so in any case welcome back to camera the next we're at the bar with an x it's spelled x b a r the x is silent just like the x in my name some people have asked me why the hell do you do that the answer is why not? Because Why the hell not? Is too embarrassing because Cam Cam Roxanne is too embarrassing a name. His final rap that he has so astutely pointed out. My surface over here is having an absolute fucking heart attack, so I can't actually see my recipes right now. However, I am sure that the next recipe that is up on the list is something holiday related, wonderful related, and I can't see it, so I'm gonna pull out my phone. I have two phones here. I have multiple, multiple backups. Um, it's gonna be wonderful. I'm gonna go into my. The app that I use, absolutely not sponsored, is called Recipe Keeper, and it allows me to keep track of all of my wonderful, wonderful recipes and libation. My surface actually restarted. That's freaking insane. I cannot believe it. Wow. I have absolutely no view in a Twitch chat right now. That's crazy. Except for OBS, which is way, way over there. Do you want me to be your 
Chat, no, go to sleep. Go to sleep, everybody. Uh, it's time. Dude, I'm literally drinking another cup of matcha. I'm, not I'm also drinking food. coffee right now. It's absolutely great. Aside from everything else that's going on right now, like we're just trying to, in, in, in the in the spirit of the thankless season, we're just trying to have a really really good time. Where I've got a couple of my friends around here. Usually, I'm not joined by absolutely everybody over here. It's just, I, I will admit, speaking totally honestly and transparently for a moment, this has been really really cool. I am not usually joined by the number of people who I have on stream with me right now. Usually it's me kind of up on the forefront here in front of the camera and the limelight and kind of the Disney queen, my fiance, kind of hanging around in the back and have been helping every once in a while, but by absolutely no obligation. This time I'm joined by not only the Disney queen, my fiance, I'm joined by one of my best friends, Lyco Slore, and two of my very, very close friends, Final Rhapsody and Dalukare. I also had Purple Intet on here earlier as well, somebody who I most re I came to, uh, I, I met more recently in my love life who has kind of educated me especially on my cocktail hobbies and whatnot and it's been very very nice so far and it's been very very pleasant it's been a very nice change of pace and the fact that we're doing it for charity and raising money for it is something that just i'm really really appreciative of so my computer has uh my surface go over here which by the way has a lithium ion battery that is currently expanding at a rate that is too rapid for any sort of um safe use of the device fuck you microsoft um, has finally rebooted back up, so I'm gonna pull my recipes back up over here, and we'll figure out what the next recipe that we're gonna make during this particular cocktail portion of the stream that we have here. Earlier, we reviewed a Manhattan, a chocolate Manhattan, as well as Philadelphia Fish House Punch, which is a very historical cocktail libation that was apparently drinking by the founding fathers themselves, including, but not limited to, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and, of course, the other ones, maybe even Sam Adams. I think he was also a finding father. So I have over here a collection of cocktail recipes that are um, considerably holiday related. Um, when you think of the holidays, I gotta wonder what it means for you to think of the holidays. So when I think of the holidays, because I was born and I was born and raised in a very Christiocentric household, when I think of the holiday season, I think of the December months, I think of snow, I think of the cold weather, and I think of Christmas. I think of December 25th, and I think of being going to sleep on December 24th, Christmas Eve, and waking up the next morning, perhaps a little too early to see if I could catch a glimpse of Santa, to see if there was any sort of presence in one another of the trees. But there are so many different other cultures out there who celebrate like the holiday season or just kind of like the the end of the year season in their own possible way as well this is collectively known at least in my particular uh instance as the holiday season and that includes uh, holiday um holiday celebrations such as thankmas which we're celebrating here christmas and hanukkah and kwanzaa and what's the what's the seinfeld one um, I can't, I can't remember what it is. Festivus, that's the one. It's called Festivus for the rest of us, naturally. Uh, for those who are perhaps a little less religious out there. I particularly am one who is one who was raised Roman Catholic. I don't much practice these days, but I still celebrate the Christmas season with my family. I have a lot of people who in my life are of the Jewish faith and they celebrate the Hanukkah season, which as I learned from one of my coworkers the other day is not actually the most prominent holiday uh, on the Jewish calendar. It seems to be Passover for the most part. I also learned too, as a little bit of a fun fact, that the Hanukkah season can occur pretty much any time during the December month. It depends on the lunar calendar. So you could have Hanukkah that happens in the early December months, last eight days, and then it ends. Or it could extend all the way into the next year, overlapping the New Year's season and into something that's afterwards. And I think this is really, really fascinating. What's that? Just like my birthday. Just like Pepper's birthday, which happens to be on the, uh, I don't know, should I share that kind of information? It's a lunar calendar. It's, it's, a, lunar, it's a lunar calendar. It's always changing. I, I, I know what Pepper's birthday is, so I almost like, un, like, 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 without even thinking about it, just like shouted the birthday out. But uh, I don't want to dox the people who are hanging around here, so uh, that would be kind of weird. By the way, my name's Cameron Cal. My social number is 111111111111. Um, and you can fact check that if you'd like to. Also, my credit card is with... Disney Bank. My social security number is 4206969. Thank you for calling. And now that you have called this line, if you'd like to make a donation to the World Secretary Kitchen, we are always welcome to receive your donation. Anyway, in any case, we will, we will move on. Um, so I have a couple of different cocktail recipes that are prepared for this evening in preparing us for the GameCube session of our Thankful stream, where Lyco Slore and I, and perhaps others as well, will pretty much stay up all night just playing a bunch of GameCube games with the Elgato and original GameCube hardware. I'm looking forward to it. The first cocktail that I want to jump into is one called the Tipsy Peppermint Mocha. The Tipsy Peppermint 
peppermint mocha is something that I was actually shared to me by my grandmother, uh, for somebody who I refer to as Gammy, who uh, every once in a while, she's, she's super supportive of the stuff that we do over here. She would often share things with me via Facebook most messenger of uh, recipes that she would find kind of on the internet sphere of things that kind of seemed interesting to her. Not a single one of them um, showcases a particular recipe, at least uh, like a particular ratio of ingredients um, like you would normally do so if you're looking at a cocktail book and stuff. But I have a little bit of internet magic that allows me to be able to know via like the Google Lens and search and whatnot to know exactly what the ratio of the particular cocktail ingredients are. Um, so we will move into that. There was a lot of exposition to get here, but it's for the sake of charity, so I think it's rather forgivable. So the next cocktail that we're gonna make on here is called the Tipsy Peppermint Mocha. The Tipsy Peppermint Mocha is one that is, um, I guess if you had to consider what an elf tastes like, it probably tastes very, very meaty. However, we're taking the meaty part out of it and only considering the snow that the elf manages to kind of like, uh, like pal around, because it's Christmas season, you know, North Pole and whatnot. People don't taste like uh, blood and viscera. People taste like peppermint, obviously. So the tipsy elf calls for a couple of ounces of Kahlua peppermint mocha, vodka, chocolate syrup, heavy cream, and a couple of candy canes, all crushed into a lovely, lovely thing there. I I think it was found on a website somewhere on Facebook or whatever. I think it came from the soccermomblog.com. I can't take full credits for this recipe, but this is the one that we're going to make. Um, personally, I went to the store to try to do a bunch of preparation for this particular thank Miss stream, and I couldn't find Kahlua peppermint mocha. Alas, I wasn't be able to. I wasn't able to find that at my local Philadelphia liquor store. However, I was able to come up with something a little bit different. I found this rum chata container, which has a very nice little like kind of peppermint coloring to it. It is rum chata peppermint bark. Caribbean rum with a real dairy cream, natural and artificial flavors, caramel color, 14% alcohol by volume, 750 milliliters. I've never opened this thing before, but I'm sure it probably tastes like the quintessential taste of the holiday season, which happens to be dairy and mint, it seems. Um, so we're gonna kind of combine things together. The idea for this cocktail is we're kind of gonna kind of garnish it up a little bit in a kind of taller glass. Uh, you crush up a candy cane or mint candies into small pieces, spread it on a small, small plate. You kind of rim the edge of your glass, you, and then you mix everything up together. You add it all to a cocktail shaker, you give it a shake, you pour it inside, and that's kind of how you do it. So naturally, the first thing that we're gonna do for this particular cocktail, please ignore the burrito that I'm using to make sure that I stay sober during these streams. Mm. is if we're gonna rim our glass with some crushed candy canes. Now, I'm gonna put this rim chata to the side because it's about to get dangerous. I went to the store and I tried to find a couple of candy canes. All I could find were Lifesaver candy canes and Dum Dum Cam and Canes. I have a couple of different flavors here. I have um, blue raspberry, cherry, watermelon, wild cherry, pineapple, watermelon. Um, so, I leave it to the people at large to choose the flavor for this particular um, cocktail garnish. It's really gonna have no inkling into the flavor of the cocktail itself. It's just gonna go on the rim. Personally, if I had to choose between blue raspberry, cherry, watermelon, wild cherry, cherry is twice, pineapple and watermelon. Oh, watermelon and cherry both appear twice. Hmm. I'll probably go for pineapple. All right, check. So I'm gonna go with pineapple unless somebody else can say otherwise. I see Dum Dums in chat. Um, Dum Dums includes cherry, watermelon, and blue raspberry. So uh, speak now, forever hold your peace. I'm gonna go get the thing that I use to crush up shit on the stream. Excuse me for a moment. I'm going down. I need. Anytime you crush things up on the camera with an extreme, gotta apply your safety goggles. You also have to grit a comically large wrench. But alas, it's the holiday season, and we're raising money for charity, so I'm not going to use the comically large wrench. Instead, I'm going to use something even bigger. I have a fucking munchy monkey wrench that I'm going to use to, to absolutely eviscerate the candy canes that I have here for the sake of rimming my glass, because we like to go a little more hard on these cocktails Hardcore. here. Hardcore. Watermelon? I see watermelons in chat right now. Do we have anything else from the peanut gallery over here? We have blue raspberry, watermelon, watermelon. sour cherry. I see watermelon in my mint rum chata. We see watermelon in my rim, mint, no, rim rum chata, as um, Scooby-Doo would say. Rotter melon, rotterellen, rin my rinch ren chata. 
So here we go. We're gonna use the watermelon once, cause uh, I did a pretty good, uh, pretty. I think I did a pretty good, um, pretty good uh, Scooby Doo impression there. I'm gonna put the lifesavers away. I don't need that. I'm gonna open up my Dum Dum container. And I'm gonna go for one of the watermelon ones. I am inclined to think that the watermelon one is. I genuinely can't tell. So I have this container here, and I'm gonna zoom in for a moment so everybody can see. I don't exactly know which one is supposed to be the watermelon one i think so like so 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 for example i have a blue green and yellow one but they all have blue and purple on them so i think i just kind of have to open this up and uh queer to the crowd to see what which one of these is the watermelon one um so what i'm gonna do I'm gonna take this purple one and hand it to uh, Dalukare, who's hanging off screen, and uh, see if that tastes like watermelon. I'm gonna take one of the blue ones and I'm gonna drink. I'm gonna drink that. Yeah, I'm gonna put it in my mouth and drink it. And I'm gonna take one of the purple ones. I'm gonna hand it to Lycos Lore, who is hanging over here, who is absolutely a willing participant in this. Yep. Out of the three of us, I think this one here, which is blue, is probably a blue raspberry one. That's what I would guess. That that would be my guess. So I think I have the easy job here of knowing that this is definitely not the watermelon candy cane. Um, however, I could be very wrong about that. I totally- Wow, okay. I totally made a mess of this. Yeah, this is watermelon. What do we got? Watermelon. Here. I oh, this is so blue raspberry. I just took a bit of this. Camera, camera. It's what was the other flavor? Blood. Do all of them. Cherry? We could do all of them. I'm only making one of these. I'll trade. Yeah, yeah, smash them all up. Here's- look. So I did not lick this, or like, I, I broke it. Hmm. I'll trade you the blue, I'll trade you this one for blue raspberry. That's what we normally do on streams such as this. We're gonna wind up taking the happy medium. The happy medium be somewhere between all the three different dum dum flavors. Now, um, um, yeah, I have a small, I have a couple of different candy canes here. Um, the way that I wind up doing my candy cane crushes around here is I'm gonna take all the candy canes and I'm going to crush them up. And then I would put them into a particular container and then we are going to do what we can with them. So the first thing we have to do is I'm gonna get myself a particular uh, surface to be able to crack these onto. I have cheesecloth around here somewhere. I see it over here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my comically large wrench and put it off to the side. I'm gonna take my container, put it off to the side as well. My candy canes, and also sit off to the side. I'm gonna put my cheesecloth over here, and I'm gonna take my candy canes, which I am now going to unsheath very, very carefully so as to preserve all of the natural flavor on the inside of them and place them into my cheesecloth without any of plastic residue left behind, naturally. Otherwise, we'd be completely cam contaminating our drink, which would just be sacrilegious. I mean, it's a holy, holy season here. Why would we wind up doing things like this? I'm supposed to put it in the garbage, can we? I'm supposed to put it in the garbage, Anna, she comes on here. Hello, what's, what's going on, dude? I'm gonna go to bed now. You're going to bed? Yeah. That's probably a really smart decision. I should do that, too. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. Um, we have had 20, three, hour, three or four hours so far, charity stream, and we're done. We're going to sleep for the next eight hours. Bye, everybody. Get your foot back on there. I'm kidding. Do, 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 I was gra grabbing more candy. You suck. I'm going to grab more candy game. Yeah. All right, so okay. I'm unsheathing all of my candy canes around here. Good night, my dearest. Be well. Good night. <laughs> The, the other ones are gonna stay up for a little while. And I have a combination of what appears to be wild cherry and blue raspberry and watermelon all together. Oh, now, the blue, raspberry one, the blue raspberry was absolutely delightful. <laughs> are you trying to reenact this scene from JoJo with the cherry? I am Kakuin and I say, <laughs> what do you mean, Jotaro? That's just how I always eat my candies and stuff. So what I do, to crush up my stuff is I take my glasses, protective glasses over top of my face, put my Santa Claus hat right up on top, Jesus. and I will combine. I will kind of put it together in my cheesecloth. I'm gonna give it a couple little little uh, breaks up a little bit, and I'm gonna whack it with my I'm gonna whack it with my monkey wrench over here. The best way that I find for crushing your ice or crushing other things that are normally hard under normal atmospheric conditions is to give it a whack with a comically large monkey wrench. Note, if you are going to conduct activities such as this, I would highly, highly suggest that you use protective wear, either on your hands, your face, or the rest of your body. It can get very, very well, dangerous. All of the above. Just all of the above, which is why Glenn is actually wearing a full body suit. It's riot gear, but because that's a little politically heated and debated, oh, we're we keeping them off screen for this one. Anyways, so take your candy canes, smash it, smash it good, like the United States of Smash itself. Um, you only need a couple here, so um, go for it.
the, the beat of what? Jingle bells. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. I think I've crushed up my candy canes enough. Wow, actually, this doesn't look this. <laughs> this doesn't look that crushed up at all. I think I need a little bit. I wish I, you know. Wait, how does it look, dude? It's. Oh, what the? I have solid pieces of candy cane over here. It didn't work. I need a mortar and pestle or something. No, freeze them. Oh my god, freeze them? I don't have any time for that. Freeze them, Lord freeze them. Uh, freezer. Are you, would, you like, would you like to whack these with it? Here, I will I will grant to you upon these goggles, and would you like to go like full ham on this? I mean, Here's my comically large mon monkey wrench. Okay. If you are feeling intimidated, I also have a not so comically large No, I like the comically or large one. It I seems like better to... Okay, I'm gonna so... take the alcohol um, and the burrito and uh, walk off camera. Okay, so <laughs> also camera with an X here is doing something very smart that schools don't do is give me safety glasses even though I have glasses because anyone with glasses knows that in, in freaking gym class the moment they're like, oh yeah, you need See if the glasses. Oh, you have glasses. They're fine. Yeah. All right. So we're going to just smash this shit. This is. Where'd you get this, dude? I'm being ignored. That's fine. Well, let's. All right. Oh shit. Well, we lost something. <laughs> Oh, what was that? What did you try? Oh, you killed her! You killed her! This is pause. I can't believe you killed her! I don't think you just saw these things. Wait, no, there's an opening. Hi there, I'm the new Mrs. Claus, and I'm coming to take the place of the one that you just knocked off in the fucking bar. <laughs> anyway, have you crushed up those candy canes yet? I'm fucking trying, man. Wait, I can go ahead. Well, let's see. It's like a pinata. So, I hope everyone's having a good day. Why is my wrist acting up? This thing's heavy, that's what it's Also, why does it say rose on it? Oh, um, okay, it could use some more smashing. I go. Hey, yeah, you know what? It's the season of giving. <laughs> Kill them. Kill them all. No mercy, no regrets. <laughs> try and go for like these. Yeah. Go, try and go for some of like the big chunks. Oh, I will. You can open up the cloth. Smart decisions. We're all sharing. We're all sharing the monkey wrench of power. Your finger's here. Oh. <laughs> okay, so, um, I have delicate. Hello, everyone. Pepper. Hi, you'll be seeing more of me tomorrow because I am a huge gaming nerd. Let me just drop this on the pineapple, why don't I? Squish! So I will be using this smaller wrench. I will be feeling things out and... Cheesecloth is taking a fucking beating. Hell yeah, it is. Takes a licking and keeps on kicking. It keeps on going. That's the best part. Unlike me. Oh. We're getting a lot of powder in here. Can I help you? Oh, right, hi. Okay. Am I photogenic enough right here? Is this. Absolutely. I gotta do a hair flip. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you. Alright, I got some variety. I think this is good. There's some chunks in here, unless unless our good friend Final Rhapsody wants to pick this up. You've got some thoroughly dusted things here. Hi, uh, 
I'm sorry. Due to recent events, I am quite fond of how I look. This is good. We're all about positive body energy around here. Personally, I started taking my showers in the evening hours, and um, I've been shaving a little bit less recently. Um, so, I um, part of me feels a little less confident in my particular male visage here, but um, I, I feel good about it for the most part. Like back here. It smells like booze. It's kind of it's kind of a bar. All you know things what? considered. I'm gonna hang out here now. Perfect. I'm I'm in the mood to chat. Oh my god, I have the same mouse. Oh my god, it's the ball mouse, right? Oh, I have a comically large monkey wrench down here that is really impeding balls. my ability to walk around. Mouse balls. I'm gonna put this okay, down here. I'm gonna take these off. Um, it took a very long time for us to be able to com completely smash up these candy canes here. Um, not usually a normal occurrence here on the camera with the next channel. Um, however, we did indeed do that. So what I'm gonna do now, once we completely eviscerated our um, candy canes here. We're gonna take them and we're gonna put them on a little dish here. The intent is to be able to rim the glass uh, with one of these things here. Wow, wh what have we? Oh, we vaporized oh! that shit. There's powder. Holy you, shit! You can't see it. Y'all is... can't see here? Actually, I'm gonna post it in our Discord in the live updates channel because this is wild. There's actually an entire layer of powder that is that is now existing in the, like, the well of my little, like, rubber thing that prevents the Your liquid mat? materials from hitting my bar thing my rubber mat here i've we never have, seen that we before have mat downstairs and we have rubber and mat there's a rubber here. mat up here this is wild oh my god i'm gonna post the discord this is really interesting i've never seen that before um interesting but in any case we have a bunch of crushed up candy canes now so what we're going to do with that is we're going to rim a glass with them the best way that i find to be able to ring rim glasses with um materials such as this is to coat the rim in a little bit of simple syrup agave syrup a little bit of lime juice something that's got some sugar with it enough to pre to create a sort of cohesion to be able to allow these kind of solid particulates to be able to stick around um, so I'm gonna get into that in just a moment after I post this really interesting picture In any case, I totally did that I'm gonna take the crushed up bits of peppermint and I'm gonna put them into my little glass over here uh, My little little bowl here. I'm gonna use my hands a bit. It's a little sticky. There's a couple of different flavors here There's some cherry. There's some watermelon. There's some blue raspberry It is a whole smorgasbord of flavors here And I feel like we could actually rim a couple glasses with this so if anybody else is interested in a peppermint mocha uh, we have we I have options not. here. <laughs> not many people are. Um, I have made a complete mess of my bar here, so uh, it's just it's just the thing that happens. It's, it's, it's okay. It's okay. I have I have the other half of this thing like um, more or less being cleaned off downstairs, so it's okay. Molasses. Oh, the Myers rum. Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. This is very very molassesy. Um, so I I've made a bit of a mess over here. You probably can't tell, but I now have a. I now have a plate that is completely filled with chunks of little, little candy canes and whatnot. So I'm gonna take a glass, whichever one I want to. I'm probably gonna go for a coop glass. I haven't used one of those for the duration of the stream yet. Let me find a nice one. Um, actually, what's the recipe for this? Let me take a look there. I see, I see. Three ounces, one ounce, tablespoon, three ounces. I think it's gonna be a heavier one. So I'm gonna get one of the margarita glasses and see how far that pulls up. I could be totally wrong about this, in which case, well, I guess you're just gonna have to forgive me. I have a margarita glass here, you see that? And I'm just gonna rim it. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little bit of a zoom. I'm gonna showcase. This is a margarita glass. Got a nice, very characteristic shape to it. Observe, observe the margarita glass. What I'm going to do is in a very quick moment, I'm gonna grab some agave syrup and I'm gonna coat the rim of this margarita glass and we're gonna get it sticky enough to be able to absorb everything else that I wind up putting onto it. Got some agave syrup over here. I bought mine from Whole Foods, naturally. Oh, and all I'm gonna do, oh, the story of the light bulb. Oh, that was absolutely a common, uh, a very good thing to talk about. I have a bunch of light bulbs on stream and there's a oh my god there's a whole joke about the light bulbs oh my goodness i used to like remove the light bulbs from my uh my friend uh, in final rhapsody's house and when we would go over for D and stuff i have a margarita glass i want to put a little bit of agave syrup on it and make a tiny little bit of a mess and i'm gonna kind of coat it all the way around i'm making a slight bit of a mess it's okay the bar is a place for mistakes a bar is a place for exploration it's a it's a thing um, and agave syrup is no very, space. very thing. So, see that? I've made a little bit of a mess, but I'm just gonna kind of rim it. I'm gonna rim my glass with it. This is not the cleanest way of doing it, but I think the only person this is going to is me, so it's okay. Also, agave syrup is 
Mm. Am I allowed to also make an obvious you. joke here? <laughs> Please do. You're very good at rimming. I am, I am very good at applying rim jobs, you know what I'm saying? Oh. A, jo a nice, no, nice job on the rim? Oh. That's what it's all I about. In any case, so now that you've rimmed your glass with agave syrup, it's kind of sticky now. So what do you do with a sticky rim? Well, you coat it in something a little more tasty. I have all this crushed up candy cane that I had from before. It's, uh, it's, it's quite, it's quite the, quite the spectacle. My goodness. This is horrifying. There is a lot of, there is a lot of stuff going on here. But honestly, there's a part of it that's a little, it's kind of, kind of beautiful kind in of a sensual. way. sensual. Kind of sensual in a way. It's like, it's giving me like a, I, I might be slightly sexually attracted to everything that's going on here. It looks... Anyway, we'll, we'll leave that for the close-up for later. Uh, it looks, it mostly looks. It does look. Hey, can I have a balloon? You want a what? Mmm, you want a I do. So many balloons over here. The particular candy cane combination that I have over here is a very interesting go-between between, between the blue raspberry, wild cherry, and watermelon, which all just kind of tastes like sour sugar to me, which is fine. It's okay. Nothing wrong with that. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna put it off the side. It could probably be used for something completely different later on. The rest of the tep tipsy peppermint mocha cocktail calls for a couple of different things, including, but not limited to, something that is pepperminty and mocha-y. Usually the recipe calls for something a something called a Kahlua peppermint mocha. However, what is going on over here? Have we had a donation? Yes. Do we have another no. donation? No, we, we don't. Donation? No, we don't. You tease. You absolutely tease. Ooh. Oh my goodness. That is wild over here. I'm getting all kind of cool stuff over here. I'm the one who's drank the most alcohol here, I think. However, my tolerance, I think, is pretty high compared to the people around me. I'm drinking I'm coffee. a bit of a lightweight. Uh, mm. I can drink I didn't drink anything. Drunk on the energy of the people who feed us around. Something like that. Yeah. So the tipsy peppermint mocha, after you've rimmed your glass in whatever method you so deem is worthy, you are going to take the following ingredients and put them into a cocktail shaker. I have a cocktail shaker over here, and I'm going to use it appropriately. The first thing that you're going to add to your shaking apparatus is three ounces of something equivalent to a Kahlua peppermint mocha. We had Eric on here before who actually had brought his Kahlua with him, and I tried to go to the liquor store and find a Kahlua peppermint mocha specific liqueur, but I wasn't able to find that. So the closest thing that I was able to find was this rum chata peppermint bark liqueur, which I'm just going to kind of, using my limited knowledge of flavors and whatnot, add three whole ounces to my cocktail shaker and see if it kind of does the trick. I'm very, very curious to see how this tastes on its own. So I'm actually going to try to give it a little bit of a taste. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. It smells like peppermint bark, like legitimately. I, I, for some reason, there's a particular bar that I've gone to here in Philadelphia. It's called, it's called Woody's and it's a gay bar. And it smells a lot like that gay bar, which has a lot of like, it's very, very pepperminty when you walk in. And although it smells very seasonal, it's not necessarily seasonal. I went like back in like July. And it also smelled like this. Uh, I kind of want to take a little bit of a sip of this. So I see a couple of shot glasses around here somewhere. But I have a cordial glass kind of hanging, uh, hanging off to the side here. And I want to see what this rum chata peppermint bark tastes like. Because I've never actually tried it before. It's very peppermint barky. It's very, very nice. Pepper's got a... Is that a, is that a beautiful face? She doesn't want to die. Shall we zoom in on that? As I take a sip of this little bit of glass here. Look at this beautiful, beautiful balloon. She does not want to die. If you donate right now to the World Central Kitchen, we will kill her. <laughs> we will absolutely you completely fucking obliterate her. If you donate literally any amount of money right now, either for these subs or bits or Tiltify or Twitch, we will pop this balloon and completely eviscerate this balloon. She'll die. She will die. If if any balloon were to live, uh this one this one will not. It'll happen. So thank you in advance for your contribution. Anyway, I took a shot of like peppermint bark uh, rum chata. It's very, very tasty. Rum chata usually is kind of like a orchata, kind of like rum based liqueur, very cream based. And it's got a bit of a cinnamon, -y a cinnamon -y note to it. It's kind of cinnamon, it's kind of peppermint, and it's also kind of chocolatey, but mostly white chocolate. It's very, very tasty. And I think it's a very nice stand in for any other particular, uh, I guess kind of 
peppermint cream liqueur that you would you be using in your particular combinations um it's very very good so for the tipsy the tipsy elf peppermint mocha i'm gonna take three ounces or about um 90 milliliters this is like 80 88 milliliters of this rum chata here i'm gonna add it to a cocktail shaker i need a measuring jigger. um i have one I think the other one is downstairs. I'm gonna use my metric majigger, so it's gonna be about 50 milliliters times three, about 150 mil. Whoa, 150 milliliters. No, it's just kidding. About 175 milliliters. 75 milliliters. I'm gonna do two on the one side, and then I'm gonna do one ounce or about 25 milliliters on the other side. I fill it all the way up to the top. I pour, pour it within, and flip it around, and I just do the same thing on the other side. It's so easy to do. So 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 easy to do mixing cocktails is easy with the right mentality in any case what i use for that it's just part of the tipsy elf re recipe i have the kalua peppermint mocha which is um i'm using as a stand uh, i'm sorry i don't have the kalua peppermint mocha i have instead this rum chata peppermint bark which i picked up at the store for like 25 bucks not too bad uh, it tastes really it tastes really really good it's very very tasty and it goes very well with the coffee that i'm using to keep myself sober around here in any case, oh, we shall continue. So I have three ounces, or about 90 milliliters or so, about 75 milliliters if you're, if you're measuring with the milliliters aspect of things, of peppermint mocha equivalent liqueur to my glass here. I'm also gonna need an ounce of vodka. I think we saw Skunk Town pop up here a little bit earlier. Skunk Town a, is a wonderful, wonderful vodka. I'm gonna pull it back out here again, because I feel like Skunk Town, I believe, is made from, I think it's a potato vodka, I believe. Skunktown Distillery is the pride and joy of two friends who decided to chase the American dream to bootstrap their way into the world of illegal craft distilling. Every step of each bottle has hand-on attention to ensure we create spirits worthy of sharing with your friends and loved ones. We select locally grown, non-GMO, and or grant ingredients and use eco-conscious methods in our distillery from raw materials to finished product. We highlight the beautiful culture of rural New Jersey and stepped in history as old as our country where one small village started out with the name Skunk Town. Hand peeled to potatoes, tomato paste, lemon juice. Tomato paste? Tomato, potato, and lemon juice is what goes into making Skunk Town the beautiful vodka that it is. I'm gonna add about an ounce of that to our cocktail shaker. Um, I'll admit, I have never actually read the back of this container before, and I didn't realize that not only was there potatoes in there, uh, potatoes I knew. I didn't know about the tomatoes or the lemon juice. That was the next ingredient that we're going to add to our cocktail shaker for our tipsy elf uh, tipsy tipsy peppermint mocha tipsy peppermint mocha is we're going to add a tablespoon of chocolate syrup i know i have chocolate syrup around here somewhere the question is where is it so i'm going to take a look i think it's in my bar i think it's my uh refrigerator so let me see i do have chocolate syrup in whoa i think it's a little bit of a mess down there but the refrigerator still closes, so I'm gonna keep with it. We need about a tablespoon, or about... Alexa, how many ounces are in a tablespoon? 0 0.5 fluid ounces. Half an ounce is about 15 milliliters of your maple syrup. So I'm gonna take one side of this, and I'm gonna fill it about halfway with Hershey's and maple syrup. I'm gonna put a fat half of an ounce in there, or I guess a fat 12 and a half milliliters of it, uh, because Hershey syrup is rather viscous and rather thick, so not all of it is going to come out the way that I want it to, uh, but as long as we get a little bit of chocolate syrup in there, ooh, that's a sexy pour, a very delightful pour indeed. So long as we get that in there, I think we are doing just fine. Mm, I love that. The only other thing that we're going to add there is three ounces or about 88 so or so milliliters of heavy cream. So in my life, heavy cream is kind of uh, kind of hard to come by. Every single time I go to the grocery store, every single time I go to Giant or Whole Foods, there's always seems to be like a shortage of heavy cream and stuff. I don't exactly know where that comes from, uh, but there's now a piece of paper on the wall of the refrigerators that says, oh, due to manufacturer restraints and suppliers, uh, we're having a little hard time filling up our 
shelves, which, which I understand, like the world's going through tough times right now, but apparently I can't get my heavy cream. So instead of what is considered heavy cream, I have heavy whipping cream, which to be perfectly honest is um, something that I, I don't know is any different than regular heavy cream. Um, I could be, it could be the exact same, but um, I, I wouldn't know. I really, really would. Um, but I do have heavy whipping cream. Which can I, I maybe use for this particular recipe? This heavy whipping cream comes from Shamrock Farms, established in 1922. Heavy whipping cream, ultra pasteurized, great for everything from fluffy whipped cream to thick, rich soups and sauces. I have, I'm gonna add about three uh, ounces to that, or just about, uh, ooh, excuse me, um, 75 milliliters, according to this metric shaker here. I've never actually opened this thing before, so I'm gonna open it to you right now. Oh. Oh, excellent. I threw, the, I threw the top away. I put the cap back on the bottle. I pour about an ounce in the small side of the shaking majigger. I pour it in the cocktail shaker. I flip it around. I pour about two ounces or just about 50 milliliters of that same heavy whipping cream and then also pour it into the shaker. It's rather filled up right now. Um, and then I'm gonna wind up shaking it. I need some ice in that, so I'm gonna go grab some ice. It's in my freezer, naturally. Well, uh, I don't know where else I would put that, to be perfectly honest. <clears throat> Let's see about that. I have, I'm gonna grab a big old cube. Woo! Big old cube. Got a couple of little cubes as well. My goodness, I'm kind of running out of ice over here. Oh! I'm making a little bit of a mess, but it's okay. Um, so I have a bunch of ice and stuff in there, but even if you fill it up with ice, it's uh, even if you fill it up with water, it's not going to create ice by the time that I wind up using it. So I think I think we're okay. I'm going to take one big cube and two small cubes and put it into the large side of my shaker glass. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert the small side, which I have added three ounces or about 88 milliliters of the equivalent of like a Kahlua peppermint mocha. I used rum chata in this case, a peppermint bark rum chata. I also have added to that as well about uh, an ounce or about 30 milliliters of vodka. I used Skunk Town and a tablespoon or about like uh, like half, half a mil half a half an ounce about 12.5 milliliters uh 15 milliliters of chocolate syrup and three ounces or about 88 milliliters of heavy cream i'm gonna pour that into the ice and i'm gonna give this a shake and then i'm gonna pour it out over my mar my margarita glass here which has been rimmed with various different types of candy canes before i wind up shaking this i'm gonna grab out my uh, sacrificial glass so we can get a nice view of things going on here uh while i do uh, the shakage to be clear, um, none of those are peppermint right not a single one of these is peppermint not a single one at all. To be all, uh, to be honest as well, for the sake of transparency, I've made an absolute mess of my bar over here. Nothing of here is worth serving at a public establishment. I am not a professional. I am merely a novice and a, uh, a bit of a journeyman. I enjoy this stuff very much so. So if you have critiques, they're always welcome in the comments because I like to hear your thoughts on it. If there's something viscerally wrong with everything that's happening here, I would love to know about it because I am too dense to notice. Anyways, tipsy peppermint mocha. I'm gonna shake this up and then pour it into a glass. We'll see how it goes. Let's give it a shake. You really don't need to shake it that long, but I'm having a good time with this. So I'm now gonna switch directions and continue with it. And now that I've kind of milked that moan for a little bit, I'm gonna zoom in to my margarita glass here, which I've rimmed with candy canes of various different flavors and whatnot. There's some blue raspberry in there. There's some um, watermelon, and cherry. watermelon and cherry and stuff in there. And I'm gonna give this a nice little strain over top. I'm running low on resources here, so I'm gonna strain this the, uh, the poor man's way. Um, I'm just gonna do like this. Kind of looks like chocolate milk. It kind of does. It looks like chocolate milk. It's, it is. It kind of is chocolate milk. Mmm. It straight up tastes like chocolate milk. In it's very, very delicious looking. Um. Usually I would take this moment to say I'm gonna take an obligatory Instagram photo. Of, I'm gonna take a photo of it anyway, but I'm not posting this anywhere. This looks absolutely disgusting. <laughs> I'm sure it tastes wonderful. 
However, this was the Tipsy Peppermint Mocha, a recipe that was given to me by, and I don't mean absolutely anything negative by this. My grandmother shared this recipe with me. Um, the fact that it looks bad is merely a reflection of the bartender who made it, not because of the person who recommended it. I'm sure it tastes wonderful. It's got freaking candy canes on it and mint and stuff, which are things that I'm like a huge, huge, huge fan of. It's actually got a nice little foam thing at the top of it, probably because of the whipping cream that was in there. It's got a nice thickness to it, which um, I think I will very, very, uh, I very much appreciate. Yes, actually, uh, no, if you're offering to wash things. Tonight. I wash everything. Would you like your wife to wash these? Uh, Matthew and or Pepper, uh, if you find that there are some dirty ingredients over here, dirty apparatuses, we will absolutely appreciate the any sort of cleaning that you may be able to do for them. In the meantime, my eyes are drooping. I need to... Oh, yeah. I need some coffee over here. Anyways, I made a cocktail over here. It's called the Tipsy Peppermint Mocha, which was from the SoccerMomBlog.com. It was created using three ounces or about 88 milliliters of some sort of pepperminty mocha chocolatey liqueur. In my case, I used a Ramchata peppermint bark. Otherwise, you could use a Kahlua peppermint mocha. I used an ounce or about 30 milliliters of vodka, a tablespoon, or about like half an ounce or so, 15 milliliters of chocolate syrup. I used Hershey's, as well as three ounces, or about 88 milliliters of heavy cream. Uh, I used heavy whipping cream. If there's a difference, I'm not aware of it. And I crushed a bunch of candy canes and removed the glass with it. So let's see how it tastes. We shall continue. I, for one, am a big fan of ice cream. I love, 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 love the taste of ice cream and stuff, especially during the holiday season. Ice cream is something that, like, my family and I usually go for, uh, go out for very, very rarely. Once in quite literally a blue moon. And this tastes like, like, peppermint, like a, not even, not necessarily peppermint, like a mint, like a really, really good mint chocolate ice cream sundae like in a glass itself. I think the point of this is it's supposed to taste like a peppermint milk amount like you would get at a Starbucks during the holiday season. I don't think it's as much as that. Personally, I find that there's less of a coffee component to this than there would be for something that's a little more, I guess, akin to something that you would get in your younger years, something more uh, ice cream related. Um, if you were to add a bit of coffee to this, it would probably taste a little bit more like a coffee latte. I'm gonna enjoy this for a little bit. But I do have some coffee here, and I am looking for some caffeine, so I think I might actually combine things together, uh, although we'll see. I'm not trying to imbibe all the alcohol this evening. I was imbibing a lot more early when we were doing our more in-depth exploration of the Manhattan, as well as the Philadelphia Fish House Punch. During the first part, I was going to say first half of our stream, we have so many more hours left. We are sub-20 hours in. Sub-20 hours left. That's pretty good. I'd say it's a really, really good thing. Mm. So I'd say the tip, tipsy peppermint mocha tastes like not very mocha y. It's like a it's like a pepperminty chocolatey type thing. I would think if you're out there and you are familiar with Starbucks seasonal coffees and whatnot, you'd be a little bit disappointed. You would probably think of something a little be a little bit more coffee forward. This is not very coffee forward. There's absolutely nothing coffee in here. Rum chata itself is something that's a little more similar to like horchata, which is something that's a bit more kind of cinnamony forward. You should make a Savannah sour. Says Dalukare, I see that out there. I forgot to make a sour. I was planning to do so, and I continue to forget to do so. I'm gonna make something with eggs next. I'm gonna look it up on my recipe book. I've forgotten until now. Eight I'm eight glad eight that we have eight reminders eight. out there, otherwise I totally would have forgotten. Um, this is all right. This is pretty good. This is pretty tasty, all things considered. I would think if you're a person out there who might not be into alcohol, you might particularly enjoy this, which is my way of having people off screen try to try this. Uh, like a slur, are you into peppermint? I mean, peppermint's okay. It's not my favorite. Would you like to try this beverage? I'll give it a shot. Do you like ice cream? Yeah. Taking a fucking question as a child. 
Oh. I, I think I think you should try this. By the way, isn't this one of those like little like disc things for like the perfect TV? Yes, actually, I got the thing from Tivana. <laughs> You're absolutely right. No, because like, like the moment I saw that little pink disc, I immediately recognized oh it. Oh my gosh! Please feel free to try this. The Tipsy oh, Peppermint geez. Mocha. It's not really Mocha forward, but um, you know. I it's pray not, because like, okay, well. Well, I'm not much of a drinker, so... Cheers. As always, for the people out there, if your friends are alcoholics and they pressure you to drink alcohol, they're terrible people. I can be terrible at times. Glenn is totally willing. And if he's not willing, then he can tell me now. And resign. Right here. See, he actually has a gun pointed to the heads of all my family members. My hands, so are, my hands are totally... I have no guns. Yeah, except you're having Pepper do it. <laughs> I do have assistance off screen. Thoughts? Oh, no, no, no. No good. Ugh. No good. What does it taste like? Ugh. Thoughts? Concerns? Complaints? It's stuck to my hand, too. Gross. It's stuck to his hand. What did he do about it? My God. Okay, let me give my thoughts. Like, I got this, like, punch that I can only... Ugh. Oh, God, it gets worse. Oh, my goodness. So, I got, like, this punch that was, like... Like, I want to say it's, like, one of those, like, coffee-like flavors. Mm -hmm. Like, that was what, like, really punched me in the gut. And Ooh. right now I'm getting, like, that throaty burn. Interesting. Yeah, probably from the alcohol in there. It's actually kind of interesting they say you're kind of getting, like, a coffee-type flavor there. Because there's no coffee in the beverage at all. Like, which is interesting. Ugh. Ew. It might be. Like, I'm trying to think. From the recipe itself, if there's anything that's the most coffee-related, it would probably be, I guess, the chocolate syrup itself and maybe the rum chata. Ugh. That was cool. Which came from this container. Because, like, again, you also know me personally. Like, I don't like coffee. That's true. Yeah, I'm sleeping. Hey, excuse me. Hey, Al. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'm done being your guinea pig. Anyone else want to try that shit? No, that's fair. I totally understand that. So, we tried a tipsy peppermint mocha, uh, which contained a couple of bits of, it's, it's a little bit of a modified recipe. It contains uh, rum chata, peppermint bark, vodka, heavy cream, and chocolate syrup. It's, in my opinion, a very, very, a very, very balanced drink. It kind of tastes like, like kind of like a, like a peppermint, or peppermint chocolate or mint chocolate uh, piece of vanilla ice cream. It's very, very tasty, in my opinion. For those who are a little bit, a uh, little more uh, averse to alcohol or a little more sensitive to alcohol, it does have a bit of a burn to it as showcase bar pal like us Laura over here and for those who are a little more into the uh, a little less into the minty part of things it is very very prevalent that it's very very pepperminty it is very much mocha e but not necessarily on the coffee part of the mocha that's something that I think I'm a little more inclined to which I'm kind of getting because I have some coffee over here we are trying to go for a full 24 hours over here so I am trying my best to keep my eyes um from drooping also, the flavor kind of evolved again. The now, flavor evolved. Yeah, now I'm getting more of like those chocolatey notes, like right now, and I'm like, yeah, okay, like. Ugh. So it's probably existing in the back of your mouth as your as your flavor as the, as the rest of your mouth kind of adjusts to what you just drank. Yeah, because like right now, that's like I feel something like still kind of like burning a little in like the back of my throat. Totally. So, also, I'm just gonna come up here. No, 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 but, like, totally. It's a free it space. weird. I literally like just went down to wash my hands to get that sticky stuff off. My my hands are so sticky right now. It and, is like, incredible. But like as I was washing my hands, I'm like, huh, now it's like kind of chocolatey in there, but I'm like, ugh. I did yeah, not, I think I think I did not like there's that the Hershey there's the Hershey syrup in there, which is chocolate. But exactly. I think the rum chata itself too is kind of like a cinnamony white chocolate thing, which is kind of good. Because hmm, I'm getting like <laughs> My first thought is like a milk dark chocolate, so mm. I think what I'm getting is like the Hershey's. Probably. Because I'm a, I love white chocolate, and like I don't, I didn't really get any of like that white chocolate feeling from that. Mm. I respect your opinions on that, and it is absolutely wonderful in terms of the flavor of the drink itself. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the drink? I like it. It tastes like ice cream. I did not like it. Very good. I think it tastes like ice cream. But then again, of course, it's oh, alcohol, but it's it's so nice. good. I would think. Uh, this is probably a nice segue to another drink out there. Um, I gotta find in my collection what might be the best drink to go to next. So, um, in terms of kind of what we have 
plan for this evening. The idea is to kind of go from cocktails into a GameCube portion where Lycos Lore and I will be playing GameCube games all night, but it doesn't seem like we're ready quite just yet to transition to the GameCube portion. So we will continue with another cocktail over here and continue until the wee hours of the morning. It is about one o'clock a.m. Oh, it's about to sa sour time. Damn Savannah Sour. Goddamn Savannah Sour. We have Pepper, aka Dalukar over here, who's been pining for a sour beverage, a drink that is made in the form of the whiskey sour, or the gin sour, or the any type of sour there. She is particularly requesting a Savannah Sour, and I have to ask, Savannah Sour? Is there a particular uh, ingredient there? When I was down there, I was sniffing all that bottles because I have ADHD. The Savannah uh, whiskey smells just superb. It sounds wonderful. I have... I have the Savannah whiskey over here, and it seems that Pepper is pining for a Savannah sour. Uh, Savannah sour, a, a particular sour out there that you might find. A sour drink is one that you usually wind up mixing with lemon juice, some sort of citric acidy based ingredient, as well as something that's a little more foamy, something that will wind up emulsifying under the chemical reaction between the citric acid there and the other ingredients in there. In this case, it's going to wind up being citric acid, probably brought upon by the lemon juice, which I'm going to add to this cocktail, as well as some egg whites, and we're going to put some whiskey in there as well. I'm going to take this peppermint mocha and I'm going to push it off to the side. I'm going to put it onto a, a bit of a coaster. I have many of them. Um, to try to put things on display. Um, again, things might look a little messy up here, but I usually don't wind up doing this type of format here. So if things look ugly, um, sorry. Suck it up. We're going to keep going. We're raising money for charity over here, baby. That's what it's all about. So it's currently, we're raising money for charity and we've made about, oh... On Tiltify it says $330 so far, and on Twitch it says $70. We've made $400 so far. The goal is to reach $500 at the end of a 24-hour period, and we all have about 18 hours left. I think it is totally, totally doable. And so to continue with that, with the spirit of everything, we're going to make some sort of whiskey sour. In this case, the whiskey sour is brought to you by the states of Georgia. Savannah, specifically, single barrel, age 5 plus years, 108 proof, founders reserve. We were kind of talking before about various different types of whiskeys, alcohols, bourbons, and whatnot. I don't know the specifics of this particular Savannah bourbon, but there are various laws out there that determine whether or not a bourbon is something that they consider a bourbon. And me that we're all about learning. Oh, excuse me, I burped there. I'm going to try to look up what that is, because I'm actually kind of curious, because I can't seem to recall it off the top of my head. Bourbon laws, according to the internet, the Google, if you will. Bourbon whiskey, straight bourbon whiskey, must be aged at least two years, and bourbon bourbon must contain at least 51% straight... I'm clicking in the Wikipedia page, so I quote this correctly. 51% straight of... Of... Of corn in a container of charred oak. So apparently, because this thing is considered bourbon, it is has at least 51% of corn aged in charred oak barrels. Um, I remember when I went down for my family vacation, I picked up a bottle of Savannah single barrel, and I've done quite a number of this bottle so far, and it's very, very tasty. It's got hints of like that kind of like that very characteristic vanilla notes to it vanilla and clove and kind of Christmassy spices to it um there's probably a lot more that goes into that uh and then i learned earlier on from my pal eric over here that there's various different ways to kind of taste the whiskey that you wind up imbibing and i don't want to explore that too too much this time around because i think we kind of covered a lot of that earlier um and i'm feeling a little drunk over here a little bit of buzz and i want to make sure that we serve up people the drinks that they want and there's many many hours left of this so in case i keep on harping on that it's because my mind is a little cyclical and i keep coming back to the same thing we're amazing raising money for charity and it's for the world central kitchen this one so donate if you feel so inclined to if not and you're just kind of hanging here for the ride that's totally okay we wound up doing this stuff anyway and we're all having a really really good time with it so you are welcomely sitting in your chair sitting in your seat sitting wherever you are and hopefully having a great time and if you're not having a great time then that's totally okay that's totally your prerogative if you have feedback feel free to share in the meantime we can make a whiskey sour with this single barrel Savannah bourbon. Um, I have, I'm trying to keep awake, so I have a coffee cup over here. So I'm gonna go back to my French press over here and pour in the rest of my coffee because my eyes are drooping and I need more caffeine. That's what it's all about. Energy drinks, coffee, and otherwise, and a coffee. Oh my God. I drank all the rest of it. Oh my goodness. Oh baby, we're still going over here. 
it's still kind of warm too. Let's make a whiskey sour. I'm gonna take my um, my cheesecloth of candy canes and stuff. I don't think that I'm going to use that again. I don't have a barrel up here anymore in my bucket. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of throw that on the ground for now as a means to kind of conserve the space that I have and take a little piece of this, pe this uh, candy cane bar to soothe my soul. I'm gonna need a cocktail shaker. I have a cocktail shaker. I don't have my barrel to be able to um, void things into. Otherwise, we'll be able to uh, kind of chunk it up. Do you have the barrel? Uh, yeah, the barrel? It would be greatly appreciated because then I have something to kind of um, kind of clean out my glasses into. All right. I have my we'll shaker right here somewhere. Before. Where is my shaker? Where's my shaker? Hmm. I know I had this around here somewhere because I just made the peppermint mocha and I'm wondering where. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Your shaker? Mm -hmm. Oh, before I downstairs, cleaned it. Oh, it's all cleaned downstairs. Yeah, the one, it's cleaned downstairs. The wonderful part about having a bunch of people on stream is that things wind up getting cleaned and move around without necessarily my knowledge. But I kind of, I kind of get a little confused sometimes, so uh, it gets a little bit confusing. Ball in here. What else do you need downstairs? Uh, anything, I guess. I have this other one. I have this other shaker, which I can use in the interim, and we're gonna use that to make our whiskey sour. Um, to make our whiskey sour, I think there's a couple of different ways that you can make a whiskey sour out there, but I think I'm just gonna go with the first recipe that pops into my head. My recipe for a particular whiskey sour, if you wanna kinda theme it around, is to use kind of like an ounce and a half or about two ounces, anywhere between 44 milliliters to about 60 milliliters of your particular spirit of choice. In this case, I'm gonna use a bourbon, and I'm gonna measure that out real quick here. Where is my, oh my god, did I, did I move my, my jiggers as well? You? Everything's getting changed around here. I will get that for you. Ooh, that's okay. On the bright side, we have a bunch of shot glasses and stuff. And a shot glass is about two ounces, so it's gonna work out for me. Ooh, we're gonna do it anyways. Ooh, I've made a little bit of a spill. That's okay. Two ounces of the bourbon. It's going in my glass there. We'll do that. I'm gonna pop that off there. And I'll move it back down to the side. Now, in this case, too, if you're going to make yourself a whiskey sour, you can pretty much, you, you can kind of, kind of uh, riff upon anything that you wind up finding here. I know, in particular, whiskey sours for me are, are kind of elevated by kind of floral notes. I, in the past, I've always wanted to make like kind of a, like a, a lavender sour, or like a rose flower, uh, rose sour, and I kind of, what I kind of want to do here is find something a little more botanical. I have a couple different type of botanicals in my collection here, and I'm gonna take a look down and just kind of see around and see what I have for a moment, and see what we have that kind of have laying around. I have the peach brandy from earlier. I have this various different types of rye and stuff. I have a pepper. How are you in blue raspberry? Um, is blue raspberry a flavor you're kind of into? I don't love it. Okay, okay, blue raspberry is not the thing to do. I, found, I have this blue raspberry moonshine that I've always wanted to use in a sour, but if it's not to the particular likings of the particular patron, then that is totally okay. I will find something else as well. Let me see. Whoops. Let me see what else we got down here. I got... Let me know if any of these flavors reach out to you. Melon? Peach? Oh, um, Savannah Peach, we have peach. Georgia. We have the peach. Oh, Georgia Peaches. Georgia there we go. Peaches. That's a nice one. We have to. Oh my God. We just bought some peach brandy earlier and I think this would go great in a peach sour. Let's go for that. It's a Savannah, it's a Savannah bourbon and I think that would go well with the peach. So I think what we'll do for this is we're gonna go on and take in the two ounces or so of the Savannah bourbon, it's about 60 milliliters. We're gonna add to that about 30 milliliters or about an ounce of this peach brandy that I have here, which we use in our Philadelphia Fitch Punch, which was a total hit for everybody here as well. It went down very, very smoothly. I'll put that in there. Excellent. Very, very simple, and I think it's gonna taste rather wonderful as well. The next thing that we're gonna add to our glass is we're gonna add a little bit of simple syrup. I think for the most part, the peach brandies has a nice sweetness to it. The bourbon itself has a little bit of a bite to it. I think it would benefit from a little bit of simple syrup, and we're also gonna add some lemon juice there as well to kind of balance everything out. I think what I'll do first, I'll add a little bit of the simple syrup. I'm just gonna add like a half an ounce or so. I'm gonna get that from my refrigerator over here. Just to add a little bit of sweetness, I had quite, I have quite a number of them. I think it's gonna wind up making things pretty good. It's relatively fresh. I made it in the last week or so, and I think it'll be very, very nice. About 50, about half an ounce or about 15 milliliters. I'm kind of doing a little bit of an estimation with the shot glass over here because I'm feeling kind of confident right now. 
And I think that perhaps the measurements that I'm making here, I think will wind up working out pretty good. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna juice a little bit of a lemon. I've got some lemon squeezers over here that are relatively available. And we have a couple of different lemons that we have from our citrus bag over here. We were kind of skimming a bunch of lemons before the Villa, for the Philadelphia Fish House Punch. Uh, I got another lemon here. It's just the first one that I wound up grabbing for the bag. I have a knife somewhere. I do, indeed. This one's a sharp one. Nope, this one's the sharp one. I'm just gonna cut it here. Usually you would wind up using a cutting board, uh, but I think mine's downstairs being cleaned. So I just kind of cut my lemon in half. I'm gonna take the half of this lemon, and I'm not you, you, I'm not really going via the science here right now. So I'm just gonna take a half of my lemon, and I'm gonna juice it into my cocktail shaker. Not the whole thing. I don't think I need that much of it, but it's, I think it's gonna taste pretty, pretty good. I take the squeezer, I'm gonna put that in there as well. I have about half of my lemon left. Usually what I like to try to do is kind of try to conserve this lemon as best as I possibly can. So what I kind of do is I take a little bit of a paper towel, I can grab it. I'm running a little bit low on my paper towels here. And I'll kind of take it, I'll kind of press it against the one side, I'll wrap it around, and I will put it into my fridge to be able to use to, uh, to be able to be used later on. I actually I just realized that I have half lemon in here already, so I probably could have used that earlier, but I just remembered it was there. So I'm gonna go with it and keep with it. So in the glass right now, we've got some Savannah whiskey, we've got some peach brandy, we've got some lemon juice in there, and a little bit of simple syrup. The next thing we're gonna add to try to kind of bring a foam to this drink is we're gonna add a little bit of egg whites. So I'm gonna go into my fridge and grab one of my eggs. There are various, various different types of egg white substitutes out there. I think aquafaba is a very, well, thank you for the extra paper towels. I see Pepper bringing some uh, some things over here. A very good substitute for egg whites is something called aquafaba. I really don't know what the chemical makeup of that is, so I can't really talk too much on it. But what I'm gonna wind up adding to this cocktail is an egg white. So what that will wind up doing is add a nice little foam, a nice foam to the cocktail finish at the end, and it's gonna add a bit of a smoothness to it. There's some that about the egg white itself that kind of really rounds out the drink from like a texture perspective, which a lot of people enjoy. Uh, I think it's kind of like the, if you're gonna make a sour, then the best thing that you can do is add an egg white to it, because I think it adds a whole new perspective to the drink itself. This particular libation here is not necessarily cocktail themed, but we're all having a good time here, and we're making it at the request, at the, the request and behalf of one of our patrons. So when I take my egg white, the way that I kind of do it, if I don't have uh, an apparatus to help me, is I kind of crack the egg, I kind of shuffle the yolk between both parts of the egg itself. The egg white kind of drips down. It's a little gross. If you're a little squeamish, it might not work super well for you, but you kind of go back and forth, trying to make sure the egg yellow, the egg yolk, separates from the egg whites itself. And as you get the mo after you get the most of that egg white in there, you kind of scoop it all out and stuff, you kind of discard or preserve the rest of the egg there. Um, I think what we're gonna be making breakfast in the morning, so I kinda wanna sa save this egg white, but I don't really have uh, a really easy way of preserving that right now. So I'm just, I'm just gonna discard it for now. Um, but we have plenty of other eggs that we're gonna use. The eggs that I have in my refrigerator are specifically for the cocktails and stuff, and we bought specific eggs for the breakfast in the morning. So no harm, no foul. Although I guess technically speaking, there is a chicken out there who is yet to be born because of the actions that I have taken this evening, in which case, not so. Um, not so? The most eggs you buy Ooh. are gonna be fertilized. Oh, thank goodness. I don't have to feel guilty about so, that. Uh, no harm and no foul. No harm or no foul. It's a pun, we stick with that. So now, I have more or less the pre-beginnings of a whiskey sour here. All I need to do is shake it up. When, now that I have my egg white in there, I want to dry shake it first. It's going to create a positive differential, pr uh, pressure differential between the inside of my cocktail shaker and the outside. So I'm going to seal this thing up a little bit, make sure that it's nice and tight. I'm going to keep it tight while I give it a dry shake with no ice in it, and then I'll add ice afterwards after I wind up doing my shakage gonna have a very kind of soft sound to it. I'm holding it together very, very tight so I don't wind up uh, spilling anything and exploding. Otherwise, that would be annoying. You can kind of, I can't hear any of the bubbles kind of peeking out of there because otherwise uh, I wouldn't be holding it very tight, but I am holding it very tight here. I'm gonna keep with that. Oh, and I kind of made a little bit of a mess, but it's okay. The idea is, ooh. I don't know if you could hear that pressure kind of release in there, but I have more or less Constitu, consti, cons, constituted, 
my egg white in there. Uh, now I'm gonna add some ice to be able to emulsify things and make it a little more smooth and a bit more pleasant. I have a variety of ice cubes in here. What I'm gonna wind up doing is taking one of my bigger ice cubes, putting it into my glass. I'm gonna skip these smaller ice cubes for uh, this time around because uh, I just don't feel like it. So I'm not gonna do that. Take my big ice cube, put it into the cocktail shaker, and now I'm gonna wet shake it, which will cause a negative pressure differential to occur. And uh, I don't have to try so hard on this one. It's gonna, it's just gonna work out properly because science is on my side this time. And in the meantime, I'm gonna drink some coffee too. Got a lot of practice with my right hand in this particular motion. Take that as you will. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm doing a little bit of a zoom here. I'm gonna grab my sacrificial yoga blocks because things just look cooler at that angle. Here we go. I'm gonna grab that. I'm gonna grab a coupe glass, something that looks really, really nice with these particular sours because the kind of uh, kind of crema that you wind up finding on your sours looks really, really cool up close in my humble opinion. It's gonna look very, very nice. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna garnish that with a little bit of a lemon twist. You kinda, it, there's not a lot of contrast between this and the back that I have here. Usually there's a very black backdrop here, but we're raising money for charity over here. So, ooh, excuse me. That's gonna, not gonna look that uh, contrasting. Let's do that. We'll uncork this if I can. I hate this shaker so much. Oh my God. It's a beautiful plaid color, but I absolutely hate it. And I'll kind of strain that over the top. Try to see if I can get a nice contrast there. You can kind of tell there's a bit of an opaque nature. There's a kind of an opaque coloring there because the, the egg white is creating this kind of crema up on top. Very lovely. Oof. I love the way that looks. It looks so smooth. It's gorgeous. It's a beautiful, gorgeous peachy. cocktail. Peachy, they say. Peachy, peachy indeed. Um, I think the best the, the best garnish that I can come up with is I've been trying to work on my garnish game a little bit and I haven't really kind of uh, kind of followed through on that a little bit. But I do have some extra limes uh, lemons over here somewhere. So I'm gonna take one of those lemons and I'm gonna give it a little bit of a give it a little bit of a peel there. And I know I have some of those peels somewhere around here. I thought yes, I do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of these lemon peels and give it a little bit of a. That was terrible. I'm going to do that again. Skirt. 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 Yeah, that's a nice skirt. Nice skirtage. I'm going to spread it over the top. <laughs> kind of drop it in. Just like that. We have a little bit of a uh, kind of a, a, a Georgia, Georgia peach sour here. Got a little bit of a peach brandy in there. Got some Savannah, Georgia bourbon in there. We have some simple syrup, some lemon juice, and a little bit of a lemon peel kind of expressed on top. I'm zooming out way too far. I'm gonna serve this to the, pra to the patron here, who requested it. Tasty. Absolutely. We've just had a donation that came in. I'm gonna pass this drink off to Pepper oh, over here. we get to kill the balloons? I think we get to kill a balloon, so to speak. We have a donation here and it just came in from Lemon for $20. Thank you, Lemon. I have a, bal a yellow sorry balloon for feeling somewhere. You. I'm so sorry that we had to completely, like, dude. I'm not eating your kid. We de-skinned you. We de-skinned you. My goodness, that's skin. very oh, unfortunate that worth for us. I have the to say, skin. Lemon, thank you for your sacrifice. Well, it's worse than... <laughs> I don't know what I just said there. I'm trying to blow up this balloon for the donation. <sighs> also, it gets worse. We not only skinned them, we cut them in half. We did. Some of the hold up, hold up, hold up. I did not cut this lemon in half. This is the lemon who donated. Um, she's looking a little um, pale on the outside because of the skin that I just grafted off of her. But um, I didn't cut her in half. Not this one. You get to stay right up here on the front. Um, however, um, there's at least a piece of you that, that is being expressed in Pepper's drink over here. So uh, um, if I had to ask, Lemon, um, how do you taste? Oh, very, a little tart. A little, little tart? A little bit of a tartness there. The yeah. creaminess is definitely there. Mm, all right. Is, uh, kind of like a lemon cream? Or are we talking more like a like a smoothness? This is a smoothness. That's mm. not, it's, it's really exciting. I think you should give it a try. Like a smooth donation from like a, a very smooth lemon. 
we have a tartness here. It is what we're gonna call a Georgia peach sour, I think. Feels kind of right there. We, have, uh, we had a donation from the lemon. Uh, I feel like I am inclined to write this up on the board. Um, as you see in that box down there, there's yellow, there's yellow chalk markers. I'm gonna grab one of those and I'll write that up on our board. What's that? The balloon? Did you label the balloon? We did. The, la the balloon is labeled. Absolutely. Right. Lemon has made a donation. What? Lemon, she is a part of the contribution Actually, now. Yeah. Thank you, Lemon. Thank you, Lemon. Thank you, Lemon. Lemon's not a man. That would be very rude of us. But I am assuming your pronouns here. Feel free to correct me otherwise. I just kind of pick a Lemon, random one as I can. Thank you, Lemon, for your contribution. Contribution and sacrifice. Speed up. No, oh, no. my God. Wow. Okay. So it's very strong, isn't it? The same, the same feeling that I kind of got from the okay. Philadelphia okay. Fish House Punch. The peach is super prevalent. The peach yeah. and the lemon is a flavor combo that I'm not particularly used to. There's a dryness here from the kind of egg white there, but it's it's good. It's good. It's good. Now it's kind of it's kind of light. I wouldn't say this is heavily alcoholic. However, if you are a um, kind of person who is not a big fan of, let's say, omelets. Um, or egg whites, or things that are, for lack of a better term, sandpapery. This probably isn't your thing. I would say this is a little more astringent than something that's more smooth, kind of like the bourbons that we were tasting earlier. But it is rather nice to it, and the, yeah, the peach flavor is kind of forward there. Later. Absolutely. But we did make our Georgia peach sour. When I it's said successful. we're going to kill a balloon. Kill a balloon? <gasps> I meant no. We're you gonna said, kill her. Oh, what did I say? You did say that when we got a donation, we would kill her. No, I thought it was if you guys didn't make the uh, goal, you could kill her. No. 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 It was well, when got a well. So, so uh, let's see. Let's see what the. Well, technically speaking, actually, this is a nice moment to kind of see and see uh, how much donation we've gotten so far. Ooh, According to item. Twitch, we have gotten seventy dollars of donations. Actually, I According to. According to Tiltify, hold your horses there. We've having three hundred and fifty dollars of donation. Yeah. Doing some quick maths there, we have found that it is about four twenty. Uh, hashtag blaze it, dab on the haters of uh, donations there. We've also had two subs donated this stream so far. Every single sub, every single bit that winds up getting donated on the Twitch side is something that I'm gonna wind up pushing towards to the Tiltify campaign at the very end after the twenty four hour mark is over. I wouldn't feel comfortable taking those donations to me as of, as of this moment, so it winds up going to charity anyway. So. Taking into account the $10 so far, we are at $430 that we have raised for the World Central Kitchen, which will be contributed at the very end of the 24 hours. We have about 18 and a half hours left of that. It's just going to keep on going. So we haven't quite reached our goal in total of $500 in the 24-hour period, although we are getting very 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 close to it and i think it might be worth waiting until we hit that 500 hundred dollar mark to see if we kill this beautiful beautiful balloon up here who looks like she's very very sad there's a knife on the regular honestly we need 80 more dollars for this in some way shape or what form what my thought was is if you're using the last sub i think we should make a lemon a judge jury and execution Le a lemon a lemon? Judge Jury and Judge yeah. yeah. We should eat a lemon? Listen, we're gonna eat a lemon here? So, I do, I do like the $500. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Is that a thing? If I squeeze a lemon on top of this balloon, <laughs> I think we have to kill her with the lemon. All right, for the sake of science, I am a very, very curious man. Um, if anybody donates literally any amount of money right now, literally, in the next, like, five minutes, I'm going to squeeze lemon juice on top of this balloon and see if it pops. I will take that chance. Zoom in on her pathetic face. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zoom in on this pathetic face here. And literally, any donations will cause me to squeeze lemon juice on this balloon. I kind of want to test this hypothesis. I kind of want to say it. There's some, there's some type of your weird, like... Look at this beautiful, look at this beautiful, beautiful balloon here. Literally, anybody who donates any amount of money, I will squeeze lemon juice on top of this balloon here. I will do it. I will do it. In this very moment. Otherwise... I gotta go donate money. The times are, uh... The times are changing. Time We're running out of time here. We might have to find a different way of eviscerating this balloon. It might be a knife later on. It could be a kiss. It could be some Wait, other what? form of sharp penetration. Nobody really knows. Yeah. It is a risk teeth. that I am willing to teeth. teeth. Did somebody say teeth? Somebody yeah, say teeth? I didn't say, I didn't say teeth. I would I would never say teeth. Oh my gosh. No way. Ooh, oh my goodness. And uh, yeah. I, I would not recommend popping a balloon while one of its surfaces is on your mouth, because I imagine 
Yeah. So there'd be latex in your throat? Yeah. Personally? That oh, not a fan no, of the concept no, no, of latex no, 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 in no, no, my throat. No, no, no. Uh, I know some girls who might disagree. Oh. Different latex. Yo, um, so they say different strokes, different folks. You know what they say, you know? Mm. This is a dirty, dirty shaker. Who may I hand this dirty, dirty shaker to? D dirty, dirty oh, shaker. Wow. This is... And the rest of my chocolate Manhattan here. It's a very plaid shaker. I'll, I'll take this down. I gotta just go down anyway. I'm, I've I'm decided I'm your co-star now. You're co my co-star now? Yeah, I'm your co-star. Ooh, all right. We, we'll do bits. There are more con There are more cocktails to be made. So if you had to pick any one of these cocktails here, ooh, pick one. Oh, oh, we have to do the Grink. Dun, 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 dun. You're mean one, Mr. Grinch. You really are a you. You're as ugly as a cactus. You're as charming as an eel, Mr. Grinch. No, the guy who sang that song was the voice actor for Tony the Tiger. Is it really? I that actually. I didn't know that. Wow, Tony the Tiger um, sang the Grinch song. song. Oh. Yeah, about Wait. Tony the Tiger and the Grinch. They broke up. Oh my god, were they dating? You didn't Was hear? that an official thing? This is a very old Tumblr joke. Oh. I'm very sorry to anyone who's... I'm really sad about that. I, getting flashbacks right now. The idea of that beautifully green, cuddly Christmas mascot, like totally arm in arm, pretzeled up with Tony the Tiger, that orange, black, and white furred creature. I don't know where I'm going with this, but uh, it's kind of kind of fetish territory. Yes, Tony's rippling Anyways. muscular power. Yes. The Grinch's yes. bottom-heavy physique, his spindly little twink arms. Specifically voiced by Jim Carrey. Oh, you. Oh, oh. yeah. I don't yeah, want to think no, about that. I, one. I, I like. Wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm a little. I'm by Jim Carrey. Or yes, played by Jim both Carrey. of them. Both of them as well. That's kind of. I'm, so, okay. I'm a little ashamed is, of this. Is Tony the Tiger like a 2D in this? Is the Grinch like a full like? Okay, person okay. In so a this costume? one, this is someone getting now, right? So the 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 Grinch, um, voiced by and acted out by Jim Carrey. That's just that's that's the thing there. Um, but also like in this case, Tony the Tiger, voiced by and acted out by um, the dude who voices Sonic the Hedgehog in Sonic the Hedgehog movies. Um, I can't remember his name for some reason. I know who you're talking about. He's literally every blue character. <laughs> yes, literally. Uh, cause it's giving me like Sonic the Hedgehog movie vibes. But like, I'm kind of feeling a little shameful of that. But like, I'm also totally into it. So, so, so. Cause it's like robot. Clear. It's Robotnik. There. Cause like Robotnik is Jim Carrey. So, you know, you know. You have a very bony grip. I have very. I don't have a lot of body fat on my body. I in, do. In any case, so the next cocktail that we're gonna make this evening is called the Grinch that stole Christmas. A recipe from WineMag.com/recipe/Grinch cocktail tick. Grinch cocktail, drink cocktail TikTok. I don't really know. Uh, the 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 um, the actual URL is kind of off the page for me. But it combines a couple of different things together. You may be wondering if you're making a Grinch cocktail, what are the requirements, right? So you gotta imagine the Grinch oh, itself, the Grinch who stole Christmas, oh. is a very very green character. Oh. It's one that is a little bit of a stringent, especially from a social perspective, as well as from a very like a societal perspective as well. When you think of the Grinch, you think of somebody who kind of acts a X out against society itself, you know? All of Whoville wants to celebrate Christmas and feel the good tidings and whatnot, but the Grinch in this case is just like, ah, say, ah, no, no Christmas. No Christmas, uh, no say. Christmas, say. Ah. Ah. Kind of how that's exactly what the Grinch sounds like. Uh, yes, and that's what the color green sounds like too, obviously, as we as we we will eventually find out. The color green is a very, uh, very Brooklyn accent kind of uh, Kind of a forget there. about it, like a Harley Quinn. Kind of like a forget about it. Kind of like a, uh, hey, uh, Christmas, Christmas who, you know? Kind of a Mr. J. roast beast. But That's yeah, how the roast only Harley Quinn I can do. I can't do that. Mr. J is supposed to be the Joker in this game, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Ah, it's it's yeah, very I funny. Sometimes I call my boss Mr. J when I'm feeling Mr. sassy. J. And he's Mr. like, J. Don't, please don't do that. I'm if like, I had the... My boss would be Mr. K in that case. Or Mr. No, S. No, no, no. Sit, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. There's no Mr. J in my company. We call him J. I don't There's know no Mr. Report. J in my company. I don't know any Mr. J. Mr. J? Well, I guess... No. I don't know any Mr. J. Oh, J's. Mr. J. No, I miss that J. I miss that J. <laughs> The J being a joint, uh, hey -o, uh, weed is green, I suppose. 
Uh, it is green. It is green. It is green. It is mean. It is make bean machine. Uh, that is way off camera, but that is okay. Oh, excellent, excellent. I'm just making sure that we're all aware of that. We will continue with another cocktail in the theme of the Christmas season. Oh, I just noticed too. Lemon, who was the one who donated? I just realized lemon is spelled with E with umlauts. Lemon. 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 I just noticed that. Somebody's got to collect. Huh, who's in charge of balloons? Somebody's got to correct that. Somebody's got to correct that on my behalf. That was on my, That was totally on me. We're going to move on to another cocktail. The cocktail, yes, on the E. The next cocktail we're going to make is called the Grinch, who's still Christmas. It's a green beverage. Oh, you got a marker? It's just a, 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 there we go. There goes the lemon. Hey, there we go. Here goes, here goes this lemon. I need to put this lemon in the citrus bag. I don't, I don't need it anymore. Catch this lemon. Yo, catch that. Oh, ah! It's good. It's totally okay. I'm gonna take these sacrificial yoga blocks and put them away. Uh, they're not serving us right now. Um, oh. what, are you, what are you doing? Um, actually, can I can I ask a quick favor from the uh, thank Miss Elves around here? Um, I crushed up these candy canes and it's made an absolute mess of shit over here. So could I ask a quick exchange for my rubber mat here? I'd be greatly, greatly appreciated. I think it would be very helpful. You want me to take that down? It'd be great. I'm going to finish off this chocolate Manhattan over here. I, I'm I, Why is my brain blank right now? This is not just the two dots of open it, is it? Almost, yeah. You got it. Okay. There's also these... So, purple intent left these beautiful, super tasty Mar um, Luxardo Maraschino cherries in the cocktails. And I'm a shameless individual. I got you. Oh! Hit me right in the, right in the eyebrow. <laughs> that was like I'm shameless. He he left some really really good fucking cherries here, and I gotta eat this. Also, Lehman, That's all me. This for you. Yeah. Lehman, here we go. Woo! Woo! There we go. There we go. Balloons. Hi. Um. Do you want me to take this down? So yeah, if I could if I could bother you to take these two cocktail shakers. Yep. This um oh, thing here. I'm gonna put some shit on here. Shot glass. Um, the shaker is good. This is a marker. The dish down too. Um. Yeah. yeah absolutely. If we can, if we can, I'll, I will help you out with this. I don't want to be. I don't want to like. Mac, personally, I'm the Mac. I'm the Mac. Oh shit! You have a bear. I don't have any bears in here. What are you talking about? Um. Here. In the big blue house. Oh yeah, we have the bear in the blue, big blue house. There's so many candy canes up here. Mmm. Look at that. Take a closer look at that rubber mat. Take a closer look at that mat. All right. Can I take? Can I bother you to take these? You can bother me. Rubber mat. Give it a nice wash off, and they're here. Oh. Oh man, is this being after wash? Oh, everybody is so helpful. I'm gonna do a little bit of water. I have the fucking house the third mat in this house. Do a little bit of a cleanup over here because we kind of try to keep our cocks over here all nice and clean. Our, our cock, cock on our deck, you know? Clean up on aisle three. We got a fresh new set here. Oh my god. I'm We're back. so prepared around here. And Pepper, aka Dalukare. How should I refer to you this evening? Pepper? Luca? Dalukare? Luca? I've been going like by that. Luca lately. I like, like that, online. actually. It's yeah, cute, isn't it? Yeah, we got Luca here. I used to go by Daluk, but now I'm like, that's not my vibes anymore. No, I think that's really nice, actually. I'm sure you can figure out why. We were making a Grinch drink, I think. Oh, so yeah. Green. We sort of started riffing on the Grinch. You know what's kind of green? You know what's kind of green? You know green? I'm going down here. It's going to be weird for a moment. <laughs> no, it's not weird at all. It's Midori. I was really scared. Yeah, it's okay. It would have been gotten really, really weird. That's not appropriate for TOS. A reminder. That that's not joking? what I was joking about. We're broadcasting on Twitch.tv. TOS. Uh, you know, Amaranth exists out there. So technically, like, I could just, like, strip on camera and everything's okay, right? So long as I tag myself as hot tub on streams. I stuff. you. I know where he keeps the knives. Yo, Matt, let's get naked. <laughs> Nobody can tell behind the bar. You don't even know that I'm wearing pants over here. Just kidding, I am. Look, I have red pants on. It's a thing. It's I'm not, thing. though. Oh, oh, Pepper doesn't have Luca does not have pants on over here. I don't care. We're gonna make a we're gonna make a Grinch cocktail. Uh, if anybody's watching out there, which I'm sure you definitely are, and if you're not, that's okay. Uh, we're having a great time out here. We're like, oh, I'm sorry. 18 or so cocktails? I'm just rinsing my head and I just hear that just going, Do I know a fucking dish here? 
Oh my god. Oh my god. So to create a cocktail called the Grinch cocktail, the Grinch cocktail that's so Christmas, you're gonna need to combine in a cocktail shaker, Midori vodka, pineapple juice, dry sparkling wine, and a cherry for garnish. Um, I think this is actually shaken together. Pour in a rock smoke food with ice top with sparkling wine. Actually, this is completely built. So we're actually not doing any shaking here at all. So wow. I'm gonna find myself a rocks glass. What's what's that other green absinthe? I was like, is he gonna put absinthe in that? Should we put absinthe? <laughs> Absolutely. We can do whatever not. we want to. Oh this my god, we can do whatever we want. This is missing an A, and then it'd be that one kid from my hero. It's, it's, it literally just means green. Mid oh, Midoriya? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're a bunch of weebs over here. If anybody's what watched is? My Hero Academia, uh, oh Midori. Midoriya? You're just like, oh my, like, I'd slim me all of your power. I'm what? like, your come hair? on. Your hair and I stuff. Not followed my my hair dear so Midoriya, long. I can't possibly. Oh All for one. <laughs> United States of Smash! Yeah, that, that was what he said. Or something like that, you know? Yeah. That's what it's all about. Oh, yeah, man. I haven't seen Hair Lock in a while. Uh, I'm gonna make some cocktails over here. Yeah, I, I, love, I love your art. <laughs> <It's tough. laughs> I've never weeded in my life. Oh, apparently this cocktail is shaken. It's a shake for just a few seconds. Well, we do have this. Yeah, cocktail. Matt just threatening to kill me. Just made my day. You met Matt's me at a place at a, a cocktail shirt, bar. Which is only making me want to take it. I have at something under here. Don't worry. Bar. Look, do you need something? Cocktail bar. Can I what's help the, you? What's the song? What's the you song? are working as a waitress at a cocktail bar. That's, That's when, when I, I met you. You were working the, as a waitress. There's a version Don't. of that song where it's just like yeah. cocktail bar. Cocktail bar. I love that video. I love that version. Don't you want me, my babies? Don't, Don't you want my babies? Where are we going with this? I, I don't know. That's okay. I used to sing oh, that when I was up. a little kid. Man. And I kind of haven't stopped those times. Listen, <laughs> don't get rabies. You will die. If you get bitten by an animal, uh, please contact uh, poison CDC, control. I think. C CDC? Animal, con animal control. Contact they will kill the animal for you and dissect their local brain politician. to find out if they have rabies. If you find get that you've shot. been bitten by a raccoon who seems to be suffering from rabies, make sure to call up your local governor. Personally, I'm a resident of New Jersey, so I would call up Governor Cuomo, and I would call him up at a friend to say, Governor Cuomo, oh my god, oh my fucking god, I gotta go to the raccoon with the rabies. I just and he'd be like, like sir, anyway. honestly. Silly pepper. Oh, that's New York. Do, our animals don't eat wrong. people. People eat animals. Also, if guns you see... don't kill people, gunpowder eat the folks who fire trigger. Yes, explosion. Okay, you're not even making sense anymore. If you see an animal like a raccoon, fox, a possum, actually not an opossum, a raccoon, a fox that's typically nocturnal out and about in the daytime, it's generally best to avoid them because that is a sign of rabies. Oh. Granted, it's also just nice to avoid an wild animals because they're wild animals. They're not pets. Don't don't touch them. They're not going to be friendly because they'll they'll. And if they are friendendly, what if that's a bad sign? Animal? What if I am the one who is wild and animal? That's very hot. Should we make the Grink? Grink, get it? Cause like Dr Grinch. Dr oh, anyway, I, that was another tumble. Yeah, we're, we're we're gonna move on to that. Um, yeah, we're gonna make the Grink. Um, so in my cocktail shaker, I'm gonna add the following: one and a half ounces, or about 44 milliliters of Midori, half an ounce of vodka, or about 20, uh, 15 milliliters, an ounce or about 30 milliliters of pineapple juice, an ounce or about 30 milliliters of dry sparkling wine, and a cherry for garnish. The cherry doesn't go into the cocktail shaker. I'm not shaking that up with it. We're gonna, we're gonna go with it. So I actually have an entire pineapple here. Um, and I've been very, very tempted to like strain out the pineapple pieces to be able to create pineapple juice, but I do have pineapple juice. I think that's just too much of an investment of our time. So I'm going to go with that. Uh, the first thing we're going to need to add is about 44 milliliters or about an ounce and a half of Midori. Midori itself is a sweet melon Japanese liqueur. Uh, it's green. Midori itself, I believe, is the Japanese word for the color green in a reference to the melon itself. I have some pineapple juice out here as well. I need a measure, Majigger. Uh, thankfully I have one, and I needed about an ounce and a half of that. I have a line on my glass that allows me to very easily measure this thing out, so I'm gonna go for that. Uh, and we're making this. It's gonna be green, it's gonna be kind of- oh wow, I kind of over that. Chef's privilege. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> I love sucking on the Grinch. Oh my god. 
Take that out of context, please. <laughs> Somebody clip that. Somebody clip that. One and a half, uh, about a half ounce. We have additionally about 50 milliliters of vodka. Pepper, could you pick a vodka for us? Ooh. There is a Tito's in there. There's a Skunk Town in there, and there's also 360 vodka. It's gonna be the top shelf there, all the way on the left hand side, one side. Let's there's some Tito's. We just did Skunk Town. <laughs> Tito's. We're gonna about about half an ounce or yeah, about yeah, 15 milliliters of vodka. Dude, people just love Tito's. People just love Tito's. That people shit love fucking Tito's. sells. Oh, I used to work at a liquor store. Oh my god. Yeah. I don't anymore. It was miserable. Oh my god. I can only imagine. I feel like like. How do people act when they're in a liquor store? Um, like, is it more like kind of like I'm silent? I just want to buy my liquor and get out, or is it more just like, oh my god, like so I love mixing cocktails and stuff. Like, do you know about the gin? I'm about the wine. Fine. I ended up actually being a bit chatty at the time. The two biggest issues I had, ooh, excuse me, was that men. So, ounce or thirty milliliters of pineapple juice. This Continue, didn't come please. as a shock to you, but a lot of people see me and they think I'm a man. I'm not sure how oh. that happens, but um, people assuming gender and shit. It's 2022, time, come on. Uh, I looked a bit. I had shorter hair. Who knows? Um, men would come up to me and they would expect me to know about sports. And then I, at first, I tried to kind of politely turn them down. Um, they kind of got real confused about that one. Oh my goodness. Wait, I am confronting you about your particular preconceptions, and as soon as you say something against them, they're just like. Uh, I'm just, I'm just here trying to buy my to-dos, you know. Yeah. Uh, and then the sad, the sad thing was, uh, sh should I get sad on stream? What's that? Should I get sad on stream? Absolutely, yeah. It's time for sharing and stuff. Yeah. If, if you feel so comfortable. To do yeah. That. The sad thing would be we would get the alcoholics, people who are clearly in a state of distress. They'd come in, they'd buy the, the cheap bottom shelf vodka mm -hmm. in like a. Ooh, sorry. And like a there you go. pint, not a pint, like a flask size, basically. Yeah. And I'd, you know, I, I had to serve them, but I would feel awful doing it. Mm. So, you know, it's well, it's really like, kind of, it's kind of different too, because like I feel like so having taken a couple classes and like this doesn't reflect on me like at all, like this means absolutely nothing. But I took a couple of bartending classes. The peaches mm. are really strong. In this. And supposedly, oh, and the sour, it's great. Yeah. So, so supposedly, like, if you're a bartender and you see that somebody is, like, visibly drunk, intoxicated, like, not doing well for themselves, you have the right to be able to say, like, yeah, well, I'm not going to serve you alcohol and stuff. But, like, if you're a cashier, I feel like you have a different set of obligations you have than that. Like, you are, you are there to sell them the alcohol. So it doesn't matter if they look, like, drunk or otherwise. If they want to buy it and they got the cash, there's nothing st – there, there is nothing there to say that you have an obligation to be, like – you look intoxicated. I'm not going to sell you the alcohol because you feel like it seems like you're going to hurt yourself more. Sometimes I would be – so I worked day shift, um, which the thing if you've worked like any job, you'll find night shift. You, they grab kids to run that. Mm. We got – you know, we didn't have teenagers. We had 20-year-olds in college. Um, but day shift's going to be a bit more sparse. So I ended up working with the owner a lot. Hmm. And when the owner is of the liquor store itself, of the liquor store itself, interesting, and his adorable little terrier, Aww. love that thing to pieces. Oh my god, miss her. Love a store um, mascot. She also got mistaken for a guy. Her. Funny that huh. we have some kinship there. But yeah, when the store owner is like right there on your shoulder, seriously, uh, yeah, or you know the uh, the um, my manager is there. That's great, and I don't and I don't know what to do if they start a scene. <coughs> Let's be real. Excuse me. <coughs> you okay there? Sorry about that. I took a sip of water and I checked the donations and stuff. <coughs> Please continue. Terry, no, that's that's basically the story. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no, great, great punctuation there, Cameron. What a segue. Uh, what's so what's next in the grink? Oh my God, where are we here with the grink? I'm so sorry. You I didn't mean to like completely throw that, that moment. That so we added the uh, we added our ounce of oh, no. ounce or thirty milliliters of pineapple juice. We added an ounce of dry Ooh, sparkling water. Ooh, that pineapple! I love pineapple. Can I send you on a mission? Yes. So, on the front of this bar, on the left hand side, there is going to be a cabinet. Inside of that cabinet, you are going to find a whole selection of wines. Your task is to find the dry sparkling wine. Like non alcoholic. Oh, it's alcoholic already. Oh. Can I ask, do you want me to do it? Because I'm over here. Yeah. Mm, you can. You can distribute. I don't want to leave. Like to. 
the camera. Find the sparkly wine. I want you to read off every single bottle, and Pepper okay. and I are decidedly going to turn. No, no, left hand side, left hand side, on this side, which is the right hand side from the point of view of okay. the people who are watching. What do you need? Dry. I want you to read off every single bottle there, and Pepper and I, mostly Pepper, is going to indicate which one is the dry sparkling wine. Okay, we have a Bailey's brand through uh, champagne. It is. That's sparkling. the one. That's the one? Yeah, that's the one. Are you sure? That is yeah, sparkling. That's, that's, definitely, that's definitely the one. It is sparkling what? wine. I have some wine here. I have some dry sparkling That wine. is not wine. That is some champagne. This is absolutely champagne. So, oh, actually, there, there, is, there is actually a history of how Anna and I came into possession of this particular bottle of wine. So, once upon a time, Anna and I um, were planning to get married. We're still planning on getting married. None you know, if it's is, not from the sparkling region, it's not actually sparkling wine. It's true. It's sparkling, just sparkling, sparkling France. It has to come from sparkling France. It has to come from sparkling France. 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 You, um, shit, dude. Some, it was some king sparkling. Something like that. Sparkling Spark king, king. Champagne That's how king. they say king in France. King. Blue le me cling. You know, silly language like that. I don't speak that language, unfortunately. And me neither. Mm. At all. <laughs> in any case, I have I have this bottle of sparkling champagne here. Uh, Miley Grand Cru, Fruit Reserve, Champagne, founded in 1929. Fruit Reserve. Um, but it's, champagne itself is usually a very dry, sparkling wine. Sparkling in the sense that it is carbonated. It has the bubbles in it and whatnot. Anna and I, I think, got this bottle of wine as a part of a particular wedding basket that we got for going to a particular um, a, 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 a wedding it? convention. We went to a Wait, convention. A convention? A, we went to a convention. A wedding convention. Specifically for people who are trying to get married. We were trying to figure out like venues, trying to find photographers, trying to find caterers and stuff. We had kind of already, for the most part, planned out our caterers, our location, and whatnot. We were still trying to look for like a photographer, people to, to uh, kind of give us like kind of a, a spiel on what else we should be looking for to prepare for the wedding and stuff and we entered into a competition we entered into a bunch of different drawings and stuff and one of the drawings that we entered into was the chance to visit a particular um location for a tour of the location get an explanation of what kind of wedding you would get out of it and just God kind of the whole spiel hour. of being like yeah you know like you have your wedding here you get a particular room you get a couple of complimentary rooms this is the ballroom that you get to work with yada yada whatever also if you won you get this big gift basket which had a bunch of things in it we had a pair of champagne flutes we had a bottle of of wine that which you got here we got a couple of cards in there a couple of other like pieces of uh um i guess uh wedding stuff we got a we got a sarah paraphernalia that's the word that i was looking that's for that's the word we got a couple of wine of wedding fair paraphernalia one of the things that we got in terms of the wine celebration aspect of it was this bottle of wine and i don't think we've ever actually cracked it open um well it's it about is goddamn a bottle time. of champagne and stuff so it is worth the champagne celebration. and stuff it is champagne and stuff well it's mostly just champagne uh imported by serenity stanford there's connecticut some, there's some carbon dioxide if there's any there. if there's any sort of champagne aspect percentage wise from Connecticut, this is the quintessential like like um piece of that from Connecticut. So I'm inclined to th this is this is a according to our recipe, it calls for dry sparkling wine. It's a, it's Champagne a weird is a dry that sparkling wine. Dry and sparkling, but not like red, or white, like. So this is I would have the dry sparkling red. wine that we have. So it is open to anybody here who is in the camera with the next crowd right here. Would you really like to pop up with a bottle of champagne? It's I'm a bottle. It is going to make a sound. I'm kind of scared. It's very excited. Should I? Dude, champagne shoes Who wants it? Hilarious. Hey, oh, it's, it's, it's hilarious. And if it makes a mess, even better. Exactly. Maybe we'll get some sweet, sweet donuts for that. Dude. All right. You know what? I'll give it a try. Yeah? Let's or you want to go for it? Oh. We needed our cocktail, so you got it. You got to open it at some point. You, you yeah. got to open it one way or another. It's, it, that's the thing. Wait, if it, have you ever uh, popped open a bottle of champagne before? I have not. I actually have a story I kind of want to share. Oh, please, Before? please. Before? Oh, Michael's, come on here. Yeah, so, okay. In the meantime. Uh, oh, true. This was at a, a New Year's party. I don't know, Pepper, if you've heard this story, but this was a New Year's party I was at with you. Sorry, you were saying I was slipping my coffee <laughs> in a very is indistinct and a very disrespectful moment. I know, very... You know, I think I have a New Year's with a champagne bottle. <laughs> what? <laughs> Anyhow. I'll show you a champagne bottle. Uh, come Anyhow, on over here. the story... Oh. Black I'm so sorry. Please continue sharing your story. 
<laughs> so We're on live television right now. There was um the host of the party. He had a little too much to drink before the ball drop, and he was already kind of like going nuts. Hold, hold on, quick quick contest question. Did this man's name start with M? <laughs> yeah, of course it did. Okay, I know exactly where we're- I said you were there. Oh my god, I was. <laughs> so... All I'm gonna say is, um, <laughs> oh my god, what is the ginger ale company? Seagram's? Seagram's Whiskey. <laughs> oh my god, that just fucks you up so badly. <laughs> anyway, please continue. So, you know, like the ball drops, I think like, someone sh shot off a bottle of champagne and immediately like he went like mouth over the hole and tried guzzling as much as he could couldn't guzzle it so he ran to the per closest person he could find which was my girlfriend and started and used her sweatshirt to wipe off his face of oh all god. the champagne he got on it. I remember totally not Milton doing this. <laughs> god, I her, she's like, dude, what the hell? Oh I was my just god. standing there laughing my ass off. Oh my god. I cannot believe I hope that. that guy's doing well. I haven't seen him in years, but god I, damn. I, I think it'd be really cool. I think Anna and I have been talking about like trying to figure out the New Year's plans and stuff, and I feel like we might want to get that group together again. It was, it was that was so time. funny. Oh my goodness. Hey, yeah, that was that was my champagne story. Champagne though. New Year's story. It was great. It was like two or three years ago, right? Yeah. I remember specifically what you were talking about. I was yeah. like, oh my god, I remember yeah, so vividly. Oh, yeah, no. I remember hacking into his Wi-Fi. <laughs> that was great. Using his own computer. <laughs> it was perfect. My engineering degree finally coming in clutch at that moment. Uh, hacking, using your engineering to hack into your friend's Wi-Fi. In any case, somebody has got to crack open this bottle of champagne here. I know. If it's gonna ever. be, I, I'm okay with doing it. I got no. I oh, have shoot. vast experience hey, to do so. Well, sorry, because I just wanted to share my story, and I thought it was yeah. funny. Hey, I'm going over there. Oh boy. You know, me last time you opened the it's a male grand coup. Oh, wait, wait, did I open a champagne bottle before? No, Meg almost opened oh. a champagne bottle. Nice. Did you hear your head? No, it bounced off the wall and almost hit me. Bring it on! Oh, I'm starting the whole thing? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, All there's right. only, we only need a single ounce of it, so like, some, something, I don't know what we're gonna do with the rest of this, so. Oh. Pepper at this point has, um, unsheathed the champagne, the metal Just foil part of it. Gently, We're gonna untwist the metal kind of cage part. Gently, gently untwist the cage. ASMR. 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 We're gently untwisting the cage and letting it. Ay 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 ay! Funky Kong drives you to the airport. Look it up on YouTube. I fucking dare you. No, no. Let's just go to quality, quality content. Ooh, oh, oh, just the champagne like sheet. On the, the, next the cover, the champagne cup oh. blocker is coming off. Wow, the my cage. God. Wow, the cage has been released. All right, now how do I? So now you just gotta like, you could take a sword and unsheath it. I'm down. not. <laughs> Anyways, um, the Grinch who stole Christmas and fucking nutted right on our bar here <laughs> needs a single ounce of dry champagne, fruit oh wine, God. a single ounce or about 30 milliliters or so. It's so Someone fucking please clip Oh my that. God! Oh my God! Just a Grinch nut. Oh my Grin god. Did you say Grinch nut? Grinch nut. <laughs> Bro brought to you by Mally Grand Crew, imported by Serenity Import, Stanford, C Connecticut. Oh my god. <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> what, what were we making? <laughs> Who are we raising money for again? Is the World Central Kitchen or something? Oh. Yes. It's a right button. Whoa! What? The mask done come off. What is that, by the way? Uh, okay. it's, it's a Maybe frost oven mask. I don't remember how to, uh, oh. clip on Twitch, so. I don't know how to fundraise either. Um, World Central Kitchen, uh, thanks for 2022, um, special snowflake subs, um, so what Get that booth! Get the booth? Hit the booth? Can't see it. I uh, drew you it, I specifically drew it off screen. Should I, should I take a picture, send it to the chat? You could. Should I? On our Discord server, we have a hashtag on topic chat, which people can pretty much talk about whatever the hell they want to. Um, that sounds like the exact so. opposite of an on topic chat. Hmm. Well, 
currently we're talking about hit that boof, which is hidden somewhere off screen, which you can't see. You can't see hit that boof. You can't but see it. You can't see it. He's my man. We shall continue. Um, I have the cock oh. cage is off. I mean, cock cage is off. This is a piece here. of the cock cage. Champagne. No, no. I hand the pepper. I was gonna throw it off camera. Um, I hand this also as well. Um, I also, I also hand this as well. It is a piece of tin foil. I have added an ounce to our Grinch uh, cocktail shaker here. Um, we need no more ingredients. The, the ingredients that we have placed into this, uh, the Grinch Who Stole Christmas cocktail includes, but is not necessarily limited to, an ounce and a half or four, 44 milliliters of Midori, aka melon liqueur. We have a half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of vodka. We use, I think it was Tito's? You a use potato Tito's. Vodka, I, I gave you Tito's. A Tito's. Probably potatoes. Tito's. Very, very potato-y. We also have an ounce each of pineapple juice, 50, uh, 30 milliliters or so, uh, and an ounce of dry sparkling wine. In this case, we are using a Mele uh, Grand Cru imported by Serenity Imports, Stamford, Connecticut, which we just popped very centrally. We popped very celebratory. We sop, uh, We popped very celebratory. We just, I just kind of let it rip. We just let it rip. You know, uh, Beyblade. Listen. It happens Beep all bleep, the time. Bleep, bleep, bleep. Don't worry. It's totally natural. Just keep all your parts in the bag, but you'll never appreciate the first time you let it rip. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, can you repeat that actually? That seems widely inappropriate, and I think the entire world needs to hear that again. Uh, I, st I stole it from somewhere else on the internet. Oh, okay. Who? who what, what, a cool, what a cool get. Can we, can we, cool, can we, what a cool there's no way I'm putting that up inside. <laughs> wow. That's the thing about champagne. Uh, I actually have. Oh, I'm going to scooch by you uh, because I'm not going to use all that champagne. Hey, it's me, Cameron. It's CJ with an X. Hold on, hold on. Let me let me get into my Cameron mode. Hey, guys, it's me, Cameron. Oh, wow, your actual size, Cameron. <laughs> hey, it's me, actually, Cameron. And, uh, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Hey, guys, it's anyway, me, uh, actually. Because height is all edited uh, in. Yeah, all of this is like real time AI like generation and stuff. It's actually freaking oh, incredible. Oh, so like the whole uh, Tony the Tiger stream. Right? Um, here, here's some inert argon gas which I'm going to use to um to preserve this this Grand Cru wine. I'm gonna put this wine stopper in it and then, bam, just like that. Um, you will never see the light of day again. I was oh, yeah. to shake this cocktail. Apparently, because I needed to. It was photographed by Allie Raymond. I just look at my recipe there. Wow, thank Incredible. you, Allie. Wow. Shout out to Allie Raymond. Uh, Lycos, could you put this back where it was? Yeah, it was put it back where you found it. This is a put nice the thing back where I came microphone. from. Also, help me. That's a nice goddamn microphone. You're a nice yes. goddamn microphone. Booty. That one's nicer. The is one it? Oh, wow. there. it's glowing. Oh my god, you are literally. Actually, can we glowing. see what that looks like? For me? I wonder. This might be. This might totally work completely against my favor, but I wonder if we can get a look at the microphone if I switch scenes to you. No, that's a big blue screen. <laughs> I take it back. We're not gonna go back to that scene again until we start playing GameCube games. Anyways, I wanna check a big old sip of coffee. Are you going to <gasps> hit that boof? Again, you, you can't, you can't see gonna, him. I'm not gonna hit the boof. However, I am gonna take this particular cocktail libation, the Grinch Who Stole Christmas, and I'm going to request from my beautiful co-host here to grab me some ice cubes. I Which could, ones do you want? I want a big one and I want two small ones uh, because that's how that's how the people wind up doing their things over here. I, I realize we we're kind of running. Really running out of I, ice I'm cubes. aware that we're running out of ice Merry cubes. Merry Christmas. It's in my cocktail shaker. We got a big one in there? I do. Give it a, give it a, give it a oh, big one. Yeah, give baby. it a big cocktail shaker. Wow, this is kind of sensual. Come on, give me the good ones. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Give it a big old, give it a big old, like a, oh, yeah. Oh, nice. There it is, right in there. Jesus. So now, now that you have a big old fucking ice cube in there, you put a couple of small ice cubes in there as well, you're gonna take your liquid components, you're gonna mix it into your solid components, they're gonna kind of make that seal there. It's beautiful because the. Silence. Science. Makes the pressure build. I'm gonna shake this with one hand. Science. It's beautiful. Observe the science. Here we go. Three and two and I'm such a tease. Oh, it's 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 a little it kinda leaked a little bit. Why are you leaking? Stop leaking. Why are you leaking, you piece of shit? Crawling in my skin. I came here, I was like, I'm gonna keep my hair nice and really neat and pretty 
for the camera. Oh, and then I just headbang no, no, for no. about a solid minute. So that's gone. You've never been on a camera with an X stream, have you? No. No, actually you haven't. Wait. No. No, you haven't. And I am loving it. I, I want to do more of this stuff. So actually, a little bit of a teaser to... Oh my god, I guess what's going to happen in... Oh my fucking god, it's like seven hours from now. Holy shit. Um, so I set up a new camera angle in Anna's eyes apartment uh, where we actually get a view of the main table in our living room area. The idea is we are going to be able to play board games and see the entire table with all of us at surrounding the table i've always wanted to do something like that and but i never set up the camera I'll angle for it do some do it again yeah this is really really cool this is kind of a I, I'll, I'll admit there is a little bit of a selfish component to this particular stream here not only are we raising money for charity specifically the world central kitchen as a part of thank Mr. world central kitchen here we go yeah yeah uh, we're making money uh none of, n absolutely no con no contributions that you make during the stream whether it be subs bits donos or otherwise go to me None of it. I am taking all of it and I am putting towards charity. Otherwise, I just feel like an asshole. So I'm not going to do that. Any sort of subs or bits or otherwise that go towards this is going to go elsewhere. Follows don't have any cash value. It's free. So if you follow, it's free. And I don't get anything back from that and neither does anybody else. However, I'll, I'll blow you a kiss or something. It's beautiful. I'm a, little, I'm a little pansexual sometimes, so. Pride. We take that. Colino says, Cameron, on a Friday... It is for Cameron on a Friday. And we're amazing raising money for charity over here. My goodness, Colin, I see you popping in here. How was your stream? How, how, were you making cocktails this evening? I were you playing some games? It sounds like it was honorable. Saturday, technically speaking, it is also a Saturday. I was it about to say. Saturday. It is technically a Saturday. Saturday. You're absolutely now. right about it that. Is, it's true. It is Saturday now. And we're raising money for the World Central Kitchen. World it's, Central Kitchen. That look, brother. And I'm joined by a bunch of my friends over here. And actually, oh my god, we were in the middle of making a cocktail. I just shook it up. We have ADHD our way through this fucking drink. I'm gonna there, is, the there are four ingredients in this thing, and it, there was not that many. <clears throat> oh, but we also need to, oh, we also need to garnish this. So the the cocktail that we were working on was the Grinch that stole Christmas. Not it's the, the Grinch, not the other Grinches. There was only one Grinch that stole Christmas. There were other Grinches, but this is the Grinch that stole Christmas. Okay. And so I'm gonna take some of my sacrificial yoga blocks to get a nice little view over here. Like as I said, we continue it's a, there to raise our money. There are three ingredients in this drink. And it's taken us about an hour to make it. We kind of take our time on these streams. We take our time. You know, it, we're planning on going for the next, oh my God, 17 and a half hours. So we are not anywhere near done here. Um, so I'm gonna take a nice little glass over here. I'm gonna get a little close to it, you know? I'm gonna take a coupe glass, because I think it fits very, very well in this case. And we're gonna give it a little bit of a zoom. I'm gonna try to see if we can give a Grinch stole Christmas thing. But uh, Colin says, probably my shortest stream on a Friday ever. Ha <laughs> ha, I was at a holiday party and just wanted to make a Tom and Jerry. How are you doing? We are, I think personally, if I'm speaking from my perspective, I'm a little tipsy right now. I usually don't get very, very tipsy on the streams, but alas, we have a couple of hours to kind of sober ourselves up. I'm joined by a lot of my friends over here. A very, very, um, it doesn't usually happen that often, um, particular occasion. I need a couple of, Lycos, can I bother you for a couple of cocktail books to prop up this particular cocktail here? I think it's gonna look I think it's gonna look really really nice. Okay, uh, um, sure. that drink book? Yep. Um that's a thick one. And oh, oh, thousand and one yeah. cocktails? Oh, which one? Um thousand and one cocktails. Thousand and one cocktails, sure, I think. Let me find it. There's another thick one too. If you want to hand me that one, I will prop it up. Oh, the other like thick that. one I was looking at was uh, Ultimate Guide to Spiritual Power. Ooh, that's gonna be the one. Yeah, the ultimate guide. That's a very, very thick one. Truncated. That's perfect. I will take just the top one. I don't think I need the other one. Oh, you don't need I very much one? appreciate that, though. Yeah, uh, Colin, I hope your stream went very, very well, indeed. I know you're usually, you're also making cocktails out here in the, the beauty of the Twitch tending space and whatnot, and I hope it was very, very well. I, I'm actually very, very curious. What goes into a Tom and Jerry? As you share with that, I will share with you what goes into a Grinch that stole Christmas. It was pineapple juice, Midori, Oh my god, Pepper, what else did we put in that? It's been so long. Oh, we put some champagne in there, right? Yes, the, the champagne that exploded. The champagne that kind of exploded a little bit. That was such a great moment. Pineapple oh my god, absolutely. No, no, we mentioned the pineapple juice. The pineapple juice was also mentioned. I, I, I literally mentioned? drink this shit. It's okay, I will read it just after. Oh. Take a closer oh, look at that green color. color. Oh my goodness, yeah. I like the color. And it looks like, for at least from my picture here, it's garnished with a nice green, uh, a nice cherry there. I think the redder the cherry, the better the cherry. Um, refrigerator section, up at the top, there should be multiple containers of maraschino cherries. We're gonna grab one of them. And I feel like, too, there is also some, I just, I just feel it. There is some ready whip in there. There's some whipped cream. 
and I feel like this would very well go with the uh, the almond milk with cream. That's, this is perfect. This is going to be absolutely wonderful. Oh, am I going to get a sip of this shit? Oh, please. Absolutely. That's a pretty glass. Midorable. I love that phrase. Midorable. Midorable. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Here's our maraschino cherries. Oh, Actually, were that. these the ones gifted? No, these were from Whole Foods. Red, they're not. Red they're not special, cherry. but they're still beautiful. I'm gonna stick my finger in there because it's just easy to do so. Here is a beautiful red cherry um, to rein in the, I guess, holiday season. It really just thing drowns in there, doesn't it? Why does that look like acid? Are you watching like TMNT or something? Because I've never seen like green acid and stuff. Even like, you know, it's actually it's actually quite terrifying. Like. Like chloric acid, like, like water, like hydrofluoric acid, just looks like water. It's terrifying. This doesn't look like water. This looks like radioactive material that, by being lulled into a sense of false security, I think this is probably pretty tasty. Also, gonna put some more cream on top of it because the Grinch. Take egg yolks, sugar, spices, rum, mix with egg whites to stiff peaks, fold together, and that is what I assume to be the Tom and Jerry. Take Midori pineapple juice. Wait, I'm switching them out of the screen. Midori, pineapple juice, vodka, sparkling wine, and a cherry. And put a little cream on it because we can. And you will have the Grinch who stole Christmas. Holy fuck, it's the Gunch. I think we actually need to put another cherry in there. What do you think? I think the cherry deserves to sit right on top of that hill. <laughs> well, I dropped the cherry. <laughs> it is okay. You're a mean one. Oh, 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 oh. It's okay, nobody can see the bottom part of it. <laughs> it is. And it fell to the bottom. Oh, right. so yeah, it literally just sunk. Gold Osborne popping back on here. Why does that look like acid? I play a lot of D&D. Dude, I I was actually just playing D&D the other day. Pick that up. Let's, let's yeah, can we do a little bit of a, a little bit of a clean in there? That's perfect, perfect. Here. Combine together, warm milk, cognac. Come apron. on, come on, Dude, get that. the cognac? I actually, I just bought my first Oh God, oh, what have I day. done? Oh, this is great. I, I kid you not, Colino. I bought my first container of cognac the other day, and I tasted it, and it was just. I'm, I'm, I thought I saw it. It's beautiful. So, uh, let me, let me do a little spot. It's a little different than usual. I have a couple of my friends on here to kind of uh, help me when I get a little too, a little too crazy over here. That's okay. It's like brandy all grown up. I think. Um, honest question for you, Colino. What is your preferred cognac? The cognac that I brought at the store was. It was this guy. It was a Covassier Le Cognac de Napoleon, and I've never actually had it before. And it tastes really, really good. It's like, it's exactly like you said. It's like a cognac, but it's all grown up now. Kind of like, kind of like I gotta the, say, uh, I got think? like a little bit of Grinch on my finger. A little bit of Grinch? I have a little bit of Grinch like all over my phalanges right now. No, I, I licked that. it all up. I think you're gonna enjoy it. It's, Ooh. it's a very sweet, it's an easy cocktail. I feel like, if you if you wouldn't mind doing me a favor, in my tackle box on the left hand side, if you look in at the I tiny part that fills up, tackle? there is a bunch of bendy straws. I feel like this would benefit from a green bendy straw. I got some in there. Oh, Ooh, you got it? Hold on. Ooh. There we go. Oh, there we go. We have, we have to do two. This is this is cute. This is so cute. Let's see what like a nice little zoom. We'll put that inside. We'll do a little bit of a, a little bit of zoom in action here. Here we go. You're a mean one. Mr. Grinch. Oh, don't don't spill, please. Just Do lick that bad girl up. There we go. Oh my god, pineapple juice. Pineapple yeah, it's kind of just pineapple juice. It's kind of the... Oh, no, there it is. The champagne. Oh. Champagne. Oh, the champagne is something that I'm just not... Wow. I'm dude. not used to. Oh, there's a lot in there. There's like, I mean, there's like uh, a disproportionate amount of champagne in there. Like it really, it's really, really prevalent to the taste of everything else in there. That's wild. Oh my gosh. Gold Osborne asks, have you ever had moonshine apple cinnamon? That seems really, really specific. I haven't had moonshine. Well, actually, so I have actually. Uh, Lycos, do you remember your mom? bought for us a, an, an apple pie moonshine. Yes. It's not quite apple cinnamon, but I have had an apple pie moonshine before, and it's like, I think if you breathe in, it tastes like apple pie. If you breathe out, it tastes like probably also apple pie, a little more cinnamony. Um, I think I recall having something like that. It was like, um, the brand was Old Tennessee or something like that. 
Wait. Hey, you, you, y'all bought it down in like green something. Oh, uh, Gatlinburg? Gatlinburg. I think it was Gatlinburg Moonshine. Yeah, I think. That's like the big. But we have like an apple pie moonshine down there, and I think that's the closest that I've ever had to that. It's, it's, it's really, really tasty. And it's, it's, it's like. Did you also World have changing. the, uh, I'm running the big one she talked about was the peanut butter and jelly uh, mm. moonshine. Peanut butter and jelly was, moonshine. That's a good one too. It was like you breathed in, you got one. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Got the other. Yeah, I, I totally remember that as well. There's a couple, there's a moonshine company here, I think closer to Pennsylvania. And I have a couple of them down here. I don't find it. It's all smoky. It's all smoky. And they have a couple of different moonshines out there. None of them strike me as a breathe in you taste one thing breathe out you take and taste another thing but i have a blue raspberry iteration of their moonshine it's very very tasty i will admit that colin says i use martillo for cocktails but cavassier is my sipper that's a very wonderful recommendation there martillo martel martel is something that i'm going to write down for my cognacs in the future because it's my first time having it actually martel cognac is the way that I'm writing that to myself. I appreciate that recommendation. Um, thanks, uh, thank you very much for giving that recommendation there. Gold Osborne pops in and says, When I spent three years in the culinary school in the UK, one of the unique features of that school was you can make alcohol on campus even if they had moonshine still. They made their first moonshine with apple cinnamon and still have it this day. Colin says it should save you like $4 from FWGS. I'm not familiar with that term, actually, FWGS. Fugs. Fugs, it seems. Fugs. That's pretty cool. The idea that you can make your own moonshine is, in a way, it's kind of scary. But, like, kind of makes sense. Like, of course you can make your own moonshine. Would you mind throwing that away from me? It's kind of very, very saturated. I'm going to take my culinary yoga blocks, my sacrificial ones, put them away. Uh, Lycos, could I bother you to take these books? And it's, it's a very inconvenient process, but we can put those off to the side. I don't oh. use them very often. Oh, for the most part, suck them, and stuff like that. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. Which of the two? In there. Which of the? To the I side or right. away? Also, why are the books wet? Uh, don't worry about it. Sorry. It's okay. My bad. It's okay. It's okay if the books get a little bit wet around along the way. If I had like a really really nice like cocktail book, I would absolutely worry like, oh, don't get it wet. Otherwise, it would be terrible. Um, it's good stuff. Um, Colin says fine wine and good spirits, dude. Fine wine and good spirits. That's that's the Pennsylvania way. I didn't realize that you could get that from there. I think when I went to the store, I bought the cognac the other day, and the only cognac that I could get was the Cavassier, unfortunately. Cool. I know there are other out, others out there, but it seems like they were. Excuse me. For a moment they were kind of out of a lot of different brands out there especially in the brandy cognac aisle do you mind if i go chug some grinch absolutely please do please do um i actually have to I, i've been i've been kind of drinking and whatnot this entire night so i actually have to take a little bit of a potty break again so if there's any volunteers who want to kind of uh commandeer the stream like us I'm downstairs again okay. like us would you like to take the stage here our first our first time together on stage would you would you like to would you feel comfortable to do so no. i mean i can take stage for yeah all right i gotta go down and i gotta I pee again partner up okay. i'm gonna be perfectly honest there i will be back up in a little bit however fine wine good spirits foods uh, fine wine and good spirits they are worthy friends absolutely as well fine wine and good spirits i forget i forget colin i think you're in pennsylvania as well i am not the only one Oh my goodness! I shouldn't. I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be uh, procrastinating. Anymore. So this is. So we will be. We will be back in just a moment. We'll make another cocktail over here. But in the meantime, we'll be right here we back. Go. Oh, right look now. at that! Read Highlight. Messages. Read that. We'll be back in a second. Highlight my message. Gold Osborne. If you ever swing by Missouri, there's a small little town called Augusta. They have the best wine in the entire state. There. It's also known as Wine Country, so you can go visit all the winery that's there. Hmm. Good to know, Augusta. Yeah, no, we'll definitely relay that to Cam. Tall friend with cool shirt. Is that me? Uh, I mean, I, it's it's me. I it's love like I us. love these it's shirts. Like T Turtle, my T Turtle. T -turtle. L listen, not sponsored, but no, hey. I I love their stuff. Should I make my own drink here? I don't know, man. Hmm. Because now I um, don't really know too many drinks. I know how to make a rum and coke. <laughs> it's rum and, and coke. coke. <laughs> It's amazing. It's not the most complicated like, thing. Like, listen, I'd start slapping stuff together, but at the same time, this is his setup, and I don't want to mess it up. I'm a guest to you. I do. Okay, well, you... I'm a clown. <laughs> and by the way, in case you are unfamiliar with who I am, I am Lycoslore. I am also a content creator. Normally, I'd be streaming as well, but... I've actually put my own stuff aside so I can be here and help out and all that. What do you good. think I should, like, put in this? Chat, what do you think I should put in this? Yeah, let's... Like, name any one thing. 
That's a maze camera, camera with a cocktail. That's oh, a maze camera with a cocktail. Is this supposed to be good? I was not going to make this good. I was going to throw a bunch of fruit juice and like some cognac in here. But if you have ideas for like a good cocktail, let me know. Mm, what do we got actually? Um, Let's see. Because of course if I made something, I'd want it to be like non-alcoholic. You know, because... Let's make a mocktail for our friend. Okay, what do we got? Let's see, we got cram. <laughs> we got cram crackers. Of course, that's the first thing I see. Check the fridge. Check the fridge. We got Kool-Aid. We got juice boxes. We do also I... have this pineapple juice. I do want to use the pineapple juice. I agree. I think pineapple juice is okay, a good idea. We got, we got oat milk. I don't want to Where that. is the um, little... We got whipped cream. Measuring tools. Ooh, here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one. A lot of this looks like alcohol. Because, I mean, dude, it's almost like a man of water or something. We should make pineapple milk. Milk. No, that's Pepsi milk. Pe uh, Mapple. Pinalk? No. Right, I don't look. want to. Dude, that's gonna curdle, like, instantly. That's the joke. That's Ugh. comedy. Oh shit, he's coming up. Are we making a cement mixer? <laughs> no. Uh, that's the good stuff. So Listen, this is cream liqueur. This is our show now. Get out of here. What are we making? What are we, making? we I have no oh, idea. Okay, no, I'll take We're it. just gonna. You, right, you, you, spl you spilled some shit. I did. What Don't worry. Actually, um, I have no goddamn idea. Hmm. Um, Can I take a sip with my finger? It's just pineapple juice, guys. This is just pineapple juice. So it tastes like shit. What are you doing? I hate the bartender. I would not tip at all. I would never donate to Thankless 2022 in benefit of the World Central Kitchen okay. ever. Unless you um, put a little bit wet. <laughs> <laughs> I got a little bit of whipped cream on my face. Tap, tap. What did I do? Here is a nice. <laughs> got it right on his face. Now, uh, in the industry, I believe we call that a baka key. Got a baka key. Get out of here. It's our show. Well, I'm walking in here. <laughs> I got shit in my nose now. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. No, for real though, I do want to make a nice mocktail. Yeah. What are we making? What I'm are we starting making? with a pineapple base. Ooh. So now, yeah. Glenn, would you like something sweet and strong or something a little subtler? Um, let's go sweet and strong. I, I like bold flavors. So oh, sweet, sweet and strong. strong. Ooh, okay. What, what kind of suggestion do we have over in chat over here? Oh, shoot. I forgot Where to read go? chat. What's You're... a maze camera with a I'm a terrible a streamer. Shot current, non -alcohol. There's this technique that I call the teardrop. It's a sugar glass that's shaped on the paintball. I insert the cocktail and mix it in a frozen state inside of this thing and seal it. When I'm ready to make a cocktail, I drop it in and it makes itself. But make nachos and watch this chaos. Haha. -ha. It's just coming mm. out. This is chaotic. This is chaotic. I love, I love the three of us in here. No, get out of here. Chaos we're making cool. a cocktail. Oh, we're making it's cocktails? Cool. We're making a mocktail. Get I'm gonna here. go sleep for like 50 minutes. No. Get out of here. Go, oh, we have yeah. just, we have just Wait. a legit, uh, oh my god, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> we found the, oh, oh no, she god. found the sugar. Oh my goodness. No. By yeah. the way, by the way, I have an app on my laptop. It's uh. called Recipe Keeper. You can pick any of the cocktails there. They are all prepared. I have all oh, of the okay. ingredients. We I got apple it. juice. We got Actually, cream. marshmallow. I, I was thinking, how's about apple juice with a little bit of maraschino cherry? Ooh, interesting. Interesting. So we interesting. got like three different fruit stuff. And going the pineapple. On. Yeah. And a little bit of apple juice? Yeah. Here, let me get my claws on that. Yeah, you get claws, because I don't got nails. I'm a terrible person like that. Why is not... Don't worry about that, darling. Uh, That's the most inconvenient way to rip the vet open, but... Who cares? It's not going to be my it's problem not ours. anymore. It's not ours. It's his problem. It's his problem. All right, let's... I mean, so... Let's go punch it open Yeah, yeah. straw. Here, punch this bad boy open. Oh, come on. There we go. <laughs> Bit of a weak stream. <laughs> hold on, hold on, let me. <laughs> okay, I think we're good. You're getting a little too much in there. <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> and I've got a couple of my buddy having a little time with this. Go, go for it, man. So far. I don't even know what oh, yeah. Oh, we're, uh, we're practicing. <laughs> now, would you like to do the honors? Sure. Should we add whipped cream? It's your drink. You know what? I'll take the whipped cream. I'll go all sugar. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm actually... Oh, wait. That's... Uh, where, where's the open one? Are you guys really just using that? My dog? Don't answer that. Go get him, buddy! 
No, did you, did you guys already have like mm -hmm. a blue one? Where the hell is it? Oh, what, what, what are you looking for? Whipped cream. It's brown. It's on the counter. It's in my. Oh. It's right next to the water. Oh my god. Right? What? Or not? No, I put it away. I feel like I definitely have. I, I, I put I, it away. I got whipped cream. I put it away. What? Check. I put it the heck away. It's not that one, right? Men. It's this one. What? You dumb dumb. What? I got you. But it has the seal on you, it. No, it doesn't. It's been like that's been. Oh wait, it does. Yeah, How the hell did you open this thing? I'm amazing. I got I got skill. <laughs> <laughs> I, here, I, I here. pulled a camera, guys. I'm sorry. I'm a professional. I am a barista, which means... Ooh, that's actually really good, actually. I make drinks. Oh, my God. Look at that. <laughs> look at that. Look at that Delish. shit. Delish. Now, uh... Maraschino cherry on top? Yeah. Do you want me to do the honors, or should you? Uh, I'll let the master barista do it. Oh, thank you. Let's... Get that shit in there. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. And just... Ooh. Mm. That looks beautiful. Enjoy. Ooh. Oh, it's oh, bleeding. Oh, it's like bleeding a little. Oh. Sensual. Beautiful. Oh, my God. Well. The 24-hour thank the stream is going strong. Taking a little bit of a rip right now for some caffeination. It's going great. Okay. Is, is it just two fruit juices mixed together? How's the... Does... Does the whipped cream help or hurt? <coughs> I'm seeing some reaction here. Whipped cream went down the wrong tube, side note. Oh, okay. <laughs> the whipped cream went down the wrong tube. Oh, I gotta read chat. One of my friends who's a crazy war veteran who drinks margaritas with the salt that's mixed with gunpowder. In the old, in the old, good old days, I used to chug that cherry container. But let me tell you, me too. As a kid, if like I, if, if I found a maraschino cherry, Maraschino. A Maraschino cherry drawer? It's good lord. Ooh, I would okay. go all out. Ooh, how is so, it with the okay, cherry? Okay, so I'm, say, I'm just gonna say I don't really get the apple juice. I apple is a very weak flavor. If you look at most fruit juices and look at like the ingredients, you'll can, notice... Can I ask for the recipe of what y'all just made? It? We it was, did what? about um, one... What is this? What the hell is this? Okay. That's about 50 milliliters. About 50 milliliters of pineapple That's juice. Two ounces or so. About like a week stream, you know, an <laughs> average bladder's worth of um, <laughs> apple juice. <laughs> a gorgeous, absolutely mwah, little spiral of. Now, this is very important. I love all of these people. Very important. Has to be almond whipped cream. If it's if it's dairy whipped no, cream, no, I don't think normal whipped cream would work. I think the almond actually does add something to it. Yeah, also because normal whipped cream would curdle. Not great. Um, okay. And a good old fashioned maraschino cherry. Mmm. Oh, maraschino. Look, hey, hold on, hold on. Show the camera like this nice muddy texture we got. Hold on. Yeah, I actually like. I actually lift it up a little, up a little. I mixed the um, whipped cream up, actually. Oh, yeah. Yep. I, I... Look at that. It's muddy as hell. Give it here. May I? Sure. You can let go. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. really this muddy. Sound... That's some real dumpster runoff looking drink. This may sound like a really stupid idea, but should we set shit on fire? I'd like to step out before you do that. If you'd <laughs> like to set up stuff on fire, by all means, don't let me stop you. Let me get this. Remote. Fire. Frankly, I had a wonderful time behind the bar with my Same. friend Lycos. It's Same. been our first time uh, filming together in about 10 years. Ooh, Gold Osborne is saying that apparently there's this YouTuber out there who made whipped cream out of basically everything. You just have to do make a cocktail into whipped cream mix. Mm. Oh, yes. I the think that's you know, muddy that. texture. Yeah, thank you. Can you try the method. <laughs> I don't no. think I have the proper technology. Don't worry about the straw, there's two. But, Pep, it has been a very long time since we've recorded it anything has. together. You have, and you, for a very long time, you had longer hair, but your hair is back to where, about where it was. Yeah, like, mine like, is longer. Like, this floor is beautiful, oh my god. He is. Look at him, that majestic man. Also, this was, like, just pineapple juice and, like, this almond whipped cream, that's not bad. <laughs> Pineapple juice and almond whipped cream. You heard it here first. I know. Also, do you want do you want the rest of the piss bottle? I do. <laughs> <laughs> this 
This peppermint tipsy mocha thing is so good. I'm gonna drink this off stream. Okay. okay. You say off stream, but we're gonna throw your butt back on here. It's your stage. Oh shit, am I getting back on? Yeah. Yeah. Off trade. Yeah, well, pardon me, pardon me, pardon switch. me. All right, switch, 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 switch trades places. Paradigm shift. Ah, Hi there, everybody. My name is Cameron. I spell my name with an X arbitrarily. The X is silent. Today, we're raising money for Thankfest 2022. We're raising money for the World Central Kitchen. Shut up, Glenn. No. We're raising money. <laughs> go, go ahead. What's up? I was just gonna ask if you were gonna make some more cocktails, uh, mocktails. Because if you're making mocktails, I'll look Stage with you. Make it absolutely make some mocktails. Actually, I do have an I do have an idea for it's it's a quasi mocktail. So every single ingredient is non-alcoholic except for one because I literally could not find a non-alcoholic ingredient for the last one. I think you might enjoy it actually. All right then, actually, you know what? I'm gonna go for that. We're gonna go for that. Let's All right, I love that. Welcome back, says Gold Osborne. Thank you very, very much. I see, I've seen a couple of co chats out there by Gold Osborne. I see Colin out there. Thank you so much all for tuning in. Just a quick, quick reminder. Quick, quick reminder, donate. Uh, Thank you. Donate. Us. World Central Kitchen. We are doing Any it. amount of money, all thankful. Very quick, super, super thankful. See that symbol? Important. See, see this symbol? Important. QR code? Also relatively important. We're gonna be gone for a long, long time. Share it with your friends, with your family, with everybody. Mm. You, there's no pressure. Do whatever you want to. Anyway, that was like a couple seconds. Anyway, I love how you check on. your wrist. Yeah, I have no watch on my wrist. It's com it's You com haven't worn a watch in years. Well, actually, the last time I wore a watch was a Fitbit and it got absorbed by the ocean. I went out into the water. It was so turbulent in the Outer Banks in Virginia that it actually ripped my Fitbit off my arm, and I haven't worn those watches. Really? Yeah, I'm not even kidding. Holy shit! That's okay, wild. that I didn't know. No, Holy seriously crap. though. My goodness. So, Gold Osborne says, so the kind of work that is a bartender in their worker seasons is their boss would thought it'd be a great idea to throw out all of their vodka bottles that was from Russia, and some of these were extremely expensive, like at least around a twenty thousand dollars. I'm sorry, Gold Osborne. I have to stop for a moment there. Your boss was spending twenty thousand dollars on a single bottle of vodka. Holy shit! I'm a, I'm, I'm gonna put it right here. If you have like VIP tickets for the bar that you work at, please send them my way. I want to try that. I'm also, gonna do so well. Also, like twenty thousand dollar. I'll add like, you on Instagram. Like, it's it's gonna be great. Great popularity. Dude, if it's twenty thousand dollars, like it better be just made of fucking. Liquid Seriously gold. though, I, I took I took them all, dude. You got honestly, I'm a technology kind of guy. So when I saw my university throwing out computers, USB cables, HD my cables and whatnot i would just like walk up to the professor and be like um are you using that and they'd be like no it's trash dog and i'd be like all right cool and they took it home with me and now i'm a hoarder <laughs> i can't drink usb cables but you can drink twenty thousand dollars worth of vodka which is pretty freaking cool i will say like going with like um how you did that at your university i had a friend oh my gosh yeah i had a friend who did that at work where uh, his workplace was throwing out like or they found like 12 tablets in a closet in the workplace. Like, eh, yeah, we'll throw like, out. Well, like, we're going to throw it all out anyway. They're like, we're so why throw not? out seven of them. And he's like, can I? Oh my goodness. Like, and can I take that, please? He's like, can I take like two of them? And absolutely. No one else had objections. Well, because they're just got. So, like, technology recycling is absolutely like really, really badly um, processed and stuff. So, it's a thing. Hey, yeah. Let's make some mocktails. I know I just put water in this, but whatever. Let's make a mocktail. I'm getting a little bit, I'm getting a little bit over encumbered over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of these kind of dirty glasses. I'm gonna put them up on here over here. If you, there is, we're kind of getting to like, I think the kind of ladder segments of the cocktail stuff. So if you are inclined to kind of give them a little bit, rinse out and bring them back, more than more than happy to do so. Mm -hmm. um, but if not, then that's okay. I think we'll kind of move on to it. <laughs> I'm gonna do this pineapple juice and ooh, maraschino cherries off to the side. And my measurement drinker, I think will be okay. Okay. What mocktail are you making for so us? So the plan, the plan that I have is there was a mocktail that I really, really wanted to make. Um, it's not really a mocktail. It was supposed to be a cocktail. And being that we kind of have the whole like Thankfest thing going on here, it's kind of Thanksgiving, it's kind of Christmas, it's kind of holiday season. It can be various different types of holidays. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to do a Hanukkah themed cocktail because okay. I have a, I have a lot of my coworkers who are of the Jewish faith. I personally don't practice um, Judaism. Uh, I think my grandmother was, but she's of, of the late variety, so she 
she hasn't been in my life for a very long time now and I'm not very, very uh, particularly a religious person but the idea of the different types of stuff that you get from like the kind of uh, like, like Jewish culture and stuff is stuff that really really tastes good mm-hmm. I, I mean like I don't know exactly how else to describe it like there's a lot of like really really cool fa- uh, like um, flavor combos that come from either like I guess the Jewish culture and faith and whatnot that's really really really, really good mm-hmm. and so I went out of my way to buy a couple of ingredients there and I tried to see how close I could get to this particular cocktail recipe that I could find and literally I couldn't find the main ingredient of this is something called plum brandy plum brandy being a type of liqueur that is distilled from plums in particular but I couldn't Wait, find I have plum brandy you have plum brandy remember I Did brought you... it one no, time no 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 you have plum wine you got plum wine no it's like... I think so is it fuki fuki no oh you have plum brandy I have Ooh. plum brandy it's okay well, wow. in any case, I couldn't no, find don't. it. I literally went to every single store that I could possibly find in my local area to try to find something either plum to get the juice, plum juice to get the juice, or plum other thing that wasn't alcoholic because I didn't want to. Like, I was like, I can't, I can't guarantee the alcoholicness of the other ingredients, so I want to do something that's completely a mocktail. And I couldn't find. It. Apparently, plums just aren't in season over here, in Pennsylvania. Um, I think <laughs> the. Uh, there's a prevalent plum brandy out there that just wasn't sold at my particular real liquor store, which is rather I unfortunate. Mean, Otherwise, I would have gone with that. But I got something that's gonna kind of like fill in the space like, for it. Had, so. had you notified me, I could have uh, done some searching for you. Yeah, well, it's it's okay. It's okay. I'm, I wouldn't not, say I'm not no necessary. harm, no harm, no foul. All right, uh, so for next time, let's though. pull up that recipe and let's see. What Indeed, I want to we'll see what we're that with. in just a moment. I want to take a look at some of the gold Osborns popping in here with a couple of different tips and tricks and whatnot. So I'm yeah, kind of into just interested and seeing what the comments are there. There, uh, Teardrop, I remember seeing that. Notches and Watch of the Chaos. One of the friends that Gold, Gold Osborne has, crazy war veteran who drinks margaritas yeah. with salt that's mixed with gunpowder. It's the good old days of them chugging the cherry container. There's the C2 channel, found a way to make group community basically everything. I remember seeing that before. Desired body texture, welcome back. So kind of work, bartender, I saw this already. I forgot, I apologize. Uh, about it's one of the local bars. He's kind of dumb enough to buy the bottle with actual real golden flakes And it's in don't know the original place, but it's up after a hundred thousand dollars There's only one person that drinks from that bottle and they only come once every couple of months I have a bottle wow. of cinnamon liqueur mm-hmm. called Goldschläger and the Goldschläger uses gold chips in it I don't know if it's actual golden one. I actually have a bottle of that. It's pretty cheap You can buy it from the store. I'm gonna see if I got it somewhere down here. It might take me a moment to find it. Oh, there you are well, it's best to be Ooh. Gold Slayer. Gold Slayer actually have some. Oh like, yeah, there's like these little. There's not. Flakes. There's not a lot into it. I'll kind of just for the purpose of the conversation. I'm just kind of zoom in there. Gold flakes are a waste of dosh. I, I agree with that. Um, mm-hmm. This is a cinnamon liqueur here. I don't plan on using it at all, like during the stream and stuff. But it's kind of kind of cool to look at. Uh, I like the shape. It almost reminds me of like one of those yeah. handbell things. Yeah. Like a, ding a ding a ding. Oh, a bow. oh no. Oh. It's a geez, pretty cool. No, thing. please. It's a quick. It's a pretty cool thing. Good. This is Goldschläger. It's a cinnamon liqueur, and I don't plan on using that this evening. But mm-hmm. it was interesting. It came up in conversation as well. Um, but yeah. so I want what I really really oh. wanted to do is I figure we kind of did things that were very very uh, Kind of Christio centric. We've done a couple things so far. We did a Manhattan so far We did a Philadelphia fish punch We did a tipsy elf and I don't exactly know where elves come from in terms of a culture perspective But I assume it's probably something a little more Christmas Christio centric so I wanted to Scandinavia says pepper oh, I believe her yeah. I would think I wanted to try to do, doing something a little more uh, a little more I guess like I guess like Hebrew Judaism centric yeah. and if, if I'm misquoting this, like, I don't particularly practice the Jewish religion, so I don't really know too much about it. I'm probably not the most politically correct person to talk about it, but I kind of wanted to explore it anyway from at least what I was able to find on the internet, which I think is is all right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm going to do my best. I'm going to do my best um, to trying to create a recipe for it, what I found on the internet. Right. So I was able to find a cocktail recipe. Um, I need to make sure I have the right one. My thing here is I have a couple of them. Oh, there it is. Um, nope. Nope, that's the wrong recipe. I'm trying to look at it here. It's called the, it's called the dreidel, and I'm trying to click on the right thing here, but my thing Tablet's here, my, not my not tablet is not really working with me here. Dreidel. So I have a cocktail that I found from Medium.com, and in Medium.com had a particular article describing eight different cocktails for each candle on the menorah for the Hanukkah season and whatnot. And it was actually kind of interesting. I was talking with one of my Jewish coworkers, and he was saying that the particular like Hanukkah season can last anywhere between the very very beginning of December to kind of the early weeks of January, depending on what the lunar calendar is in a particular year. I don't 
I don't remember what the Hanukkah dates are this year, but I asked him about it. I was just like, is there a particular drink that you celebrate you, that you kind of have during the holiday season? It was mm -hmm. just like, we drink wine and stuff. I was like, cool, I dig it. Okay. So apparently there's not really much. There's a lot of people out there who have kind of created their own like themed cocktails around like the Hanukkah season and stuff. There's not really anything that's very specific out there's there. There's not Aside from like kosher wine and stuff like that. Nothing like too specific or like standardized. From, from, what, from what I know, again, like I, I'm from a very Christiocentric background, so if I am incorrect about that, I am more than willing to kind of like kind of open my mind up and learn from the people out there as well. I'm not one who practices, so I, I have a lack Same of context here, so. on that. I'm willing to learn though, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Gold Osmond says the previous person that was used to work there, referring to I think the ten thousand dollar bottle of booze vodka place, stuff, yeah. was used to work there and said it was worth more than a hundred thousand dollars. We really don't know the price. Only the boss of the place, well, don't really complain that much about the whole place. He works with at least he lets me experience the Gold Osmond has a very unique opportunity there. Mm -hmm. They're also saying, have you ever tried the dehydrate of your mixing ingredients? That what they would do is usually some sort of tear drips that they make. They dehydrate them and break them up into a powder and then put them into the teardrops so that they can drop into the other ones there i haven't actually done anything like that personally i don't have i don't know of the easy technology to be able to dehydrate my particular reagent that i have here however it seems like a chemical i don't know i feel like it's a chemically intense process but i don't know yeah. i've never tried that i think the thing that i saw in at least one of my books the liquid intelligence one is like a rotary evaporator which i've never used before it's very very expensive and if that is the way to be able to kind of like dehydrate my reagents here i'd have i'd happily try that but i don't i don't know i i would say that i'm a rather busy person so i haven't really uh, tried to do that stuff but. Colin, i have not heard of anything but i'm also not i'm privy to those details that they have okay indeed it's all it's all a wonderful time to be able to explore with Yep. with each other so i believe let's get st what do we what do let's we go for it so the, the cocktail the cocktail that i have here that i found on medium.com is something called the dreidel the dreidel itself causes for, calls for the original recipe that i found on the internet calls for uh, i'm gonna pull up to it yep the dreidel clicking the button calls for plum brandy apple juice lemon juice cherry liqueur a cherry hearing egg white and a dash of angostura bitters i decided to kind of put the put the put the thing up on its head to be perfectly honest i went to the store yep. attempting to find plum something i didn't want plum alcohol i was trying to find as best as i possibly could plum juice or plums themselves, or a plum jam, something to use in the place of the plum, because I really, really wanted to make a mocktail of it, but I sw I, sw I, I promise you this, I went to Whole Foods, I went to Target, I went to Giant, all the places in my area, I couldn't find a plum, I couldn't find a plum jam, I couldn't find a plum juice, or anything like that. I'm guessing plum is probably not in season. I mean, so I didn't have any choice than to grab, if you wouldn't mind, next to the refrigerator, a purple bottle of plum wine. Fuki, it says Fuki on it. Do you see Fuki? Not that one. Um, this one? Uh, maybe not. Nope. Next one? Maybe? Oh, yeah. Fuki! Fuki. That's the one. So the only thing that I was able to find at the store was this plum wine, which is called, uh, referred to as Fuki. So what I'm gonna kind of go with now is it's the intent is supposed to be as close to a mocktail as possible. I wasn't able to get there with the particular reagents in my area. I feel like there wasn't something out there that was able to kind of like kind of mimic the plum wine that I was trying to go for. But, you know, you kind of work with what you got. Yeah, I will say with also the plum thing is it could all not only could it all just be out of season, but it could also be like it's not just it's not like those kind of things aren't sent to these to like this area because like that product like just doesn't sell of course my brain being business i'm just like i always try no it's totally fair i mean i i think like oftentimes like especially so, so like amazon and their whole foods just department has a lot of stuff that is usually sometimes it doesn't necessarily have to be in season sometimes the year i find some things sometimes of the years i find other things i just happen to be out and about trying to look for something plum related i couldn't find plum things anywhere my guess is that because i can't find it anywhere that means that it's probably not in season i didn't actually google this i didn't do any of my research on this so i mm -hmm. could be wrong about that but it seemed that plums were just kind of not available in my particular area here which you know it just happened to work out and, in my area yeah. if i had better planning i probably would have ordered it earlier in the week but i didn't have the, or, the prospect or you to could do that. just messaged me and i could have done my own looking around it's in my poss area it's possible too as well oh, well let's i mean let's hop to and get to Colin says uh hmm, not a lot about privy to those details. Wait, Weird. what are you trying to dehydrate? Says Colin. Now, in this case, Gold Osborne says, 
Um, I also tried dry feasting as well. Plum season is the end of the summer and the fall, and you should oh. try Trader Joe's. They might have some stuff that you're looking for. That's actually a very good point that you bring up. I have, there is a Trader Joe's around here, and I completely forgot to check Trader Joe's, so that's oh. kind of on me. Mm. Oh in any God. case, I think we'll probably we will proceed into this particular cocktail recipe. If you are able to find a plum, I'm the best night on. Oh, good night. Oh, good you. absolutely. Right. A good night to chat. Yeah. Absolutely. Hand, hand for pepper. Woo! Absolutely. So we have we have a couple of folks here. So again, I will. It's for the sake of mentioning that this is a. Oh yes. We'll see, we'll see you in the morning. See ya. This is a 24 hour stream. This is. And so, in the case of that, Where, some people are staying up oh, all night. Oh, the timer's like timer's literally really on really my face. You're a very tall boy. You're a very, very I tall boy. Tall. It's true. You can scoot love, over a little bit. Scoot I love how you bit. said, like, you said that. Don't kill her without me. I will not. No, we will wake you up. We'll be screaming at you. We'll be like, Pepper, she's gonna die. You have two hours to get up, or she's gonna die. Another thing worth mentioning, I just happened to notice that in chat here. Colin is also saying another choice for your plum wines, plum brandies, plum sakes, and whatever is an Oneshu shoyu plum liqueur, which actually I wasn't able to find in my fine wine and good spirits. I, I kid you not, they were actually completely out of Oneshu, and I am very familiar with that plant. It's like a, it's like a, um, a fermented plum. Hmm. Like Umeshu usually at the bottom of the bottle has like a, a pickled plum that is it's a very very I don't know how to describe it. It's a very very interesting taste. It's not quite plummy to me, but I've had it before. If you ever play you ever play Big Brain Academy for the Nintendo DS? No. If you say pickled plums, the the dude on the front screen would be like he'd make like a little face like you know, like these are like pickled plums. No, 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 no. Um, but I've had a pickled plum before, and Anna bought that from I think Epcot, I believe. Cause it's very nice. Like, isn't that like kind of like? I want to say just like eating like pickled plums as a snack or something. Like I want to say be. it's a, like a thing. Dude, like I love to eat olives. If I had olives mm. for snacks every single day, I would totally do that. Dude, oh, man, I don't have olives very often because like I would love having like olives on my pizza and whatnot. <laughs> Girlfriend, mm -hmm. she hates olives with oh passion, gosh, and I'm like, I love oh. olives. Same. I see one more uh, comment from Colin over here. What a story to relate to. On that, I'm off to bed. Colin, thank Col you so much for popping in. Yeah. Colin, by the way, I will say for mention, if anybody out there is into like cocktail mixology and whatnot, Colin is like the dude who makes it all happen. He's also a Twitch tender, somebody who makes cocktails and is a bartender on Twitch. I I found his community a couple of uh, like about a month or so ago, and it's been very really pleasant. Plus, popping into stream and what he's some really really cool amazing stuff out there and i think at the very least it's definitely worth a uh worth a shout out um colin says you got this 24 hour in the bag cheers colin i greatly greatly appreciate Thank you, you colin and i hope the stream that you did i saw you stream before as well i hope it went very very well for you and i greatly appreciate you popping on as well very very wonderful if you're looking for cocktail recipes and whatnot that's another place to go dare i say it might be a better place to go than over here We'll see. You can make your own decision. It's very, very wonderful. And a big old heart to everybody out there. We will continue for, with our 24-hour stream here in benefit of the World Central Kitchen. Next, we're going to make a Hanukkah-themed cocktail. The World Central Kitchen. Yep, all right. So, what we're going for is a... It's kind of a... Um, it's kind of a... Uh, um, what is it? It's a Hanukkah-themed mocktail, kind of quasi-mocktail thing. Yeah. It's supposed to be as least alcoholic as possible. The only alcohol that we have in here is this plum wine. Which, because actually, I do... If you wouldn't mind i actually do want kind of want you to try because it's not no i was going super to try it bad. i was yeah. gonna try it so yeah if you wouldn't mind i'm gonna pour a little bit in here for you okay. it's, a, it's a totally fresh bottle it's very it's very why don't you uh, give this a smell sure. if you wouldn't mind what do you think so far it smells like a soda like i'm not getting much of like that alcohol sound mm -hmm. like i think the more i'm smelling it like the more i do i'll take a little bit if you want to pour it into this old glass here sure. as much as you'd like this is totally your pour there you go. It's very, very clear. Yeah, I see that. It's specifically a plum wine, imported plum. I think most of it is a particular set of natural flavors there. Okay. Well, let's go. Bottoms up, my guy. I still have some of my tipsy elf over here. I'm going to go for that. And I completely... Oh. What do you think? Oh. I guess it is going to like me booze. It's true. No, oh, that's... It's very... Something Something I really, really respect that's like, about Glenn's palate here is he is very, very finely attuned to alcohol. Alcohol has a particular flavor that, honestly, I can't quite detect in my drinks and stuff. Alcohol, to me, doesn't taste like something very, very distinct. But like us, on the other hand, Glenn here, the, kins, the, 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 the flavor of alcohol as being 
inky. Yeah. So like I don't I don't know how else to sort of describe it. Like, but like no, neither do I. Sticky, like right. Like when whenever I have that flavor, like in my head, I like the immediate think of is like someone like just like put a marker in a blender and just let it go and like then a, just like a sharpie like, marker like like something like like something like this like something like that <laughs> or like an expo marker or something yeah, shit. yeah oh that's just oh that's like it's i i'm feeling the burn and like mm. it's just like a yeah, really if you're not into it like bitter, don't, don't i am feel like not you continue going with i wasn't actual. going to because mm, totally so I think I think the the cocktail that I have kind of like on cute here it's called the dreidel and yep. it's supposed to use a plum brandy. So the particular brand that you would usually use for this brandy, no pun intended there, is something called Slivovitz. Slivovitz, I asked the person at Fine Wine and Good Spirits, which is the kind of Fine Wine and Good Spirits is I guess I'll kind of back up for a moment. Pennsylvania works a little bit differently than other states in the mm -hmm. sense that when you sell alcohol in the state of Pennsylvania, you have to go through the government. The government, which represents itself as fine wine and good spirits, says, I have approved your liquor. Therefore, because I have approved your liquor, I will sell them in my liquor stores. You want to sell them in your own liquor stores, they have to be very, very exclusive. Otherwise, you have to sell them through us. There actually is a store that I found out, and it was from a Google article, so it might not necessarily have been true. I haven't been there myself. There is a small location that, spell, that sells very, very small amounts of these various different like specialty liqueurs and stuff and i think it's called bottled b-o-t-t-l-d i mm -hmm. think i saw it in a google article but otherwise you have to be approved by the government in order to sell your bottles out there so it's a very very rigorous and kind of kind of a, like like exclusive process to be able to sell your liquors in the store so stuff like for example um from what I can tell, the only two plum products that you can buy out there is a plum wine, which is this one, the Fugi, yep. and the other one is this particular liqueur called Slivovitz, which is created in a kind of a seasonal fashion where it's a plum brandy. So the brandy itself is distilled from plum, the fruits, yep. and sold at a, I don't know exactly what the alcohol content is, but when I went to the store, uh, I was asking the folks that were there, I was just like, hey, do you sell anything plum flavored? And they were like, no, we usually have this bottle over there, but we don't happen to have it here. Why do you need it? I was like, well, I'm trying to celebrate the holiday season with like kind of a seasonal drink for the Hanukkah season. I'm like, okay, no problem. Well, it seems that the plums are kind of like the summertime, uh, like a summertime fruit, so you usually don't sell them around here. Yeah. The benefit of having something that's, something that's a little more alcoholic is something that is high in alcohol winds up killing all the other micro microbes that are in there, including the yeast that produces the alcohol. And if you have something that's a little above, like, let's say 20%, you don't have anything in there that's gonna make it go bad for a long period of time, so you can keep it on the shelf for a very, very long time. Unfortunately, when I went to the liquor store like last week or so, it was kind of out of season for this particular plum brandy, so I wasn't able to get any of it. So this particular quasi recipe thing that I got here is kind of everything that I have that isn't alcoholic combined with everything that has to be alcoholic for the particular ingredients that I have here, which I think I think there's a bit of merit there. Like if you if you have to choose, like if you want a particular beverage and you realize like you have to go with a particular ingredient, I think that's kind of just kind of has to be. Mm -hmm. I, I got think I am curious to see like how you think about it, but though because it's, it's as little as possible, and I think. I don't remember what you were tasting before, but co this compared to other alcohol that you've had, is this as bad or is it worse? It's definitely not worse, but like, <clears throat> it's not good, man. <laughs> I respect it. Yeah, I respect uh, it. I'm gonna say it how it is. It's not that great, but no. And the honest opinion, again, like the really, really cool thing about like, uh, like alcohol mixology and stuff is the fact that like your palate could be completely different than mine. Mm -hmm. Personally, I'm not really bothered too much about the alcohol flavor but the downside is that is i'm not as sensitive to it either mm -hmm. so for somebody like anna for instance who can detect it like oh there's definitely rum in the spring i can definitely taste some alcohol on this i don't get those same flavor components because i just don't notice them and granted i'm a little bit of, of a dense individual anyway so i wind up missing those particular flavor components but for somebody like you who's a little more hypersensitive to that kind of stuff you if you kind of get past the whole alcohol stuff i have full faith that you would be able to pick out like all of the really really small like nitty gritty pieces of the flavors if you were able to get back the alcohol uh, get past the alcohol <laughs> part which again is not the easiest thing to do because like alcohol is like a very very evaporative chemical so like as soon as it hits your tongue it starts to like get into the air like dehydrate your like your body and stuff you're just like Ugh. Ugh. it's very very inky but in any case 
and we'll move on from here. Yep. I just want to go back to our uh, Twitch channel over here just to see if we've got any more donations in for Hippo Hype. Thanks, Thanks, 2021. Yeah. I don't see anything so far. Not Hippo so, uh, Limon, Limon, Limon. Limon, which was our last donation. So far, we've raised about almost $500. The goal is by the end of this 24 hours to raise a total of $500. What, we're at like I think 400, like 400 something? something or whatever? Like, hey, no, we're, we're getting we're very, very close. Very, very close. And Considering, very, very uh, close what, what's the there. timer currently? Because yeah, I cannot read that from here. So right oh, wait, now, no, it's like 1659. We have about 17 hours left. Yeah, like no, 17 like 17 hours left. 17 hours the left for like less than 100 bucks. Like, I think we got this. And on the bright side, for everybody, including ourselves, it's not just going to be cocktails all the, all the time. No. The next thing that we're going to wind up doing is probably transitioning to the GameCube. We're going to play a couple of video games and stuff until we all decide to wake up and we decide to play a couple, uh, make some breakfast and stuff, uh, play a couple of board games. And I think it'll be really I don't really remember fun. if you heard, but apparently uh, we might need more pancake mix. Oh, yeah? Well, I mean, we have so many people here. I feel like we want, at least one of us can go out to the store and get some pancake. <laughs> No, I I I, I propose fight to the death. Uh, fight, to the, the fight, fight to the death on stream for the oh one gosh, small absolutely. Disney pancake. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> we actually have, we have a Mickey Mouse waffle maker downstairs, and we want to make like with uh, Mickey waffle pancakes. And I do have this is actually really exciting. Mm -hmm. I actually have a cable from the back of my computer mm -hmm. going down through the floor, through the bedroom to the kitchen. So we actually will have a camera angle showcasing all of us in the kitchen downstairs, which is something cool. I've always wanted to do. Um, it'll take a little bit to transition to there, but that is a prospect for, let's see, it's like three o'clock in the morning right now. Jeez. We have like six or seven hours from now. Yeah. So we'll continue with it. All right. All right. Hey, and hey, in like uh, three more hours, I'll be, I'll have officially been awake for like 24 hours. There we go. Because we go. we're celebrating. Because remember, I have to get up at like six in the morning. Ugh. So happy I oh don't have gosh. to do that anymore. Absolutely. So All right, happy. so I think what we'll do is we'll move on to our next cocktail here. Yeah, it's the a, dreidel. It's a, it's a quasi, quasi mocktail. Yep. It only has as much liquor in it as I absolutely had to get because I couldn't find plum things anywhere else. Yeah. And it's called the dreidel, and it's in, in celebration of the Hanukkah season. Yep. Something that I double-checked with one of the, my folks at work, and he was – I asked him, I was like, what do you guys drink for, like, the like the Hanukkah season? And yeah, it was like – he was like, well, I found this website that has like 10 different, co uh, eight different cocktails, one for each of the candles on the, menor on the menorah. And I was like, all right, cool. We'll go with one of them. And then, so I'm down with that. The dreidel in this case usually calls for two ounces or about 60 milliliters of plum brandy, two ounces or about 60 milliliters of apple juice, half, ounce half an ounce or 50 milliliters of lemon juice, half an ounce cherry liqueur, cherry hearing in this case, 50 milliliters, 50, uh, 50 milliliters or half an ounce of egg white and a dash of Angostura bitters. In my case, what I'm going to do is we're going to do a little bit of a variation on there to try to make it as mocktail as possible because I don't necessarily want to add all the alcohol in there and there's only two particular ingredients in there but the only plum thing that I could find was this fooky plum wine so we're gonna go with that um, it says fill a cocktail shaker two-thirds of the way up with ice so we're gonna need a cocktail shaker in this okay. case and I think do we have a shaking apparatus it looks like this one's kind of been used at this point. I yeah, think this that, is the rest of the... That's the Grinch, I think. This is the rest of the Grinch, was it? I thought that was Grinch. It's yeah, kind of Grinchy. Green. I'm gonna... Woo, oh. hello there. A couple of ice bits in there. Um, I think that probably needs a bit of a clean. Um, could I could I bother you to potentially clean this off and this cocktail thing here? And I'll kind of prepare yeah. things in the container? Yeah, I'll go wash these. You take your time. Thank you so much. Hey, man, no problem. For a little bit of context, we have a couple of people joining us for the Thankmas stream this time for a 24-hour stream. Usually, it's just me on this angle with Anaconda kind of falling asleep, depending on what kind of workload that she has. But I'm joined by a very a number of various of my friends this time around. My name is Cameron. I go with an X, C A M E R O X N with an X. I'm also joined by my pal Glenn, aka Lycos underscore Lore, who does a lot of content on YouTube. I'm also joined by my my pal Dalukare, who goes by Pepper, Final Rhapsody, who goes by Matt, and I also have my lovely fiance, Disney Queen, who has a lot of digits in her name, and it's just not worth spelling because it just takes a lot of effort out of me. We're making a couple of cocktails, mocktails, holiday themed drinks, and whatnot in benefit of the World Central Kitchen as a part of Thankfest 2022. Um, this is kind of my excuse to do a little bit of an ad break because Lego Store is downstairs doing a little bit of cleaning and whatnot because I don't really have a lot of cocktail shakers, lemon squeezers, 
bar spoons and whatnot. I kind of use what I can around here and the benefit of whatever we can around here. We're making some cocktails. We're going to move into some GameCube games afterwards. And then eventually we'll have a little bit of a breakfast morning mukbang where we'll make some eggs, some bacon, and then we'll move into a couple of different board games and whatnot. According to the clock, we have about 16 hours and 53 minutes left of our 24 hour charity live stream. And it's something that I'm actually really, really excited about. I personally have never streamed more than about 14 hours at a time before. I'm feeling a little bit of the uh, kind of like greediness in my eyes and stuff and usually in the past I've done this all alone on my lonesome but this time this holiday season it's it's actually really interesting too one of the things that I didn't mention a couple hours ago was something I'm really really happy about um, on December 9th of 2020 I streamed for the first time I think that was the first record that stream had that twitch has of me streaming uh live on a on um, their platform which is really really cool so not only is this kind of a celebration of thankness and kind of being thankful for the community as a whole and being able to donate money for the wealth central kitchen and just things that are kind of beyond ourselves i also started streaming like two years ago which is something that i find like really really close to my heart i find that this particular hobby is something that reminds me a lot of my theater days when i was back in middle school and high school and stuff i kind of fell out of it in college and really lost track of it and streaming was kind of a way for me in particular to kind of give myself an excuse to be able to do things that I wanted to do whether that means um, watching television shows and talking about it online kind of feeling a certain way about things and being able to share my opinions with the people uh, uh, out there and in general uh, be able to play video games that I hadn't played in a very very long time and just be able to explore things that I hadn't be able to do in my free time in general in particular I really really like mixological stuff I like making cocktails mocktails and just exploring mixology in general I'm not a professional or anything like that but for I feel like a lot of people out there especially those who are young like like me for instance who's only 25 right now there's a lot of like really there's a lot of space out there to kind of explore and learn from this community as a whole i found that in particular the mixological community out there those who are into cocktails already are kind of elitist in a way where they're like if you don't do things a particular way you're not necessarily welcome but in my philosophy like you kind of go out there and you mix things together whether that be random things in no particular fashion or you do things with a little bit of a science back a sciencey background a little more methodical like i think you're all more or less equal in that regard and i think that's a wonderful thing and in in general like no matter what you wind up doing it's something that you wind up uh, kind of kind of taking to yourself and be able to use to kind of hone your craft a little bit and uh, move a little bit forward in your own particular like journey on the whole thing um in any case all suffice to say um i don't know where i was going with that anyway it feels pretty good anyways we're raising money for charity. That's the most important thing to hear. Uh, that's the most important thing here that I think that we have. And we're moving into a, uh, another cocktail that we're making called the dreidel in a reference to the co Hanukkah holiday season. And he uses a couple of different types of things. My pal Leko Slogan is downstairs. Uh, he is cleaning off one of the cocktail strikers down there. Um, and when he comes back up, we're gonna we're gonna continue mixing these cocktails off here. I have. I'm gonna see if I have any other cocktail shakers over here. I don't think I actually do. I have a pineapple down here, which is pretty cool. That doesn't really help me very much, to be perfectly honest. Um, I kind of had it frozen in my fridge. It's not really, it's not really helping me very much. Um, in any case, we're gonna mix a couple of things together. I think what I wind up doing is before he gets back up here, I'm gonna come combine a couple of things ahead of time, and then we'll put it into our cocktail shaker, shake it up, serve it into a glass, and see where we get with it. So to continue on with another cocktail that we have for the evening, in in kind of the spirit of thankmas, Thanksgiving, uh, Christmas. Hanukkah, holiday season and whatnot. We're gonna make something called the dreidel. And I tried to make it as non-alcoholic as possible, but I couldn't find anything that wasn't plum plus alcohol at the store. So I'm just gonna start off with that. So we have two ounces of plum brandy. If you can get access to Slivovitz, that's kind of like the preferred brand in this case. However, I was able to find Fuki, which is a plum wine. And I'm gonna use that in place of uh, the other plum particular ingredients in this case, because I couldn't find anything plummy at the store plum itself is usually more of a summer fruit so it's just kind of not in season and i went to the store like a couple uh, about a day ago or uh, so i wasn't able to find any of that so i'm gonna take two ounces or about 60 milliliters of my plum wine and i'm gonna add it to my 
metaphorical cocktail shaker. I'm gonna get to that in a moment, but in the meantime, I'm gonna put it in this glass that I have kind of on standby over here. We've made a couple of cocktails this evening as well. If you're if you're particularly interested in those uh, cocktail recipes, I'd be happy to share them with you. We started out with a Philadelphia Fish House Punch. We had a Manhattan, a couple of different ways. We had a Grinch cocktail. We had a Tipsy Peppermint Elfy Mocha cocktail as well. And now we're making this uh, Dreidel cocktail here as well, which is more of a plum-based kind of apple-y, fruity beverage um, that is something that you can serve around the, I guess, so around the Hanukkah season and stuff. At least for not told for the people who are a little more religious than I am uh, with the context that I've gained from that. The next ingredient that we're gonna add to our cocktail shaker in addition to the two ounces of plum brandy, plum juice, plum liquid that you were able to get access to is we're gonna add two ounces of apple juice or apple jack or any particular apple type beverage that you have access to. I have apple juice over here in a box container, so I'm gonna go with that. I have returned. Lycos Lore has returned with a couple of the different things. I have a very, very clean cocktail shaker now, so I'm gonna take the plum brandy that I have and pour that into my small side of my shaker as the Lord intended it to. I'm gonna put this dirty glass over here. I don't want it anymore. We will continue on. I also have this very lovely smelling cocktail coupe, and I'm gonna put that off to the side. I'm gonna put that back over here. I think, do we? I don't know exactly what to serve this in. I'll find a different glass for it. Okay. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. Right. I have a couple of different cocktail uh, glasses down here, and I'm gonna grab one in particular. If you'll give me just a moment, I will. You have all the time in the world. I have a couple of them. I think this will probably be the nice one, so we're gonna go with that. I'll put that off the side, and we can worry about that later. Um, so the next ingredient that we're gonna add to the dreidel cocktail is we're gonna add two ounces of apple juice. You could also use apple jack, something else, apple brandy we'll related. Apple on the pouches. Ooh, can you get a get a pouch of apple juice in there? I'm gonna challenge you to measure out two whole ounces of that apple juice in here. Oh boy. And you have to pop the container. You gotta put the little bendy straw in there. You have oh. to measure out two whole ounces, AKA about 59, 60 milliliters okay. of apple. Uh, okay, and that is? It's the full I thing. This, this full side here is gonna be two ounces. Okay, so just piss it in there. If you can piss it in there, I will pour it for you. Got a little on your hand. You wanna, you wanna raise it up a little bit? Give a little bit of a trick there? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's what it's all about. It, like pissing in the wild. It's like pissing in the wild. That's what it's all about. Is that enough? Well, keep you... on going. You gotta fill it all the way up to the top. Oh, keep on going. A little bit more. There we go. About perfect. two ounces of apple juice. There we go. That's 60 milliliters there. Perfect, yeah. perfect, perfect. I was literally just about to just drink this. That's perfect. You can drink the rest of it if you want to. Personally, I think I need more coffee. Oh my god. Mm. It's absolutely, abs <laughs> absolutely delightful. <clears throat> in any case, we'll move on. The next ingredient that we need in our dreidel cocktail is a half an ounce of lemon juice. Um, do you see my citrus bag over here? Yeah, I got it. <clears throat> Can you Go. grab another citrus? Oh, I think it's lemon, isn't it? Lemon. Ooh. <laughs> we, use that one we got one of these peels. lemons. Uh, we, we, we did a bunch of like peeling of lemon, peeling of lemons before uh, for a variety of different cocktails. I think we had one of them was the Philadelphia Fish House Punch. Uh, we one did a them, couple of peelings for the Manhattan recipe. There was one was for. Uh, I'm blanking on this. <clears throat> oh, we did a. Uh, it was a Georgia peach sour. I forgot yes, about that, that one. It. You're the absolutely Georgia right. The Georgia peach sour. Did a little Georgia peach sour as well. Um, so you usually wind up taking a little bit of the lemon peel and peeling it off and kind of putting it in your cocktail glass. Um, we did it already, so that's kind of behind us. In the meantime, we need a little bit of that lemon juice still remaining. And actually, I just remembered. I'm going to give this back to you. Because in the refrigerator are two halves of a lemon, and I think we can get the half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of a lemon juice that we need for the rest of our cocktail here. Uh, this, this refrigerator one downstairs. Yeah, the one over here. And I think, I don't remember if I have any of my um, lemon squeeze are still left over here, but I can just kind of use my hands for the rest of this. Where We're taking what we can. Uh, on the right-hand side, really close to your face, you see? Oh, it's yes. Right here. I yeah. got you. I got one of them. Yep, you got one. There we go. I'm gonna okay. throw this over top of your head. Oops, I missed you it. Missed. Here's a lemon. I'm gonna try to see if I can get about, um, let's see, half an ounce of lemon juice in this with my hands. I don't have my shaker. I don't know where my shaker is. We've been cleaning and kind of exchanging out things like a whole night, so. She squeezer. You see that over there? Yeah, they're in the bucket. Ooh, we have it in the bucket. Perfect. Yeah, not been cleaned. That's okay. Well, it's it's completely covered in lemon juice anyway, so. Oh, there's a couple of lemon seeds in there. Oh, 
That's okay. Huh. That ain't coming through. You say that, but we got some in the lemonade. There we go. We need about a half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of that, and we have just enough. So, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I'll let you take that back. You can feel free to throw that in there. I don't think we need any more of it. And I will put that in my cocktail shaker as well. The next ingredient that we'll need there is the recipe calls for cherry in the core, about a half an ounce, 15 mm -hmm. milliliters. So in the spirit of trying to make this as non-alcoholic as possible, are instead you, of cherry liqueur, which usually use? comes, and I have a very, very, Ooh. I have two different options here actually, and I feel like they need to explain them all. I have cherry vodka here. Okay. And I also have something called Kirschwasser. Clint, I remember you being in German class with me. Yes. Kirschwasser, uh, German class. Yeah. What does that mean? Do you remember? Okay, um... Kirsch and Wasser. Okay, va Wasser, that's the obvious part. That it's water. You got it. Kirsch, though, that word is not ringing any bells in my head. So Kirsch, Kirsch is the German word for cherry. So, oh, so Kirschwasser would mean cherry literally water. mean cherry water. Exactly. So Kirschwasser is an eau de vie which is a, pie, is a type of alcohol that is distilled from fruits and stuff. And if I could be more specific on that, I probably would, although I'm not particularly versed in that. Kirschwasser, though, itself is an ODB derived from cherries. It's in particular, um, this type, this particular Kirschwasser here, this from uh, Schlaterer, is from the Black Forest cherries from the Black Forest in Germany and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's got a very, very, it's got a very kind of, pungent liqueur flavor to it that's akin to kind of like the pit of like a black cherry as opposed to something that's a little more confectionery like you would taste it from like a dum dum cherry lollipop or something mm -hmm. so if i were to go with the more alcoholic combo here i would either go with a very like kind of like cherry flavored vodka which is that very very confectioner cherry type flavor mm -hmm. with this kirschwasser here which is kind of like a cherry seed more kind of black cherry type of flavor that's kind of more reminiscent of a cherry as opposed to actually biting into a cherry itself so now because this is a mocktail <laughs> are we going to use one of the so, so squeezy in, in, place, in place of that Instead of using either the cherry vodka or the Kirschwasser, I oh have something God. else in between. I'm gonna let's get a dog out here, and he's gonna get a very, very clean medium between the cherry vodka <laughs> and the cherry ODB. <laughs> we're gonna use we're gonna use Kool Aid Kool Aid jammers, specifically cherry Kool Aid jammers. Uh, that's what I went to the store to bet. Loriander has popped in and says hello. Hello, hello Loriander. Loriander. How are, are you? Are you perhaps a fan of Kool-Aid jammers in your cocktails? Because if you are, this unfortunately, is the stream you came for you. the right place. This is, this is the stream for you. Kool-Aid jammers is a, it's a quality cocktail reagent here. Now, I would say, I would say, and this is for the sake of my own palate here, I really, really want to see if I can distinguish the difference between, let's say, like the, car the cherry Kirschwasser, the cherry vodka, and the um, the Kool-Aid jammer. Okay. So can I ask you to pop this open for me with the little thing there? I'm going to take a little bit of my cherry vodka here, which is wave I'm, cherry cherry. I'm going to say, vodka. like, I'm willing to bet you can get you can guess the um, Kool-Aid because, like, I had a little bit of this earlier, mm -hmm. and it's really strong. Oh my gosh, just smell this. Oh, hang on. Just, just smell this. Okay. Oh. Cherry? That's cherry with cherry, something else. Cherry, cherry, cherry. There's something else cherry, in there. Cherry, cherry, cherry. I'm pretty sure what I'm smelling is the alcohol. Oh! <laughs> oh my god, this is very, very cherry. It's also very, very vodka. I will admit that. Um, I'm gonna pour that. Oh, I'm gonna need that. <laughs> <laughs> Put that in my water. Can I have a little bit of the Kool-Aid jammer, sir? Oh, absolutely. Take a little bit of smell of that. Also cherry. A lot more lighter. A lot more sweet there. It's yeah. much more sugar than it is, obviously, of the vodka, <laughs> naturally. And now I'm going to take a little bit of the Schlaterer Kirschwasser there. And... <laughs> Almost sounds Incredible. like an animal's like making a call or something like a bird. In particular, you'll notice that this is completely clear. Yeah. This is a very, very clear liqueur. Give, give, that, true. give this a smell. I will. <laughs> ignore, ignore the fact that I just oh. spilled on myself. Oh. It's completely different, right? No, that is like. It warm. does not even smell like confectionery. That does cherry not at all. smell like cherry at so all. That's that the, just that's smells the thing like that's really interesting about like Schlater or like this particular Kirschwasser is it is cherry. However, it's not like a confectionery cherry. 
this is like a black forest cherry. Like, so my parents in their backyard grow like black cherry tree, and it's very similar to the way that a black cherry tastes, as opposed to like a kind of cherry that you would get from like a cherry lollipop, which mm -hmm. is something that I'm not, I'm, I'm more familiar with because it's just more prevalent out there, yeah. which is interesting. So, but like that, I took a whiff of that. I did not smell any cherry at all. So if I had to say, if I had to compare all these together, Comparing the Schladerer to the Kool-Aid Jammer to the Wave Cherry Vodka. What this is the most cherry cherry. Mm -hmm. This is the next cherry cherry. And this is cherry, but it's kind of like cherry cherry vodka. This is more vodka cherry. This is more cherry vodka. And this is just cherry. cherry. Okay. Yeah, that's absolutely. Absolutely. So how much of the Kool-Aid do we want in... So, in our dreidel cocktail, I think if we're trying to keep things a little more akin to a mocktail recipe... So that'd be half an ounce? Half an ounce. About oh. 15 milliliters All of right. the cherry liqueur. Or cherry <laughs> or Kool-Aid Kool jammers. Kool jammers. Cherry. Uh, and I would think, in this case, because we're using the plum brandy, because we're using the plum wine itself, plum brandy, like, brandy itself is, it, it's got a bit of a sweetness to it, but it's yeah. not as sweet as, let's say, the wine itself. So I feel like, technically speaking, if we were trying to adjust this recipe for what we are adding to it, I feel like we would actually add a little bit less of the Kool-Aid Jammers because the Kool-Aid Jammers itself is more sugary. It's more sweet okay. than the plum brandy, plum wine equivalent that we're using. However, I kind of just want to go into that anyway because I kind of want to see what happens when we okay. take the Kool-Aid Jammers we combine. So, it. half ounce of Kool-Aid Jammer. Half an ounce of Kool-Aid Jammers. We're going to put that in our cocktail shaker. I'm going to squeeze it out. Take a, piss stream, dude. take a look at that nice piss stream oh, man, there. Oh man, he got some leakage. Oh my gosh, just a little bit of uh, there we go. It really Excellent. is pissing in the woods. It's got a very nice red color to it. I very much appreciate that. Would you like to finish this off, sir? Sure. Actually, no, actually, you know what? I had the apple juice. Why don't you go for it? I hate that. <laughs> oh my god, it's really Ew. strong. I, I, I despise that. I wasn't kidding. When I said it's gonna... really strong. Ugh. It's not good. I'm not a fan of that. Anyway, we move on with uh, we move on with happy smiles on our faces. The next <laughs> ingredient that we're gonna add to our dreidel is half ounce of egg white. There we go. So you need an egg white. What? Could you go into my refrigerator and grab me an egg? Uh, it's it's all the way in the back. Yeah, no, it's mid shelf. Oh, you know where it is. Yeah, I saw them earlier, so I'm like, you know, I know. I've got it. There we go. Hmm. It's gonna be pretty good. There you go. I found that so what I'm gonna do here is for the sake of the cocktail itself, I have an egg. The egg has been sitting in the refrigerator for an indeterminate amount of time, but it doesn't matter. Instead, we're gonna take this unfertilized chicken embryo thing. We're gonna separate the yellow part from the white part and only care about the white part. The way that I'm going to do that is I'm gonna take this egg, I'm gonna crack it on the side a couple times, kind of flip it upside down. I'm gonna crack it down the middle and make sure, as best as I possibly can, that only the white part makes its way into the cocktail glass itself, which actually wasn't that difficult this time around. So I usually struggle with this a little bit, but usually what you can do, oh. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> I got the egg white in there. Hold on, wait, I'm gonna see about kind of lifting out. Are you gonna try and scoop it out? Oh, to the egg. Nope, nope, I actually got some egg white in there. This is disgusting. All right, we're gonna do this again. <laughs> well, <laughs> Mommy, it's just dumped out in the trash. Yep, can you dump that in the trash? Yeah. I don't really want to see what it tastes like when I take egg white and I put that into my thing there. So actually, so now that I failed, right? All right, we're gonna try things again. We need the apple. Let me get the apple juice for cool. We need the apple juice back out here again. Um, yep. We're gonna go through exactly what we did before, um, except because I failed, we're going to try a different method. That's what we're going to do. So at first, I'm gonna go back to what I was doing before. I need two ounces or about Boy. 60 milliliters of apple my juice. plum brandy. Plum brandy. Put that in my cocktail shaker. Glenn is going to grab for me a particular apparatus that will allow me to separate the egg white from the egg yellow. Um, that's gonna make it easier on me because apparently I failed the first time. And that's okay. Oh, you have one of those uh, yolk separators? I do, I do, I do, I do. I need a whole new container of apple juice. I have many, many containers of apple juice right now. It's gonna be totally, totally easy to do. Not a big issue at all. I need about two ounces or about 60 milliliters of that apple juice. It's very, very easy to do. I'm gonna pour that in my cocktail majigger. It's oh. so cool to watch, oh my God. Where's your uh, egg separator? My egg separator should be on the, in the tackle box somewhere. If you can't find it, I will I will come and... So this container right here. 
got two ounces of the apple juice in there. Put that off to the side. I need half an ounce of the lemon juice. Uh, Glenn has given to me another uh, thing of lemon. Yep. I'm gonna squeeze about half an ounce out of there with my hands. I'm gonna dance, dance, dance with my hands, 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 like Jesus said. Why did you not see the separator, my God? You don't see it in there? Oh my goodness. I'm gonna guess I gotta, gotta come over there, I guess. You might have to, because I'm. Oh. Luckily, I'm the only one enjoying this cocktail, so if I squeeze this lemon with my hands, like, nobody... Nobody cares. It's gonna be okay. Let me see if I can find it over there. Yeah, the... Thank you, separator. Where are we? Hmm. Oh, maybe it's over here. Oh, I have it. Oh, I have it. You sent me on a field quest. Da, 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 da. I have the egg white separator. It is it is this guy right here. It is going to help me take this egg and separate it from the egg oh, white. Oh, let me pitch the uh, lemon. Oh, we need the cherry. We can do the Kool-Aid jammers. Yes, you gotta there do Kool-Aid. Go. I gotta do the Kool-Aid jammers. I almost forgot about that. Oh. Let's go for it. I got you, bro. Listen, I, may, I don't make the drinks, but I can definitely help out. Absolutely, absolutely indeed. All right, here we go. I need... Half uh, ounce. half an ounce, right? Half an ounce, or about 50 milliliters of my Kool-Aid jammers. Pissing I'm gonna in. Uh, <laughs> okay, that was unfortunate. <laughs> you just pissed all over. You know what? Fuck it. That's fine. It's okay. I'm going to take my cherry vodka. I realize, too, I've just been having these, like, sitting out the entire time. I don't need this stuff here. Yeah, because... I haven't even used this. Yeah, we're not using them for this recipe. Take this shit away from me. I don't... I don't want this here. I can't. I can't. I can't even. Get it out of here. Please. Okay. Fine. Oh, please. Oh, oh. Stop. I also need to take my egg. This is an egg. I use the egg. I separate it from the egg white. The way that I do this now, because I failed the first time, is I want to take the egg. I'm going to crack it over top of my cocktail shaker, and I have this little egg white separator here, which I will showcase to the crowd. I'm going to put this over top of my cocktail shaker, and I'm going to crack it so the, the egg yellow, the yolk itself, lays within the apparatus itself. The egg white itself, so long as I didn't break the seal of the egg yellow, will separate. Uh, I see a little bit of the yolk kind of making its way in there, so I'm going to cover it as best as possible, as best as I possibly can, and seal it off. We will put that into our container. This is trash now. We don't want it anymore. Oh, dear. Okay, I spilled it a little bit. Oh. Oops. I made a wee little bit of Actually, it kind of worked out. All right, I will be honest here. Okay. I just spilled the egg yolk, and I made a little bit of a mess on the bar. However, it actually took all the egg yolk, more or less, out of the cocktail shaker. So I think it's mostly okay. For the most part, there's not a lot in there. No. For the most part, I think it's okay. So, the mistake that we made, despite the fact that it's a little disgusting, is okay. I think it's okay. And actually, this is something that I think that I can learn from. So, once upon a time, I made a maple sour, which used uh, egg white, a little bit of egg yolk, unintentionally, and some maple syrup, and it actually came out a lot better with the egg yolk as well. It tasted, in my opinion, a lot, lot better with a little bit of the egg yolk there, which is something I think could be, uh, that's the cool thing about mixology. You can make a little couple of mistakes and stuff, and it's okay. Oh, so we're gonna go. I think we're gonna go with it. Well, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. So we have added plum brandy, apple juice, lemon juice, cherry liqueur, in this case, cherry juice, Kool-Aid jammers, and egg white. Now you and need a, a dash, dash of, of Angostura okay. bitters. Okay. The Angostura bitters is a particular type of bitters. I don't think we have that up on my bar anymore. But I got some down here. Let's take a look at it. You're the, you're the bitters master. I see it. Whoa. Oh, no, no, no. Don't fall. You silly piece of bitters. <laughs> I got Angostura. It's the yellow one. What is uh, Angostura bitters? Angostura bitters is a particular type of bitters. It's alcoholic. It's like 40, 45% or something like that. And in my opinion, it tastes very similar to like a like cinnamon clove Christmas piece spice and it's also got a very very uh very very prominent red color so for the purposes of uh demonstration the i'll put up a little bit in this martini glass and if i the more i put in there it's got a nice like reddish red, color to it red red orange brown like absolutely and human. if you smell it what do you think that smells like to you and i'll put a couple dashes of my cocktail glass Wait. over here in the meantime okay yeah i'm definitely getting like that cinnamon oh yeah like like my first thought is just like like spices that just clear out your sinuses. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, it's very it's very very potent type of spice. Yeah, so it's nice. Yeah, like I, like again, I see the ch I smell the. Um, Let me see. Cherry. 
can we can we put a little bit of water in there and clean out this measure majigger? There's a little bit of yolk in it, so I think it probably wouldn't serve us very well if we continue to make more cocktails. And I'm gonna take this egg yolk as a I'm putting that in our bag. We don't need it anymore. Talking to cleanliness man, the cleaner. Oh my goodness, absolutely. Like a slur, the cleansing cleanliness man. Which you would not believe me if you saw how I lived. Try to look and see how much of a mess I've made on the floor in front of our bar. It's okay. It's fine. We have we have things to clean that up uh, at some point. It'll uh, be great. That's the beauty of these stream things. I get to clean it up another day. I don't have to clean it up now. Correct. In any case, I... We have... What's up? Oh, we have apple juice in here. I just noticed that. We can dump it out of the container. I just noticed we have apple juice in our big container. Is that the... But we already have apple juice in here. Was this from the original batch? Maybe. I think we should trash. I don't think we need it. We're trying to make a dreidel cocktail over here. It's kind of so it's kind of pseudo alcoholic. It's got a little bit of alcohol in it, but it's not all of it. We're gonna need some ice in here. Okay. In the meantime, I'm gonna take this plum wine and I'm going to put it away. And by put it away, I'm just gonna kind of. Let's put it back here. Let's get a big old glass, a big old ice cube from the gray container back there. We'll put that in here. This is our last one. Well, in that particular container, I think there's probably another thing of ice cubes in there. We'll see how much we need of it. Oh, you got it. Uh, there we go. I'm gonna take that out. Yeah, go grab it. Yeah. <laughs> I dropped it off. Oh, it's okay. We're the ones drinking this cocktail. It's okay. Big ice container in here. Are there any small containers in there? Small containers? In there? Small things that I uh, thought. Sm oh, we got. Oh, we got the Disney ones. Yeah, we got Disney ones. I'll take it. We have very, very small ice cubes. Oh. Usually, when I wind up shaking things on this stream, I wind up taking a big old ice cube and combining it with a couple of little ice cubes. Oh, or the castle. A few. We got the castle in there. We got a Mickey face and a thing of Mickey's pants. So well, I'll take it. Why do we have his head in his pants? It's just right? how it has to be. I take my liquid reagents, I combine them with my solid reagents, and I see what happens when I shake it all together. It's icy and cold, so it's going to wind up creating a little bit of a pressure. Do it a little bit slowly. Bring it up a little bit. Uh -huh. I'm just gonna go wild. Uh, I'm gonna switch spots with Glenn for a moment. Yep. Oh, I can hear that. So, at the bottom of my bar over there, you're gonna pick a glass from the bottom of there, and we're gonna put it inside. We're gonna do a little bit of a strain. Well, uh, these nice looking glasses. Absolutely, any one that you want. Uh, let's go. Spit in my face. I would never. I just felt it. Want to do that one? All right. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. Though. I'm going to zoom in real all good. Get it all nice up in that margarita glass there. Uh, Put yeah. it up in the camera. It's going to be great. This is your dreidel. Dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. I made you out of clay. Dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. Now I'm suck my dick all day. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Hmm. Dude, look at that Kool-Aid Jammer flavor there. It, uh, it looks like it's gonna be strawberry, but there's no way it's gonna be strawberry. So, usually when you wind up doing these egg shaking cocktails, you double strain it. Um, I don't think it has too much of an effect here, but if you notice, this kind of like distinct crema layer here, the white foam, is something that is very, very distinct to these types of cocktails, especially when you have an egg white inside. Okay. It's actually kind of cool. So, okay, it said like strawberry in the beginning because it looked more pink coming out of the glass. Mm -hmm. But as you can kind of see on camera that I'm trying to show it, it's honestly like more like orangish brown. Yeah, I think it's because the Kool Aid Jammers has like a very, 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 uh, like a red, red coloring to it. Oh, and boy. that's probably whatever the artificial coloring it is in that. But, uh, it looks, uh, I don't know. So, there is only one piece of alcohol on there. Yeah. I'm curious to see. What do you what do you think? I'm gonna be honest, dude. I think I'm gonna hate it. Ooh, I'm, I'm curious. I would I would be lying if I said I wasn't curious. Okay. I'm getting a lot of like the uh, plum wine. I'm getting a lot of that. Uh, do we have a spit cup at the ready? Oh yeah, you can put it in this martini glass if you're not a fan of that. Okay. Well, cheers, friends. Cheers, indeed. This is the Dreidel cocktail. Thoughts? 
What the hell? I'm very confused. In a good way? Perhaps a bad way? Oh. C can I... Can I try it's it? It's very bitter. I wanted to, to try it. There's some flavor I got. Ugh. You can see what I'm saying. It's very Ooh. bitter. So they're very interesting going on there. You know, I think it's the, the cinnamon mm -hmm. of the Angostura bitters mixing with the apple juice and the plum. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I wouldn't say... I don't that it's particularly my type of beverage. I do. It's very, very sweet. I wouldn't say it tastes alcoholic, though. I don't get... It's just kind of weird. I get a little bit of the alcohol, but it's very weird. Mm -hmm. Like, that one, I'm like, that's okay. Would I order it again? No. Mm -hmm. It's very odd. It's different. I'm getting apple juice. Getting Kool Aid jammers. I mean, the every every so it's interesting for a cocktail like this. Like everything kind of exists um, all on its own. It's kind of hard to distinguish between all of them together. Like when I got a sip, like I literally like just got hit with like just bitter. Like that oh was God, I literally yeah. got. Yeah, no, I'm totally getting that. It's very very interesting. It's I weird. wouldn't say. I I mean I think for the most part. And again. I was the one who modified this, so I don't think the blame lies anywhere in particular aside no, from me. Of but it's 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 different. It's not something that particularly gels more with my palate. Yeah, I I can agree with you on that because like. But mostly, I think it's mostly because of the apple juice. I think, and that is I don't know what kind of brand apple juice that is. Yeah, I didn't. it is. Apple and Eve. The job takes one hundred percent minimum. One hundred, uh, no Apple sugar juice. added, no additional flavor. And uh, Kool-Aid jammers. Oh my god, absolutely. Oh my god, absolutely. Kool-Aid jammers add so it's a, much sugar. It's a lot. It's a lot, I will say. So, okay, that was an interesting mocktail. Yeah, that was all right. I think it was okay. All right. Yeah. I don't think I'm such a big fan of that. Nah, I'm not gonna touch it again. <laughs> absolutely. I think we're pretty much good there. Yeah. In any case, I think. In my humble opinion, I think that I think we've overstayed our welcome here at the bar over here. It's like 3:30 in the morning. Yeah. And I think it I feel like it's time to switch segments. What do you think? No, I'm done I'm done for games. Yeah. All right. So I think what we're going to wind up doing here is we're going to do a little bit of cleanup here at the bar, trying to make things a little more clean over here. Most of most of our party has kind of fallen asleep. We're kind of doing their uh, kind yeah, of resting we're, we're the, that thing. We're the, currently the only two standing. Glenn and I are the ones who are going to stay up all night and play a bunch of things until the morning time comes around when hopefully everybody else can kind of take the brunt of the presentation along with them mm -hmm. um so what we're kind of going to do over here is we're going to take a little bit of a moment to kind of clean up a little bit of the bar here we're kind of throw things downstairs put things in the sink and whatnot and um we'll take a small little bit of a break there um while we continue to um kind of clean things up and whatnot the next thing that we plan on doing <sighs> is we're going to move over to the desktop over there which you can't really see right now but a small change of angle will prepare us for when Glenn and I here, like us, Laura and I, will be playing a couple of GameCube games to continue raising money for Thankmas 2022. We are, just a quick reminder, we are raising money for the World Central Kitchen. So far, we've raised about 430, I think, dollars so far, which has been really, really good. Our goal Our angle by the is 500. End, it's true. And we're just getting really, really close to that as well. Mm. And we have like. 12 how many hours is that left? I, I can't, can't see read. what does that say? I think it's a 1621 it, it looks like 16 hours left until we reach the end of our thank miss stream here And I think we're super duper close so far. Yeah, I really think that we can reach the goal no, I'm, Which is super duper cool so far. Okay, like I'm gonna be honest like I think I think we can do this goal on the Just easy the fact that like absolutely like, we have 16 hours and we're and like just saying from like this time zone right now like yeah, it's pretty late for people like in this time zone, mm -hmm. but like it's like not only, early morning for the folks across the pond, you know? Yeah, not only like do we have the chance of like folks across the pond who like drop in, shrink, but we also have tomorrow morning when more people are probably up checking Twitch and all that popping Absolutely. on. So no, I think the odds of us beating this goal are pretty good. It's gonna happen. Yeah, I think, I think it really is going to happen. No, I I agree with you. 
so what we'll do in the meantime, Glenn and I here, we're the only ones awake, so we're a little bit short staff right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of clean up the bar over here because we're not coming back to the bar for another 16 or so hours when we come back and tally up all of the donations that we've had so far. So far, we've had some wonderful donations for the $330, or what is it, $430 so yes. far from people like Yoda Girl, The Cow House, The Meeps, Annie, Delucari, Lemons, Delucari. Oh. It's so wonderful so far. And so we're gonna continue for the next 16 or so hours next time with a couple of different GameCube games that we're going to play thanks to the wonderful donation of technology from Glenn's Alcado and GameCube. Yep. So we'll be back in a little bit. You might hear us a little bit in the meantime, but so until we wind up cleaning things up and switching around scenes and whatnot, please enjoy the sounds of the lo-fi beats and whatnot. Please enjoy this little graphic that we drew up on the board over here. Mm -hmm. We're doing a little bit of cleanup and we'll be back in a few or so minutes as we kind of change for our next scene because we're done with the cocktails for the evening. Personally, I've drank it enough, and I think we need some more coffee, so I'm going to heat up some water. And personally, I prefer the air. Da, 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 I prefer da, da. the air. Absolutely. <laughs> Glenn, can I hand this off to you? And yeah, I'm going to ask I'm you to kind of empty this off into the sink downstairs. Yeah, I was I going to. I'm not a big fan of cocktails, so, so I think we're going to move on. I'm going to do a little bit of zoom onto our thank miss thing over here and do a little bit of cleanup. So do let's do a little else? bit of... I think we'll be okay. Here's our thank miss 2022. We will be back in a little bit. Please hold your horses. If you have horses, if you don't have horses, that is totally okay. In the meantime, please enjoy the music of the lo-fi as we take a small little break. We'll be back in a little bit. Bye. I'm trying to mute.
here. Hey there, everybody. Uh, camera with an X here. We're changing things up a little bit. In a hot second, we're going to be changing our cocktail setup over here. We're not doing cocktails anymore. We're going to play some GameCube games. So if you'll give us a moment to kind of switch things around, it'd be greatly appreciated. Yeah. Here we go. I'm going to do thing. I've got my thing here. And move this guy. Move over here. Move things up a little bit. Here we go. We're moving into the next chapter of our charity stream. Oh boy. Move things over here. A very awkward angle thing. We'll change things around. The microphone itself is doing some odd shit, let me tell you. There we go. Got you plugged in. I have access to chat and stuff. I'm gonna change things around. I'm gonna. Where am I? Let's see. We're gonna go over here. Um, I'm gonna change this to the friend screen. 